Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to day two here at Silverstone uh, for this TCR UK and BRSCC race event. We had a fantastic opening day yesterday. Some really good racing, some really close and exciting qualifying sessions, and they've all set us up now uh, for an action-packed day of action. Action-packed day of action, you know what I mean, here on the Silverstone National Circuit in the summer sunshine, which uh, is something we actually didn't see an awful lot of yesterday. It stayed largely dry, but it was overcast. It was a bit uh, blustery, a bit chilly. Uh, this morning though perfect conditions for racing and we're ready to get our first race of the day underway in just a few moments time it's the brscc fiesta junior drivers who are lining up on the grid for their first of two 15 minute races uh, andy McEwen in the commentary box delighted to be joined by richard john neal for all uh, brscc content today and uh, richard fiesta juniors their biggest ever grid of cars 25 of them around a circuit that should be made for these kind of cars i think it's going to be quite exciting isn't it's it? it's going to be incredible I'll let you get to, get to the grid though and tell everyone who's there indeed because it might take a while with 25 of them to get through pole position yesterday set by luke hilton he did a one minute 11.3 that was eight tenths of a second clear of anybody else and that anybody else headed by a newcomer to the championship one of many this weekend finn leslie in the number 26 then it was marcel lachitsky starting third with rashan tyler chigger Rimbo alongside him on row number two. Row three then for Jasmine Shaw and Flamer Ricola, a pair of uh, lady racers there on row three with Jensen Mason and Jacob Hodgkiss sharing the fourth row. Row five then for Daniel Lewis and Wesley Swain with George Foxlow and Benjamin Doughty uh, on the sixth row of the grid. Row seven for Henry Howarth and Jensen Bell. Uh, and they will start just ahead of Sam Nesser, and he's one of a few championship frontrunners starting deeper in the field than they'd like to be. So keep an eye on the number 43 car. He's got Lucas Hayden in the Jamsport car alongside him. Then it's Alfie Garford and Billy Blockley on row nine, whilst the top 20 are completed by Ryan Mikolev, who was a winner back at the season opener this year. Uh, he's only 19th on the grid today with Hadley Simpson for company. Row 11 then for Tommy Harfield. Ronnie Smith had dramas in qualifying yesterday and will start on the 11th row. Then, row 12, championship leader Ben Mulryan. Ben Mulryan, uh, who has three race victories so far this season, is going to have to try and come from 23rd on the grid of all the weekends to have a bad qualifying session. Uh, the weekend on which we have our biggest ever grid of Fiesta Juniors. Not ideal timing for him. Michael Wheeler was in the gravel trap in qualifying yesterday and will start 24th with James Pope, the driver who didn't actually set a lap time yesterday so James Pope uh, will hopefully have got his car sorted and lined up at the back of the grid uh, so championship wise then Ben Ryan leads the way like I said three race victories on dropped scores he's on 282 points that is 18 more than Sam Nessa, but he's only starting 15th on the grid so the top two in the championship deep in the order and that means Richard that really the advantage should lie here with the man third in the championship Luke Hilton he is comfortably faster than his championship rivals in fact he's comfortably faster than everyone yeah, everyone wondering where he got that lap from. It was a good performance from Luke. Tried to get his disqualification over to turn. They had an appeal loss. I wasn't successful, uh, by the way, just to uh, look to the, you know, the driver, the official sat down, looked at the footage, but that DQ is staying. So okay. he's he wasn't too perturbed about it. He knew, you know, he'd come into the meeting thinking he's got to work against that, and, and that's the case. But, yeah, so many great drivers and so many new drivers. I've not seen the junior championship have this many new drivers at this stage yes. of the season for a long, long time, if ever. Yeah, building well towards 2024, when, I mean, we honestly could have 30 cars on the grid, which would be an incredible achievement, given where this championship was a few years ago. Fantastic work done uh, by the BRSCC to grow this into uh, perhaps the most popular junior category of racing in the UK. So the grid then is set. 15 minutes of racing around the short, sharp 1.6-mile Silverstone National Circuit. On our left, number on our right, sorry, number 32, Luke Hilton. The white and yellow car is on pole. On the left, the red mark. Mark 7 Fiesta is Finn Leslie. The revs starting to rise. The red lights will go out now. And we are racing here at Silverstone. Luke Hilton makes a brilliant start from pole. Good start made by Rashan Tyler Chigarimbo as well there from the inside of row number two. And he may well challenge for second place turning its cost corner. In fact, he goes for the race lead. Chigarimbo getting past Luke Hilton. The second phase of Luke Hilton's start. Not all that impressive. And Chigarimbo is looking to try and get the lead away. There's a bit of a squeeze as they head down towards Beckett's for the first time. And that could bring Finn Leslie back into the picture. They're almost three wide but it's Hilton who holds on to the advantage Shigarimbo second Leslie quite early on the brakes some further back definitely not early on the brakes and this is where we really hold our breath cold rear tyres a busy busy grid a couple of them bouncing wide over the curves but generally Richard 
a pretty clean start. Yeah, don't speak too soon. We've got Brooklyn's to come yet, haven't we? And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have a sort out there. But the man who is in the place he wants to be in is Luke Hilton, who's getting away. Good, great start by Chigarimbo for sure. And Finn Leslie, he, he didn't look nervous when I spoke to him before the race. But do you know what? That was a, a good start from him. First time out in, in a car start. And pretty confident under braking as well for the first time on cold tyres, surrounded by other cars. Pretty impressive stuff that. Through the field we go then again. We're cleanly through Brooklyn's. It looks like a two by two rolling start, though. No separation in the order at all, except for Luke Hilton, who is marching away out in front. One car bouncing through the gravel. I think that was Hadley Simpson in the 37. Yes, it was, uh, who had all four wheels out into the gravel. The race, though, is for second place. 1.2 seconds is Luke Hilton's advantage, but Finn Leslie was looking to the inside there of Rashan Tyler Chigarimbo. Finn Leslie does not look like a driver, starting only his second lap of racing in this championship. Well, I was chatting to him and his teammates. They were getting a, a briefing from driver coach Max Coates in 2010, and uh, just went and introduced myself and said, how do you feel about the pressure? He's on the outside here. He's not under pressure at the moment. He's putting Chigarimbo under, under pressure going into Beckett's. And this is the, the first racing lap he's done around Beckett's. It's the second racing lap now that he's done around there. So he's learning the track still, as well as learning the car and everything else that goes with it. But I said, you know, what, what do you feel about the pressure of being on the front road to start? And he's, he's tiny and he just shook, shook, shook shrugged his shoulders and that was it yes you know it was <laughs> very quiet lad Hilton's away though he really is Hilton has absolutely disappeared up the road still it is Chigarimbo in second and they're starting to stack up now aren't they slightly behind yeah. him Leslie third and then side by side action for fourth place there charging around the outside that is Hodgkiss trying to relieve Marcel Lachitsky of fourth position but Marcel I think will just about hang on no Hodgkiss coming back at him there that wide line through Luffield gave him better traction off the corner and the Mark 7 car I think is going to breeze past as they head out of Woodcote. There is absolutely no performance advantage for the new Mark 7 cars. Um, so in theory, down the straights, should be pretty much neck and neck, and that certainly seems to be the case. It is one of the older shaped cars that leads the way, though. Now by 2.1 seconds, another challenge may be coming here from Chigarimbo, uh, from, uh, from Leslie towards Chigarimbo uh, for second place. Now, is he going to be able to outbreak him? It looks yeah. like he will. The Mark 7 into second place, and Finn Leslie continues to impress. Yeah, he does. Cartmasters champion bringing all that expertise with him if you're watching for the first time as we said when we were talking about Ted Bradbury earlier in the year in the it, he was racing in the senior formula the, 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 of course the difference make a note of the name remember it and see how far he goes up the ladder Got uh, a, a, yeah aerodynamic yes. aid at the back there or, or not aid yes we don't need DRS normally to liven up the racing in Fiesta Juniors but someone has deployed it there in the middle of the pack I'm not entirely sure who that is but uh, can't be helping matters oh no we've got a spin down at Brooklands and there is a collision George Foxlow is involved couldn't quite see which of the Mark 7s that was that got turned in the first place number 19 is involved number 85 pointing the wrong way too flame that is was, Jensen Mason Flame was involved as well uh, wasn't she? Highest, highest qualifying for Flame and Jasmine Shaw this weekend we had an all-female row together which was which was great and Flame Auricula um, is I think going to have to pit Yes, I think, I think she'll be the only one. There's going to be a few, I think, walking wounded. Oh, yeah, look at this. So that's George Foxlow going slowly to the left. To Alfie the right. Garford in 88. It is Alfie Garford, you're right. Thankfully, he's limped himself behind the barriers. There's a bonnet open now, one of the Pro Alloys cars. Uh, so <laughs> it's all starting to kick off now after a relatively calm oh. start. Oh, and more drama now. Cars spinning everywhere through Cops Corner. And someone has exited stage left. The number 37 is one of them. Uh, and that will be, uh, I fear, now a safety car more than likely. Hadley Simpson's 37. Three one five is Blockley. He's got into the back of the 37 car at some point and well it was all going so well Richard. The first thing we saw I think was uh, Ronnie Smith not saying he was involved in anybody else or caused anybody else but that was the first one we saw of that group of incidents very sadly but yeah at the least a safety car possibly a red because that's a very badly damaged car. It is isn't it that's uh, Howarth <laughs> now number 42 limping back he's up at Beckett's right now no sign yet of yellow flag or of safety cars anyway no there will be yellow flags out at multiple parts of the circuit but no safety car yet uh, being scrambled and they're heading down towards Cops Corner now there were yellows through Luffield as the walking wounded pick themselves out of trouble uh, but uh, so far we stay under green flag racing conditions with Luke Hilton the leader now we go safety car and that uh, had a sense of inevitability inevitability about it really yeah. uh, so Luke Hilton's four second lead will evaporate Luke getting the fastest lap, breaking the 112 barrier. I think that means he's got another fastest lap and lap record. Ah, right. Yes, it probably will be a lap record, actually. That is a good point. And he's been uh, notching up these fastest laps through the season. He's three times a winner so far, is Luke Hilton. But that disqualification last time at Knock Hill, a big, big dent in his championship hopes. You can't count a DQ as a dropped score. And that's why he arrives here at Silverstone some way back in the points, but on course, perhaps, to get some of those points back. So we're under safety car here at Silverstone. 
Bridgestone, nine and a quarter minutes to go. And Luke Hilton leads the way. Finn Leslie second. Rashan Chigarimbo is third, ahead uh, of in fourth position. The number 94 of Jacob Hodgkiss, who started eighth on the grid. Good progress made by him. Marcel Lachitsky then is fifth. Sixth place, Ben Doughty. Seventh for Jasmine Shaw. And eighth position now for Sam Nessa. So Sam Nessa started 15th and has picked his way through the drama into eighth position right now. Uh, Ryan Mikulev, even more impressive, 19th to ninth. Ten places gained since the start of the race for him. And then Jensen Bell completes the top 10. Our championship leader, meanwhile, Ben Ball Ryan, 14th right now, having started 23rd. So those top two in the championship, Richard, have at least managed to escape the drama. Yeah, that, that could have gone pear-shaped for them, couldn't yeah. it, really, to be absolutely fair. Um, and uh, I think they will work on the, on the basis that pick as many places as you can away safely. Mm. And uh, if it has to be a drop score, it's a drop score. But equally, if you can get up the field and get some decent points in, how do they stand, actually, in terms of... Well, Mulryan has a non-start. He non-started the second race at Silverstone, and his first race at Silverstone was, I think that's about a seventh place finish, isn't it, that he's dropping from that one. So uh, he is not in the best of shape as far as drop scores. Sam Nessa had a bad weekend at Croc, where he non-finished race one and finished deep in the field in race two. So they're both sort of in a position where they certainly don't want another non-finish because their drop scores are not looking all that... Um, handy right now. Luke Hilton has that disqualification. Like I said, can't count that as a drop. He had a non-start in that second race at Croft uh, and a disappointing second race at Snetterton. So all of the top three really have had at least one non uh, zero point score and then another low point score. So uh, at this stage of the season, Richard, you don't really want to be in that situation. You cannot really afford another bad race. Certainly not another bad weekend. No, absolutely right. And going back to disqualification and driving standards and everything else, like any championship, you talk to the drivers and you get the inevitable, oh, it's inconsistent. It is inconsistent in every championship and in every sport, to be perfectly honest. Yes. I your match of the day last night, and <laughs> it was some pretty dodgy decisions on there. And the officials work to the best of their ability to deliver the, the, the best, safest option, particularly for the young people that are out here, aren't you? We're going red. Um, and so BRSCC take it really, really seriously. You know, we had, you mentioned uh, Luke having that, that disqualification. So that is, you know, um, I think drivers get penalty points it is taken seriously the safety of the youngsters is, is the key concern absolutely yes and that has been a topic of conversation throughout the season really in fiesta junior racing and you know the drivers understand it but uh, sometimes you've got that many cars all of them so equal on performance sharing the uh, the racetrack and uh, a bunch of drivers who perhaps haven't yet developed uh, any fear or sense of self-preservation and uh, that does sometimes lead to some pretty lively moments uh, so the red flag has flown the checkered flag is showing on the timing screen that doesn't necessarily mean that the race is over uh, we weren't halfway yet so I would like to think that we should get a restart at some point we do have time built into the timetable uh, to allow for one or two delays and we were running a little bit ahead of time anyway so they'll grid the cars up hopefully uh, on the start finish line and we will then await a restart. It gives those who are in the pit lane uh, with damage to be repaired a bit more time maybe to work on their cars. Wesley Swain was one of those uh, who I saw had made it back to the pits. In fact, he's the only one uh, to have made it back to the pits. We lost then in all of that. Henry Howarth, uh, we also lost number 37, Hadley Simpson, number 315, Billy Blockley, 144, George Foxlow, and number 88, Eight, which was Alfie Garford. So five cars definitely not going to take the restart. One in Wesley Swain may or may not be able to restart, possibly from the pit lane. Uh, but uh, the rest of them, still 19 cars running, and uh, they will, I'm sure, at some point, be uh, able to uh, to get a restart over what distance, I don't yet know. But uh, fingers crossed we get a bit more Fiesta Junior racing because uh, apart from Luke Hilton, who was stinking up the show a bit there and disappearing up the road, there was some good battling developing behind him. Yeah, there was some good, good battles going on. Were you looking forward to your lunch break, by the way? That's, that's, <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone, been doing this long <laughs> enough now to uh, never assume that you will get a lunch break. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, so it could be one of those days here today. I'm making the joke yesterday, you have to try quite hard to uh, have uh, a significant bit of contact here at Silverstone and the junior drivers uh, managing to achieve that, unfortunately. There's uh, another one of our new drivers, Tommy Harfield, uh, who will be taking the restart of the race. He's uh, stood, or sat on the grid waiting for the um, new grid to be 
issued because we'd done five laps of the race at the time of the red flag. So we won't go back to original grid positions. There'll be an updated grid based upon the running order at the time of the red flag. And in the meantime, our marshals and recovery crews uh, have their first opportunity to show us exactly what they do and how well they do it. They've got lots of cars to recover, lots of gravel to be uh, swept back up. Uh, there's quite a lot of gravel right in the middle of the road behind, uh, is that Benmore Ryan? car I think it, it is. is yeah it is Andy yeah, yeah so I think Ben's been through the gravel at some point uh, so yes lots of work for the marshals to do but uh, they do it very well don't they they're absolutely superb I was just having a look at Sam Nessa is he seventh there oh, interesting fact for me about Sam Nessa his car is visible from aircraft <laughs> one of his friends was was flying over Donington uh -huh. and uh, in a Boeing as you do um, and they said, were you testing today at Donington Park? This was a few weeks ago. And he said, yeah, how did you know? He said, I could see a pink fiesta uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a distinctive livery, particularly from above. The pink yeah, roof, yeah. I suppose, that does stand out. There's another distinctive livery, a car that's not looking quite as pretty as it was earlier on today. But Flame Auricula's number 51 car uh, still running, at least. The side skirt hanging loose. The rear light's been smashed. The bumper's a little bit askew. But uh, hopefully she'll be able to uh, take, again, the restart of the race as and when it comes. But... Uh, as good as our British marshals are, I do think this will take them a little bit of time to uh, get everything cleared up. We've got, by my reckoning, five cars, plus a lot of gravel and maybe a couple of barriers that need some attention. So we may be under red flag conditions for a little while. And of course, for the teams, Richard, now attention turning already towards race two. Those who have damaged cars to be fixed don't have a huge amount of time, really, to get them sorted for the um, second race a little bit later on. It is due to start at 20 past three. So they've got, what, about four hours or so. Sounds like a long time, doesn't it, until you see uh, the amount of work that may or may not be uh, needed to be done. Yeah, and the hourly rate that goes with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was just saying, um, the uh, Hadley Simpsons car, Intercleanse, isn't it? Which is a name we see on the on the minis with uh, Nathan Edwards. Oh, it is, yeah. race with them as well. Nice, they're yeah. good backers, so very good for them. Um, and of course, the drivers that have gone out, they don't have the worry in other championships where if you DNF, you don't start off the yeah. back. So it is two fastest two qualifying laps, which I think is sensible in, in junior racing for sure. Um, although having said that, then you get if you get an issue in qualifying, yes. you've got the whole day, whole weekend potentially written off and you have to do a Sam Nessa or a Ben Mulryan and, and come through the grid. Yes, exactly, because Nessa will be 15th for race two, Mulryan 21st. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't really help them. Uh, but they've done it once, I suppose. Well, they've, uh, certainly Sam Nessa's made good progress. Mulryan looks as though he's had a couple of moments in the early stages, but he had made some good uh, progress as well. Uh, right, the timing screen now starting to refresh with a race restart. At the moment, it says over 15 minutes. I don't think that's going to be the case. Cars being gridded up then now into the, um, presumably just the order that they were sat in uh, behind the safety car. It'll be five, won't it? I would have thought so. Five. I would have thought so. Yeah. Uh, can't see it being much more than that. Uh, although, like I said, we were running about 10 minutes ahead of time, so they could possibly give them a 10-minute race if they wanted to. There has to be another green flag lap, though, of course. That takes a couple of minutes and uh, all adds up, doesn't it? We don't want to be delayed as we move into some of the other racing still to come today because don't forget that, uh, as was the case at Knock Hill for our last TCR UK event, uh, you can watch all of the racing today live in one place on the TCR UK YouTube page. Uh, so that is all TCR racing, all Fiesta Junior racing, the Fiesta ST240 Championship are here this weekend as well. Uh, and we're also joined today by three other series. We've got the Super Classic Pre-99 Formula 4 Championship, uh, the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship guesting with us this weekend, and also the uh, SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy. They will have a 45-minute pit stop race at the end of the day. So uh, all of that racing in one place, and of course it also includes uh, the next two rounds of the TCR UK Championship, which featured a very close qualifying session yesterday. And uh, I'm sure they're going to produce two spectacular races a little bit later in the, on in the afternoon. The first TCR action, uh, we will have build up from around about quarter past one uh, for our first race with the grid walk here at Silverstone. So we're getting somewhere now, I think, Richard. Cars lined up on the grid. Luke Hilton part very aggressively <laughs> on uh, the pole position. But, yeah, it's uh, not really a lot of point because they've got to do another no. green flag lap, haven't they? Exciting yeah. lap, so... 
Um, but he's maybe just practicing for, <laughs> for for later on. I don't think he needs to be quite that feisty, really, does he? Though he's clearly got the pace to run away at the front of the field. It's, it must be a lovely feeling, that as a driver, you arrive under yeah. the track and it just all clicks for you. To be honest, I'm guessing Luke's position there is part of the driver's prep. You, you go through your routine and, and whenever you're doing it, that's definitely out of position. If it was uh, yes, a, <laughs> if it was a, but it's not the start, is it? So yeah, he'll, he'll be ready to, and he'll, he'll probably want to sp sprint away from. Finn, the uh, youngster, comes from Wakefield, so um, top Carter, and great to see these youngsters coming through now into yeah. into junior racing, and and you know how good is that putting it on the double front row? Yes, I think one one of the second ones with with penalties applied elsewhere, but nonetheless, just to be in the top half of the grid, you think would would be good? Yeah, uh, and he's done. Uh, he's only done, I think, two days in the car. Wow, bit of uh, I think around the Genetics Junior Blyton as well. He was saying, um, but apart from that. Uh, obviously, Max Coates is a, a great coach for him. Yes. Um, and lots of... Uh, Will Orton, of course, is here. Everywhere I go, Will <laughs> Orton is here. And <laughs> I kind of look around for him now because, you know, even when I go to Sainsbury's in the week, you know, where's Will? Yeah, He's <laughs> like um, But, yeah, some really great coaches, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Absolutely. So... Uh, be an interesting restart this i think keep an eye on uh, jacob hodgkiss as well starting fourth yeah. now he was eighth yeah. on the initial grid has made some good progress and uh, might be able to do more of the same from the second row this time so we're going to have hilton the, the pole sitter then from the outside pole position on the outside because that's the racing line the grippier side of the road it also gives you a bit more of a sweeping open line into cops corner you can carry a bit more momentum through the first turn uh, from the outside so that's why pole is on our right as we look at it uh, head on uh, so the white and yellow car luke hilton the red car in Leslie, uh, then we'll have Rashan Tyler trigger Rimbo, the black, white, and green starting third, the blue and white with the fluorescent yellow highlights. That is Jacob Hodgkiss coming from fourth on the grid. So, green flag waves, green flag lap begins. It's an eight minute restart, the timing screen now telling us, uh, and excellent work by the marshals. I have to say, I was anticipating a much longer delay than that. Yeah, super work. Big thanks to all the marshals and medics and rescue crews and officials for doing a, a super job and it's going to get hot you can see the heat haze on the camera so it is already hot out there we're going to go into a bit of a hot spell so different to yesterday um, and you think that might just affect things as well because temperatures were down weren't they yesterday in qualifying and they were actually yes uh, in the morning when the juniors qualified wasn't as warm as it is today today was always supposed to be the hotter of the days uh, this was the original grid uh, oh no we do believe this is the restart grid although uh, we can't bring it to you at the moment we'll try and uh, show you that in a moment or two but uh, we believe luke hilton versus finn leslie will once again be the story from the front row of the grid there is uh, lucas hayden number 46 in the race car consultants car race car consultants one of the big teams of fiesta racing so on jam sport of course jamie goings team who uh, up until last year, were racing uh, cars in TCR UK as well, but uh, very much focusing on their Fiesta efforts again this season. Flame Maricola, keep an eye on her car as well, coming from midfield. She qualified well yesterday, but got beaten up a little bit uh, in the early stages of this one. Uh, as long as her car's handling OK after that knock, she should be able to make some more progress. And don't forget about Sam Nessa and Ben Ryan. Crucial that they try to... Uh, gain a bit more ground there is more Ryan coming towards us weaving quite aggressively in the uh, number 11 car trying to generate some uh, heat in the tyres it's worked out well hasn't it really for Nessa and Mel Ryan because they get that second go at everybody being closed up so almost like a safety car but, yes. but not quite but it, it means they might be able to get a few more points out of it may still be a drop score but even so the more you, you bank then the the less worry you have at the end of the season. Yeah, well, Nessa's going to be inside the top 10 for the restart. Well, Ryan's going to be about, I think it was 15th or so, wasn't it? So um, there's a good chance that they should both score some reasonable points as long as uh, they stay out of trouble. You notice there, Richard, I think that Luke Hilton has Indeed. gone for that aggressive grid positioning again, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Uh, so it was all part of the, the preparation uh, for him as he came onto the, onto the grid. And um, he'll be looking to try and get that run down into Cops Corner. Get another good start. Uh, he won't thank the guys for go going off, will he, for sure? Uh, no, definitely not. So uh, Luke Hilton then making his intentions known. He is going to be sweeping across to the inside to try and de defend from Finn Leslie, uh, who he clearly feels is a threat uh, off the line. And I wouldn't uh, disagree with him, actually. Finn made a decent start the first time round, and now he gets a second crack at it from the front row once again. Green flag then waved at the back of the grid. Eight minutes now on the clock for this restarted BRSCC Fiesta Junior race. And when those red lights go out, we'll be away and back in 
in action. Off they go. Luke Hilton away well. So too is Chikarimbo once more from the second row. Uh, so Finn Leslie's going to be no better than second. Here comes Hodgkiss trying to find a gap at the middle as well, where there isn't really one. So he sensibly backs out of it. Hilton leads them through cops then with uh, second place still held by Leslie. But look at Hodgkiss. He's got a good exit from the corner. He's trying to find a gap to the inside. And Richard, I think he's found one. Yeah, he's looking up the inside run. There are three wide as they go through. Maggots up towards Beckett's and Finn Leslie dropping back in red. Rimbo's going to be passed on the inside. And Hodgkitt, who's on a little bit of a, I don't like to use the word roll, but has momentum, we should say, um, coming from coming from the Knock Hill round. Uh, absolutely. And carrying momentum from that first start of the race as well, where he gained four spots. He's gained another two now, uh, just in the opening half a lap. Down the Wellington straight they go. Then Hilton already starting to make a break. Uh, the battle once more is the one for second place. Hodgkiss leaving the the door open invitingly there for Chigarimbo, but he outbreaks uh, Rashan and hangs on to that second place. Chigarimbo third, Leslie fourth, and then a bit of a debate over who is fifth place. They settle that out as they turn their way through Lafield Corner and make their way around towards the completion of the opening lap. On the inside there, the uh, 71 car involved in the first sort of side by side battle. That's Ryan Mikolev. He started 19th. He's running quite a bit better than that now, and so too look Memo Ryan, who sweeps around the outside of the pair of them. Well, Ryan must be almost in the top. 10 now. He's going to be enjoying this. He won't enjoy starting off the back, but one thing you do get a buzz from, if you're on the back foot, he's making that program, they're making that progress through the field. The Chitsky is in fifth on at the moment too early to say, potentially for best result of the year. Yes, good point actually. Inside the top five then for the first time. Side by side action again here uh, with Leslie and Chigarimbo and that's Finn moving back into the podium places now, back into third position. Drifts wide over the curb, exiting Beckett, carries the good speed down the Wellington Strait and looks now to try and chase after Jacob Hodgkiss out in front. Luke Hilton, well he's taking it easy this time. He's only 1.1 seconds clear at the end of one lap. <laughs> it was 1.2 seconds last time around, uh, but still quite clearly the Class of the field, Chigarimbo there just trying to sneak up the inside of Finn Leslie, but that door was not being left open even a crack. No, I mean, he, Finn's clearly not got the experience of racing around here, but has obviously been very well coached indeed. Knows the lines, knows what to do. I mean, the, the youngsters now do, do the sim racing and, and they'll be watching a whole bunch of videos. So to some extent that sort of negates a lot of the, the rookie status that we get. That's a shame. Michael That's, Wheeler. Uh, Michael Wheeler, yeah. Yeah, and now that looks almost more like a mechanical than a... He had that um, in poly yesterday, didn't he, as well? He did, you're right. He did stop uh, out at the side of the tracks. That's just on the inside of Luffield. He's got the car going again now, the brisky racing uh, car. And, well, maybe it was just a spin because he's going to take the agricultural route back onto the track, but did seem to be picking up speed. So that is a good sign. No yellow flags required at Luffield anymore as the rest of the pack barrels down towards Beckett's. There's a bit of uh, repair work been done to the front of Sam Ness's car. That's interesting. I don't think that was there at the initial start of the race. So he has uh, had a few stories to tell from the opening laps. Uh, but he's made good progress. He is in sixth position. Ben Will Ryan is inside the top ten now in tenth place. And that is Ben, the lone ranger on the outside line. <laughs> Everyone else hugging the white line on the left, uh, and he's the one trying to go around the outside. Finn Leslie was going to have a little look there. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with Finn Leslie putting Hodgkiss under yes. massive pressure here. He's just settled into this, hasn't he? Yeah, it's like he's been here all season. Absolutely Massively right. impressive. Massively impressive. So, out of Luffield they go. Is he going to have a go for second place? Hilton's gone, but second place on his debut would be a fantastic result for Finn. There is Ben Will Ryan, meanwhile. That's another place gained, I think. Yeah, Ben Doughty now slips down into 10th position, so the championship leader into 9th. And all of a sudden, this could be a pretty decent day. They've obviously sorted the issues. I think it was a misfire that he was suffering yesterday. And uh, if he could finish, I don't know, 6th, 7th, 8th or something in this race, there's a very good chance of a win or a podium, at least, in race 2. Yeah, absolutely right. That'll negate a DNF later on in the year, wouldn't it, as well, points-wise. Yeah. As uh, Hilton again sets that fastest lap, new lap record. Not sure how that compares with the, the first one. I missed that. I should have jotted it down, yes. but I didn't. I also and Mel Ryan now is just coming under a bit of pressure. He is. Well, actually, he's trying to go around the outside of Jensen Bell. So uh, I don't know if that's going to work. Yes, yeah, it did work. Him. Yeah, nicely done. So uh, Ben Mel Ryan eight now. And they're side by side in front of him, Mikalef and Sam Nessa. So he's almost with Nessa now. He's almost with his nearest championship. In fact, he's ahead of him. Nessa very slow down the back straight. And Mel Ryan simply driven past him. So Ben Mel Ryan is making this look very, very easy. Meanwhile, here is the challenge for second place. A mistake for Jacob Hodges. And it's Nessa. Nessa. Sam Nessa off down at Brooklands. The man second in the championship might now be facing another non-finish. Could well be. It was uh, Jensen Bell was looking down the inside, not saying J Jensen caused anything, but they were certainly dicing um, with uh, Ben Mulryan had gone past. And Sam didn't look particularly happy, I've got to say. 
uh, at that stage. Luke Hilton does look extremely happy, goes across the line. 3.193 seconds clear. Finn Leslie still there in second position. I think that was Alfie Garford looking over the barrier at um, Sam's car. I think it was. That's big news, though, for Sam Nessup. Sam already had one non-finish. This is now his second. That's his drop score quota used up. Can't afford another one. Uh, there is Ben Mulryan. Then up alongside Rashan Tyler Chigarimbo. This has been one of the drives of the season for Mulryan. And uh, he is now genuinely on course, I think, for podium finish. These yeah. two almost need to work together, don't they? Two and a half minutes to go. If they save their battling until the last lap of the race, they might just be able to keep uh, Ben Mulryan at bay. Look at Hodgkiss, oh. real de <laughs> defending. Mul Ryan taking to the grass to try and go through <laughs> um, and pass Chigarimbo. He's got the job done, hasn't he? He goes into the left-hander. Oh, and that's uh, Mikolev on the outside as well, trying to join in the fun. So, uh, as usual in Fiesta Junior Racing, you don't know where to look. The battle for second's pretty close, but look at that. Mul Ryan into fourth, Mikolev into fifth. Uh, let's not forget about Ryan Mikolev because he only started a couple of positions ahead of uh, Mul Ryan on the grid, and they both carved their way through the field almost in tandem. Yeah, a lot of the people in the paddock were saying it's like reverse grid racing this weekend. Yes. I mean, not taking anything away from Luke Hilton. Expect to see him up and up over the front. He's had all the odd rounds, isn't he, in terms of poles. That was uh, Jensen Bell dropping back. Yeah, slowed. I don't know whether he missed a gear or whether that's the beginnings of a mechanical problem, but uh, almost got rear-ended by someone as he slowed dramatically down the pit straight. Ben Moran fastest lap. Uh, yes, not that much of a surprise, actually, the rate at which he's going, but interesting that he's going quicker than uh, Luke Hilton. Only by a tenth, in fairness, quicker than Luke Hilton that time around. Right then, side by side for second place. We've got a lap and a half to go, and Finn Leslie reckons that now is his opportunity to try and move into P2. He's had a better run out of Beckett, but Richard, that's the outside line for Brooklands. Yeah, is this going to be a learning opportunity for young Finn here on the outside, or is he going to... No, he realises that. He's watched enough racing here, not just in juniors, probably seniors, probably a bit of touring car racing as well, to see what is and what isn't possible as you go into Brooklands. Raises the wheel, tries to get the momentum here. This is all about a shout down the straight, maybe into Cops. Hodgkiss, of course, the fact that he's defending is uh, maybe slowing him up just a little bit, dropping away from Luke Hilton. Well, Ryan, super, and Ryan Mikolev, as you said, absolutely brilliant stuff from the back. Let's compare the lap times, though. Is more Ryan going to get there? Certainly now, as Hodgkiss goes defensive into Cops' corner, this will slow them down. So it was a 112.7 and a 112.8 for these two. It was a 112.0 for more Ryan. He was eight tenths quicker, but he's 1.8 seconds behind than he really needs them to battle, which they are. They're side by side again out of Cops' corner, down towards Beckett's for the final time. And this time, Leslie might have unlocked the door. He's got the inside line. Hodgkiss later on the brakes, but that's not the fastest way through the corner. And Leslie's going to show him the edge of the road on the exit of Beckett, and he's into second place. Great move, him. Finn Leslie certainly taking no prisoners as he goes up ahead of Hodgkiss. Let's see whether Jacob can get back at him now. This is the run down in towards Beckett's. The clock has ticked down. He's going to have a look. Well, Hodgkiss is being made to go the hard way. Oh, there's a bit of squeezing going on, but Leslie stands his ground. He's late on the brakes, gets to the apex first at Brooklands. Does he run wide? No. Perfect positioning of the car, and that might now do it. As long as he doesn't make a big mistake out of Luffield Corner, I'm not sure that Jacob Hodgkiss will be able to get through. It is going to be for Luke Hilton, though. Another race victory. That is his third of the season, bouncing back beautifully from the disappointment at Knock Hill, and a really important win for his championship hopes as well. Victory then to Hilton and second will go to Finn Leslie. Just about manages to hang on there after a beautiful drive that was from Finn. Did not put a foot wrong all race. That was a measured drive. He waited for his opportunity, and when he decided he was going to take it, that was it. There was nothing that Hodgkiss could do to keep him back. Jacob still ends up on the podium, though. Well, Ryan in fourth, Ryan Mikolev fifth, ahead of Marcel Lechitsky. Uh, Rashan Chigarimbo down to seventh by the flag. Uh, eighth, Daniel Lewis. Ninth, Ben Doherty. And Lucas Hayden completes the top ten after what was a bruising at times, <laughs> but definitely entertaining race. Yeah, it was a good race. New star on the horizon in, yeah. in Finland. Now, is he guest? Does he get championship points? Does he take points out of other drivers he is a he's guest. got a little g so no points yeah, so I think and that's you're right. good news for ben Mulryan, isn't it that's a yes podium points for him very good point actually yeah that means that Mulryan will you're right score the third place point which i think is 42 championship points uh, but finn leslie still gets on the podium and that's all that matters really so win though for luke hilton his fourth of the year with finn leslie second on his debut what a result that is jacob hodgkiss third ahead of ben Mulryan in fourth ryan mickle fifth marcel Lechitsky in sixth ahead of rashan chigarimbo Dan Lewis, Ben Doherty, and Lucas Hayden to complete the top 10. Jensen Mason was 11th ahead of Ronnie Smith. Then it was Tommy Harfield. And Jasmine Shaw, I think she'll be a bit disappointed with 14th, uh, having started fifth on the grid. Likewise, Flavor Rickler, who shared that third row, she's 15th at the end. 
Open with James Pope, 16th, 17th, Jane Jensen Bell and Michael Wheeler are lapped down after his dramas at Luffield and Sam Nessa, second in the championship, uh, but another non-score, his second non-score of the season, and that tightens things up even further now at the top of the championship table. So, excitement aplenty, as you'd expect, from Fiesta Junior Racing. I think the clerk of the course might be having a chat with a couple of them before race two, uh, but hopefully they'll be back on top form again at around about 20 past three when their second race uh, of the event will take place. Our next racing action uh, is more Fiesta Racing. It's the Fiesta ST240 Championship. They'll be heading out uh, onto the circuit next, followed by our first Formula Ford action, and then the first of two races for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. That's your morning's racing timetable, uh, but there are the scenes down in the podium area and Luke Hilton hasn't even got his helmet off yet and uh, Charlotte from the BRSCC is handing him his winner's trophy and he walks over to give Jacob Hodgkiss his congratulations. Jacob looks thoroughly worn out after that battle that he had with Finn Leslie and uh, Finn mightily mightily impressive in that race. Finn now gets his helmet off and uh, I'm sure we'll go and have a chat with uh, Luke as well now. Luke couldn't be caught in that race, but there was some hope for race two. Other drivers were going quicker than him at some point. Of course, Benwell Ryan, though, as quickly as he was going and as good as that charge through the order was, he will have to do it from 23rd on the grid, 21st on the grid it will be, uh, for race number two later on. So uh, anyway, uh, here we have our top three finishers and down amongst them for the first time today, we can hear from Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much. Yes, indeed. Yeah, down here in uh, Park Ferme, uh, Luke Hill. Well, mate, what a race that was. We didn't get to see much out on track, unfortunately, because <laughs> you kind of drove off from the rest of the field. But uh, certainly a fantastic drive for you. Yeah, it felt the car felt really good. My team set up the way I wanted it to. Um, and it lasted the duration of the race, even though the fronts went off and I had to kind of manage that. Um, other than that, I felt pretty good in the car, to be fair. Yeah, uh, that's your third race win of the season, I believe that is. And uh, certainly you seem to be stacking them up now. Yeah, I mean, um, we've worked so hard to be where we're at. Um, and uh, I couldn't do it without them, to be fair. Yeah. Talk us about that aggressive stance you had on the uh, the start finish line, on the restart. You were pointing the car to the inside line quite aggressively. It seemed to work out for you on the start. Yeah, I mean, I saw um, Rashan Shigurumbo, um get a massive, great, massively great start in the first race. So I thought I can't let him go through the middle again. So I applied my car at an angle, tried to get the best start I can, and uh, cut off the rest of them. And yeah. Just go away. Yeah. Hey, mega start, solid drive. You can uh, be delighted with that one, and I'll let you enjoy the celebrations. Thank you very much. Excellent. We'll see him out later on today. Let's chat to a man who finished in uh, second place, Finn Leslie, who's currently just being spoken to at the moment. So let's see if we can chat to Mr. Hodgkiss, who is right here. Uh, mate, honestly, well, that was uh, certainly a nice drive that you had, uh, scything your way through the field as we get attacked by a wasp. Um, mate, yeah, what can you tell us on that race? Well, it was a really good start. I mean, I got to the front of the pack behind Luke, who was obviously cleared off by that point. But the annoying thing was, I'm sat there for 10, 12 laps, just punching a hole for everybody. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm just the... I'm just in front of everybody, giving everybody a tow. So, you know, when my tyres went off and Finn's behind me, it was it was a great move by Finn. It was a great battle, but it was just annoying my position. Yeah, I can imagine so. But, uh, you know, the racing here, always in juniors, is a very, very exciting. Race two coming up later on today. Are you looking forward to it? Of course, starting further up the grid for that fifth. So, should be able to get to the front. Yeah, excellent, mate. Cheers. Thank you very much. Let's chat to the man who finished in second place in this one, Finn Leslie. Finn, all right, lad, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, not too bad, mate. This is your first appearance in Fiesta Juniors, and you put it P2 in the first race, so uh, that's not bad going, is it? Yeah, I mean, P2, uh, P1 in class, which is really good. Uh, I've only done two days in the car prior to the weekend, so, so I mean, come away with this is a big result for us. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, while watching that race, I could see so many racing lines that you were taking through some of the corners, even some karting lines that I think that you've got to try and break away from here in car racing. But certainly uh, a great uh, display of control and uh, aggression out on track, a nice balance between the two of them. Certainly uh, placing your feet very firmly on the grid here. Yeah, I mean, from a, I've done a lot of experience in karting, which I know quite a few people on the grid haven't, which I think brings the sort of the racing aspect, the way I can battle sort of helps me out quite a lot because karting's a constant worrying about everything as you're coming around, whereas you can sort of relax in the middle of the race a bit more. Yeah. Well, congratulations. P2 on track overall, P1 in class. Well done, Finn. Leslie, next cars are on the track. Stay with us. Plenty more action coming up here at Silverstone. 
Yep, thank you, Anthony. And uh, there's more Fiesta action now. As I said, it is the uh, Fiesta ST240 Championship, the seniors, if you like, as they are lovingly dubbed within the paddock. And uh, these 240 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, slick shod, turbocharged cars are the next step up the tin top racing ladder, if you like, uh, from the juniors that we just saw in action. And uh, a brilliant breeding ground, this, I think, for touring car stars of the future. They had a fantastic race yesterday, a race that was wooden by Alistair Kellett, but only after race-long pressure from Albert Webster, who tried pretty much everything but driving over the top of uh, Alistair Kellett's car to try and get the race win. Um, he did try and drive through him at one point, not intentionally, but there was a little bit of contact down at Brooklyn, and Albert Webster, with a really classy bit of racecraft and, and gentlemanly driving, uh, pulled over, let Kellett back through, and Alistair claimed the victory. And to my knowledge, there was no penalty that came out of that, which was absolutely the right decision. No harm, no foul. Kellett able to hang on to the victory. Webster was second, and Matt Look. Uh, managed to get back on the podium again, fresh off his first victory in the championship last time at Knock Hill. The reigning Civic Cup champion finished in third position. So uh, that was how they finished yesterday, and that gives us the grid for race number two as well. So it's Alistair Kellett on pole with Albert Webster alongside. Matt Luff and John yeah, Cooper to together on row number uh, two. Now it's worth pointing out Cooper was third on the road in that first race yesterday, uh, but picked up a five second track limits penalty, which is what dropped him down to fourth. Joseph Knight and Archie Johnson then share the third row ahead of St. Lucas and Adam Clark uh, with Morgan Kidd and Gary Miller completing the top ten. Day and Marco Ricci row six, row seven, Chris Blackburn and Sean Reynolds row eight, Simon Horriman and Matt Chambers and Connor Blackburn, the only retirement from yesterday's race starting at the back of the grid. Well, uh, Richard, yesterday's race, very entertaining, and I see no reason why we won't have a repeat of that battle, really, from yesterday, because Alistair Kellett and Albert Webster were very evenly matched in qualifying. They were inseparable throughout 20 minutes of racing. What has Webster got to do, though, to try and beat Kellett to the uh, chequered flag? Get in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, no, fair enough. Well, that's, <laughs> that's where I've been going wrong in my sim racing. You know, I, have you ever considered a, a career as a, as a driver coach? Richard? Very possibly. No. Oh, hello, we've got a staller. Oh dear. And is that Simon? Is... Oh, no, it's not Simon. No, it's the fourth. It might be Adam Clark. No, uh, Archie Johnson, perhaps number ten. Is that? We'll find out now because the car's we fired will. up. Um, sorry. Yeah. Flipping answer to your question, we'll. Yeah, he's number ten. Yeah, well spotted. Good spot. Um, he needs, he needs a good start, and he needs to apply that pressure um, a lot earlier. I think. Yes. in this run. It was race long. If you looked at the, the lap charts, then it was the same leader. From, yes. from <laughs> So you look at that, if someone's doing a report from the lap chart on TSL, they're, they're in for a bit of a shock, aren't they? Yes. Because you think, oh, that was boring. He was, he was away. But it was just cat and mouse, wasn't it? All the yeah. way. Superb race between the pair of them. And the other thing for me is that contrast that you've got between Albert Webster, the, the young gun, and then the, the slightly older, I'm sure Alistair won't mind me saying that, but the more experienced driver. And it's always good to see that kind of battling rather than just have a championship that, that is overrun with the youngsters. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, that is the battle for the championship as well this year, really. Kellett the leader and Albert Webster second in the points. They came into the weekend 31 points apart in Kellett's favour. But well, Kellett got the win yesterday and the fastest lap bonus point, And he got the bonus point for starting on pole position as well. So he outscored Webster by uh, six more points yesterday. So that gap goes up to 37 points. My maths teacher said that I uh, had no future in uh, mathematics. Uh, seven point <laughs> swing that way. <laughs> and uh, it means that Alistair Kellett and Albert Webster are now a little bit further apart in the championship standings. John Cooper third and Simon Horobin fourth. I don't think that will have changed because Simon Horobin uh, is not racing with us this weekend. So definitely he hasn't uh, outscored John Cooper. Although Matt Luff actually will Simon have Simon Horobin's there. Simon uh, Horobin's there. Yes, sorry. We didn't mention he's, him yesterday. He's further back than he should be. That's sure. absolutely right. Yeah, he's starting 15th on the grid. Uh, I didn't remember mentioning him in yesterday's race and he must have had some sort of a drama because yeah. Horbin's a, a multiple race winner. He's usually on the shopping isn't he with everyone Absolutely. else. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, expect him to move forward perhaps today. Uh, but yes, Matt Luff will have moved ahead of Simon after that result yesterday and will now be very close behind John Cooper for third place, which is not bad, really, uh, considering it's his first uh, season of racing in Fiestas. I chatted to Matt yesterday, and he said if he could finish top three in the championship at the end of the year, he'd be delighted with that. And uh, I think he's got a good chance. That's good, isn't it? Rather than trying to win and this and the other. And yeah. your reasonable expectations, first first year in it, 
is one of the things, but it's all about learning, isn't it? That's a really good mature outlook. Absolutely. This is a big, big uh, change in driving style required between this and the Honda Civic that he had success in last year, winning the championship in the single most exciting race that I've ever had the privilege of commentating on. Have you, have you seen that Civic Cup finale from uh, last year? I haven't, no. I, I've, Worth um, I'm well aware of the championship. I used to to do a few races on it a few years ago, comms wise, but uh, no, I will put that on my list. Well worth it. It's yep. uh, 15 minutes of pure drama and entertainment. It was uh, hugely exciting. And uh, well, it looks like this year's Civic Cup Championship is going to be <laughs> equally as close when we get to Brands Hatch at the end of the year. But right now, it's all about uh, Fiestas. The ST240 is lined up on the grid uh, with a gap, of course, where Archie Johnson should be because he fell to the back of the queue. He has to start from the back now uh, when the race does get underway. And that should happen in a few moments' time because we've got a green flag, we've got a five second board very shortly we'll have red lights illuminated on the starting gantry and we will have 20 minutes of airtech motorsport fiesta st240 championship racing to enjoy lights go out very even start from both front row men a good start made by uh, john cooper as well from the second row he will beat matt luff into turn one but neck and neck between the two front row starters it will be kellett who gets the advantage webster slots into second place cooper third matt luff in fourth position but under threat i think they're from uh that's zach lucas isn't it from seventh on the grid zach yeah. lucas the green machine into the top five already yeah zach lucas curiously his second fastest lap was that much quicker in comparison to the other drivers as we get a big lean on there <laughs> side by side and uh, matt luff though here comes lucas down the cool. inside a little bit of paint trading with cooper in red on the inside and he's got the best line as they head down the welly straight for the for the first time. I think the best line is anywhere away from those three right now Fair because enough. that was getting very <laughs> lively. Here comes the first challenge from Webster trying to go around the outside on cold tyres. That's supremely brave and it might just work. Albert Webster fully committed to trying to get the lead. He buys himself a ticket to the inside line at Lovefield. What spectacular racecraft and he did exactly what you said he had to do, Richard. He pounced at the first opportunity. Yeah, and you hit the, the phrase there about cold tyres. I'm not saying that Alistair's not as good but just Albert just seems to have that dialed into the cold tyres a little bit, a little bit more that was in his head, wasn't it? That game yeah, plan. Absolutely. Super move. Executed to and, perfection. And to be fair, Kellett could have fired him off there, but yeah. he didn't. He's a great, both two great pedals. Yeah, we saw that respect, didn't we, yeah, yesterday? Really? We Although did. Kellett now yeah. losing momentum. Look, and Cooper has gone past him. So has Kellett got a problem here? Could well have. He's slow. I think he's slowing. Alistair Kellett, their championship leader, in trouble. Luff's gone through Joseph Knight. Zach Lucas, he's getting swamped as they head uh, down towards Beckett's corner. Now, Zach, Alistair Kellett has already had one non-finish this season. If this is going to be another one, then again, this really puts the pressure on in the championship. He's clearly got a problem. He has. That's not what we wanted to see. We'd love to yeah. have seen him do the fight back with Albert Webster, but it's going to be John Cooper now trying to take the battle to him. But Webster's doing a Luke Hilton, isn't he? Checking out and disappearing <laughs> down the road. Gary Miller there, the red number 42, sticking his nose out of the line. It is Matt Luff who moves into third place again. Back ahead of Zach Lucas now. Joseph Knight is the yellow car in fifth. And he's got a grandstand view of those pair as they uh, dice their way through Luffield Corner. But, uh, well, I'm, I'm glad we got that move from Webster before Kellett's car started to slow down because that was a genuine overtake. I don't think the uh, problem Kellett was having played any part in that. That was just a brilliant bit of racecraft from Albert Webster. It's a shame that we won't get to see uh, that battle continue through the rest of the race as uh, Kellett bailed for the uh, pit lane. He's not made it to the pit lane yet, I don't think. No. Uh, but I reckon that's where he is destined. And he's off the back, so we've got a charge to watch, hopefully, if they can sort out whatever the problem is in race three of the weekend. Yeah. Yes, good point, good point. He'll have lots of overtaking to do. Gary Miller trying to do some overtaking now, trying to find a way past a slightly leery-looking Joseph Knight. Such a difficult approach to Beckett's, isn't it? That camera angle doesn't necessarily show, but that left-hand kink at Maggots, you're breaking all the weights on the nose of the car, the back starts skipping around, and then you've got to change direction into the right-hander at Beckett's. It's a very, very difficult corner. It is. Joseph Knight really showing us how to... Uh, get involved with Gary Miller, who moves up into sixth place. Caitlin Mays up into seventh, Morgan Kidd in eighth. Don't forget, we've got the club class as well in the uh, championship. We need to keep an eye on who's leading that at the moment. And it's, uh, it's Caitlin. Caitlin May, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, ahead of Morgan. Caitlin, has she had a club class win? No, she hasn't yet. So no. we had a, a maiden winner yesterday. Johnson took the win yesterday. And uh, we, we could see, potentially, another first class win. Albert Webster, unsurprisingly, fastest lap. And 2.482 seconds clear of John Cooper with Matt Love, Matt Love next up from Zach Lucas, Gary Miller, Joseph Knight. Then the uh, it's the yellow codes, isn't it, on the timing tower yeah. that are the, the club racers, the less slightly less experienced racers coming in. Again, a good initiative gives the newbies perhaps a chance to fight for a bit of silver of their own. 
Uh, yes, and then the sort of pinky, peachy coloured numbers towards the bottom. That's the Masters category within the club class for drivers over the age of 45. Sean Reynolds leading that category. And with Alistair Kellett's demise, it means John Cooper now leads the uh, Pro Masters class uh, at the very front of the field. And he's actually starting now, he and Matt Luff maybe, to break away from this battle for fourth between Zach Lucas and Gary Miller. Uh, that makes its way down through Brooklyn's corner in front of the BRDC grandstand, which is always a popular vantage point for spectators, team members, family members. Uh, it gives a great view of one of the real action hotspots here uh, on the Silverstone National layout. Has Miller got the overlap on the exit? No, not quite. Zach Lucas, brave that, wasn't it, to shut the door going into it Woodco? Was. Yeah, it looks like Miller's got that little bit of extra speed. Albert Webster, fastest lap again. Miller on the outside run now. Let's see what he can do as he goes into Turn 1. This is where... You get, I think, the, the most of the track limits. But I've got to say, they've all been really, really good on track limits. You get all the whinging, but ultimately, once the whinging's done, everybody says, OK, we'll do it. Uh, yeah, we'll stick I suppose, with it, we'll uh, behave. Yeah, not much choice, really, have they? Gary, uh, uh, John Cooper was... Uh, He's got him now. ...fell foul of it yesterday. Gary Miller gets up the inside of Alistair Kellett. Miller drifts a bit wide, though, on the apex, so... And, uh, Zach Lucas, I was doing that so, yesterday. <laughs> Zach Lucas in the triple one car, uh, who gets the switch back and uh, gets back alongside him as they head down towards Brooklands. Yeah, a nice little race between those two. Let's see whether he can check out, maybe try and close it. He's not going to at the moment, is he? Because the, the battle is still on. Lucas to the outside. He's going to try and do an Albert Webster. Can't quite do it. Hasn't Ooh. got that extra run. And Gary Miller hangs on to it, nips across, grabs the inside run. Coming through Luffield, then into Woodcut, tick off another lap. Webster three seconds clear at the moment. We'll see how much that extends to him, whether he improves on the fastest lap as well. Wait for the gap for John Cooper in second position. 3.3, another three tenths. And we've had a lead change in the club class as well because Good that spot. is Morgan Kidd ahead of Caitlin May now. So Morgan Kidd can't really miss Morgan, can you? The bright pink number 53 car uh, getting ahead of uh, Caitlin May as they uh, rounded the final couple of corners that time around. So there goes John Cooper. I noticed he's already being warned about track limits. And remember, he picked up that five-second penalty yesterday. So uh, not learning his lessons, really, from the first race, which uh, that penalty cost him a podium finish. Well, right now he's running in second place, one place better than he was on the road yesterday. But again, he's got Matt Love and Gary Miller and Zach Lucas and Joseph Knight and Morgan Kidd all within five seconds of him. So if he picks up a penalty, it could be even more costly today. Little shout-out further back. Connor Blackburn has come through from the very back of the grid up into 10th. Mm. Had a DNF yesterday. Uh, more importantly, he's on a, on a podium for club class, so yes. good stuff from him. Absolutely well spotted. He's right behind Simon Horobin, who is also recovering nicely. 15th on the grid tonight, but I think he just gained, and he might have been defending, actually, from Blackburn as they uh, went into Brooklyn. Yes, he was. Uh, no, sorry, excuse me. He's found a way past Caitlin May, so Horobin does gain another place. Caitlin actually dropping away from Morgan Kidd on that yeah. lap. Uh, Morgan has gained a lot of time on the Zach Lucas-Joseph Knight battle, so Morgan Kidd... She's um, after Joseph, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe he could break into the top five before the race is over. Yeah, good race from Morgan. Multiple class winner in the club class and, uh, of course, leading club class as well coming into this meeting from Connor Blackburn. Maybe she's seen Connor coming up and thinking, better get me skates on. <laughs> yes, perhaps. Uh, so. I mean, she certainly has done that, hasn't she? Look right on the tail now of Joseph Knight, who is still hounding Zachary Lucas, who continues to hang on to this fifth position there. We're over about a third of the way through the race, 12 and three quarter minutes still to go. And Albert Webster leads by three and a half seconds. John Cooper second. He's got one and a half in hand over Matt Luff, who has now been reeled in look by Gary Miller. So Gary Miller on the tail of Luff for third and then this the battle for fourth Zach Lucas defending the inside line and I think for now hanging on yeah great battling here Luff under a bit of pressure Gary Miller's been the sort of uh, I think surprise of this race so far Ooh. and goes through on the inside so Matt wow. Luff leaves, leaves half a gap and he's through excellent stuff Gary Miller up onto the podium yeah I wonder whether maybe Matt's suffering from a bit of understeer because uh, he just drifted away yeah. from the apex there through Luffield didn't he and uh, left a chink of an opening for Gary uh, who was very very quick to fill that gap Gary had a podium finish somewhere, I'm sure he did. Yes, Snetterton, the third race at Snetterton, uh, finished in third position. And uh, that's his only podium appearance of the season so far. So perhaps on for uh, a repeat of that here. Although Matt Luff, I'm sure, will try and retaliate if he can. Uh, Morgan Kidd is ahead of Joseph Knight now. So Morgan Kidd into sixth position. A top five finish really is on the cards. And actually, if she gets a move on, Gary Miller and Matt Luff aren't that much further up the road either. No, she's having a great race. And uh, as you mentioned yesterday, the championship points, there aren't separate yeah. championship points for the club. So in terms of the overall points, it, she's take, taking points away from some of the pro drivers, which is you know great for her. Joseph Knight's not finished that he's going to try and have a go too far back to do so at the moment has a little look though on the inside Ooh. And that might actually create an overlap. It almost did. You always worry about that little tap, don't you, when you 
guy, uh, Joseph doesn't want to do that. No, and he of didn't, course. but you <laughs> no. do worry. Uh, yeah, well, it, it, it's a difficult quarter, isn't it? Because you can turn in. And there are lots of different lines you can take mm. there. And that early turning can sometimes look like they're making a bit of a lunge. But actually, it's just the line that they take. And uh, a lot of it depends on driving style. Some of it on how the car is handling. If it's uh, very pointy and on the nose, then you can turn in a bit earlier and still keep the speed up through the corner. But uh, anyway... In the end, contact averted, and Morgan Kidd continues on her challenge to break into the top five. To do so, she has to find a way uh, past Zach Lucas, though. Zach Lucas won the first two races of the season back at Snetterton and hasn't visited the top step of the podium ever since. In fact, he hasn't visited the podium since then. So Zach Lucas is well motivated to try and hang on. Not that this is a podium place yet, uh, but he wants to try and get the best results he can. That's always frustrating for a driver, isn't it, when your season starts in the best possible way yeah. uh, and, uh, and then just starts to slide downhill. Yeah, that's going to be really annoying for him. And, and now he's got one of the club class runners giving him a super workout. And uh, got to say, Morgan Kidd, absolutely superb, as high as she's been yeah. in the race. So potentially on for a, a personal best for the season. Yeah, absolutely. Morgan's best result so far is uh, eighth. She had a brace of eighth position, Snetterton race, race three, and uh, the opening race at Alton Park. So... Uh, yes, we might need to stop talking about it though, because as you were saying that, she dipped two wheels into the gravel Curse at Luffield. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, made me a little nervous for a moment, but gathered it all together. Uh, just drops a few lengths to Zach Lucas, who can breathe a sigh of relief momentarily. But we are only halfway through this race, and uh, again, these cars being on slick tyres, they do have to think about tyre management a little. Front wheel drive cars, you're constantly turning right here at Silverstone. That front left tyre takes a real beating, and uh, sometimes it uh, serves you well to pace yourself in the early stages of the race. Maybe that's what Zach Lucas has been doing. The Morgan Kid starting now to reel him in again. Picks up a slipstream. Lucas weaving around, trying to break that toe and also to cover the inside line. Morgan Kid is carrying some good momentum though uh, down the Wellington Strait. Does she jink to the inside? Uh, no, decides to wait for a, a slightly safer opportunity to make her move. Joseph Knight, he's got Simon Horribin all over him now. So Simon, yeah. uh, uh, an evergreen of the parish, isn't he really? In, in Fiesta's having a good old crack here and trying to come up. You would expect him to to have the pace to go through. I don't know what issues he had yesterday. I did try and grab him, but uh, he walked away, as a lot of drivers do when you go up and have, have a chat, when I do. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he, he's going to try and chase through. Still second in that Masters class. Albert Webster. Now, Albert Webster needs to learn from this. You don't get any coverage if, you, if you're way down the road. <laughs> uh, yeah, Luke Hilton had the same problem, didn't he, in the Fiesta Junior race. Didn't see a lot of him uh, a country mile out in front as he was. Five seconds of the lead for Webster. Uh, John Cooper, second place, has now got a 2.7 second gap back to Gary Miller, who's nearly a second clear of Matt Luff. So this is the best of the battles on the track right now as Morgan Kidd closes right in later on the brakes, but then carries that speed through the apex and she's closer this time onto the Wellington Strait than she was a lap ago. Yeah, I think she is, but passing is, is so, so difficult, isn't it? And as I say, this is as high up as she's been so far this year. Outside run again, down towards Brooklands. Inside having to be covered by Zach Lucas, not doing them any favours in terms of closing up on Matt Luff. And then Joseph Knight is still trying to see off Simon Horobin. Simon just trying to build up a bit of momentum at the moment before he can pop in a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. He's caught this group quite quickly, but the closer to the front of the field you get, the tougher the overtakes become. And uh, Joseph Knight, uh, a very rapid racer, moving up from the Fiesta Junior category this year. He had a couple of podium finishes back at Alton Park. That's the highlight uh, of his season so far. A third place race one, a second in race two. Not quite troubling the podium positions this time around. He's busy defending this seventh place now from Horobin. He looks to try and get the switch back maybe through Cops Corner, but Joseph Knight parks the car on the apex. Really clever defensive driving that. Yeah, I had a quick chat with Joseph and his dad yesterday. Looking forward to coming back next year. OK. Um, so, yeah, want to put another campaign in. Back we go to Morgan, Morgan Kidd. Still hassling Zach Lucas. So the, the thing Morgan needs to take away from this is that she's harrying someone who's a multiple race winner. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, looks perhaps the quicker of the two at certain parts of the circuit. Didn't get off Beckett's quite as well that time, though. And so Zachary Lucas, well, I was going to say, won't feel the need to defend. I'm not sure what all of that <laughs> weaving around is achieving down the back straight, really, um, because Morgan wasn't close to the challenge. Horobin was, though. He slips up the inside of Joseph Knight. That was a lovely move. Yeah, Simon Horobin, that's an experience, wasn't it? Just seeing that gap and just slotted in so quickly. Lesser experienced drivers, you know, might have, might have pinged each other yeah. off, but... Horobin saw that, had the momentum to go through. Lovely move. 
Is Morgan Kidd slowing? She suddenly dropped away there from Zach Lucas. I think she's picked up the speed again, but didn't have a good she's run out of the you're, you're right. You're right, yeah. Andy. She has dropped back. Had, was concerning for a moment, but I think she's all right. I think she managed to pick the speed back up again. Uh, but she did have a slow lap that time around. It was 107.5, a 1.2 seconds slower than she went earlier on. Uh, most other drivers, well, in fact, uh, John Cooper, second place, just set his personal best lap of the race. So, again, back to my point about pacing yourself, looking after the tyres. John Cooper going as quickly now as he has been at any stage of the race. Here's the leader, and here's why we don't cover. Albert <laughs> Webster, he's, he's that far ahead, but we'll have a quick look at him. This is where we got the move done. On lap one, on the now retired Alistair Kellett. Um, and yeah, he's just put his put his stamp all over this. It was super. I, I never realised when he won at Alton Park, that was his first win, because he hadn't won in juniors. No. And I, sure, have a look back, and sure enough, hadn't yeah. done it. And nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing no, wrong no. with coming in and getting all senior wins at all. It just shows how, how the the grounding that you get in the junior championship and then coming into the seniors really can work for a driver. Um, and we've seen some good stuff from him this weekend. Yeah, and I'll be honest, I, when I heard that he was moving up into the seniors this year, I did think, oh, you know, is he ready to make that step up? He hasn't got a junior win yet. Maybe another season in the junior category uh, would serve him well. But no, he's uh, really proved me wrong, which I'm delighted to see. And he could be right back into the championship picture now because Alistair Kellett, as you can see, is going no further in this race. It will be his second non-finish of the season. Uh, Albert Webster has finished every race this year. So again, you'd think of the veteran Alistair Kellett as maybe being Mr. Consistency, but actually the youngster, Albert Webster, not as many uh, race wins. He's only had one win so far this season, uh, and yet he's been consistently racking up the points. Yeah, he's had wins, so nobody's going to begrudge him a title if he gets no. it, but yeah, that's absolutely the way to do it, isn't it? Finish the race as you can, do as well as you can. Uh, Alistair, very much out of luck, feel for them, huge effort for them. To, to come over from Ireland. They, they lose a lot of working time coming over here to race, and it, it's always great to see them. Certainly is. Right then, things have been calming down a little bit in this battle, or I think they're about to liven up because uh, Simon Horriman, having got past Joseph Knight a couple of laps ago, is reeling in Morgan Kidd, and that is Caitlin May nibbling away at the rear bumper of Joseph Knight herself now. So Caitlin May, second, remember, in the club class and looking to try and gain some more overall positions. She might not yet have um, given up hope of claiming a class victory as well if Morgan Kidd's pace is starting to deteriorate. Although I don't think it is really. She's I think it was just, Zach again, isn't she yeah, now? definitely closing yeah. in. She must have just made a mistake, I think, on that lap uh, a couple of laps ago. Yeah, very definitely closing in. Joseph Knight, I, I don't think Joseph's too happy. Mate. He, he no. did have issues. I can't remember what he said the problems were yesterday, but he has dropped back a little bit. It was a decent start, but the car not working for him in, in these late, later stages. Yeah, and, uh, just doesn't seem. Seems a bit lazy, doesn't it? The car not really rotating through uh, the apex of Beckett's as he would like, and so Caitlin May is going to have a better run down the back straight and they choose to challenge into Brooklyn's now. What about Zach Lucas? He's defending again. That is the traditional Lucas line now under the bridge, uh, but there's no doubt about it. Morgan Kidd is closer this time. Almost had an overlap as she went into Brooklyn's. Carries the wide line in, gets good momentum through the apex, but Zach Lucas is driving well here in fairness. He's defending where he needs to, but isn't really massively slowing himself down. Morgan's going to have Simon Horvath in the picture very soon as well. I know he's been chasing her all race, and he hasn't quite got close enough to make that ice oh, a big gap though, isn't it? When we when we see it from this angle. Yeah, it's gone up, yeah, it's, I think, this time, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so it was only half a second. It's now nine tenths at the end of that 15th lap of the race. Take a right, three minutes to go. Simon could still challenge. It won't affect Morgan's class position, but that's not really the point at this stage. She'd love a top five finish. Already on for a season's best, but a top five would just be the icing on the cake. And she's very, very close as she heads into Beckett. She's good through cops, isn't she? Every time at this part of the circuit, she's within a car length of Zach Lucas. But Zach has just been getting off this turn a little bit better. Not Ooh. this time around, though. No, and Simon had a bit of a walk, didn't he? Horribin's in behind. And that's going to take the pressure off because she might yeah. have this tendency just to see Simon Horribin creeping up on her and now goes for the... Now, this is all about... Yeah, this is maybe where the momentum is kicking in. If she gets a clean run here, we saw a couple of passes yesterday with a wide run into Brooklyn and carrying that momentum down through into Cops, which is maybe, as you've said, where her strongest point is. Yeah, she seems strong through the quick right-hander, which they're heading towards now. Much better off Luffield, but there's nowhere to go. Zach Lucas placing the car nicely. Across the line they will go then. The leader already has gone across the line and I think has time for two more laps. So a couple more opportunities here still for Morgan Kidd to get this move done. Less than a car length in it as they cross the line and begin their 17th lap of racing. Through Cops they go, and this is the key corner. Carry the momentum. And don't run too wide over the curbs and maybe just maybe there could be a chance down towards Beckett she's got the run and Zach Lucas is going to have to defend surely now as they hit the brakes into the right hander is there a gap on the inside there was but she chose not to go for it 
Yeah, I'm not sure she had the momentum there to, to do it. She's still trying to suss him out. Runs a little bit wide, a mistake. He's still got the right side, though. Here comes Morgan Kidd, really going for it. We've got one of our driver coaches here, Paul <laughs> O'Neill. I forgot, Paul, that, that he'd done the coaching. And uh, she's, she's on the outside run here, but Zach Lucas has got the inside line into Brooklands. Yeah, can she pull an Albert Webb? So what about Simon Horobin, though, who comes from a different postcode to get up the inside <laughs> of her? Look at that. Simon Horobin gains a place out of all of wow. that. And that was the fear, wasn't it? If she tried something uh, different, took a different line to try and get past Zach Lucas, it could open the door for Horobin, who we both were just saying was too far back to capitalise. But he's proved us instantly wrong and does get up ahead of Morgan Kidd. So that didn't quite go to plan. In fairness, though, Horobin, I think, has the pace to now have a go at Zach Lucas. That could present another opportunity. Opportunity, yeah. uh, for Morgan to still gain some places. He was way back, wasn't he? With, yeah. that, with that wide moment of Beckett's the lap before, but he just recovered, gathered all that back up. So much experience of Fiesta racing in that number 14 car. And now Joseph Knight's getting on it. Morgan Kidd needs to hang on to this to get her best result. Yeah, absolutely. This is still a good result. No doubt about that. Horobin now pulling to the outside of Lucas, but Zach late on the brakes. Does he make the apex? Yes, he does, in fairness, and keeps hold of the apex through the centre of the corner. Inevitably, though, just had to wait an extra beat before hitting the accelerator. That means Horobin carries a bit more speed out onto the Wellington straight, picks up that slipstream, and I'm sure he's going to have a go. Now, we saw a lap ago how good Horobin is on the brakes. What can he do with uh, Lucas, though? Same again, isn't Ooh. it? Outside, throws the car down the inside. And uh, under braking, is he going to be able to do it? They just, it was in the lightest of touches there. Hangs on, on the outside run. Can he keep the momentum and the grip on the outside? We wait for them to go around. No, he can't. Oh, there's a bit of leaning now, though. This could bring Morgan it's Kidd back into play. It has. Morgan Kidd's got the run. Is she going to go three wide on the inside into Woodcote Corner? She's past Lucas, but now Joseph Knight a part of the fight as well. Joseph Knight sweeps around the outside of a lot of them. Two, but three places gained for Knight. And Horovin suddenly seems to be slowing. I think he's got some damage out of all of that. Just a tiny little group between the two of them as they came out of Luffield Corner and all of a sudden the complexion of that battle changes. He had to go through it. That was spectacular to watch, wasn't it? That's what you like to see. It's great seeing drivers maybe be careful and think about their strategy for the championship, but equally seeing someone have a go for it. As Simon Horobin there did there. Absolutely superb to watch. Now, where's that left Morgan? Sixth position, by far her best position so far of the season. And she's overtaken Joseph Knight once already in this race. She's got one more realistic opportunity to do it for a second time because we're on the final lap of the race. Albert Webster has checked out. He was six seconds clear of John Cooper at the beginning of the final lap and he will come through to claim only his second win of the season, but perhaps the most important one with Alistair Kelly not finishing. It tightens the championship up nicely. Webster claims victory here at Silverstone. John Cooper gets second. He will keep hold of the podium this time, I think. And Gary Miller gets his second podium finish of the season. Season. Matt Love, I think, will be fourth. And Joseph Knight, out of nowhere, is going to steal a top five finish ahead of Morgan Kidd, club class winner, a career best finish in the Fiesta ST240s of Sig. And she and her supporters will all be very, very pleased with that. Fantastic drive, that from Morgan. Zach Lucas in seventh. Caitlin May eighth is second in the club class, with Connor Blackburn third in that class, finishing ninth overall. And Simon Horobin did limp across the line in the end, tenth place. A shame that he picked that damage up, yeah, uh, but it was, was an entertaining battle while it lasted plenty to take away there wasn't there yeah, absolutely um, yeah brilliant stuff so Webster what an important win that could be then he was what did I say about 36 points or so back coming into that race where you get 50 points for a race win uh, Kellett is going to now he still will score out of that race because he now gets one of his drops back so he scores 36 points but that's still a 16 point gain 17 point gain for Webster because he got the fastest lap as well so uh, all of a sudden that gap has more than halved in one race it shows how quickly the championship story can change when there are so many points on offer for a race win it shows the worth of never ever giving in and uh, Albert Webster well and truly keeping himself in the title picture fantastic stuff so Webster victorious at Silverstone. We should hopefully here in a moment be able to confirm that result for you and then hear from our podium finishers. And I think yesterday we got our club class uh, winner down there as well. So we should hear from uh, Morgan Kidd about what was an incredible race. Webster then the winner uh, for the second time this season. John Cooper in second place. Gary Miller finishing in third. Matt Luff came home in fourth. Not quite the podium this time, but a consistent weekend for him so far. Joseph Knight fifth and Morgan Kidd wins the club class in sixth. Zach Lucas was seventh. Caitlin Bay was eighth. Connor Blackburn ninth. And Simon and Horobin after that contact in the late going finishes 10th. Marco Ricci was 11th, Christopher Blackburn in 12th position. He is a guest driver so doesn't score points. Archie Johnson was next and Adam Clark finished in 14th place. 
worth pointing out, by the way, that Marco Ricci uh, was the Masters winner within the club class. Uh, Sean Reynolds had been leading that class for much of the race, but ended up finishing second, 15th overall. And Matt Chambers gets a class podium in 16th. Whilst Alistair Kellett was the only non-finisher, it is his second non-finish of the year, though. And it's the one that has really now put the pressure on him as far as the championship race is concerned. So... Albert Webster climbs out of his car, takes the helmet off and, uh, well, looks very cool, Karma collected. It was a much easier race, that one, than his uh, race-long duel with uh, Alistair Kellett yesterday. And uh, already has received his bottle of bubbly, his winner's trophy, and now gets to claim the greatest prize of all and has a chance to chat with our very own Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much, yes, uh, Andy, here with our winner this one, Albert. Well, certainly a much calmer race for you today than what you had yesterday, but the results, I'm sure, what you wanted. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> you know, I just knew I needed to get through quickly, get in front, um, and that's what I did, you know, coming into um, Luffields. I just went around the outside and just about managed to hold on, keep enough of a car up beside him so he had to leave room, and yeah, and then just... Didn't know, don't know what happened to him and then just sort of just drove away and managed to pace at the end. Certainly a solid drive from yourself and uh, a nice way to end the weekend for you, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, this uh, this racing here, the 240s seem to be absolutely fantastic to drive. They look so much fun and uh, for you, uh, certainly a nice way to end the weekend as well. Uh, no, we've got one more race. Oh, you got one more race. Yeah, sorry. OK, race. sorry. There you go. Hours. I'm ahead of you here. Yeah, no. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, reverse grid for the next one. Starting 6, 7, for 8, I believe it is. So, yeah, can't wait for that one. Just thank you to everyone who's helped me. JRW getting the car spot on. Um, my uncle, my mum, my dad, everyone getting me here. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, yeah, can't wait for the next one. Mate, cracking. Well done. Well done. Let's chat to second place then, Mr. 88, uh, John Cooper. Where is John? John. Uh, mate, uh, that was a pretty sterling race. A uh, bit of work you had to do, but uh, the result I think you wanted? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I managed to keep it between white lines today as well, unlike yesterday. So, <laughs> yeah, it would, uh, Albert got away. I was never going to catch him. Yeah. Gary was a bit far back, so it was just a case of managing it. And good, steady race. So, yeah. yeah, enjoyed that. Next race coming up and uh, looking forward to it? Yeah, see if we can go one better. So. Yeah. That's what we need. Mate, well done. Well done. Congratulations. Right, let's bring over Mr. Gary Miller. Uh, Gary, well, again, you've had a, a pretty decent race. Where, where did you finish yesterday, uh, I finished Mr. Gary? Yesterday, after, after I managed to put myself on the gravel and lap, on lap two or three. So it was a, a bit of a battle to get up the turret today, and I wasn't expecting it, but kind of worked in my favour with the two lads missing the grid spots, and then I got a good start, and Alice had kind of checked everyone up then going down the back straight, which gave me a run on a few cars. So, But as soon as I got by uh, Luff, I was trying to catch John, but he was just gone. He yeah. was just gone down the road, so it was just a case of managing the tyres, then the brakes, and get to the end of the race. So, and no, I was good and empty affair. So, yeah, I want to thank everyone, thank Gary and Vicky and Dad and everything. Yeah. Great, great results. Solid drive. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. I want to quickly chat to uh, to Kate and me, um, uh, Morgan Kid. Sorry, I want to say Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. Uh, want to have a quick chat. Well done, well done, first in class. Yeah, it was brilliant, thank you. Excellent, uh, Paul O'Neill was beside himself in the commentary box, he wasn't commentating, but he was screaming and shouting like he was, but uh, yeah, brilliant drive, a few words from you. It felt amazing, That the car felt underneath me, it felt lit, so hopefully in the next one, I think it's reverse grid, yeah. so I think I finished sixth, so that's a pole start, so hopefully you can get away from the front, I think. That's what we need, that's what we need. Congratulations, well done, Morgan Kidd there. Well, Formula Fords, they're coming up next. Back to you, Andy. Thank you very much. Good work down there. Quick work from uh, Anthony Jordan in the pit lane to uh, chat to our podium finishers and our club class winner. We now, though, move on to our only single-seater action of the weekend. Uh, and, uh, well, what better single-seater category could there be than Formula Ford 1600 racing? This is the Avon Tyre Super Classic Pre-99 Formula Ford Championship. So uh, this is a championship for cars uh, that, well, as the name would suggest, were all built before the year 1999. Uh, and although they are all classics now, they still produce some fantastic racing. As you can see, the crowd here at Silverstone are on the edge of their seat, ready for what should be uh, one of the most exciting races of the day. It is Jacob Tofts who has got the pole position in the uh, number 10 car, and uh, he... Uh, set a lap time of 103.0, about a tenth of a second quicker uh, than Alex uh, Amos, who will start alongside him. Morgan Dempsey and Andrew Amos then are on uh, the second row with Oliver Roberts and Lewis Fox on row three. Should be a very competitive race, this. Uh, the field split into four classes, classes A, B, C and D. Uh, the 
uh, Class A cars are 1990s cars generally, uh, Class B for 1980s cars, Class C for those built between 1972 and 1981, and then the pre-1972 class, uh, which has been dominated so far this season by Scott Rawlinson, uh, is Class D. Uh, this uh, is a series that essentially was born out of the Northern Formula 4 Championship. There's been a bit of a shake-up, actually, in uh, the BRSCC's Blue Oval series this year, because we always had a Northern Formula 4 Championship. We had the XR Challenge, which was predominantly based in the Northwest at uh, Alton Park and Anglesey. Both of those series now being rebranded, uh, branching out now and becoming national series. So the XR Challenge has become the Fiesta ST150 Championship, uh, and the Northern Formula Fords now becoming the Super Classic Pre-99 Formula 4 Championship. They still race most of their events up in the north of the country. Alton Park, Mallory Park, Anglesey, um, Croft also has been visited. There are three rounds at Alton Park and uh, they make up the champion of Alton series. Obviously not particularly relevant this weekend, but it is Morgan Dempsey uh, who leads the prestigious champion of Alton series. So uh, this weekend, though, it's all about the overall championship and a perfect venue, really, Silverstone, uh, for some top quality Formula Ford action. This then is how they line up. Jacob Tofts and Alex Ames on the front row of the grid with Morgan Dempsey and Andrew Ames on row number two. Row three for Oliver Roberts and Lewis Fox. And the fourth row then shared by Paul Mason and Gaius Ginn. Row five for Richard Frey and Simon Hadfield. Andrew Schofield is there on row six alongside Scott Rawlinson, uh, who is the class leader in class D in the championship. Gareth Buckingham and Stuart Kestenbaum are on the seventh row ahead of Neil Hunt and David Porter. Row eight, row nine for Paul Crosby. Jonathan Barnes will start alongside him with Trevor Morgan and Ian Fernahoe on row number 10. Row 11 for Tim Fitzgerald and Phil Atwood. Well, I know this being a BRSCC event, the only end of season Formula Ford racing we're supposed to talk about is the Formula Ford Festival. But of course, Silverstone does have a rich history uh, of Formula Ford racing too. It is the perfect place, isn't it, really? Again, for any category of car, be they tin tops or single seaters, any category of car that slipstreams well, you know you're in for a good race here at Silverstone. Helps if you switch the mic on, doesn't it, Andy? Yeah, always the case, isn't it? And look at that site. That is just a wonderful thing to behold, isn't it? It really is. And, uh, well, you think this is good. Wait until they come barreling towards us at full speed on the first lap. Three and four abreast heading down into uh, Brooklands. And, uh, yeah, it should be an interesting one, this. Class Championships, then. Morgan Dempsey uh, is your Class A Championship leader. Uh, then Andrew Schofield, the... Uh, class B championship leader. All of these uh, championship leaders I'm about to tell you are quite comfortable championship leaders, so we don't really need to worry too much about points today. Uh, Scott Guthrie leads the points in uh, Class C, but I think I'm right in saying that uh, Scott has not made the trip to Silverstone, So, but nor has Grace Parkington, who's second in that championship, so that won't make too much of a difference. And it's Scott Rawlinson, like I mentioned before, who leads in the Class D championship, uh, but all of them some way ahead. We are into the second half of the season now as well, with six races to go, two today, two at Croft in a few weeks' time, and then it all finishes at Alton Park in October. And uh, I believe that will be also covered live on the BRSCC's uh, social media platforms as part of the Fun Cup Championship finale uh, up in the northwest of the country. So the championship leaders looking really just to stay out of trouble, consolidate their points advantage. Uh, but the likes of Jacob Tofts and Alex Ames on the front row of the grid, uh, they're really just looking to try and pick up some trophies here today at Silverstone. They pull down towards the startup line, which is still... Uh, basking in the summer sunlight, although there is a stiff breeze again uh, outside, Richard, a tailwind down the pit straight, and that means it's almost a bit of a headwind down that uh, Wellington straight, and that will only exaggerate that slipstream effect. It will. Can't wait for this. Always love a bit of Formula 4. When I look at these, there's always the, the feeling that other formulas have become too overdeveloped. Yes, very much we so. We need to peg things back. We were talking yesterday about the Fun Cup and the fact that it's the, essentially the same product that they yes. launched with. And yeah, Formula 4 did did change we can see that from from the years that we've got here but it but it still could provide yeah in the right circumstances a, a, a great starting formula for, for people um there is this great interest now in the, in the heritage side of it which, which we see here and, and enjoy but um i think it still has a future uh, most definitely could not agree more and it's certainly great entertainment isn't it uh, very rarely do you see a dull formula Ford 1600 race and i don't think we're about to see one now 15 minutes on the clock then for the avon tires super classic pre-99 formula Ford championship green flag waved at the back of the grid and who is going to get the best start from the front row jacob top
Tofts will be on the outside line. Alex Ames on the inside. Red lights go on. They very quickly go out. And we're off and racing. Pretty equal start there from the first few rows. In fact, most of them, I think, uh, will immediately be tucking into that slipstream and running single far through the first corner. Not the race leaders, though. Alex Ames diving up the inside. The second phase of the start was a little bit stronger. And he has got his nose in front. Gets most of his car in front, actually, as they squeeze each other a bit on the run down towards Beckett. So Alex Ames leads the way. Jacob Tofts in second position. And that looks as though, uh, well, running wide in it third was Dempsey, place yeah. was Morgan Dempsey. Yeah, Dempsey's had the most race win so far this year. He's not doing himself any favours there. Lost yeah. a shed load of ground, didn't he? Yeah, way wide. Just outbraked himself. Cold brakes, no ABS, of course, in Formula Ford racing. So very easy to snatch a brake. And uh, maybe that's what he was concerned about. Side by side again for the race lead, though. And we could be on for our second lead change of the opening lap. And lap as uh, Jacob Tofts goes back through into first position, back ahead of Alex Ames. These do so evenly matched in qualifying, Richard. Bodes well for the race. It does, and they've got 15 minutes to enjoy. Another 15 minutes a little bit later on, but such a great uh, a great sight to see some of the classic cars as well. We look back at some of the, the, the Merlin cars and the Titan cars that have actually been all over the world, many of them. Yeah. One was, was uh, in, in New Zealand, went to America, and now found its way over here. And the guys love them. They're su superbly looked after, these cars. Brilliantly engineered in the first place, but lots of love in there. Great to see the cannon livery on the car as well from back in the day. Absolutely. The uh, lead pack then makes its way down towards the braking zone at Beckett. So we're going to see another challenge here from Alex Ames. He's just a touch too far back, I think, in the camel livery car. Lots of uh, iconic uh, retro liveries adorning the Formula Fords this weekend. They make their way down the back straight. It's the Duckham's livery car in fourth position of Lewis Fox, who's made some good ground as well. Started sixth, and he is into fourth spot as they head towards Brooklyn once again. Another challenge now from Ames on the outside line, and uh, Jacob Tofts knew exactly where to position the car to fend off that particular attack, but uh, I think he's got a bit more defending to do if he wants to claim the victory today. Absolutely right, yeah, and the, the great thing about these is they haven't outgrown the track, so we're going to see lots and lots yes. of overtaking opportunities. Yeah, Fox has done well, hasn't he, up into that fourth position, and... Uh, Good to see the two Duckham's deliveries. They were, of course, back in the, the mainstay back in the probably the mid 80s. Yes. Through to the late 80s. I, I wouldn't remember that, Richard. No, I'm thank afraid. you very much. <laughs> Just a touch before Jan Magnuson my time. and the like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I actually met Jan at the uh, festival a couple of years ago. What a lovely bloke he was. That was a, a real uh, pinch yourself moment. Side by side for the lead, but uh, Jacob Tofts managing to hang on. And again, just knows where to position that car. Holds the inside line, and he's realised already, I think, that Alex Ames isn't likely to outbreak him round the outside. Uh, now, that is a car stopped exiting Cops Corner. Richard Frey, maybe, 68? No, he... Well, of course, he would have come across the line, wouldn't he? We'll see who doesn't come across the line this time. The second number was an eight, but I couldn't quite see the first one. Uh, either way, it's well out of the way, so uh, shouldn't require a safety car. But Jacob Toff's doing a really good job at the moment out front and just managing to, as the marshals do a super job, getting the car out of the way. Again, a lot easier to be able to, if you can pick that one out, Andy, <laughs> from uh, that I, angle. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm afraid I can't. I'm now beginning to doubt if that's an eight, actually. It could be Scott Rawlinson, maybe, but uh, no, the car looks a bit too modern for that. But we'll figure it out. Uh, uh, Richard Frey uh, has come through, yeah, yes. Yeah, so... It looks like, oh, it's 163. It's 163, uh, which we have lost. And that is Oliver Roberts. So uh, Oliver Roberts pulling off, I'm afraid, at Cops Corner. There we go. It only took me a lap, but uh, got there in the end. Well done, mate. <laughs> so Tofts, half a second to the good. Fox third now. So Lewis Fox moving up ahead of Andrew Ames whilst that was all going on. And uh, there, uh, well, there's number 44. Morgan Mason. Dempsey coming back, isn't There, he? Morgan Dempsey. Yes, sixth place. Not an ideal start to the race for him. But he'll enjoy working his way through the field for sure. Here's the challenge for third place again. And it's uh, Fox and Ames very much at it. And it's Ames that goes back through. Andrew Ames, we should say, as Lewis Fox goes back to the outside run. He'll try and get the cut back through Woodcut and along the main straight. Still Toffs and Alex Ames out front controlling this one really well, I've got to say. Yeah, Toffs getting away on this lap, I think. He set the fastest lap last time around, which is impressive, without the toe, on 103.3. He's fractionally slower this time, but another, another tenth better than Alex in second. So six tenths now that we are leading margin. And then nearly a second back to that battle for uh, third position. Morgan Dempsey back into the top five now, so he's found a way past Paul Mason. And uh, Morgan Dempsey, the uh, Class A championship leader, will now try and set off after this podium five, which just refuses to die. They are side by side again through Beckett's defensive line taken by Andrew Ames. He'll hang on on the way into the turn, but we all know what's coming down the Wellington Strait. Absolutely, yeah, bit of, bit of a headwind. So let's see whether we do get another uh, change here as they go under the bridge. And the race leader, Jacob Tofts, 
still trying to gap Alex Ames in second position, six tenths last time. Here comes De uh, Morgan Dempsey, beg your pardon, this is Fox, isn't it, having a go. Let's see whether he can chip through on the inside, can't quite do it at the moment. Yeah, manages to hang on, does uh, Andrew Ames, but uh, I was, that was intriguing though, because Fox had the momentum down the straight and then didn't pull out until the very last second when it was a bit too late, so I uh, didn't quite time that one uh, as well as he could have done. Lead gap back down again that time. A personal best uh, lap for Alex Ames. A 103.37, so about a tenth and a half quicker than the race leader. It's way wide at Cobb's corner. <laughs> uh, goes Lewis Fox. Do you reckon he exceeded track limits there? Very slightly. <laughs> They'll be keeping an eye on him. Uh, yes, definitely. I think any judge of fact should be able to spot that that would be on the white line. So he needs to be careful doing that. He's so far off the road. He must have uh, had a big moment on the way into the turn goes the 101 car then that Simon is uh, yeah Simon Hadfield how's he getting on eighth place overall right now one of many sort of late additions to the listings ah. quite a few drivers coming in and uh, doing that we've got national Formula Fords at Brands this weekend with the BRSEC as well yes and uh, so they're getting their little bit of festival practice in these guys are all getting Walter Hayes practice in <laughs> yes although I know most drivers will make a point of trying to do the pair of them they don't will, forget yeah. the, the festival this year uh, is sharing the bill if you like with TCR UK and its regular support series Civic Cup and Fiesta Juniors so what a fantastic event that will be one not to be missed for sure good move there by Simon Hadfield as well getting the better uh, of number 31 Gareth Buckingham now Buckingham started 13th and uh, is trying now to relieve Simon Hadfield of eight of uh, ninth place. So he's gained uh, a good amount of ground and does now sweep round the outside of him through Cops. Whoops. Uh, gets past, but then uh, takes the uh, the Lewis Fox line. Favourite era for these for you? Uh, well, I started watching Formula Ford racing probably in the very late 90s, early 2000s. And right. you don't see a lot of those early 2000s no, cars, do you, no, really? the, no. the early 2000s Van Diemen's and, and whatnot. They seem to, those cars, for whatever reason, uh, do seem to have disappeared a little bit. Uh, they weren't the prettiest looking Formula Ford cars, but uh, there was some good talent racing in Formula Ford back then when it was uh, on the British GT package, wasn't it? Uh, one of the top championships in the country. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Simon Hanfield's um, RF81. It was yes. in the regional championships that I started watching in the, in the mid 80s because it had been uh, you know two or three years old then. and was sort of started to filter down from national into say champion of brands or champion of Mallory. Um, so I've got a soft spot for those cars and amazing that, you know, how well engineered and how well driven they are, that it's, you know, it's up here Yes. Well inside the top ten. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, exactly. Well, I mean, the the class, the best of the Class A cars, the newest cars on the grid is Morgan Dempsey. He's only fifth, so uh, being outpaced at the moment by cars running in different classes and cars that were built decades earlier. Big challenge there on the inside for Lewis Fox, who has just set the fastest lap in his pursuit of Andrew Ames. He's caught him again after that moment that he had at Cops a few laps ago, and now he's alongside. And Ames gesticulating there at Lewis, don't race me. <laughs> Let's work together and try and catch the leaders. Well, that hasn't been working so far, Andrew. And I don't think Lewis is going to pay much attention to that. He tries to go around the outside at Brooklands and will succeed in doing so. Good move. Yeah, great move from the 82 spec car. They started to look about the same, didn't they, the cars in, in your era? They were a little bit yes. more. You could kind of do sort of 83, 84, 85 cars. You could probably tell what they were, but they all started to sort of be clones of, of one another as people worked out what aerodynamics worked out. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Uh, Yet yeah, the quality of racing never diminished. It's always been uh, one of the most exciting championships, single seater championships, certainly uh, in the country. And there's a reason, therefore, that it's hugely popular around the world still to this day. Uh, as far away as Australia, there is a thriving Formula Ford community and uh, still very much the case here in the UK as well. So Lewis Fox then up into third ahead of Andrew Ames. Six minutes to go. Can he catch Alex Ames? I think he might be able to because Alex has dropped away now from the race leader, Jacob Toffs. I think he's lost the toe, lost the draft uh, from the lead car. And that's worth so much lap time here that he now should be a bit of a sitting duck for those behind. I reckon that gap second to third is going to keep on coming down. It came down by half a second on the previous lap, even with these two continuing to battle. Andrew Ames having a look, just uh, not quite enough momentum to risk a charge that and of course these machines are very well loved so you're not actually going to risk a lunge well we hope not because we uh, don't want to yes. see the damage don't mind seeing a lunge as long as there's no damage yeah last lap of the festival perhaps you give it a go but uh, not worth taking a massive risk uh, at this particular time that's the line they all go then that is nine laps completed 
five and a bit minutes to go. And now Morgan Dempsey waking up at last to set the fastest lap, 103.3. Couple of tenths quicker than the race leader, about three tenths quicker than these two ahead of him. So he's catching Lewis Fox and Andrew Ames. They're both catching Alex Ames. They're all continuing together nicely now, aren't they? Uh, heading into the final third of the race. Yeah, it looks like Dempsey, whether he's got the car set up to come on later on during the race, or I don't know, but he, he achieved that fastest lap on his own. Yeah, good point. Didn't have a slipstream. Will do shortly though, because he's almost up there with him. Nice, really dropped Paul Mason, hasn't he? He's dropped a lot further back. There's the race leader, Jacob Tofts, who's starting now to make this uh, race look pretty easy out in front. Gapping Alex Ames now by 1.7 seconds nearly. Uh, but Alex is going to have some defending to do, I think, in the near future. Lewis Fox ahead of Andrew Ames uh, for third position. Blue flags wave there for one of the back markers. Uh, which stays well out of the way. That was Phil Atwood yep. in the number 77. Yeah, the lovely cross lay built over in Ireland and still get to see a few of those on the historic so side of the festival. And hasn't got the pace here, but the guy's enjoying his, his class run and and uh, good driving as well, keeping out of the way of the, the, the race leaders. He's actually a guest driver, is Atwood. One of a handful of guest drivers, which include Jacob Tofts and Andrew Ames, actually. So they don't score championship points for what that's worth. Uh, but again, that's not really the point here. There are championship battles going on, but they're all uh, pretty much decided at this stage, barring uh, any real strange results in the back end of the season. So uh, Jacob Toff's coming in just uh, trophy hunting, really, trying to claim a race victory, and that's looking increasingly likely to happen. Now, here comes Morgan Dempsey for the overall podium. I think that's looking increasingly likely as well. He's through, isn't he? Set that up nice and early. Ooh. Well, <laughs> now no, he's, he's through. Got that. He's got it, yeah. <laughs> Made, uh, it was contested by uh, Andrew Ames, in fairness, there on the outside. Uh, but uh, Andrew has to let him go. So, yeah, how high up the order can Morgan Dempsey get then? He's going to have a couple more laps still to go. Lewis Fox isn't that far ahead. Can he then get past Lewis quickly enough to have a chance at chasing down Alex Ames for second? We'll see. Tofsted out front, 2.4 seconds clear. So, Dempsey up ahead of that similar livery. And, uh, yeah, I reckon he's got this car set up for the later stages. Yeah, certainly seems to have come on strong in the second half of the race. And, uh, that's, you know, it's only a 15-minute race. Don't think of that as being uh, an especially long race, but uh, it uh, definitely looks as though he's quicker now than he was earlier on in this encounter. Tim Fitzgerald there going a lap down and didn't really know where Lewis Fox was going. Almost a miscommunication uh, heading down towards the end of the Wellington Strait. Uh, but look what's happening at the front of this group. Andrew Ames has now very much caught Alex Ames. So second and third together. Fourth place, Morgan Dempsey is coming quickly and bringing with him Lewis Fox. So a four-way fight for the lower podium positions. Uh, and uh, this could get very interesting. And of course, don't forget, Lewis Fox is in the same class as Alex Ames. So uh, if Lewis can tag along with Morgan Dempsey, he could yet have a chance at a class win. Dempsey made a little mistake there. He just went wide, kicked up a little bit of dirt, lost momentum. And he's got Lewis Fox all over the back of him again now. So fourth position could very much be up for grabs as we look at our third place man chasing hard Alex Ames under quite a lot of pressure here Jacob Toff still well away pretty much I think got this one sewn up and the two Duckham's delivery cars very much enjoying their scrap yes they are but as that scrap continues they're not really gaining any more on the cars ahead of them so chance of an overall podium maybe going begging here Lewis Fox with a slightly tighter exit from Beckett's tries to uh, get the overlap down the Wellington straight. That didn't happen, though. Alex Ames weaving around, trying to keep Andrew at bay. And uh, Andrew thinks better of making the big lunge into Brooklands. He's starting the penultimate lap, I think, this time around. The leader's doing one minute... Uh, excuse me, one minute threes. He's going to have more than one minute three seconds left on the clock when he gets there. Big, wide line there from Alex Ames. But then Andrew had a snap of oversteer, so wasn't really able to capitalise. No, he wasn't, and... Uh... We'll see now as we head on to the last couple of laps whether things go. There's our leader, Jacob Toss, well clear. Maybe a little bit more traffic to deal with before the end as Morgan Dempsey starts to have a look at the 106. If he hadn't have gone wide that time, he'd have been up here challenging big time now. And he's got Lewis Fox right behind him as well. Predictions? Uh, well, I'd be surprised if Alex can hang on here, but he's defended well up to this point. Morgan Dempsey, though, does now seem to uh, be very much a part of their fight. So I think Dempsey could do this, you know. If he makes one overtake on this lap down the back straight to get past Andrew Ames, I think he'll have a crack at Alex on the final lap. Let's see if that uh, is how it pans out. He's certainly going to be close enough to force a defensive move out of Andrew. He pulls to the middle of the road, then goes strangely back to the racing line, leaves the uh, inside line open. In fact, that was Alex, wasn't it, weaving around a bit. He holds on to this second position. 
And uh, actually, a mistake was that from Dempsey. I think that uh, Lewis Fox is back alongside him. He's around oh. the outside. Dempsey gets sideways. And immediately, uh, my prediction looks very unlikely to come true. <laughs> yeah, Dempsey's been a little bit on the edge, isn't he, with a couple of wide moments that... Uh he was wide going into that corner, grabbed the curb on the way out, fought it, but that's surely the chance of a podium gone now for him. Well, I think so, although they're going side by side ahead of him now. Andrew Ames to the outside of Alex as they begin the final lap. Can't quite make that one work into Cop's corner. Morgan Dempsey just peeking to the inside of Lewis Fox as well for fourth, but that didn't work. They're fighting for overall podium places, but it's your position within class that matters. That's where you score your points. That's where you pick up your trophies. And uh, so for Lewis Fox, his target really is Andrew Ames ahead. That's a spin for the number 52 of Trevor Morgan down at uh, Beckett's, and that was just in front of the race leader, I think, Jacob Toft. So even with a 4.7 second lead, it's not quite plain sailing on the final lap. It definitely isn't plain sailing behind, and that's Alex Ames slowing, is it? He suddenly dropped back behind he Andrew has. Ames and the pair of Tuckham's cars. Well, just as we said that Morgan Dempsey wasn't in with a shout of a podium, he's come across and tried to annex the Ooh. position. So it's going to be Andrew Ames in second position by the look of it. And that means Lewis Fox will steal the class victory as well, won't he? In uh, class A, ahead of yeah. uh, Alex Ames. So big drama on the final lap. Checkered flag weighs, though, and it is Jacob Tofts who claims the overall and class B race win. Andrew Ames in second position and Alex Ames in third uh, claims the victory in class um, A. Uh, then we've got Morgan Dempsey, the number 27, entered into Class B. Uh, he wins that class in fourth place overall. And I think Simon Hadfield's going to be the Class uh, D winner. Uh, no, Andrew Schofield actually wins in Class D. Hadfield, of course, claiming the win in Class C. So we've got all of our class right. winners uh, inside the top uh, 10 overall. But it's Jacob Tofts, who was untouchable in that one, really. Under some pressure in the early stages there, Richard. But through the second half of the race, uh, no one could quite keep up with him. No, for sure. It's also amazing how you how you get the say like the Van Diemen's in classics doing well when back in the day the years were ruled by say Reynard and yes, you know yeah. it, it never puts anyone off having a car. No, nobody minds having a championship winning car, mm -hmm. but they like to see what they can do with the cars that didn't win the national championships. And our race winner from 1989, it was the Reynard Bernard Dolan that took the um, national championship. Nico Polaris, if you remember him taking the festival in the Van Diemen so there was a little bit of a mix of Van Diemen and um, and Reynard that year no rays out here though which is a bit of a shame only the only rays we've got are those from the sun when it comes through and they are the best kind some would say but uh, yeah it's Van Diemen's to the fore in that one the top five finishers all running variations of the Van Diemen and it's Jacob Tofts in his uh, 1989 example that beats the 1988 car of Andrew Ames to the overall and class B win Alex Ames in third place is victorious in class A uh, then it was Morgan Dempsey who wins class B uh, of those who weren't guest drivers uh, fifth position then for Lewis Fox. Now, he's actually showing us having a five-second time penalty as well uh, added on to his race, so he dropped to fifth anyway and will be even further back on corrected times. Then it was Paul Mason and Gaius Ginn, Simon Hadfield, Richard Frey and Andrew Schofield completing the top ten. Schofield was the winner in Class D. Frey, uh, sorry, Hadfield the winner in Class C in eighth place overall. Gareth Buckingham, Stuart Kestenbaum, David Porter and Neil Hunt were next. Then in 15th position, uh, it was Jonathan Barnes in the number 24 ahead of Paul Crosby, Ian Fernahoe, Trevor Morgan, Tim Fitzgerald and Phil Atwood with Oliver Roberts, the only non-finisher from that race, pulling over with a mechanical issue on the exit of Cops Corner. So that's our first Formula Ford single-seater action of the day done. They'll be back out again a little bit later on at uh, about 10 to 3 uh, for their second race of the day. Uh, our next on-track action will be for the uh, Welsh Racing Drivers Association's Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. But before that, lots of Formula Ford drivers, happy Formula Ford drivers, I hope, uh, down there, ready to have a chat with Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much. Uh, well, let's chat to our man here, Jacob Toff. Jacob, well, that was certainly a uh, nice little performance from you there. Uh, enjoying Silverstone? Yeah, I didn't. I'm a bit surprised, to be honest. I didn't expect to be this quick. I'd never driven the car before. I did a lap at Oldton on Friday to make sure I could drive it and fit in it. Um, my left leg's a bit numb, so it's still not, <laughs> still not the best. But, yeah, I'm really happy to do that. Mate, if it's your second time jumping in the car, you certainly uh, seem to have done very, very well. Uh, You've got another race later on today. Are we hoping to replicate the same? Yeah, I'll try and do the same. I think, I don't know if it's Alex or Andy, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, but one of them got me uh, at COP, so I need to be a bit better there. But I know I did wrong, so that's OK. Yeah, mate, still a solid drive. Congratulations on it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later on. Thank you.
Excellent stuff there from our race winner on that one, Jacob Tofts. Let's chat to our second place driver, uh, Andrew Amos, uh, who's uh, currently getting a photo, stretching one, one of two uh, out of there. Uh, mate, that was, a, that was a pretty stellar race. It was a lot better than what happened uh, the other day, though, when I saw, saw this car. With, yes, you saw me with three wheels. Um, I, I, I've worked out that four wheels are better. Yeah, it certainly seems to have worked out well for you yeah. today. Yeah, no, really enjoyed it. Um, I, was, I wanted to make sure I could get away with the leaders. First dry start um, with this car. I've only ever raced it once before, so it was all. Uh, I was a bit nervous, but um, but once we got going, I was I was quite happy. Felt like um, I I would have quite liked to have held on to Jacob, but he was very fast at the start. Yeah, you've got another race uh, later on today. Do you reckon we can uh, repeat or maybe do better? I feel like I need a bit of a lie down now, to be honest. Um, uh, I'll, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll let you have a lie down then. Well, congratulations there. Our top two, we only have the two cars here, so uh, we can't even chat to our third place man. Uh, but uh, more racing coming up. We've got the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. That is coming up next. Stay with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, some people enjoying a lazy Sunday morning still. Um, uh, I suppose if you can't have a line at home, at least get to the track and then uh, take the opportunity to get your head down. But they'll want to uh, direct their attention back to the circuit, will the spectators, very shortly, uh, because our next race is almost upon us. There was only one car that needed recovering uh, after the uh, previous race and it shouldn't take too much long before we get our Welsh Sports and uh, Saloon Car Championship drivers out onto the grid uh, in fact they're already on the grid not the biggest grid of cars that we've got this weekend in fairness but they should still produce a decent race hopefully uh, and certainly great variety of car uh, up on the uh, grid and uh, this a championship that uh, strangely doesn't really actually race in wales all that often and even more strangely, doesn't race at Anglesey, one of only two racetracks in Wales. I'd spotted that, yeah. That's a good <laughs> little bit odd. Uh, two visits to Pembrey, though, which is the only racetrack in the country now, I think I'm right in saying, uh, not including karting circuits and whatnot, that I haven't visited yet. I'm sure you've had a... You've not been few, to Pembrey? Never been to Pembrey, no. Oh, mate, we're going to have to put that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've heard great things about... Uh, a, a few people have said it's like stepping back in time a few decades, but I, uh, I'm kind of all right with that. Oh, well, that's, that's your card marked already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, it looks like a lovely place, and... Uh, do they still do truck racing down at... Uh, they do, yeah. have yeah. Two, two rounds down there. That might be my excuse to go down there. Uh, Convoy Cymru. Uh, ah, is that what they call it? Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, so, uh, anyway, uh, these are not trucks. The lap side will be seeing these cars a little bit quicker than those in the Truck Racing Championship. It is Nigel Mustill who set a 57.787 uh, lap time on his way to pole position. Less than half a second quicker, though, than Keith Butcher, uh, who will start alongside him. So should be uh, reasonably close once we do go racing. It's only a 15-minute race, this one. Uh, and it will be the Volvo S60 alongside the Lamborghini Huracan on the front row. A front row that I can safely say I've never had the pleasure of seeing before. Then it's the aerial atom of Christian Douglas, followed by Scott Parkin in one of his uh, TT Cup races cars that he's been competing in the Audi TT series in this year and then the Ginetta G40 of Gareth John and Mark Williams in the Renault Clear will make up row three. Wade Spiller and Craig Attard in their pair of Mazda RX-5s are on row four and the fifth row the back row of the grid headed by Mike Cook in the BMW 330 and the Ford Focus of uh, Verity Banks. So Cars split into various classes, classes one, two, three, four, five, and the Invitational class. The only car in the Invitational class is the Aerial Atom of uh, Christian Douglas. You score points within your class towards the championship, uh, and so you often have drivers who aren't necessarily at the very front of the field uh, at the front of the championship. So right now it's Wayne Spiller in his Mazda RX-8 that runs within class two. Uh, that is the points leader from Jason Purd in his Honda Civic, but Jason uh, not making the trip to Silver stone so uh we will likely see that gap creep up but we're just hoping really for a good race between the uh non-standard volvo s60 that starts from pole position and the lamborghini huracan gt3 of keith butcher alongside nigel must still uh, looking to get us started with a rolling start uh, for this one. Our only rolling starts of the weekend coming in the uh, Welsh Racing Drivers Association Welsh Sports and Saloon Championship. And I do love a bit of sports saloon series where you don't see many sports saloon series out there now, really. And uh, the variety of car you get always produces fascinating racing, uh, particularly when you go to a slightly more technical circuit. That car isn't racing, <laughs> but uh, is uh, uh, certainly a car that's caught our camera <laughs> operator's attention, and rightly so. Uh, 
uh, as uh, spectators continue to pile into Silverstone ahead of a busy day of racing. Two by two to the line then. Uh, Nigel Mustill and Keith Butcher on the front row. The headlights ablaze already on the Volvo uh, as it uh, prepares to get the race started from pole position. Away they go. Keith Butcher though very much going with Mustill uh, as they head into Cops Corner. Who is going to get the advantage? They're very, very tippy-toe through the uh, right-hander at Cops, but it's the Volvo that comes out on top. The Lamborghini slots into second and Christian Douglas in the aerial atom trying now to move up to challenge as they head towards Beckett's. Yeah, he is going to try and this is, I think, just a, an opportunity to chat about the, the, the championship. The great that it has the away day as up the inside there goes Wayne Spiller, the championship leader, making a pass. We've got inter-class racing going on as well as the overall race itself, which is great to see. But, yeah, lovely little mix of cars, isn't it? It really is. Uh, Mustill and Butcher are in the same class. They're both in Class 5. Yeah. The higher the number, the more powerful the cars are, basically. So the Class 5 cars typically finding their way to the front. So that is a battle for uh, Class Honours. The other class that should be quite competitive is Class 2. There are four cars, I think, entered in that class. And that class headed by Scott Parkin on the grid in his Audi. And I believe he still is leading that class as they head out of Luffield and make their way through Woodcote for the first time. Little group of cars here headed by the uh, the Ginetta, the Ginetta G40, uh, which is uh, Gareth John. Fifth place overall. He's in a class of his own, I think, Richard. So a class win guaranteed. Uh, and so he'll be uh, particularly incentivized to, uh, incentivized to go and take the fight to some of the more powerful cars around him. Yeah, we've not seen too many entrants, have we, in, in class four? Class five was only populated for the first time this year on their last outing, which was at Thruxton, where we saw uh, Nigel Mustill and uh, Chris Everall share the wins. So we've sort of gone from having no class fives to three, but Chris Everall's not here, sadly. Would have been nice to see him battling out the front. But, um, yeah, class four has been um, largely dominated by uh, Damien Longato, but he's not here this weekend. So it's uh, championship-wise, things could, could change around. Indeed so. Good battle for second place here, though, as Christian Douglas comes up to challenge Keith Butcher's uh, Lamborghini. Which makes a lovely noise. So does the Volvo, that low rumble of the Volvo, which I think has raced previously that particular car in the Dutch Supercar Challenge, I seem to recall. OK. Uh, which uh, is uh, sort of a, an even bigger version, really, of a sports saloon championship. It's one of those sort of anything-goes uh, championships over in Europe which did make a visit to Snetterton a number of years ago, rather randomly. Um, first time and only time, I think, that they visited British shores, but uh, I think that's where that car has raced in the past. It does make a beautiful noise that heads out of Beckett's and makes its way down the Wellington Strait. On the previous lap, though, Butcher was faster. He set the fastest lap of 59.475, only a couple of hundredths quicker than Mustill, but I'd say that gap's creeping down again now. It does look like it, doesn't it? Keith Butcher's giving it a good workout, and I'm hoping he'll pop up for the last round of the championship, which is in October at Pembrey, so uh, he'll maybe going for class honours there. Had some good drivers come out of Welsh Sports and Saloons over the years. Probably the one that I know best was uh, Jake Rattenbury, oh, whose yes. dad raced. Um, Ken raced in it for, for quite a while. I think businesses kept them away from the tracks recently. But yeah, a lot of decent drivers coming through. Yeah, Jake actually raced Lamborghinis as well, I seem to remember. He did, he? Yeah. In the Super Trophy yeah. And uh, did a few Fun Cup races as well a number of years ago, which he very much enjoyed. And uh, yeah, the uh, Lamborghini of Keith Butcher at the moment is the one that runs in second place, but uh, it didn't actually gain as much time on the previous lap as I thought it would. Only a tenth quicker in the end than Nigel Mustill. Had a change for sixth there. Wayne Spiller up ahead of Mark Williams, and uh, that's for sixth overall, but second within class um, two. Oh, so, so yeah. championship leader scoring a few more points now. Scott Parkin, I think I'm right in saying, has not raced in the championship so far this year. He's just using this as a bit of practice for his um, Audi TT Cup campaign. That will continue, and there he is, right on cue, Scott Parkin. He's also done some Funk Cup racing and uh, Dark Side Motorsport race a lot of uh, VAG branded cars in a lot of different series around the country. And uh, these Audi TTs that uh, are not racing with us as a series this weekend, but I believe we're going to see a lot more of them on the TCR package in 2024, which is good news. That's a really great championship that the BRSCC has promoted this year. And it hit the ground nicely. running, didn't it? Really did, yeah. yeah. Uh, just numbers, bang, 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 and yeah. more to come, even more being built, which is yeah. which is great. Scott Parkin, uh, track day trophy going back as well? Yes, Played track day trophy, yeah. In yeah. Uh, Focus, Ford Focus Cup as well. I think yes. he might have won that, actually. Uh, you might be right. You might be right. Definitely a front runner. And... Uh, uh, also races a VW Golf as well in uh, some 750 Motor Club series too. There is the Ginetta, which is now really pulled away from the group of cars it was battling with before. Gareth John, the G40. 
Shame he doesn't have a few more playmates out there in his class, but uh, enjoying an opportunity to uh, drive the Jetta G40 around a, a circuit that always produces good Jetta racing as well. And uh, because of the low power uh, in the G40, you've really got to keep the speed up through the corners and uh, makes corners like Cops and Beckett's an awful lot of fun, I'd imagine, in the G40. Gareth all on his own in fifth position. Sixth place you can see in the background, Wayne Spiller, having got past the Renault Clio of Mark Williams a couple of laps ago. Of course, the uh, Class 1 running on a, uh, a treaded tyre, so we will see the Class 1's, um, hence Verity, Verity Banks being a little way down, so it hasn't got that tyre advantage. The other um, classes not restricted on tyres, they can pretty much bolt what they want onto. Oh, uh, there's a spin for Gareth John. It's unusual to see a Janessa spinning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> on its own, yes, definitely. And, uh, well, I said that you have to try and keep the momentum up through the corners. He carried a bit too much momentum maybe through Luffield there. And the screech of tyres was the telltale sign that he got things a bit wrong. So Gareth John slips down the order again. It won't affect his class position. He's the only entrant uh, in class four this weekend. But does drop back behind Wayne Spiller and Mark Williams. Wonder whether or not he's going to have the time to catch them back up again before the chequered flag perhaps doubtful because we are already six minutes in nine minutes to go another fastest lap set now by Nigel Mustel who is starting to um, really command this race out in front 3.6 seconds the gap back to Keith Butcher in second and third position still for Christian Douglas that gap two and a half seconds they're really spreading themselves out a little bit around the Silverstone National Circuit so we get a chance to have a look at the Renault Clio of uh, Gareth uh, of uh, Mark Williams excuse me who runs as car 180. Surely a missed opportunity to run number 147 for uh, Mark Williams, but uh, he uh, has gone with 180, running in class two, third place within that class at the moment. Championship leader, Wayne Spiller. He's P2 in this one, but uh, as you mentioned, the class leader, Scott Parkin, not, not a regular in the championship. So not sure if he's a guest and not scoring points, but Spiller will continue to build on his lead. That's Verity. Yeah, in the Fiesta. And uh, you can see the difference in corner speed that she's able to carry through cops on the treaded tyres, not able to commit to the turn in quite the same way that some of the cars in the higher classes can. But uh, Verity, relatively new, I think, to racing. And uh, this is not a bad place to come if you've not done a huge amount of racing in the past. Not too many corners to learn, plenty of space to uh, use. If you're still trying to gain in confidence. She stays well out of the way there of both the race leader, Nigel Mustin. I think that's the second of the RX8, uh, RX8s of uh, number 56, Craig Attard, isn't it, that was coming through. So we're still continuing to lead. There is Butcher second. And uh, yeah, I didn't think we'd seen Mike Cook yet. He's in the uh, BMW 330. Which uh, rounds Cops Corner. And again, all on his own. A nice, peaceful Sunday morning drive. They tend to have other championships involved. So when the cars were down at, um, I think, uh, Pembray for the second round of the year, they had some of the super silhouettes joining in, yeah. took out, you know, paid a few, few quid for some extra racing. So they joined in, um, had a mixed grid. And also we've seen these cars with the Classic Saloon Sports Car Club runners as well. Um, so they have had, you know, they'll take the opportunity, take a bit of grid time elsewhere. Um, it is a shame they don't get to race on Anglesey, but um, it's actually quite a trek, isn't it? If you're based at Pembroke, <laughs> which historically this championship was, um, not the easiest of journeys if you're based around South Wales to, to get up to Anglesey. To be fair, Anglesey's a bit of a trek for anyone. I live, uh, <laughs> as the crow flies, probably only about 40 miles away from Anglesey. It still takes me two hours to get there, but uh, well worth the trip. Get a faster car, uh, mate. That's, what <laughs> That's where I've been going <laughs> wrong, definitely, yeah. Uh, maybe a Mazda RX-8. I've always, uh, always quite fancied one of those. Uh, but yeah, lovely place to go, Anglesey, especially on a nice sunny day such as this one. I've spent a few grim, grey, wet weekends there as well, where I'm... Wish I was anywhere else, but uh, it is a uh, fantastic venue to go and race at, that's for sure. So maybe they'll uh, add it to the calendar in uh, the future. So, as the number 56, that is, yes, the RX5. I think I've been called the RX8, so they are RX5s uh, that uh, Attard and Spiller are at the wheel of. Although the championship table definitely calls them RX-8. So I'm, <laughs> that's where my confusion came from. I didn't think I'd made that up. Uh, yeah, and they look like RX-8s, don't they? So, um, uh, yes, a little bit of uh, confusion on the uh, Welsh Racing Drivers Association website. Just like to keep us on our toes sometimes, don't they? Yeah, they do. Craig Attar winning the um, Class 2 for the last round. Class 2, the, I think, probably the most competitive, along with Class 3. 
because we've had Robert Rees as well as Mike Cook winning races. It's Mike in the BMW, Mike second in the championship, Wayne Spiller leading it, as you mentioned earlier on, Andy, and uh, Craig Arnold third in his Mazda, Andrew Williams in the Clio fourth. Nigel Mustill, though, whenever you see him, it's always impressive machinery and great driving as well. Um, and this is a, a joy to see. It'd be interesting to see it go around Pembray a little bit later on in the year if he does do the, the final round. Yeah, it'd be a bit of a handful, wouldn't it? Silverstone's a perfect track, really, for this car. And, uh, down the carrying the speed through the turns, but a tight, technical, old-school, bumpy circuit such as Pembray. Although I think they've resurfaced bits of Pembray, haven't they, over recent years? Yeah. Smoothing the ride a little bit. It's uh, certainly a very different driving challenge, and it's a nice little variety of tracks, actually, that they do race at, starting at Castle Coombe, another real old-school circuit, then Pembrey, Thruxton, uh, and then, as we said, back to Pembrey again for their fifth and final event of the season uh, a little bit later on in the year. Still rumbles back through again. And ten-plus seconds now, his advantage with four minutes of the race still to go. But... Uh, we wait for him to come through, see what the lap times are. 59.6 for Mustill, 1 minute 0.8. So in the early stages, Butcher was doing uh, 58, mid 58s actually. It's dropped off the pace a bit now, and as a result, Richard being caught once more by Christian Douglas. Yeah, he is. So Christian, although it's an invitation entry, it does give us something to watch. And Christian getting wound up here, trying to close down on the Lamborghini. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> Verity. <laughs> Oops. Now, where are you going to stay, Verity? Inside? Yep, she does. Sees them coming through, no harm done. But Craig Douglas closing in again, as you said, definitely helped him. Yeah, it wasn't the best place, really, was it, for Butcher to catch Verity Banks? And uh, the Lamborghini on the straight able to rumble through pretty quickly, but uh, really had to throw the anchor out to avoid running in to the uh, back of the Ford Fiesta at Beckett's. And now having to defend heading into Luffield Corner, so Douglas looking around the outside, a lightweight uh, aerial atom with that huge rear wing and a front wing attached as well to generate more downforce but that also generates more drag down the straights and so he's quicker through the corners not as quick down the straights and that therein lies the fascination of sports saloon racing for me because you get these yeah. completely different car designs that generate their lap time in very different ways but over the course of a lap very very little choose between them absolutely right didn't jake hill race near at him oh a while back as well i think for not you. sure Pretty sure he did after Janetta. Oh, right. maybe because so. there was a one make championship, wasn't there, for a while yeah. in the Yeah, UK. I was racking my brains earlier on to think whether that was too. It's not going now, is no, it? No, I don't think so. Uh, aerial Atoms do race in other series, but yeah, uh, yeah they don't have their own championship now, which is a shame. Never really quite took off that, but it was a great idea, I thought. It always produced exciting racing. I have to confess, I don't remember Jake doing it, but I, I will take your word for that. He does like to get behind the wheel of as many different cars as he can, does Jake, doesn't he? And clearly started that from a young age. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> Very talented driver, Jake Hill, that is for sure. But, uh, right now, the Lamborghini of Keith Butcher hanging on to second place in our Welsh Sports Saloon race. Again, Douglas closing in across the line, just under two minutes to go. And uh, Nigel Mustill is uh, 14, nearly 14 and a half seconds clear of these two. Where is Douglas going to try and make his move? It's all well and good being faster through the corners, but you can't physically drive through the Lamborghini, so uh, trying to outfox Butcher is not going to be the easiest thing to do. Always difficult to pass a car that has a straight line speed advantage on you. Yeah, we'll try and close that. It's been actually quite interesting watching these two. Nice little battle. Down the straight again, they'll be coming up behind Verity Banks again soon, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Keith Butcher, he's had actually lots of different very exotic machinery over the years and you must you must uh, get down to Pembroke at some point because you'll be quite surprised at the sort of cars that, <laughs> that, that are there. Yeah, it's a big close-up again from Douglas and uh, but now we'll see the Lamborghini start to stretch its legs, pull away, heading off towards a runner-up slot here in Class 5. It's definitely that final sector where the Atom is quicker, but nowhere to go with it, really. I think his best chance is to really carry some good speed through Brooklyn and maybe try and go around the outside, even at Luffield. Might just have the grip available to him to do that. Uh, the leader has started his penultimate lap. There he is, heading down the uh, Hellington Straight. Everyone sort of oh, well, joining together, each other on the, It always <laughs> happens, that, doesn't it? Get towards the end of the race, and they all find themselves sharing the, uh, the same bit of road. But uh, it is the Volvo of Nigel Mustill. Uh, who has the advantage heading through Luffield Corner then for the penultimate time. One more time around the 1.6 mile Silverstone National Circuit. 
and for Nigel just needs to pick his way through the traffic without any dramas. Now, could that traffic be the catalyst maybe for a change in second place? Because we already know the aerial atom handles a little bit better through the technical stuff. If Butcher gets delayed by another bat marker, could be Douglas's opportunity. Could have a go, couldn't he, here? I was just having a quick look at class two. Scott Parkin's still there from Wayne Spiller, well clear of Mark Williams. So that's where the championship points are really going to bite the hardest. But here comes the Atom. Verity Banks has been passed. So Verity's going to notch up another finish in the championship, which will, I think, pretty much probably help us secure the class title now, I would imagine. I would have thought so. Now, I think they are going to catch this group of bat markers down the back straight, aren't they, Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas? Yeah, here we go. Now, the back straight is the best place, really, for the Lamborghini driver to catch them, but uh, uh, is he going to have the space left available to him? I think that he probably will. Pulls to the outside, clears them all on the run down towards Brooklands, and uh, through will go the Lamborghini past all of the bat markers. Nigel Mustill hasn't really had to overtake anyone but bat markers in this race and it's a lights to flag victory for the Volvo S60 driver then. Nigel Mustill claims the bit win. Keith Butcher should hang on to second place and that will be second place within class five, a class that of course was won by Nigel Mustill himself. Uh, Butcher coming through now in the Lamborghini. I can tell when the Lamborghini goes through because I can hear him uh, very clearly out of the commentary box window. A very distinctive noise uh, for the Huracan. Douglas in third. Um, only half a second between them at the flag. That was definitely the best of the battles in that one uh, with fourth place due to go to Scott Parkin in the Audi and uh, that will be a class win in class two we've already had our championship leader through uh, that being Wayne Spiller in the class two Mazda RX5 uh, RX5 RX8 uh, <laughs> who uh, will finish second in class uh, Gareth John the only entrant in class four so of course will be a class winner uh, we've also had number 52 to the line that being Mike Cook to win in class three and as we said, Verity Banks, the only entrant in Class 1. Uh, but by finishing the race, you will claim the maximum points in that class. So, uh, intriguing battle there between Butcher and Douglas. That's going to be the thing that I'm really looking forward to the most in Race 2, I think. And uh, I think if Christian can get past Butcher at the start, he might have a chance of hanging on. But passing that Lamborghini was not an easy thing to do. And he had to settle for third place. Nigel was still then the winner. Keith Butcher second and Christian Douglas third. Scott Parkin came home third. Uh, uh, fourth, sorry, ahead of Wayne Spiller. With Gareth John, Mark Williams, Craig Ackard, Mike Cook and Verity Banks, the order behind. Was still a winner in Class 5. Uh, Christian Douglas, the Invitational Class. Scott Parkin won in Class 2, Gareth John won in Class 4, Mike Cook in Class 3, and Barry Banks in Class 1. And Anthony's got to interview all of the winners and all of the podium finishers. <laughs> 50. Uh, well, we do have a one hour look break to fill. Oh, so, okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, And we're going into next, actually, a 45 minute, uh, no, sorry, a 20 minute uh, qualifying session for the 45 minute Club Sport Trophy race later on. So we will right. cover a chunk of that qualifying session, but Anthony is quite welcome. Uh, to chat to as many drivers as he can find down uh, in the uh, podium area. And they'll start to um, group up down there now, led by Nigel Mustill in the Volvo, except he's driven straight past the podium area. Uh, I don't want to be interviewed. There we go. Yeah, so they, I'm, I'm <laughs> resisting the urge to make a joke about them spotting Anthony Jordan lurking in a corner and uh, deciding to drive on by. But he will have the chance to chat to Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas. They've pulled up where they ought to be. And uh, Nigel must still should be used to winning races by now, Richard. He should know where he's supposed to go, uh, but uh, decided instead to head straight down to Park Fermi. I suppose racing at Silverstone, not something that the drivers are particularly well versed to doing. And having their live stream interview duties to uh, carry out after the race, also a bit of a novelty for them. But uh, we do have the Lamborghini and the Aerial Atom in. I think they're the only drivers that we're going to have to chat with. And I'm hoping Anthony's going to be in position very shortly to do just that. <laughs> yeah, Christian Douglas in no hurry to get out of the car, is he? I think no, he's, he's not. Uh, he just looks like he's nodded off, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he's having a bit of a nap, actually. Scott Woodward is going to come along. Scott will wake, wake him up, Scott. Yeah. Go on. So. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, in fairness, Keith Butcher also not getting out of the car. So this is uh, it's, uh, going to be not the easiest set of interviews for Anthony to try and conduct. But uh, after 15 minutes hard work, in particularly in the Lamborghini, a very hot cramped cockpit, I suppose getting out and standing in the sun, not necessarily top of the list of Keith Butcher's priorities. We got a thumbs up from the number seven anyway, which was something. Which was nice. So it's it could be an in-car interview now then. I think it might be, yes. We do need an interviewer to uh, conduct interviews though, and I think Anthony There he is. There he is, right on time, not a moment too soon. Anthony Jordan then can catch up with two of our overall top three finishers. 
Thank you very much, Andy. Yes, uh, we have two of them. Yeah, like you were saying, Nigel must have uh, just, he drove past. I waved at him to stop and uh, he waved back and uh, carried on driving past. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll chat to uh, Keith Butcher. Uh, Keith, well, um, firstly, beautiful car that you've got here yeah, uh, for, nice, to start off with. And, uh, well, that was just a nice uh, drive in the sunshine, really, at Silverstone. Yes, yeah, so I think my tyres have gone off, though, a bit now. Right. <laughs> He's been wanting me to put new tyres on, but I'm too tight to put them on. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was very nice, very good drive. Yeah. But I could feel it around this uh, corner back here that it didn't have the grip, so, mm. you know. Didn't really have the confidence there. No, well, uh, it was a good race. Yeah, it was a good race. You had uh, you had Christian Douglas uh, right next to you as well, yeah. so you were having a, a nice little scrap all the way throughout. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, how was that for you? Very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah I see him in the mirrors, and I pull away down the straight, and then he'd be <laughs> back on this corner over here. But yeah, it was good. And I caught a few slower cars in the wrong place where I could, was quicker than him. <clears throat> so you know. Yeah. But it's all swings and roundabouts, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Uh, you're out later today as well? Yeah, we've got one more race. I think it's about 3.30. Excellent. Perfect. Well, we'll see you out there. All right. Thank you very much. Ho hopefully uh, with a fresh set of boots uh, on the car. We'll see. We'll see if we can uh, try and um, get you sorted out with that one. Let's head over to Christian uh, Douglas uh, in the aerial atom, who's currently being spoken to at the moment. And, uh, yeah, they had a pretty close little race there. Uh, I'm really gutted that uh, Nigel Massa didn't join us. I mean... I know I'm ugly, but I didn't think I was that ugly. I, he just drove off without me. Absolutely Thank you. Said. Lovely. We've got, we've got a spot here. Christian, uh, we'll jump in. And, uh, well, that was uh, certainly a nice little uh, race you were having there, closing in under breaking into the corners, and then, unfortunately, the Lambos waft uh, just getting away from you on the straights. Yeah, need about another 150 brake horsepower, I think. <laughs> well, there you go. I'm sure you can find this, yeah, the space in here to uh, squeeze that in. But uh, enjoying the, uh, the weather here at Silverstone. Yeah, weather's fantastic. Every race I've done this year, it's been wet, so it's really nice to turn up in some sunshine and uh, great trying to keep up with the Lambo. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. But uh, I've noticed that you've, you have got a windscreen on this car. It's quite small and you still managed to find every single bug here at Silverstone uh, to go on there. That's quite impressive. Yeah, four inches by three inches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're out later on today. Uh, are you wanting another nice race with Keith or, or yeah, do you, are you yeah. going to try and push it a bit harder? There's not much, you know, I'm losing about sort of 80, 90 foot down the straight. So, yeah, I can try and make it up in the brakes, but I don't want to overcook it and end up ruining it. So, yeah, it's good fun. Good fun. Excellent stuff. Well, congratulations. Well done. And, uh, yeah, enjoy uh, a P3 on that one. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff there from our uh, top two drivers. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our number one driver not wanting to stop for a chat. Uh, qualifying is going at the moment for the, uh, the SW class, but um, certainly, uh, Andy, this is uh, a very interesting one. We'll take a short ad break, though. Lunch break's coming up next. And, of course, we will be heading to the TCR UK Championships for round 10. So do stay with us. The Voice, 
and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woya.co.uk today. Welcome back to Silverstone, everybody, where we're into our final qualifying session of the day. It's for the BRSCC Club Sport Trophy. They're qualifying a bit later than the rest of the series because, well, they're racing a bit later than everyone else. They only have the one race this weekend, uh, and it is the last race of the day. So uh, they've been uh, afforded a little bit of a line this morning before their uh, on-track action begins. But a big grid of cars, as always, with Club Sport Trophy. 36 of them, I think, uh, have been out on track so far in this qualifying session. I think there were one or two more even on the entry list. So uh, the uh, SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy continuing to be really well supported. This was an initiative that the BRSCC came up with a number of years ago to basically give drivers an extra race at the end of the weekend so it really caters towards uh, the class structure caters towards a lot of regular brscc uh, categories so things like master mx5 championships uh, the bmw compact cup the audi tts these days can come and race here as well we've got quite a couple of uh, civic cup cars as well that we're very used to seeing on the tcr package uh, racing here too and then we've also got a lot of drivers who now specifically come in to do club sport trophy races but it was just a chance for some of those drivers who are used to doing one make sprint racing an opportunity to sample something different multi-class it's a 45 minute mini endurance race with a mandatory pit stop in the middle 15 minutes of the race and uh, it always produces some really really good racing as the classes intermingle and on a short circuit such as the silverstone national one i think we could be in for a particularly lively race later on but this is just the qualifying session and at the moment we're five and quarter minutes in the fastest car out on track is the Matthew Bolton BMW M3. Now, Matthew Bolton seems to have acquired a co-driver who wasn't on my original uh, entry list, so I don't know whether you've had uh, a more up-to-date version of that, uh, Richard, but uh, Matthew Bolton was listed as a, a single driver, and he's found a friend now, and whoever's in the car right now, fastest so far in the session. I don't know who his plus one is, unfortunately. Right. I will try and find out before we get going. I was just having a look to see who's here out of the regular drivers that we know perform quite well. Scott Parkin is here out there yet? Because he's literally he is. had to, to go and refresh <laughs> after the World Sports and Saloon car race. So he's a glutton for punishment, isn't he? He's getting his buddy's birth, isn't he? Today, he is, definitely. yeah. A uh, couple of interesting names as well. I mentioned that we've got a couple of these Civic Cup cars. Well, Ryan Bentley's Civic Cup car, which is a championship contender this year in Civic Cup, is here. And he's got some bloke called Josh Cook sharing the driving honours with him this weekend. Josh, Wait, he's uh, busy because he was uh, he won the he won just the Brands. Oh, did he? Did he get another yeah, win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, right, right. I remember chatting to him at the start of the year when he won on the Grand Prix circuit here, the first round of that series. Yeah. And uh, he and Jade Edwards uh, teamed up, didn't they, to get a win? Yeah. So uh, yeah, lots of miles for him to travel, and uh, yeah, great to see him behind the wheel of a Civic Cup car. I reckon he should be pretty quick. Yeah, Josh always quick wherever he goes. We haven't got, I can't see on the entry, this Liam Crilly. So it looks like Liam's maybe sitting this one out. He's one of the over, the regular overall winners. Um, and this Scott Parkins in overall, isn't he, in Class yep. B as well. So we, we can expect to see him there. And you'll see we've got a number of the uh, Audi TTs out. But the other regular winner is uh, Firo's Billamoria in his yep. Sirocco. And uh, Firo's at the moment is fourth and third in Class A. Yes, he is. The Class A cars filling up most of the front-running positions, although Luke Handley in the uh, number 51 uh, Audi is uh, the interloper at the moment in, in Class B. He's third quickest. Ryan Bentley and uh, Josh Cook are fifth quickest in their Honda Civic, just ahead of Owen Hillman, uh, who runs out of the same team. Uh, in Civic Cup as Ryan Bensley, the uh, Pro Alloys Racing team. Owen Hillman had a nightmare weekend at Cadwell Park a week ago in the Civic Cup Championship when had a, a lot of pace potential, but uh, ultimately a bit of bad luck. And Ryan Bensley won the final race of the weekend and arguably should have won the first one as well, but he had a mechanical issue very early on, having started from pole position, so he'll be looking to bounce back in the uh, Club Sport Trophy race later on. Uh, but uh, further down in the classes, we have got... 
Class D, headed at the moment by the number 150 Mini. That's uh, Julian Hammer. Uh, except it's not, is it, on our entry list? Because number 150 is Julian Hammer on the entry list, but in the session, a pair of Stevens in oh. a Mini. So uh, another little amendment to the entry there, which we'll try and clear up before we uh, go racing a bit later on. is a bit of driver change. You've knocked the tripod Practice. over, mate. Ah, there we go. <laughs> there, was, there was a clunk <laughs> I thought someone in the had, commentary box. I actually thought someone had come into the pit lane and hit the pit ball then. I do apologise. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I will tidy up after myself. But we have got some driver change practice going on uh, down in the pit lane. That's the number 37 car. And that is uh, Jeremy Evans and Phil Hart conducting a driver change then uh, to uh, practice for the race later on. And, of course, that's the other thing with cars that are being shared by drivers, uh, you have to, both uh, drivers have to complete three laps minimum within this session, so it's not just about setting a good grid position, but also about qualifying yourself for the race. New pole position time now, though. It's set by David Bay, former Compact Cup racer in his Nissan 370Z, and by exactly two tenths of a second now, he's jumped ahead of the uh, number 29 BMW. Luke Handley still third, Scott Parkin now fourth, those are immediately onto the pace, and for those Moria completing the top five. So we've got Archie Handy out as well. Is this the first time Archie's done Club Sport mm, Trophy? I don't I remember. He was in him. juniors last year, he wasn't was. he? was, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't recall seeing him do a Club Sport race before. But again, that's the great thing about Club Sport. Basically, any uh, tin top, any roofed uh, BRSCC formula eligible to come and race within one of the classes in Club Sport. And it is a trophy, not a championship as well. So no points. You can come and go as you please. You can do the odd race here and there. You don't need to commit to a full season. And uh, that, I think, is always a good idea as well. Championships are great. And I, I do love watching a championship uh, develop over a season. But it's always that nice. door open? I think it was a window. Oh, I, was I, I, a... I was distracted slightly yeah. there by the yeah. Leotone Hillman, isn't it? The Pro Alloys car. I've just seen the, the, yeah, it is the window. Uh, passenger side window coming a bit loose. Hillman's bad luck continuing, although that shouldn't slow down too much. So there's a big battle between the Civics in Class B. They share that class with the Audi TTs as well, so two of the BRSTCs more popular. Uh, one make championships, one that's been around for a long time in the Civic Cup, and one that is making its debut season this year, the TT Cup Racing Series. Uh, both sharing the same class here in Class B. Impressive to see Luke Handley in a Class B car at what should be a real power circuit, Silverstone. Uh, very much taking it to some of the more powerful Class A cars. Yeah, he's doing well, isn't he? Six tenths off pole position at the moment. He's in the pit lane as Luke Handley. Races with Scott Parker quite often in two driver endurance racing, but uh, both of them racing their separate cars this weekend. Always happy when I can see a Mark 1 Master MX-5. I just saw <laughs> one uh, skipping through shot. I think that's the number 30 car, isn't it? Alan McKenna and Tim Crichton, maybe. Uh, a spot of uh, Master MX-5 racing. Got to entry of uh, Chris Fantana, number 22. He's an uh, MX-5 as well. Ah, right. May, may have been here. May have been here, yes. The, not as many of them here this weekend because we're not supported by the MX5 Championship this weekend, but when we are, we usually get a few of them yeah. popping out for the Club Sport race. Had a, a C1 update from Rob Lewis, a regular member of our commentary team, and uh, Rob says that uh, Josh Cook won the C1s yesterday by 0.2 seconds. The top three were covered by 0.4 seconds at the flag, and that was the end of a five-hour race. So here we were, thinking that we enjoyed the most exciting endurance racing of the weekend yesterday. <laughs> we did. In the we did. <laughs> C1s giving them a run for their money at the very least. Is both sex. great, both great events. Fantastic championships, yeah. Yeah, well, a series for the uh, C1s, but. Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed covering the 24 hours. I don't know if you saw the, the pictures from Rob on social media and he put little clips. I don't know if was it streamed yesterday, probably wasn't. Was no, it wasn't. But he had some dodgy attire on yesterday. Oh, did he? He did, yeah. We were giving him stick. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, you got there, Snetson. We were giving him some real grief about shorts and otherwise. Uh, and uh, yeah, yesterday, I'm not. Yeah, have a look. What <laughs> was you wearing, Rob? Right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Quick uh, scan of the socials uh, coming right up there. It's uh, so a bit, bit unfair. He's not here to defend himself. But he's, uh, <laughs> Fantastic, great guy, Rob, and uh, it was a pleasure to work with him briefly at uh, Cattle Park well, a week ago. Uh, the uh, modified Ford series just seemed to get around. So, uh, Rob, it's 
Ah, oh, modified Fords, yeah. So you know we were talking about names yesterday that you can oh, yes. work together. It's like Dictionary Corner in Countdown now, isn't it? Do you watch Countdown? <laughs> I do, actually. Do you? Oh, top man. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so, Nicole Drought uh, yes. could be cancelled out by Craig Rayner. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Or indeed Simon Waterfall, who was racing at Cadwell there last week. There you go. Week in, uh, <laughs> yes. as well, yes. I like this game. I'm going to call it. I've come prepared at Donington with, uh, with a few... Uh, with a list of names, that's uh, it's good stuff. And uh, plenty of names to pick from in the Club Court Trophy, a very popular series. A huge amount of drivers entered this weekend. And uh, we've had races on the Grand Prix circuit here at Silverstone where the grid has exceeded 50 cars. And uh, not quite at those numbers here, but I'm sure we'll race once again on the full circuit at uh, Silverstone. And there is a car you don't see racing all that often. What was that then that... Uh, came through the shot. I think that was the Fiat Panda, wasn't it? Of Dean Lomas and Martin There's Walker. A panda out there. I don't think Goodness I've ever seen me. a Fiat Panda on a, on a racetrack. That's, uh, yeah, there it is. Just going through over a bit of debris, actually, yep. on the way into uh, Maggots and Beckett. Auto Italia back in the day. Uh, see, possibly. Possibly, yes. Yeah. Not, can't say for sure. Addison would know, but... You know. There's very little. What he doesn't know about motorsport is it's not generally worth that. So uh, I will pick his brains next time I see him. But, uh, yeah, the Fiat Panda is certainly a rarity. Uh, that debris, by the way, I'm going to presume is the passenger side window of Owen Hillman's car that's finally given the ghost <laughs> and uh, parted ways with the car. So the yellow flags potential uh, surface flags out. But uh, Beckett's the red and white striped flag, which very often, almost always, gets referred to as a slippery surface flag. That's not actually what it means, it's just a surface flag, isn't it? It doesn't have to be something slippery, just something that's on the surface of the track that shouldn't be there, such as a passenger side window. Uh, and the drivers needing to be notified of that. Not that it was stopping most of them driving straight over, as I noticed uh, the last time we saw that part of the circuit. So, yeah, and there we go. Oh, and then just double checking that the driver's side window isn't going to come loose now on the Hillman car as well. So, I hope Owen doesn't have to get out of that car in a hurry because I think they've taped the whole, uh, I think they have <laughs> to take the window to the door, they've not taped the door shut. And there is Owen, likeable youngster. A car that you can't really miss uh, on this grid. Now, it's all well and good on a Club Sport Trophy grid, having a brightly coloured car on his car, and it rather does stand out. But when you've got seven or eight of them in a Civic Cup race, all almost identically liveried, it does make our lives a little bit more confusing. Yeah, it doesn't help, does it? <laughs> all four bright colours, but uh, the difference between the bright colours is always handy. Uh, David May, 64 thousandths of a second to the good in the session, so I think we've had an improved lap time from Matthew Bolton his mystery co-driver in the BMW uh, because they're within a tenth of a second now with third quickest Mark Jones in his uh, VW Golf then uh, Luke Handley fourth quickest he's the best of the Class B runners at the moment and top five completed by <laughs> Scott Parkin and, uh, yes, I've, I've just been sent some photographic evidence, Richard, of uh, the uh, is he listening? Strange, rather strange fashion choices he, that were on is, show. Is he listening? Did he, <laughs> he very much Yeah, yeah, yes. good. good. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Uh, yes, I wouldn't wear that shirt, but uh, <laughs> I, I respect anyone who does. Uh, right. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, in the pit lane goes the Matthew Bolton BMW. And uh, he's not going to be improving any time soon. In fact, that's probably his session done. He's only three and a half minutes to go now. Seen a huge amount of change of the order towards the front, but can be putting in a personal best middle sector on this lap in the Audi. Some attempts to perhaps get an overall place further up the grid. I think that might be Elliot Dunmore who's sharing the car with him. Just um, Google them. Ah, okay. Um, Elliot Dunmore is actually down as a separate entry in car 36, so I need to check whether there's a. 36 on the, uh, the on, well, on confusingly TSL. there is yes and is that done more as well <laughs> it, it may be that Elliot's doing two because we have had drivers do two well unless I would, there's another there is no other driver of car 36 so uh, ah. unless that also hasn't made it over to TSL timing yet but uh, unless the Dunmore this is another Dunmore brother or something or father potentially or son or, yes, yeah. yeah just to confuse that's another car you don't see a lot of those the Subaru BRZ which mm. is Subaru's take on the Toyota GT86 that's the same car, essentially, isn't it? With a, a Subaru badge, I think. And uh, another car that you don't see a lot of. And this is a car that is becoming an increasing rarity as well. Uh, a, a two VW Golf GTI, which makes uh, its way down the back straight. Uh, that 
that is Paul Connell, who I think did used to race in the BW Golf uh, Championship um, a number of years ago. The championship that sadly doesn't exist anymore. We still have the classic BW uh, Championship, though, competing uh, at the RSCC events. With Club Sport Trophy regulars there making their way through. The number 60 of Lee Reynolds, 62 of Chris Stone. Reynolds in the Integra DC5, which is one of the prettiest cars on the grid. Always looked at DC5. It's a very wide line out of uh, Luffield Corner. He's got the number three for Fiesta behind. It's one car that I'd love to tell you the driver of, uh, but it hasn't been put on our entry list. Surname Cosmin, looks like it's uh, entered uh, into Class A. Mr. Pedantic, Luke Austin, has corrected me on my GT86 and Subaru BRZ comparison. Apparently, the BRZ came first, which uh, any car enthusiast, I'm sure, should have known. So, uh, thank goodness Luke is on hand to educate me in matters of uh, Japanese sports cars. So David May still fastest, 64,000 clear of Bolton and Dunbar, a slow mini here. That's the uh, 153 off the pace. Another car that isn't on the entry list, <laughs> rather helpfully, uh, but the mini is... Uh, I actually can't see a 153 on the timing screen. That looks like a bit of exhaust or something that's fallen off, maybe. Our 155, potentially, yes, that is. That does make more sense, the mini. That's Matt Mills, Nicole Trout, and uh, Mini Cooper. So whether that exhaust or whatever the metal piping was at the side of the road came for the Mini, I'm not so sure. Yes, it quite clearly is 155, my mistake. Uh, the Mini pulling off into the gravel trap at Beckett's, I think that is. Yep, so well out of the way. The marshal's just trying to help them to uh, position the car even more safely behind the uh, concrete wall. This likely now means that we won't see any more improvements because there'll be yellow flags out uh, up at Beckett's. And, uh, only about one second left on the clock. Those yellow flags are going to be there until the conclusion of the session. So, in theory, you should be improving at least in that sector. And indeed, nobody really is going any quicker than they were before. So, it looks as though David May uh, is going to claim the pole position for our SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy race a bit later on this afternoon. It'll be the last race of the day uh, after all is uh, said and done. Got a full afternoon of racing coming your way, though, so uh, don't be going anywhere. We've got two TCR UK races, the headline acts, no doubt, uh, this afternoon. Their first race will be getting underway uh, just after half past one, but we'll have build up throughout the lunch break. We're staying live through the lunch break. Paul O'Neill, Anthony Jordan, and myself will be heading down onto the grid, uh, chatting to a few drivers, and uh, giving you all the build up to what is going to be a very competitive race. Such a close point qualifying session yesterday uh, for TCR UK. And don't expect the races to be. Uh, just as tight. Uh, we also have a further race, a piece for the Airtech Motorsport Fiesta ST240 Championship, the Super Classic Pre-99 Formula Fords, the Fiesta Juniors and the Welsh Sports Leagues will be back out before our second TCR race, uh, which is due to start at about 20 past four. And the SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy, the cars that are just completing their qualifying session now, uh, will be uh, taking to the track hopefully just after five o'clock this afternoon. So, chequered flag has waved them and session complete here at Silverstone for the SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy. David May on the overall and Class A pole position. Class A car spinning out the top three places actually because Mark Jones in his BW Golf uh, managed to jump into the top three before the flag. Uh, handling then fourth quickest overall is the Class B pole sitter. Class C headed by number 115 Jonathan Hunter and Class D by the number 150 Mystery Mini, uh, which has different drivers listed, the Stevens listed in the 150 uh, on the timing screen. Just ahead, a couple of places ahead of Barry Cully, Barry and Martin Cully. Martin Cully used to race, I'm sure, in the uh, Seat Leon uh, Cooper Championship back in the day and uh, is racing one of those original Cupra R uh, Cup cars, as is Barry Cully this weekend. So here then is the grid 
uh, hopefully in full in a moment or two uh, for our SW Motorsports BRSCC Cup Sport Trophy race later on. Uh, and it is David May on pole position, the Bolton and Dunmore BMW second fastest and the Jones and Rogers VW Golf third quickest. Luke Handley, Scott Parkin are next. They're the top two cars within Class B ahead of Rose Bill Moria uh, and then Ryan Bensley and Josh Cook, British touring car runner starting from seventh though in Hillman eight David Cox ninth and Elliot Dunmore in tenth Larry Cosman Lee Reynolds Jonathan Hunter and then the number 37 of Jeremy Evans and Phil Hart rest of the grid uh, will appear in front of you and uh, we look forward to what will be a 45 minute race a bit later on this afternoon there is Martin Cully who I was just referencing starting 15 just ahead of Ashley Parsons Ashley Parsons running within Class C this weekend the 150 car the Hammer Time Motorsport squad uh, will be starting from 21st. So Julian Hammer must still be associated with that car, but doesn't appear to be driving it in this race. Dan Blake in his four, in uh, his number 271 is out there in the Renault Clio, which he's bought, former MX-5 racer. Dan Blake, very rapid sim racer as well. He'll be starting 30th on the grid for our final race uh, later on in the day. So we are done for on track action in uh, for the time being. As I said, don't go anywhere though, because our live coverage from Silverstone will be continuing with build up in a few minutes time for our first TCR UK race of the day. After that incredibly close qualifying session yesterday, it's one that you won't want to miss. So we'll take a very quick break from Silverstone and we'll be back down in the pit lane in just a few minutes. The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woya.co.uk today.
The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woyard.co.uk today. Hello and welcome to Silverstone. It is TCR UK. I'm Paul O'Neill. He is Anthony Jordan. Thank you. Anthony, good to see you, fella. You've been yeah. busy yesterday. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the boys and girls from all the TCR UK teams and drivers were busy as well, weren't they, in, uh, in qualifying? Went quite well. It did go quite well, wasn't it? Uh, I think top 17 separated by less than a second. Uh, the top five separated by, uh, I'm going to say, less than two tenths of a second. So, yeah. This is going to be a mega first race that we're going to see in a few moments, Cool. Yeah, pretty impressive. The other thing I was uh, I was quite impressed with was how the BOP is working. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know at home, uh, the balance of performance, it's it's about carrying weight, it's about how they um, change the ride out of the car. It's just mm -hmm. to kind of handicap uh, the good drivers, isn't it, and, and the people who've had the, the best results. But the BOP working really well. Yeah, a lot of the drivers have been actually been praising that one while I've been talking to them over the course of the weekend. And uh, yeah, you, you are bang on. It has been uh, it has been great. A lot of people were saying that you know going into the weekend they were thinking that oh, the Coopers are going to dominate on this one. Uh, the Audis were going to be uh, right at the front and at the sharp ends. We have seen a little bit of that, you know, with Oliver Cotton coming through his best ever qualifying of the season. So you know he'd be uh, really happy with that one. But it's been the uh, Hyundai's again the Hyundai's have really been showing that they've got the pace here and that was the same back when we were last here uh, in 2020 you know it was the i30ns that dominated uh, Lewis Kent being the the winner of both the races here on that one so you know it just shows that these uh, these Hyundai i30ns maybe they've struggled at other circuits but Silverstone seems to be their home yeah it does doesn't it and it's interesting because it's it's literally two long straights mm. a complex at, uh, at the end of uh, the sector but there's a few fast corners in there. Mm -hmm. what, what would make these cars so good? I mean, they're a hatchback, so I would say they, they're not going to fly through the air that fast. No. That's what people are saying, actually. The drivers who are behind, yeah. the Audis, yeah. they're, they're concerned about they might hold them up in the straight. Yeah, it is, a, it is a case on that one. But, again, we were seeing it all the way through yesterday. Tyres is a big focus for these drivers as well. Yes, okay, you can push it on the straights, you can get the slipstream, you can work well on that one. But then when it comes into the complexes like Brooklyn's, Luffield, everything like that, uh, and the high-speed corners, uh, Cops Corner as well, they're really pushing these tyres to the limits. And um, we've not seen any failures uh, of the tyres, but drivers are concerned about it. So, you know, I, I think it is going to be a challenge for them over the course of the race because it's a long race that they've got as well. Um, two races today as well. So, you know, there's still a lot that these drivers can do uh, with the setup to try and focus on that one. And constantly, all the way throughout the night, drivers have been working on those setups as well. So, yeah, again, qualifying was a story. 
but I think this race is going to be a different one because it is a long one, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, should we have a little wander up? Let's go for Let's it. Have a little chat. Um, so it. the poleman will be very happy, won't he? Adam Shepard, fantastic pole. You were speaking to him yesterday. He's just filled me in as well. Hmm. There was a bit too much fuel in the car. They had a couple of little problems, and there was a lot of um, a lot of extra weight. Obviously, you miss Knockhill, um, but yeah, uh, you were on holiday. And New York, it was New York and Knockhill, so. Uh... Oh, okay. Looks like we're going to be using my microphone. Oh, yeah. um, sorry, mate. Yeah, he was asking a question about how was your holidays. Lovely. It was great. I was drinking, watching uh, TCR in uh, in New York, so it was all good. Um, tell us about the car. What's going on? Um, happy with where you are? Absolutely not. No, we uh, had a good free practice. We changed it a little bit to make it positive and it went the complete other way. And we just couldn't keep it straight. So we went to top 10 and we finished P18, which was not what we wanted. But we'll move forward in the race. We know we've got top 10 pace, so just go forward. What's the data saying? What was it uh, saying? Was your half a second off? 58.6. But that's with it oversteering. So if we'd have put it together, we'd done a 58.6. So it would have been still... 13th, 14th, but if we'd have got it where it was in practice, we'd have done a, on new, we'd have done a probably top 10. Okay, and is, is the toe make a big difference around here? I know with any other championship I've been in, if you can get a toe down one of the two straights, you're in for a, for a bit of a, uh, a good lap. Yeah, we didn't get to anybody yesterday, so we were out on our own. So we watched everyone else, and the Audis punch a massive hole in the air. So get behind an Audi and qualify, you do really well with the toe. I was just on my own the whole session, you watch it, and it, it was... It was interesting. It wasn't very fun, and it was not where I wanted to be, but we'll move forward today. So Go forward today. We're just watching Adam Shepard's car trying to turn itself over. I think they're just uh, trying to fuel things up and make sure that the um, the car makes the weight. It was a bit heavy. Um, I think what we will do, and thank you for talking no to us. Appreciate that, Luke. I think what we will do is we'll talk to uh, Alex Lay. Uh, he's got a better tan than me. Um, Alex? How are you, Captain? Are you keeping well? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. You, yourself? I'm well, thank you. I was just uh, complimenting you on your tanner. You've got the same tan as me. Did you go to Ibiza as well? I'm going to Ibiza in September. Lock up your grandmas. Um, how's the old qualifying gone, mate? You must be happy with that because you're going to be running compensation weight, aren't you? Yeah, no, it's so close and the compensation weight doesn't help, like, especially at a track where it's like so close. Like, I think it was a second from 1st to 16th, but... Two, two temps off pole, so I can't be too disappointed. See what I can do in the races. You going to get any help off anybody? Uh, well, well, Bruce is at the, they're there at the front, so I think I've just got to do what I can do and see. So, yeah. Top man. Listen, we'll leave you to it. We'll let you go. We're going to catch up with a few other people. Um, just a quick one with Josh, uh, Mr. TCR. Yeah, um, just asking about the, um, the hatchback shape of the cars. Um, just as a, as a general punter, let's say, not working for any teams. Why the Audi so quick? Uh, it's aerodynamics, isn't it? So the hatchback, you've got a flat back, basically, so the air rolls off it, it goes straight down, so the car doesn't have, like, as, sorry, has more drag. So with the, the Elantra, the Audis, they've got the nice shape at the back, the air flows off it a lot better, just makes it like less of a parachute, basically, down the straights. So Audis and the Elantra, quick at the end of the straights, Luckily, like the Cupra and the Hyundai, they've got quite a lot of grunt out the corner, so they sort of make up the first half of the straight what they're going to lose at the end, so it's going to make it close and tight. So if the straights were a bit longer, it'd be a different story. I think it'd be an Audi, <laughs> Audi domination, but they're not quite long enough. Yeah. <laughs> so if a hatchback gets a bit of a dodgy run out of a corner, you could, you could have a go. It's screwed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nicely put. Excellent. Right, let's throw to an onboard of this circuit with Ollie Cotton. Watch this. Well, qualifying is done here at Silverstone for rounds 10 and 11 for the TCR UK Championship. I'm here with the driver who qualified P5, Oliver Cotton. And Oliver, it was a solid lap from yourself. Uh, certainly um, a surprise, I think, maybe for you? Yeah, it was a very big surprise from, uh, from, from the start of the season as we've been struggling with the car setup and just overall experience with the car. So I think, we, I think I have reset my mindset and that's quite helped. Uh, we've got a good setup with the car this weekend. Exactly that. The setup looked absolutely spot on. And you've got your, your fastest up from qualifying here. So hit play, mate, and uh, talk us around uh, a lap of Silverstone National because it certainly looked very quick out there. 
So this is a lap around Silverstone National. Going into Cops, so we break downshift into turn one and it's a light turn in and just keep it smooth so you get the best run down to Maggots. Down to Maggots, you're going to position your car to the right, turn in at the turn in bo the board on the right and break really hard downshift to second and try and hit the apex late and use all the inside curve and you can run wide as you want here. And now going down the straight, the hangar straight and now towards Brooklyn, got a lovely toe off Alex Lay here for the lap so thank you to him. And we will be braking right after the painted curbs and we want to bleed off, turn in so the car doesn't get sideways, we've got a bit sideways there, lost a bit of time. And now into Luffield, we brake really hard, get the car rotated and get on the throttle smoothly so we minimise wheel spin to get a good exit to the start finish line. And heading through the last corner, we want to cut most of the track we can on the inside without doing track limits to just minimise the distance to the finish line and that is a lap. Mate, it was a solid time, so uh, yeah, you're looking really confident out there and the races are going to be exciting as well, so uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, it'd be good racing here, I think we've got a really good race car in the rest and we've got really consistent times out of qualifying, so it'd be good. Yeah, be good to see you. What an absolute beauty of a mm. lap that was. Uh, put Ollie P5, and that's his best ever qualifying in TCR UK. He was quite consistent, to be fair, at Knock Hill, but yeah. just didn't have that overall pace. I drove his car and his teammate's car at Knock Hill, mm. and they're the same car, but yeah. he just didn't have that grip that I expected the Audi to have. No problem with that uh, Paul Sheard racing car now. No, exactly that. They seem to have found uh, some gremlins in it, and it's uh, been flying out on the track here at Silver, uh, Silverstone. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing what he can do in this one, because what was it? Two 11th places and a 13th, I think, at Knock Hill for the triple header. Uh, I think his best result has been a P10, and I'm expecting him to uh, to do better than that one on this one, hopefully. Fingers crossed for him, because uh, I think he certainly deserves it. Yeah, definitely. If he gets away well, that's all he needs to do, is get away well around here. Mm. He's got the car in a straight line, like we were talking to Josh Files, um, but uh, damn lucky being better. But you've got Joe Marshall there as well. He's mm. alongside, and that is a quick pedal or quick out. But he's, he's up qualified him. No, yeah, no, he has. You're absolutely right. And... Uh, uh, it's always been the Rob Austin guys have been like really on it with their t uh, Gen 2 Audis. The Paul Sheard uh, Gen 2 Audis not been on there. Now it seems to have changed tables. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. We might have a proper race on it. I want to come over because I want to uh, speak to uh, to Jack. In fact, we could both speak to Jack. We can uh, we can side swipe him from both angles because he's been an absolute pain in uh, my rear end this weekend. Jack, uh, mate, race one's coming up. It's going to be an exciting one. Qualifying was close, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's been a good weekend so far. I mean, not not. Well, it's, 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 no, it's been good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll take it. Positivity. Yeah, yeah, we'll take the positives. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we found quite a lot on the car last night, so we're happy. We feel like we put the right foot forward going into today, and hopefully, we can come through in the races. Yeah, it is going to be a challenge though. Silverstone is a fast track. There's not many overtaking opportunities around here, but do you reckon you can uh, still pick up those places? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, Paul is over there. You've seen his tan. Yeah, it's horrific, isn't it? It's pretty Could bad. Have done your hair this morning as well, mate. <laughs> mate I've literally just got out of bed and then it was like, right, well, I better get down to Silverstone. I forgot what was on, actually. No, I'm joking. Oh, um, right, it's like that. All good. Um, I was just listening in on that conversation. Ugh. What's the tactics going forward for race one? But there isn't any. We're just, gonna, we're just going to go for it. I mean, we, we, we didn't have the car underneath this yesterday. Um, not any fault of our own. Some bits have moved, which we weren't expecting to move. Um, so the setup was just nowhere near where it needed to be. So going into today, we've put everything straight and where it should be. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll move forward. Super. And um, Russell Joyce, what were you talking to him about? Oh, I mean, he's got some silly cars and I'm doing a bit of restoration work for him. So we, uh, we end up talking Come on, let's uh, about that choice, kind of stuff. Jack, that's not the truth. The truth is I've been coaching Jack this season. Um, <laughs> hence, that's why he's going backwards and he's now 12th on the grid. I mean, I didn't coach him at Knock Hill and he did quite well there. Um, no, but joking aside, no, we, we, we've got a relationship outside of work uh, where we, we you know I do a lot of work for him with graphics, with Joyce Design, and he does a lot of restoration cars for us and services our vehicles as well. So it's no, you know, it's no surprise that we, we meet up here and obviously I try and support him where we can. Well, we did the wrap on his car today, you know, so hopefully that will look good and make him go faster. A bit of hashtag go faster stripes on it. But, um, look good, yeah. go fast. Do you know, it's really interesting. Yesterday I watched the qualifying at home on my sofa with a beer and it was great. Yeah, the live stream was really, really great. I'm super impressed how competitive, how competitive the whole grid is. And was it top 17 by a second? Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I mean, 
three tenths off and in 12th. I mean, exactly, yeah, yeah. great. Crazy. There is no inch given, no quarter given. Or your car's not 100% and you don't bring your A game, you're not going to be there. And then today, an hour and a half up the road, driven up here, going to have a spectacular day. The weather's here. I'm looking forward to some really close, good quality racing. And I think we've got it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the championship coordinator, Russell Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> the promoter. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. It'd be great to see you back. Are you coming back? Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Might, I might come, make, make an appearance before the end of the season, put it that way. So. It's a poorer place without you, Russell. Thank you. No worries, mate. Right, okay. let's crack on. Brilliant, mate. Um, let's get that was on with nice, it. wasn't it? It's it good was, to hear from them guys. It was nice, wasn't it? I mean, uh, who, who, I mean, Phil's pointing at us here. Where are we going? We're going out this way. Oh, Mr. Wilmot. Oh, want to chat to him? Hello. Mate. Looks like Slim Shady. Do you know, Paul? Yeah. Well, I've lost 10 kilos. Look yeah. at this. That, still, still, good. still got the man boobs, though. Lost the, uh, <laughs> lost the weight. I mean, have you doing the Daz White challenge, or is that a brand new shirt? Like, do, do you like it? A black, white, black, white. Yes. You look amazing, mate. Thanks. What's new? Are you going well? What's going on? What? New car, another one. It's only the sixth one in two years. <laughs> What's the difference? I think England have just scored. I think England have just, just scored, scored in the women's, yeah. the Lionesses. Maybe it's one all, as you were. Where were we? Oh, <laughs> differences. Oh, difference. Um, yeah, it's, you don't have to wrestle it as much as the high end eye. The high end eye, I'm too old for that. <laughs> it's, it's like driving young a man's car. It's, yeah, it's like driving a rally car on the tarmac. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, it is a young man's car. But this is more, I don't know. It's just, it just. It gives much better feedback for me. It just feels a lot more stable. I didn't buy it just because it was fast. It was. Just, it came up at the right time. Um, Dan Kirby, obviously, he wanted out of the car, so I, I kindly obliged and <laughs> said so I'll give it a go. Um, I wasn't actually going to do anything. I was only going to do some testing. And testing turned into doing a race event and potentially another one at the end of the season and then potentially next year and maybe the year after. But oh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep this one. I was, I was about to say, people don't buy... Gen 2 cars for a laugh. Yeah. So I'm thinking you are going to be definitely around. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to stay around for a little bit. It, it was good. To be honest, I'm, I'm rusty because I drove the drove a Hyundai that I bought at the beginning of the season. Cause I missed the first race, Snetterton, because <clears throat> I was away. And then I was watching it on telly while I was away. And I was like, oh God, I've just got to get back in it. So I was straight on the phone to the first car that I found on Race Direct, which was the Hyundai that I drove at Croft. Um, and the only reason I did Croft was so I can lose the 30 kilos to do the two rounds I wanted to do, which was um, Donington and Alton Park. I missed Alton Park because I didn't want to use the Hyundai because I just, I don't know, I just didn't really trust the car. I didn't feel like I gelled with it. So I was like, no, I'll leave it for the season. That's when Kirby said, do you want to buy my car? Um, and yeah, so I, I agreed and thought I've, I've got, to give it a, got to give it a go. And yeah, here we are. But like I say, I feel, felt a bit rusty, but... I don't know, found a little bit of pace out there. It feels all right. It's only going to get quicker, isn't it? And um, it is. I think we're going to move on and, and speak to another couple of guys. Mind the wasp. Don't yeah, worry you got about a wasp that, in your ear. I'm absolutely... <laughs> uh, like a champ. Immortal. Immortal. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> no Cheers, Andy. Today. Yes, yeah. Good Wicked. to see him back, though. And, yes. Uh, yeah, Missed I, him. Yeah, it, I reckon he's going to stick around. You know, he, like you, you said it, nailed it on the head there. You know, he's not going to buy a Gen 2 and then not stick around. So, yeah, uh, yeah certainly. Uh, let's... Well, there we go. It's two <laughs> prime suspects right here. Are they Leeds United shorts? They are. Go on, um, get in there, Paul. Leeds, 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 Leeds. Are they doing all right in the Premiership? Championship. Oh, that yeah, wasn't yeah. even a joke. I'm no, so sorry. No, no, no. no. That's, that was definitely you getting one over me on there, wasn't it? It really wasn't. Do you know what's really bad is I'm a massive Liverpool fan and I watch matches today all the time. And I've th as I was chatting, I was like, I literally have not seen Leeds in in any of the uh, the couple of matches I've, yeah. I've seen. Um, big Leeds fan, though. Yeah, big Leeds fan. Got season tickets, all that try and get up there as and when we can so don't ask me why I'm a Leeds fan living in Ipswich it's one of those but always have been and yeah always will be not a fan of the tractor boys then there are obviously it's like you know where I live and all that sort of thing I used to go and watch them at some points when I was younger but no nah, I've always been a Leeds fan through and through top man um, let's talk about racing um, I was going to say you were in the playoff um, places actually in qualifying you've got to be happy with that actually because that's a good place to be isn't it to be honest, I'm actually pretty much over the moon with, with sticking it forth. Um, we had a couple of little issues. We had a big vibration. My own fault. I didn't check through the wheels after knock hill and I had some bent ones on the car. So I had a massive vibration. Um, so I think that probably cost us a little bit. Um, but 
with the maximum ballast in the car and all that, then yeah, well happy with P4 and yeah, we're we're in the mix and yeah, good to go. Did you get a tow in qualifying? That for me round here is the is the big thing. Yeah, no, not a tow. No, just literally done it all on our own. So it's one of those. I, we did think about maybe sort of trying to do something with the tow, but you, you know how it is. If you're on one of them laps and then something doesn't quite go right or a little bit of miscommunication, it can cost you big time. So now we just decided to go go out on our own and, and get on with it. Is it? Um, you're the first TCR driver. I've asked this, but is the wind making a big difference? It was windy yesterday and today. It is. I find that it's a bit of a headwind and it can cause you a bit of trouble. You need to get in behind people and try and tuck in. Yeah, I mean, definitely the wind, wind makes a massive difference, doesn't it? And I know the wind direction has changed a little bit this morning. So, yeah, we've, we've had a bit of a look at that. For me, it made the car just super loose through turn one yesterday from what we'd experienced earlier on. So, yeah, we just had to, you know, when we went for the second set of fronts, we just literally just dialed a little bit of wing in it just to try and calm it down through turn one. Right. A lot of people won't know about that. You can actually move the wing in the TCR cars. Um, looking ahead on drop scores, you still got healthy advantage, but you can't just go into a, into a race and think, oh, I'm going to score this many points and go away this many points ahead of the weekend. It just doesn't work like that, does it? No, it doesn't. And, and I'm not thinking of it like that, to be fair. Um, just looking at it, going into it every weekend is another challenge, like we said before just chipping away at little bits on the car we've done a little bit more again this weekend just like little fine tuning bits some some work with a diff this weekend as well it's all sending it in the right direction so just going out to first of all enjoy it have some fun try and get as far up as we can and what happens with points happens with points friends and family here this weekend uh wife and one of my daughters have just turned up so yeah yeah lovely listen best of luck not long off now well you've got about half an hour you'll be in the car won't you Top man. Thanks, Carl. Excellent. The championship leader there speaking to us. And uh, yes, Anthony, who have you got there? It's Jensen Button. It's Yeah, Jensen Brickley here. You know, Jensen, you've had a good old season, haven't you? In Silverstone, the car's looking quick and uh, you've got a challenge on your hands, though, this one. Yeah, definitely got a challenge. We had some issues in qualifying with the fuel pressure, but fingers crossed we've sorted that for the race. And yeah, we're just going to hope to move forward. Yeah, uh, we were talking, well, I heard Paulo talking about wind and potentially that being an issue here. It, it seems to, it's, the wind's calm here, but when you're out on track, do you feel it much? You can't really tell, but from Friday to Saturday morning, you can definitely tell the difference in wind with the speed of cars like the Audis with the aero package being better. It, but it was harder for them on Saturday, whereas on Friday, you could see that they were pulling away a bit more. So maybe the wind will work in our favour. Yeah, exactly. And has much changed with the car overnight after qualifying? Have you done any changes or is it pretty much the same? Yeah, little tweaks, but when we normally aim to have the car to be not so good at the start of the race and come on a little bit towards towards the middle of the race. Yeah, yeah, it certainly has been a, a good one, hasn't it? But uh, what are your predictions for the race, though? Because, uh, mate, honestly, it's so, so close out there. We can't call it. You know, every car is looking quick out there. Yeah, it's definitely going to be close. Like, like I say, three temps all the way to 13th or something like that. But, yeah, so hopefully, like I say, we move forward. We're aiming for a podium, and then we'll see where race two goes from there. At least the sun is shining for you. There's no chance of rain at the moment. Maybe race two, we don't know. No, I'm kidding. I don't think there's any chance of any rain today. Uh, but, mate, this is going to be an exciting one. And uh, what do you think? Uh, for the fans at home, what would you want to say to them? Uh, just watch the racing and enjoy it. It's going to be close touring car racing. We've seen the Fiesta Juniors earlier. They were really close, and we're going to be closer. Exactly that. Cheers, Jensen. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to be going to... We, we, Paul, I know you want to talk to people, but we've got commitments, my sunshine. We've got commitments. We've got to go and speak to Joe Marshall. He's coming up. Scan me? Don't scan me? I'm not too sure. We'll find out. Joe Marshall, welcome. Come over here, mate. Come over here. Uh, well, TCI UK, Silverstone round. It's been a busy season. A couple rounds left to go. Firstly, how have you found it? It's your first season. First season's been really, really good. Um, I mean, pre-season we went really, really well. And then, I mean, every single round we've actually had an issue with the car, um, with it being the dampers. And then fortunately for Knock Hill, we got a brand new set of dampers for the car. So I think considering the problems that we've had with the car, we haven't done too bad at all. Podiums is great, but obviously I'm looking for that win now. Yeah, exactly, that's what you're fighting for. And Silverstone couldn't be a better place to try and give that a go. Fast track, the Audis are some of the favourites going into this weekend. Uh, you've got that top end, you've got the cornering that you need. So the, the chance of that are very high this weekend. I mean, the, this Silverstone track is really for long cars like the Audis because they do so well in Europe. So it's just like Silverstone track. Even with the weight on board, Jack's proved that um, with the weight, the car can go quick. So yeah, 
just try, try and get your head knuckle down and ready for qualifying. Yeah, that's the main thing, isn't it? Qualifying is going to be an interesting one. Dry, sun is supposed to be shining, so that's going to make it nice and close and interesting. The races themselves, though, I reckon the bops have been worked on uh, for this one. Do you reckon that's still going to come out OK for a lot of the drivers? Do you still uh, we're going to get some close racing? Yeah, I do, to be fair. I mean, the BOP has worked out pretty well, really, because you've had loads of different winners and different manufacturers. So the BOP is working. Um, so, yeah, I think the BOP is doing well. Um, obviously, I wish it was less on our car than all the other cars, but, um, yeah, it is what it is. It's because these Audis are too quick, man. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, mate, uh, well, honestly, t this year it's been good. You certainly seem to have found your feet. You found your place in the paddock, which is awesome. Uh, I mean, what's the plan going forward? Is it another season? Are you sticking with the Audi? Are you changing it up? What's the plans? Um, I like the Audi. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking to do next year. Of course, that's, we need to get sponsors on board, which is obviously everyone needs to get sponsors. I'm guessing it's, it's, it's hard to get sponsors on board. So, yeah, we'll be looking into that. But, yeah, my next year's plan will be to do TCR UK. Well, have a safe weekend. Enjoy the racing. Joe, uh, we need to go to an ad break now. Can you take us to an ad break? We're going for an ad break. See you later. The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woyard.co.uk today. We're getting uh, well complicated here, aren't we? Wow, what's that? Sounds like, uh, sounds like my ex-missus. Um, so, Silverstone, TCR UK. Yeah. The main man, yeah. Stuart Lyons, championship promoter, um, all things TCR UK. We always do a little interview here, yeah, and you always say, yeah, it's going great. But it really has, a star has born, been born, hasn't it, this year, with this championship? Yeah, it's consolidated. It's like we haven't moved forward massively, but we've moved forward a few percent. You know, you've got to do 10% a year, maximum 20% a year. If you grow too quickly, you could, you know, start getting bigger problems with money, cash flow and that. But uh, we've done it building blocks and uh, it's a solid pit lane now you know everyone here is you know here for the right reasons you know they can all afford to do it the race has been good uh, sponsors are happy you know it's hard to keep everybody happy but you know we seem to be doing a reasonable job of that what's been the big difference if you were to give give me three things that have made a big difference um, and you can't use Ash Gallagher because to be fair he has made a difference with yeah. how the championship looks in my eyes 
yeah, Ash Gallagher, one person, you know, we, we're not going to go out there and, and employ 400 people, we can't do that, but we bring one person, it's like having 10 people, isn't it, the right person, so, you know, he's, he's really, he's a, he's a guy that's uh, well known in the industry for doing a decent job, you know, he's an honest guy, that's what we need. Uh, I think the uh, new generation cars has changed the game, you know, because they're, you know, that slogan, race on Sunday, uh, buy on Monday, that's relevant again, remember back in the day, you know, because you can buy these cars from the showroom and people like looking at modern stuff. Um, and I think the third thing was, I think the prize money has moved things on a little bit more, you know, we, w we didn't know whether it was a good thing to do or not, but, you know, it's something that everybody else hasn't got. So, you know, three nice things there. Yeah, and just one more question as well. You talk about the older cars, the newer cars. We've got Scott Sumpton, who literally is half a tenth off pole in an older Honda. What message and signal does that send out to people looking at this championship? Well, you can buy a car for 50 grand and come and win. It's down to the individual. You know, if you if if you learn how to drive it properly and you put a bit of effort in, you can. You don't need a new car to win. It's nice to have a new car, um, but you know, there's a lot of second-hand cars out there. When we first took it on there was six cars in the UK total there's 80 now you know they're on they're on race cars direct and it's not like you've got to go out there and spend 130 grand on a new car you know you can you know there's people that are always going to do that but you know the old cars proved it you know and the Hyundai's are quite long and the tough as well the i30 ends they're all they're all near the sharp end so uh, yeah it's not people start looking into it properly on the outside who are looking at two because we we never I, I can tell from phone calls and people coming to watch us that you know people are taking the job seriously and saying yeah that's an option now whereas three years ago it was well no it's not an option at the moment but it is now all things are good in TCR yeah. UK aren't they they are indeed yeah it is looking very good Silverson's going to be an exciting one but uh, Knock Hill was also very exciting we're going to take a short break and could look at some of the highlights from the last three rounds of the championship CR UK is go at Knock Hill. Carl Borley makes a demon start from pole position, will lead comfortably down to turn one. Jack Constable actually didn't get quite as good a start as his teammate Joe Marshall. Left three wide behind Jensen Brickley, squeezed onto the grass almost as Adam Shepard nits up the inside of Alex Lee. And now they all hold their breath. Aaron Hutchison wants to try and gain one better. He's up the inside into the side of Winfield. There was definitely a tap there, but the Hyundai driver keeps control and holds onto the place. He's got the drag, he's gone through. Can Hutchison fight back on the inside? Fantastic. No, there's contact. Off will go Wilson. Off will go Hutchison, through will go Newsham, and I think Darren Wilson, yes, backwards into the barriers, big damage done. Have the top speed, all the uh, thing as it's side by side here between Cotton and Wilson, Wilson trying to get it down the inside, not able to get it done, and Cotton holds on to it, Wilson runs wide, and now Gary Townsend comes through and gets the move done as well. Ooh. This is one of Newsham with the move in towards the final corner and gets it done for the apex. Has he run too wide though, because Smiley's got the drive out of the corner. Yes, he has, he's got the inside line, but who's going to have the grunt over the hill? Pretty even so far you'd have to say between the Hyundai and the Honda Smiley has that preferred inside line let's hope we don't get a repeat of the Hutchison and Daryl Wilson clash no Chris Smiley a classy move back up the inside yeah he's uh, certainly struggled as nope. again Newsham down the inside into the final corner this time I think it's a block pass and he holds yes. that inside line Carl Bordley exits out of the final turn he's going to take another chunk of points out of the points leader Bruce Winfield with his second victory of the season across the line he goes a dominant performance from Carl Bordley here at Knock Hill lights out away they go that is Scott Sumter making a demon start from further back in the order but Matthew Wilson does make a good start he will lead them down into Duffer's dip Smiley slots into second third place Newsham grid order basically at the front of the field Bruce Winfield ducking and diving his way through the order whilst uh, already Jack Constable is ahead of Adam Shepard so a bit of shuffling there amongst some of the front runners from yesterday's race they drop down the hill and that is Marshall Joe Marshall off into the gravel trap what a shame and, and that's Bruce Winfield the championship leader has tangled there with Jensen Brinkley somehow saves it clicks the tyre barrier rejoins on the road, others scatter in avoidance, but that is major, major drama. The first bit of really bad luck for Bruce Whitfield. Because he got it done. No. Oh, a hip in the shoulder. And Brickley won't like that. He's trying to squeeze it, but now look at Shepard on the grass. That's naughty, oh. naughty stuff from Brickley. He's alongside, round the outside of Newsham. If he gets this done, this will be super special. That's a move. That is a move from Jensen Brickley. Brilliant stuff. Down to the hairpin. This is where it all kicked off a few laps ago between Brickley and Lee. And now it's Carl Bordley applying the pressure. Brickley defends. Come wide, come wide. He's missed the apex. There's a gap on the inside. And Carl Bordley is there. Carl Bordley to the lead as we head for the line. Is it a last lap board? Is it a checkered flag? It's a, it's checkered, a checkered flag. flag. And a 
Toto finish. Jensen Brickley has held on oh. to the win because Bordley has a track limits penalty. What? Jensen Brickley gets the win. Alex Lee second, and Adam Shepard is on the podium. Carl Bordley <laughs> with a by 17 thousandths of a second was wow. behind Brickley at the line. The way they will go. Who's going to get the best of the starts in the Coopers? It is going to be the pole sitter, Carl Bordley. Look at Callum Newsham on his toes to try and find a way past Joe Marshall. Bordley leads there. Brickley second. Bit of an overlap there for third, but they end up single file across the top five or six. As there, Alex Lee goes up the inside of Chris Smiley. The constable's up the inside. And Newsham very nearly off the edge of the road. Alex Lee alongside him, side by side through the chicane. That is not possible oh. to do without contact. And there is contact. Newsham goes around off the front of Alex Lee. And now Bruce Winfield getting involved. Sometimes double pedals. Oh, talk about double pedaling. That is not going to make you catch the, uh, the championship uh, winner from last year because he hit that double stick <laughs> curve so hard the car didn't even on one wheel. That was very spectacular from Beeson. He's uh, certainly not lacking in commitment. Uh, Callum Newsham was just out there having some fun now. He's unlapping himself here from Oliver Cotton. Uh, nips up the inside of the Ulster in the Audi heading through Clark's corner. 11th race of the season is going to go the way of car 41. It will be his third uh, race victory of the year. And it means he'll go to Silverstone with a reasonably healthy points advantage. Carl Wardley victorious here at Knock Hill. Weaves and flashes the lights in celebration as he sees the chequered flag. Backed off towards the end there. Jensen Brickley only 3.2 seconds back. And Joe Marshall in third. There we go then. Knock Hill was quite fun, wasn't it? It was. I enjoyed Knock Hill. I thought it was uh, a cracking uh, weekend. A lot of... Um, a lot of good racing. Mm -hmm. Can be a lot of contact in Knockhill. Didn't seem to be that much, so we were all good. Um, two gentlemen here. We've got Scott Sumpton, who had a super day yesterday, qualifying third, half a, half a uh, tenth off, which is very impressive. Teammate Chris Smiley here as well. Firstly, though, mate, P3. How does that feel? It feels amazing. It's settled in now. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to the race. Just looking to stay up the front and, uh, yeah, have a good race. Get some racecraft out of it, a bit more experience and yeah, be battling with the front boys. Have you been speaking to your uh, your championship teammate? Has he been telling you, do this, do that, give this a go? Because you can put a plan into place, can't you? But then it can just be a nightmare. Yeah, you can obviously put a plan into place, but there's so many different variables out on track. Of course, Chris has been helping me, saying just get a good start, get off that line and just send it. So uh, yeah, I have to take a little leaf out of his book. He's shown me a few on balls from when he was in uh, the other touring car championship. So yeah. Hopefully I can do the same as him, get up front. Love it, mate. Um, I know you need to go for a nervous poo, so we'll let you go. Um, I'm not joking, he really does. Um, right, OK. I'll leave this one to you, because yeah. I probably will get taken off the air for that. No, you're fine. You're fine, Paul. Uh, Chris, obviously, this season has been uh, a bit of a challenge. You won, obviously, last year in the same uh, model of car that uh, Scott's in this weekend. You know how to... Everyone keeps reminding me of that. Yeah, I know. I'm sure they do. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but... Uh, Mate, honestly, there's not much you can take. Is there much you can take from this car? Obviously, it's an older model than what you've got now. Is there much you can take from it and put it into your car? Uh, you know, obviously, the fundamentals are all very, very similar. It's a front-wheel drive car, but the new car is just... We're, cl we're getting closer. We definitely are getting closer. You know, I think if you look at the lab times yesterday, I qualified 11th and I'm like two and a bit tenths off pole, yeah. which, which is great for the championship. It's not so good for me, but it just shows you that we are getting closer. I'm not saying we're completely there. Um, the guys sort of worked here last night until about midnight last night, and it's probably the biggest change we've made to it, fundamental change that we've made to the car for this, it, it, since, since, since we've got it. So, um, yeah, race one's going to be a little bit of a, a test session, but, you know, it's, uh, they're all things that we know in the past that we have tried in other cars that, that has worked. So, yeah, I'm pretty hopeful for it, actually, if I'm being honest. Um, I, think, I think the change that we've made should, 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 put, should point us in the right direction. So radical changes to the car then. So that is certainly going to make the first race interesting, and and you are confident that those changes are they are going to help out. Yeah, they're all they're all they're all things that you'd logically do with a front wheel drive car. Um, we've sort of been down a path with with the car that that yeah, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just it just maybe doesn't suit me as a driver. So yeah, we've we've made a lot of changes to it, and I think I think what we should learn out of this should be invaluable for us too. With Silverstone being such, you know, it's a fast track. It's, it's. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's certainly a track that you can get to grips with uh, relatively quickly. And, you know, you've had a lot of practice around here. You know the circuit quite well. And do you think, you know, this weekend you could still come away with an absolutely decent result? Yeah, you know, I think I think there's quite a lot of people in race one out of position. Yeah. So I think that's going to make quite a few opportunities. I think there'll be, there'll be, I uh, need to be careful what I say, but I think there, there will be a, little, a few little uh, tangles in the middle somewhere. 
and uh, I think that will bring opportunities along. I think the start's going to be critical. Um, and I'm going to have a new car to learn, basically, because this is a massive, massive change that we have made a big, big change. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, obviously, every time you go racing, you're very lucky to be going racing every weekend. So, uh, we might not just be completely at the sharp end at the minute, but we're still we're still working very hard with all our sponsors. The guys in here have, have, have done so much work. You know, the car's been back and forward at least six times. So, this this hasn't been for the lack of trying. You know, we've, we've made a massive effort. And... Um, yeah, I'm just hoping this change with me is going to going to make a little bit of a difference. Let's hope so, mate. We'll let you get ready. Cheers, Chris, for chatting to us. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, hopefully enjoys that one. Mr. McEwen's joined us for a time being, but uh, mate, Paul, drastic changes to the new Honda apparently overnight. Um, it's going to be like driving a new car, Chris said. Yeah, it's a bit. I find that a bit of a shame actually. What Chris Miley's saying because the car, you know, it's a brand new car. They're doing this much as they can you, you can't just pick up a TCR car and, and you know and just expect it to run no. you know flawlessly mm. you do have to do a bit of engineering and that brings other people into the mix you have to pay for engineers you have to do you know as much as you can I've done it with with Paul Sheard and their car you know that you get a base setup but sometimes you just need to go back to you know what you know um, and and try and get some rotation in the car I don't know what his specific problems are, but it um, must be a shame, like you said, about seeing that FL7 Honda mm. have got something up the road um, with an inexperienced driver in it. Um, but into the mix, yeah. we bring Andrew, um, Andrew Andy McEwen. Andrew <laughs> McEwen, it's like, I was going to say, it's not like one of your parents, I know, I'm calling you that. Um, how's things, mate? You good? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Good to be back. I really do enjoy coming to Silverstone. You know, you drive in and you just feel that the history of the place. And uh, yeah, there's a real buzz this weekend. Good to be back. Um, I haven't seen you for a while. Are they wasps following me around? Yeah, I think it is just you that they're following, I think. it's. Uh, I must say something about the way you smell. I don't know. It's exactly that. I used my sister's hairspray this morning because I stayed in London. Um, I've now become a massive Tory. Um, what else has been going on, mate? What, have, what was your standout um, little bit of qualifying yesterday? I watched it online. I thought it was quite interesting. It's like it's a bit of a partial reverse grid, isn't it? It's a very topsy-turvy grid, but I think that really just says a lot for how tight it is around here. We always expect on this circuit the very close qualifying tyres. We really saw that yesterday, and it means that if someone overperforms even a little bit it can make a huge difference you find two tents here and you jump three rows up the grid but likewise you lose a couple of tents and you drop a few rows down the grid and i think that's really led to that slightly jumbled order and it should give us a fantastic first race obviously we're getting down to the nitty-gritty in the championship now so there are certain drivers the likes of carl bordley adam shepherd really looking to try and score as well as they can and then you throw the wild cards in, the Oliver Cottons and the Scott Sumters. They don't care about points. They just want a really good result, and they see this as their best chance to get it. So, yeah, I think there could be a few fireworks. Talking about Chris Smiley and that Honda, is he out of the equation? Is he gone? Championship-wise, realistically, I think that might be the case. And I think that he's probably accepted that. To be fair, I think he accepted that before Knock Hill, honestly. In a way, it takes the pressure off in a couple of ways. He can just go out there and have some fun try and get some good results, remind everyone how good he is, as if we've all forgotten. Um, I think it also, um, it allows them a bit more freedom when it comes to setup work and the stuff that he was just talking about there, you know. If they want to take a big swing at the setup, why not? They've got nothing to lose now, and that's what they've got to do, try and develop this car for the rest of the year and beyond. So, championship's probably gone, but the season is not a lost cause, that's for sure. Yeah. And I think the cars are all leaving now. Yeah. What I was going to say to you guys, let's move over outside Brad Kent's garage, just so we don't get run over by these other two Hondas that are here. Yeah. Um, good to see the cars going early. We've obviously got the public grid walk today, haven't we? Yes, yeah, indeed. Uh, grid walk open at uh, quarter past one, which is uh, very, very soon. I'm sure everyone's queuing up for that one. So as the cars do make their way to the grid, let's remind you of what happened yesterday in qualifying. Welcome back, everybody, to Silverstone, where excitement is starting to build ahead of the qualifying session uh, for the latest rounds of the TCR UK Championship. A mixed up grid this is Adam Shepard, fifth, Alex Lee, sixth, Bradley Kent, seventh, Jack Constable, eighth, Chris Smiley, the reigning champion, ninth, and Joe Marshall in tenth position. That is not the order I expected, Anthony. Uh, not at all. And the top ten separated by three tenths of a second as yes. well. Adam Shepard, purple in the first sector, but now encountering traffic down at the end of the uh, back straight Shepard fifth fastest right now in the area motorsport Hyundai a track that I did expect him to excel at through mm. Lafield corner 
clips the late apex. Did that traffic really delay him, though? Let's wait and see. He's been fastest of anybody in the first sector. He needs to try and improve. He should improve, you'd say, from fifth place. Only needs two tenths to take pole position. He can't quite do that, oh. but he jumps up two spots from fifth on the grid to third for Adam Shepard uh, with a 58.391, uh, a tenth and a half off pole. But it's that good day that he's going quickly. Personal best in sector one and an outright fastest second sector for Bruce Winfield, but he's sideways oh. through Brooklyn, pushing a bit too hard, and that will be the lap time gone, but he was about to move the goalposts there, I think. Adam Shepard pushing hard as he heads out of Luffield Corner and makes his way towards the timing line. That looks so solid there through Brooklyn, and it just, it like you said, the front just grabbed and it just darted into the apex, so he'll be loving that one. To the line he goes, and he does improve it. 58.207, 7 thousandths of a second faster than Winfield. Could it be a second career pole position then for Adam Shepard, or have Bruce Winfield got an answer for him? Winfield wasn't a million miles away. He's good that one, but yeah, if he can get away with this one, I reckon this will certainly uh, cheer him up going into the rest of the season. Carl Bordley will be cheered oh. up as well because he's just jumped into third position. Now let's... Will it stay uh, there, Exactly. Though? Cross your fingers, everyone. Let's hope that that lap time sticks. Here's Chris Smiley, though. Uh, and again, Smiley has just been... Well, I think he's happy to be there, really. He's P11 at the moment. I mean, he's only two tenths off the pace. Yeah. Let's stress that. Yeah. Uh, again, let's look at that. Okay, so the top 17 Ooh. are separated by less than uh, a second. His teammate has just gone third. Scott Sumpton, oh. third place on the grid, knocks Bordley down a place. What has Scott Sumpton had for breakfast this morning? He is absolutely flying. More and more people bailing for the pit lane, fewer and fewer improvements, apart from Shepard, who improves again. Not by a lot, granted. He's now 22 thousandths of a second clear, but a 58.192 is handsomely now a new qualifying lap record. Checkered flag is out. No one really improving. It looks as though it is Adam Shepard's pole position. Great news for Adam. So here we are, round 10 TCR UK at the very, very famous Silverstone track, the national circuit. It's around about 58 seconds a lap, so the cars should be coming up and uh, rolling up. Public grid world, we've got loads of people now coming in. They all look scared, actually. Yeah. You're allowed to keep you're, coming in. Just have allowed, a quick look on. at everyone's waiting. Are you allowed to come in? Oh, the cars oh, are with yeah, the grid. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, just we're, causing we're, chaos we're, we're here. Right now. Sorry about that. I'm just literally just going to get all kids <laughs> run over and everything. Um, Andrew McEwen, Andy McEwen. Keep it's calling you. Why am I full name in <laughs> um, Andy McEwen, uh, good to have you on the grid. Lead commentator for TCR UK. You've had a busy one today, haven't you? But uh, it really starts now getting down to business. I'm going to ask you something that's probably going to throw you under the bus. Great. Who's going to win? Oh, that is a question, <laughs> isn't it? I, oh, there's a driver I really want to say, and I'm not going to say it because I have a history of uh, putting the curse on him, but uh, there's a few contenders at the front of the field, I think, with a good chance. The key moment of the race will be the first five seconds or so from this line to that first corner down there at Cobb's Corner. Because the times are so close in qualifying, I think we'll have a very close race, but it's not going to be that easy to overtake people. If you're capable of lapping within a few hundreds or thousands of the car behind you, should be able to keep them at bay. So getting into that first corner first is going to be key, and that naturally gives an advantage to the cars that start on the front row. So, uh, you know, it's not going to be a foregone conclusion. It's going to be bumper to bumper, I think, the whole way, and genuinely too close to call. Yeah, and you talk about genuinely too close to call. There's a lot of uh, speaker noise from people saying, don't go any further. I'm trying to get everyone on the grid so they can get run over. That went well. Um, 58 second lap round here. Yeah. It's going to be close. It's going to be tight. I can see some of those aero aeroly challenged cars being in a bit of trouble on the first couple of laps. They make a mistake. They're going to be attacked by Audis and yeah. cars that are saloon cars yeah and because the corners here are so fast is that if you lose momentum you're just going to get swamped by a pack and this is a busy grid 21 cars are on this grid this weekend and with everyone so close on the times you really don't you can't afford a single mistake if you step a wheel offline if you lose a bit if you just miss a gear shift by a fraction of a second you know you're going to be in some serious trouble this is why we love silverstone it is going to be an action-packed couple of races this first race though you ask the question to andy of who's going to win this you i can't put it on anyone you just can't any one of these drivers could win this yeah starting to get down to the nitty-gritty now and we've spoken about that and um, the other thing i was going to say is i've noticed that everybody's been pretty good with track limits so far what is that all about maybe they're starting to listen i don't know <laughs> i mean that's it's, not uh, true <laughs> no that's definitely not true <laughs> Look, we can argue the toss about the track limits as much as we like. The rules are what, what they are. They're not going to change. Um, and drivers can either keep on ignoring them and get penalties and have their races ruined, or they can just conform. Now, qualifying is different. There were lap tyres being disallowed yesterday uh, for exceeding track limits. I think 
none of the high profile laps, if you like, from the front runners, their quickest laps, they were all okay. So we didn't hear too much about it. Be amazed if we get through two races without any time penalties, quite frankly, especially with it as close as, as, as it is. You know, you're running nose to tail through a high speed corner like Cops. You pick up a bit of understeer through running in the dirty air. Very easy to just drift a bit wide over the curb. You do that, you start getting yourself in trouble. So. Uh, we're probably going to end up talking about it, but I really hope that it's not the headline story to come out of today. A lot going on, isn't it, at the back? Yeah, there's a lot going on behind us as well. We're going to get run over by a safety yeah. car, yeah. Paul, again. again. We so do we'll, this often, don't we? We'll follow we'll, you. Yeah, we'll move, we'll move over here a bit while the yeah, safety car comes in and pulls up between... Uh, yeah, yeah, the grid here. But uh, yeah, this is going to be this is going to be a good one here. I love how the safety car's got a transponder on it. I love that. Yeah, they it's... need to have it, don't they? Because uh, a lot of the uh, cars, if you can't see the transponder, it's a, it's a little red box on the front. If you just uh, gu <laughs> guide yourselves out the way. Sorry about giving you false information. So sorry. Yeah. Sorry, safety I car. I love that. It's like a live stream, and I'm trying to get everybody uh, <laughs> get everybody run over. Um, there you I go. think what we will do, mate. if it's okay, I think you can stay for a bit, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I've got to stop uh, calling you Andrew. Yeah. I think we should start getting involved. Actually, I want to speak to these two uh, guys here who've been, who've been here since yesterday. Hello, Driven Minds. How's Hello. things? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, can you explain to us what you're doing here? We were um, we were doing a little ruler challenge yesterday, weren't we? But great to see. You. I know you do a lot of good stuff um, for for uh, mental health, um, and it's great to see you guys involved on a on a fantastic stage, TCR UK. Yeah, it's fantastic. And um, thanks very much to the BRCC for having us here this weekend. Um, it means a lot, and it's great to see some big companies really caring about mental health in motorsport, which is something that we're obviously all very passionate about, and a lot of people are. The more people you speak to, the more you realise how many people actually do care about uh, mental health and really just, it's good to start talking about it, get people opening up and realise, you know, we're all in this together at the end of the day. Of course, you're a trailblazer in this in this um, great organisation. Um, happy how far it's come. It's got a lot of good followers and uh, yeah, I'm always looking and seeing who's following you. It's some good people. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been a crazy few years starting in 2021 and uh, we've grown so much and to have support from an actual championship and a coordinator is insane I mean we've had quite a few like yourself following us and quite a few big names haven't we really so it's been fantastic really and it's great to have everyone's support so thank you everybody <laughs> no problem um, who's won the ruler challenge thing uh, so far I think Jack Sargent's winning at the minute today today so far um, and then Ollie Cotton won yesterday so TCR is like yeah, doing well today. <laughs> That's because we be the best. Right, ladies and gentlemen, good to see you all. Right, let's go this way. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Great stuff from that charity. Proper people. How did you do on that reaction test, Paul? I got nine inches. <laughs> <laughs> right, Adam Shepard. Let's go chat to him. Paul Sitter in this one. What a qualifying he had. The, uh, the little Gen 1 uh, Hyundai that was... Uh, he's currently chatted to the circuit commentator. This is uh, this is absolutely superb timing uh, to try and chat to him. But uh, and he's got another question as well, uh, Paul. Yeah. I knew. Uh, these circuit comms hey. here, I love them to pieces, but you, they, they time I, it at the I worst possible time. I knew you'd start crying yeah. because someone's <laughs> doing your job for you. Um, <laughs> but uh, oh, thank you, no the, the, problem. Thank you very much, there we go. He's fuming with uh, you, mate. My, mate, honestly, I annoy everyone at these race weekends. Yeah. Mate, Adam, uh, this is going to be an exciting one, isn't it? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, not too long a drag down to the first corner, so hopefully get a good start, limit the wheel spin and um, just kind of go from there, really. Yeah, yeah, it, this is going to be an absolutely mega race. And uh, like you say, tension builds at this point of uh, a race weekend. You know, lots have happened over the season. Finally, it looks like you're about to get a break. And I reckon this is going to be one heck of a race. It's just going to be, well, everyone's so close, aren't they? It is, yeah. I think there was a couple of attempts, um, difference between pole and like 12th or 14th position. Yeah. It's mad. So, um it's going to all be about consistency, trying to trying to manage the tyres, make sure that you don't destroy them too early on. But then you want to try and build a break when you can, so that you've got a bit of buffer later on. So uh, should be interested, and fingers crossed it goes well. Mate, best of luck to you, mate. Best of luck, Paul. Yeah, I have not really got much to add to that. To be Ooh. fair, I'm just having a look around. Um, anyway, right, let's follow me. Follow me, Adam. Thank you, mate. Good to see you. You keep them white teeth out front, mate. <laughs> Um, right, Bruce Winfield, actually, I wouldn't mind speaking to him. The circuit comms guy must be like, if them two idiots come and see me again. But uh, anyway, we're going we're gonna to creep up on him because he's doing a circuit commentary um, little bit for, uh, for these guys. He looks like he's going to leave. We've timed that to perfection. Um, let's just get a little word. Bruce Winfield, um, the circuit comms man, he hates us. We've literally just followed him around, pushed him out of every interview. Anyway, how are you, mate? Looking very bright. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm, I'm sound, mate. Been to Ibiza, got a little tan on the go. Um, but I'm not as good as you, mate, because good championship points, front row of the grid. The compensation doesn't really look like it's uh, battered you too much, mate. We haven't got any weight, though, have we? That's true. So, yeah, it wouldn't <laughs> batter us. Um, should be on pole, then. It should be on pole, yeah. Yeah, I've got no excuses for that one. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's affected Adam. Obviously, he's got he's got a lot of compensation weight, so it doesn't look like it makes such a difference here as maybe it did at other tracks. But, you know, it's a good leveller for going to Donington because we're all, obviously, myself, Adam, um, you know, Carl, we're all going to be probably similar weight going to Donington. So hopefully it'll be a leveller. Yeah. Are you um, are you happy with these grid walks? I mean, this this would really. I think it's fantastic personally, but I know some drivers are nervous anyway, and it's great to see loads of people here. But does it not? Do you just switch off from that when you see loads of people on the grid? Yeah, just make sure the fire extinguisher is not on. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Just explain yeah. to everyone at home about the fire extinguisher in the car and why that's a problem for the public. Yeah. So obviously, well, not obviously. There's a, a fire extinguisher button just behind the bonnet. Um, so. When we're on track and, and obviously the circuit's live, um, you have your fire extinguisher armed so that if there was a collision of, um, and you're, you're on fire, um, a marshal could come over and press the fire extinguisher button. It would fill the car and engine bay full of uh, foam or whatever it's got in it. Um, so, yeah, we just make sure that they're not armed so that no, no public can um, yeah, press those while we're on the grid walk. But, yeah, I think it's good, it's, you know, it's good for the public to come and um, have a walk around, meet the drivers maybe that they're, not, that they're not met if they want to and have a look at a close look around the car. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, like you say, just switch off, have a chat and... Yeah, leave them to it. Absolutely love it, mate. Thank you very much. This button, I just want to show you, is down here. So that's electrics off, and this one is fire extinguisher. Electrics, fire extinguisher, and that are the buttons that you don't want to press if you're in the public, because that switches the car off and it can set the fire extinguisher off. If you could just... Sorry, Anthony, you wanted to say something? Yeah, you know a lot about accidentally setting off fire extinguishers in race cars, don't you, Paul? Uh, you, you, that's happened before, <coughs> hasn't it? Might switch one off by accident. Yeah, yeah, On, no, even. no. Um, I just want to speak to someone. Follow me. Anthony, you come with me as Go well, on, I'll, 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 um, because I'll I've just spotted her here. This this lady's uh, Morgan Kidd. She's racing in um, Fiestas, uh, 240s. Had a great result before. You're on reverse pole. Why are you on this grid? This where you want to be? Yeah, definitely. This is the dream. Just walking up and down here, this is somewhere I can see myself in, a, in the next few years. And the racing looks brilliant, so that's where I want to be. Yeah. Your race starts after this one, I think. Yeah, straight after this one at quarter past two. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Perfect, you're doing it for the girls. Um, how's the football getting on? The Lioness is okay? No, I think it was 1-0 Spain. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, you've got to step up and win the next race. So good luck to you. Thanks for speaking to us. And let me see where I find Andy Jordan. Yes, thank you very much. Paul, now we always like to speak to the Orange Army while we're here at the racetracks. And we've got Orange Army. And who's this? It's Anthony. It's Anthony. Right, OK. So Anthony, that's a lovely rubbish name. name that. That, mate, rubbish it's name. It's a brilliant name because it's my name. Uh, mate, Anthony, this uh, Silverstone TCI UK, closest qualifying that we've ever had. Uh, personally, what is your opinion on this one this weekend? Oh, it's going to be a good race, I think. It's going to be very tight. Qualifying, well, that was a bit of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Should be really good. Where are you positioned on the track then? Where, where, where's your job role here? I'm Deputy Chief Flag, so I'll be at the flag point the, on the pit wall, yeah. uh, helping out. So if there's any naughty boys, we'll be giving them penalties mm -hmm. and black and white flag and things like that. So they best behave. Are you expecting to see many of those track limits? No comment. No comment. <laughs> like it. Political, political. Thank you so much, Anthony. Right, no uh, enjoy your day. OK, thank you. Excellent. Keep up the good work. Thank yes. You. Spot on. Let's head over, actually. Have you spoken to Carl Bordley just a bit um, bit, bit later or a bit earlier in the show? Um, one thing I will say, it's a pretty wholesome grid walk, this, isn't it? We've got it kids, is. we've got marshals, we've got all sorts of people. Nice to see, uh, and this is not a... I hate saying it, but women on the grid, girls on the young girls looking to, to maybe race cars. Yeah. Girls, could, do you want to just have a quick chat? How do you? Uh, how much you like? How much you like racing? Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we'll scrap that interview. Um, just, I just asked then. I've just asked if the uh, how, how much they like racing. Not that much. That's okay. What about mum? Yeah, it's very good. We enjoy it. We like watching it. Any favourites? Oliver. Oh, Oliver. Oh, we were just going to talk to Oliver, actually, but um, Anthony, uh, Anthony Jordan has absolutely lost the plot. Um, Anthony, thank you, ladies. Thank Have you. a fantastic rest of the day. Lots of people on the grid. Um, but what I will say is um, there was something actually 
just over the way. Yeah. If our camera person could just look at the windscreen of Oliver's car. No, uh, no, there's somebody no, on there. no, 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 no. So <laughs> that, that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, that <laughs> wasn't uh, Lurch. That was actually uh, our very own Anthony Jordan. <laughs> oh, hello, Bert. He's TCR Australia competitor. He's come to watch. I did see an interview with yourself because was Brad Hutchison saying that you drive uh, TCRs upside down? I didn't quite get that, but it's obviously Australia, isn't it? Yeah, I think that was an Australia joke there. But, um, yeah, it's awesome to come out and see TCR UK weekend here. And, um, yeah, it's just so impressive to see. Big grid and, um, you know, so many people here. And, um, yeah, obviously a super competitive field. And here with uh, Brad and the rest of the MP, um, you know, all their team here. So, yeah, that's um, that's been really good. And, um, yeah, just great to, great to watch a weekend of TCR too. So, it's um, yeah, really good. That's cool. And just remind me of your name. Lachlan Maneef, so in TCR Australia. So it's, uh, yeah, been, been really good. The reason I ask you that is because I, I knew I would say it wrong. What a fantastic name. And do you race against Tom Oliphant over there? Yeah, yeah. Tom, Tom's joined our series uh, this year. He missed the last round, but he'll be back back for the next one. So, uh, yeah, it's cool to have that, that tie up. And, um, yeah, obviously it's, it's cool to see, you know, the TCR Global Formula working. It's, you know, identical here. Um, you know, on, on an identical vibe, you know, here to, to our weekend. So, um, yeah, it should be a good finish of the year. We've got two World Tour rounds as well coming up in November with the TCR World Tour in Australia. So, big grids, so um, all going to be exciting. Amazing. Love it. Very best of luck and uh, great to speak awesome. to you. Thank, thank, thank you for you. being a pro. Not like the good year, guys. Just hit me in the widge. Anyway, oh, Oliver. Uh, this is perfect timing, that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oliver, mate, this has been your best qualifying of the season, your first season in TCI UK. And Silverson, a great place to do it, and the Audi is looking rapid. Yeah, it is, I think. We just have to see what happens in the race. A lot of championship contenders around me, and there's a few people carrying ballast, so it will be an interesting race, I think, yeah. to see how the championship can do, if they get their shoulders out or not. So it'll yeah. be interesting. Yeah, shoulders out and track limits as well. You've got to be careful with that one. Two places they're watching it and turn one is going to be the biggest, I reckon, biggest cause of it as well. Yeah, turn one definitely will be the biggest cause when the tyre starts fading on the front left. I think you're just going to push wide naturally and you really can't help about it after you carry the speed. Yeah. Paul's out you out a lot over the course of this season as well. Has he given you anything decent or has he just been saying, mate, just do this flat out, maybe pin it here a little bit? He's going better now because I don't <laughs> help him. <laughs> yeah, actually this morning, he's given me some tips on what to do at the front. It's completely different when you race at the front and the back. Because, uh, I'm racing against new people, so I do not know what they're going to do or what I'm going to expect from them. Yeah, mate, honestly, it's going to be an exciting one. Best of luck and, uh, yeah, like I say, elbows out. Thank you. Excellent. Top Ollie man. There. Yeah. Thank you, Oliver. Um, so I want to down. walk a little further down in the uh, the grid because, you know, we chat to a lot of these drivers and now starting to get some of the drivers who we were expecting to see at the front of this one. Weird, uh, isn't it? I know, it is weird and, uh, you know, real shake-up. Biggest one for me I want to talk to, uh, Bradley Kent, because finally <laughs> the car seems to be going in the right direction. It had a bit of a shocker at uh, Knock Hill, mm. uh, but now at Silverson it seems to be going okay. Um, now, I was with his brother Lewis last night. Lewis told me uh, a wonderful story about uh, Brad when he was about seven years old. Um, uh -oh. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he was saying to me, I want Brad to go into this race head first like he did at Colchester Zoo in the goat's enclosure <laughs> when he went with such confidence to his mum. Not the greatest went, of all time. Watch this as he goes head first onto a concrete floor. Seven years old, he did that. That's probably why he's racing in this I was just now. about to say, yeah. that's why he's racing a front-wheel drive tin top. I love that. That's absolutely amazing. He's going to kill me for that, I'm sure. <laughs> Alex, Alex Lee is not going to be yeah. happy where he's qualified. I mean, yeah, what can we say about this? Because he was looking so quick at the tail end of last season as well, wasn't he? And yeah. this season, it's been uh, a bit of a shocker for him. And right now, where is he? Is he not in the car? No, he's over there. But don't worry about that. I just yeah. Because the bonnet's open, should we have a little look inside Go on, these go on. You people, point, you're all technical, people, aren't you? Paul? I always find this quite interesting because people... Um, some leave the bonnets open, some don't. There's not a lot you can you can take from being another team and, and see what's going on. You know, these, these cars are pretty much, you know, standard if it was another team running that car. There's no other settings that you can see here. But I always find it quite interesting that it's got uh, a little, its own little armband, and that's the power steering pump, I think. Um, is that to make sure that you guys tighten it up? No, there's a, little, there's a breather on the top of the bottle. Sometimes the oil can spill out, so we don't want it on the belts that are just below it. So we put that cloth around it just to capture it. Ah, cool. Another couple of questions. The reason why I find it stuff is because I cleaned it. <laughs> That's a good job. We've turned up then. <laughs> Absolutely. Makes a difference though, doesn't it? You, you know, you sh a, a, a race car should always be clean. The gap should always be minimal, especially around here at Silverstone. Make a massive difference on the aero. Yeah, well, like when, we, when we clean the car, we're also looking for little cracks nuts and bolts that are loose. 
Um, it shows up everything if we clean the car properly, you know. So we spend a lot of time meticulously going around it. A lot of prep. He's going to be, uh, he ain't going to finish here, is he? He's going to finish a bit further up. He's, he's going to push. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Love that. I well, like that. something to look at, haven't we? Yeah, we do indeed. We Thank do you. indeed. Really looking forward to see what uh, Alex can do in this one, because certainly the car is quick. He knows it's quick and, uh, yeah, just needs to find a spot. Right. Lewis is over here. Brad is right next to them. This is the perfect time to explain the story that uh, we just spoke about. Lewis is just there. Brad, quick question. Uh, I was with uh, Lewis last night. We are having, having a good old chat. Uh, are you going to go headfirst into this like you did on a concrete floor when you were seven years old at Colchester Zoo in a goat's enclosure? <laughs> that was a funny story, actually. <laughs> did he tell you the whole story about it? Did uh, he? Well, no, not all of it. Can you clarify a little bit more? Well, it was basically that. I was seven years old and I climbed up on, I climbed up on some like uh, rock thing that the goats used to climb up on and dove headfirst off of it. I think uh, the biggest thing from that one is you said with such confidence, I think, to your mum at the time, saying, watch, watch this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was practising my diving for the swimming pool. That's what it was. But I didn't realise there was concrete underneath. I think it was, there must have been a screw loose or something. I don't know. When he said goat, I thought he meant greatest of all time, <laughs> no, which I would expect no, no, no. from you. No, he was in like, it. Like a, like a petting zoo, like an actual goat. <laughs> yeah. But I don't oh, know. Dear. Mate, well, uh, like you went headfirst into that, I'm sure you're going to do exactly the same here because uh, you've got quite a challenge ahead of you, but the pace is so close. So close. And I mean, we were putting consistent laps in as well in qualifying, so we know that we can do the, the race pace is going to be there. So, I mean, if we can get a few, uh, I think we should be able to get a few of them maybe on the start or, or through the first couple of corners. It's just going to be a bit of one of those ones that's going to be a bit kamikaze, but I haven't got anything to lose, so I'm just going to have to do it, I think. And if we can make places up, then great. What do you reckon to that word, hey, Paul? Kamikaze? It's going to make for some great comms. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, actually, your car, the Hyundai, it, 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 it look, just looks wider and a bit more of a square than other cars. It's got to be a disadvantage aerodynamically. It's got to be. To be totally honest, it's not. Really? Com compared to the, um, the i30, it's actually been built to be a bit more aerodynamic in a straight line. So it's actually, I think they were saying it's something like two or three mile an hour faster than an i30 in a straight line. But we just seem to be struggling against these VAG cars. They just seem pretty quick in a straight line here. And, and I think the BOP is helping them out a little bit at the moment. But that'll, I'm sure that will balance out at some point and we'll get our turn like we have done for the last couple of years, I think. So, um, but no, this, this car itself is actually pretty quick in a straight line. We're just, I think two and a half tenths is nothing. I mean, if you put a lap together, the, the, like these boys at the front, it, it's just one lap. It's all you need in qualifying is one lap and if you get it then you're out the front and we just didn't get it yesterday but um, like I said we're consistent so I think we can we can do do well in the race. Some people at the front are going to be inconsistent and they can probably only do one lap. Yeah and I think as well as I mean there's a few boys up there that are young and they're a bit in, just not got the experience as well so you, but at the end of the day they had to put it together yesterday so if they can do it again then fair play to them because yesterday they were quick I had Scott behind me yesterday and he was rapid behind me he was catching me on the brakes he was catching me through the corners so fair play to all of them um, but yeah consistency is going to be key here I think mm. top man leave you to cheers, it mate. cheers Brad thank you cheers. perfect stuff uh, that's, really? that's, uh, that's interesting that is like you know younger guys at the front bit of fighting talk there I like that from Brad and it just shows how competitive this race is going to be doesn't it yeah, yeah it is I just want to have a quick word with these these two lovely people just here how how are you and how are you enjoying uh, the grid walk here at Silverstone very much thank you do, yeah. do you come to the racing much no um, my grandson who is with us he does karting Amazing. So you're going to cash your pension in and buy a car? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> How is it for you? Are you a big fan of, uh, of TCR UK and racing in general? I used to come here in 1955, if that's any help. Amazing. <laughs> so you would have seen Jim Clark, Stellan Mars, they've got people? Fangio. Yeah. Fangio, my hero. Is he, was he your favourite? Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> no, I like Mike Hawthorne, actually. Oh, Mike Hawthorne, very good on two wheels and on, on uh, four wheels as well. He died in a road car accident, I think, didn't he? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Real shame. On that note, I will let you go. And I'm very sorry I interrupted you, but That's I just right. wanted an opinion. Thank you very much. Well, that we're going to sit now. <laughs> Don't sit on the track. No. <laughs> Have a great day. Fantastic. Love it. Yeah. So many different people uh, on the grid walk, isn't there? Should we, um, should we keep wandering down? I think we keep wandering yeah. down, mate, honestly, because there's so much still to talk about down here. Callum Newsham down here as well. You've got uh, Jack Constable down here as well. Another one of the Gen 2 Audis that is not up at the sharp end as what some of the others are at. Again, real shake up of that one. Everyone has been nursing issues uh, throughout this one. And the biggest issue, I think, uh, has been from Callum Nushan, who nearly didn't get to go out in free practice yesterday. Issues with the steering wheel, the, the wiring in the steering oh, wheel, right. I think.
everything it reset and they couldn't actually change gear or anything and yeah. uh, it was a big issue for them so on that i know quite a lot about uh, tcr uk um the electronics and things with the steering wheel actually should we have a let's not talk about the show as well yeah yeah, yeah. i'm gonna uh, i'm just gonna come round. i'm just gonna open your door cal is that all right because i know you've had a problem with your steering wheel actually we're not we're just gonna have a look have you got enough light to see in there so what people don't realise is look at all those buttons and the paddle shifts um, on these on these TCR UK cars. They they're a real um, an interesting one. When you take the steering wheel off, there's so many pins within the steering wheel that it has to go on straight. And I'm not saying Callum's done this, but if you bend behind here, where the actual pins and it's like a plug. It's basically you pull this. Uh, gold lever and it's like a plug that that, that switches that all of this on if you bend one you can have a real big problem and you'll lose gears it's electronic you will lose any of the buttons on the on the steering wheel it can be a real pain so i do um i do feel for for callum but hopefully he's got that problem all sorted yeah it seems to be they went out in qualifying it uh you know obviously we're all the way back here but um still they got the problem solved and at least they got to go out on track Driver we've not spoken to actually quite often at uh, TCR, Matthew Wilson. I want to see if we can jump over to him because he's over here. Um, Matthew, hello. Um, TCR UK, it's round 10. You're here. And, uh, mate, it's been, a, it's been a tough weekend for you. Qualifying, I think you found the only gravel trap uh, at Turn 1. Yeah, I needed to find uh, time in Sector 1, and I, I tried to find that extra time. I just pushed it too hard. Went 20 metres past my breaking point. And it was probably 10 metres too far, I'd say. <laughs> but it, it was just, it was 0.46 and it's P14, so it shows how close it is. Yeah. But now it's, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling happy here, so I'm looking forward to it. You're in one of the favourite cars going into uh, this weekend. Has it, has it been proving okay for you? Has it got the power down the straight, so? I feel like the Audi is noticeably good on the straight here. But uh, this is, this is a, there's nothing against this car, and it is one of the top cars. So I'm definitely hoping for a reverse grid pole, and that's what I'm aiming for race, race two. Can I just ask one question? Yeah, yeah, go for it, mate. What's more expensive, racing car or having a newborn? I'd probably say the newborn. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see the family here, though, mate. You, is it, is it, you know, I, I don't know because I don't have kids, but is it lovely to come and race and think one day they might have memories of, yeah, of me racing? It is. It's, it is amazing. She's just turned eight months, so finally getting to a stage where she's getting a little bit more settled now. But, however, the night is still tough. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, we'll leave you to it. I think the whistle's just blown, so the drivers will probably be getting ready. Um, what was quite cool, you know the lady we were talking to from Fiesta's Morgan Kid? This is really cool this is what i love about racing there's a lady there with a pink cap on uh, and that's just a fan and she's uh, she just turned around now but she's actually got morgan kid written on her uh, cap as well so nice isn't it it just shows you that tcr uk is fantastic but there are other formulas that the, the the kids are coming through and they've got their own fans it's great to see other racing and that you cover as well yeah exactly we've got a lot of carters here that are on the grid watching this one uh, you know they're looking up to this and thinking i want to have a go in tci uk it is good to see and even some of the uh, like you say junior divisions in the uh, the tin top cars as well uh, very much looking forward to this one uh, we ladies and gentlemen are going to take a short ad break we are going to be back in a moment do not go anywhere because round 10 of the tci our UK Championship is coming up next.
for voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woya.co.uk today. Hello everyone and welcome back to Silverstone where we're moments away from getting our next round of the TCR UK Championship for 2023 underway. Uh, the sun is still shining. There are a few slightly ominous looking dark clouds around, but we are reliably informed by uh, our great British weather forecasters that we will not have any rain at all. And we certainly don't want any because we've got in prospect here perhaps one of the closest ever TCR UK races in history. We had an incredible incredibly tight qualifying session yesterday. Everyone's been talking about it and uh, we are expecting bumper to bumper action uh, in the race today. And uh, both races, in fact, this first race and the reverse grid encounter later on should absolute thrillers. Adam Shepard on the ball position. Much, much, much needed championship point score there. He's 42 points shy now of the championship lead. Uh, but with 40 points available for a race victory, plus those bonus points that he scored in qualifying yesterday, uh, it looks as though he could still be in championship contention. Indeed, you can't really be writing off the likes of Jack Constable, Jensen Brickley, Alex Lee yet either. At least six of them, I think, uh, realistically are in this championship fight with six races still to go. Andy McEwen here in the commentary box. Paul O'Neill has uh, joined me after topping up his tan uh, out in the summer sunshine out on the grid. Real buzz down on the grid. I love this time of year, Paul. We get down to those final few meetings. The calculators get broken out. Uh, and The drivers really now start to hone in on what they need to do to get their championship challenge on track. Yeah, definitely. And that, that shot where you've just come off with the heat haze and the wind uh, coming across. Look at that. Very hot out there. I can always tell how hot it is. Uh, uh, not by looking at the pictures of uh, people sunbathing, but <laughs> basically how hot my fringe that I don't really have and the forehead on me is getting. It was proper burning uh, a hole in my head there. Got to say, very warm, very windy. This is going to be a difficult race uh, for those guys on the grid, but it's like a partial reverse grid race. This is going to be great because such strengths and weakness, uh, weaknesses, Andy, in, in all of those cars in the top 10 going to be very interesting. How concerned about tyres should we be today? Because Silverstone National can be tough on that left front tyre. You're turning right pretty much throughout the whole lap. It's a long race as well. And as that temperature climbs, how much more do the drivers have to consider that? Yeah, exactly. Very good question. And what I will say is the experienced guys will come to the front. Yeah. And not just because of the inexperience of the others in traffic and being at the front of the grid. Pushing that front left and putting more lock on when you should just be taking off the throttle and taking lock off and trying to straighten the car. That's what your Chris Smiley's will be doing, and that's what the, a lot of the, uh, the the people who are out of position on this racetrack will be doing. Your Oliver Cottoms and people who have got good tyre management but just not the experience of looking after that front left. Cops is a killer on tyres, front left, especially with track limits now, people push into that maximum, scrubbing that front axle across the floor. But when you start to get into Luffield mid to exit that last corner, Luffield mid and exit of that corner really, really starts hurting that front left tyre. Probably with about, I don't know, eight laps to go, we're gonna see big changes. Interesting, we'll keep an eye out for that one. It was a record-breaking day uh, yesterday in qualifying when Adam Shepard set not only a Silverstone qualifier lap record uh, but the fastest ever qualifying lap in TCR UK history as far as average speed goes he already held that record from Donington Park last year along with the fastest ever race lap record at Donington and of course he will be starting from pole position again today with a very good chance I think of pipping that chase again uh, we'll have to wait and see just how quick he is willing to go if he gets out in front of the start can he manage that pace and that's the challenge isn't it if you're in the lead wherever you are really in the pack but especially if you're out in front 
how much are you willing to back things off to protect the tyres, knowing how close everyone is behind you? Because the lap tyres, there's nothing in it. No, there isn't anything in it. And, but if you break the toe, yep. that's where it could really help you out. The one thing I will say is if Adam does get away, I mean, he's done a fantastic job with the yep. compensation weighting, wow. But if Adam does get away, he's got to call, he's got to call it with three laps in the bag for me. If he sees that he can he can get away he then has to manage the gap and just keep it there because there could be a safety car you don't want to be in the middle of the race with a worn out left front compared to everybody else and a safety car come out and you've lost a, a six second lead which i can't really see happening because of how close it is uh, no exactly but a lot to think about certainly it's not just a case of getting in the car getting off the line and then going absolutely flat out for 25 minutes you've got to manage your car got to manage your equipment and keep yourself in a good position throughout the entire 25 minutes not just the first 15 or 20. So the tyre rotation lap is completed then. The drivers pull their cars back onto the grid. Front tyres are swapped onto the rear and vice versa. Uh, all of this because those front tyres get warmed up a lot more quickly than the rears. This will only take a couple of minutes. Then they've got another green flag lap. And then we are away and racing them. And uh, with Carl Bordley starting from third on the grid, uh, fourth I should say on the grid, sorry, he's in an interesting position now because all season long we've been talking about Carl Bordley trying to regain lost points. Didn't have an ideal start to the season. He's been undoubtedly the fastest driver over the last couple of rounds for the first time this year though paul he arrives at a weekend with a points lead to defend he's 23 points ahead of bruce winfield after qualifying and bruce starts directly ahead of him on the grid how does Bordley approach this do you think for me i think Bordley will just be looking and trying to follow the footsteps of uh, footsteps of winfield and just seeing you know it's it's this is about risk and reward does Bordley need to, you know, if Bordley drops back and he's five, six positions away from him, that's not ideal. But it's not the end of the world. He will want to be the maximum two positions away from him just to keep that pressure on him. He doesn't want to be doing anything gung-ho, but listen, he's won championships in different categories. He knows how to win a championship. The guys are switched on clever fella. I would expect him to bring this home in the top six and, you know, be happy with that. He was very happy after qualifying yep. when I spoke to him. Really, really pleased with what they've got underneath them. But uh, that car looks absolutely immaculate. It does. And when you see a clean car with minimal gaps, sometimes you can see bonnets that are just bent a bit. If the air gets in there, you're in a bit of trouble around Silverstone National because... 100% throttle around here is for a long, long time. So, you know, the terminal velocity of these cars, if there's air getting disturbed around the car a lot and it's not really been well put together, then you're in a bit of trouble. But uh, if anyone's team can uh, can make sure a car runs through the air properly, it's uh, cardboard, these team. Absolutely. He will be starting fourth, sort of sandwiched in between the two wild cards at the front of the grid. That adds a bit of extra nerve, I'm sure, to uh, Carl Bordley's race. He's got Scott, Scott Sumpton ahead of him, third on the grid. Oliver Cotton behind, uh, fifth on the grid. Now, they're probably the two worst people, in a way, for Carl to be sandwiched between because they do not care about the championship battle that's going on around them. This is their chance to try and get on that podium for the first time ever in their TCR UK career. Scott Sumpton a year and a half now into his TCR career. Oliver Cotton, only halfway through his first season. What an incredible weekend from those two. Yeah, I'm really made up for Oliver, but not just Oliver, Oliver's dad as well. You know, they, they put a lot of effort into uh, into the racing. I've I've done a couple of days with Oliver. Um, the lad is very switched on, methodical, um, you know, knows what he wants from a car, but I think he's really turned a corner now. I mean, I think it does help having an Audi here uh, around Silverstone National, but I've got to admit, they've outqualified Rob Boston Racing, who I honestly think are one of the top teams yeah. in this paddock. Uh, Paul Sheard Racing, uh, no disrespect to them, but, you know, the, 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 money that, the money difference in operational and setup between Rob Boston Racing and Paul Sheard Racing and Pep um, at the helm there just shows you they know what they're doing as well. So great to see, and... You're dead right, mate. This I said to Oliver, go out there, enjoy. Yeah. There's not many of us who get to race cars. Enjoy it and just go for it. If you think a move's on, keep your nose in. If you don't think it is, live to fight another day because that car's fast enough. And, of course, they're now going to find themselves, both of them, he and Scott, racing people. They're not used to racing. Those championship contenders aren't used to racing against them either. So 
You've got to try and figure each other out, haven't you? Learn where those moves are on, where they're going to defend, where maybe uh, you might be able to force the issue a bit. It's going to be a fascinating, fascinating race. This really, really can't wait. Green flag lap then is underway here at Silverstone. It's a short one, so let's very quickly try and rattle down the grid order then for this first of two races today. Adam Shepard with a second career pole position uh, starts from pole position again here at Silverstone. Both times he's qualified on pole in his career, it's been a new qualifying lap record. Bruce Winfield alongside him. Scott Sumpton, as we've said, has the championship leader, Carl Bordley, for company on row number two. Row number three then for Oliver Cotton with, again, his career best qualifying effort. And Joe Marshall in the Rob Boston Racing Audi. Those two Audis, both Gen 2s, run out of different teams. Jensen Brickley, championship contender very much. Fifth in the points, seventh on the grid, alongside the returning Andy Wilmot in his 27th different TCR car that he's raced over the last few years. Alex Lee and Bradley Kent, meanwhile, complete the top ten. Uh, and Bradley, will, well, both actually will be looking definitely to move forward from there. The reigning champ, Chris Smiley, one of season he is having 11 on the grid uh, for the FL5 Civic Type R driver with Jack Constable for company in his Audi. Uh, then on the seventh row, Callum Newsham and Matthew Wilson as well. Matthew Wilson with a decent qualifying effort there. Callum Newsham, a tad disappointed likewise, I think, with how his first season in a Hyundai has gone. Brad Hutchison in the Gen 1 Audi stars 15th alongside one of the other Gen 2 Audis, Gary Townsend, former MX5 racer, whilst Daryl Wilson, podium finisher or earlier on this season at Alton Park, has the returning Luke Sargent in the only Hyundai Elantra on the grid, which means we once again have three different shapes of Hyundai on the TCR UK grid. Then it's Darren Lewis with Rick Kerry, former BMW man. They complete the top 20. And Jeff Alden, Civic Cup racer. He was racing in the Civic Cup up at Cadwell Park a week ago. Didn't end too well for him. Hopefully, he'll make it past the start line this time uh, in his Opal Astra. Got it right this time. That is branded an Opal, unlike Darren Wilson's car, uh, which is a Vauxhall. And it only took me three mistakes uh, to finally commit that to memory. So, cars then making their way around onto the grid. 25 minutes on the clock. Uh, predictions are impossible to make, quite frankly, here, Paul. But what kind of race do you think we're going to see here? Bumper to bumper, really close, lots of overtaking, or do you think someone has the potential to break away? I honestly don't think anyone has the potential to break away. The reason I say that, unless Bruce Winfield gets the jump at the start, that will be the biggest gap over the whole field for the lead. I don't. I think Shepard is going to make a great start. We've seen him make great yeah. starts. He's going to start holding the field up. We're going to see overtaking moves down at Brooklyn's on the first lap, and we're probably going to see people lean on that right rear tyre and maybe slide off. Stay tuned. This is going to be a classic. Here we go, then. The 10th round of the TCR UK Championship, an all-area motorsport Hyundai Row 1. Adam Shepard sits third in the points. Bruce Winfield sits second in the points. There are 19 points between those two, but they're both chasing Carl Bordley, who starts from the inside of Row 2. Pole position on the outside here at Silverstone. The grippier line, in theory, should give a bit of an advantage to the people starting on the left as we look at it from behind. The green flag waves. The reds start to rise. The 10th round of the TCR UK Championship for 2023. But into life here at Silverstone and who is going to get the whole shot down towards the first corner it is not Bruce Winfield what a start from Adam Shepard and from Scott Sumpton who I think is up into second place yes he is Shepard leads three cops but Sumpton's on the charge Scott Sumpton sees a chance to lead his first ever laps in the TCR UK Championship Carl Bordy goes with him too and as they barrel down towards Beckett's Paul Winfield down to four wow Winfield's had an absolute shocker Oliver Cotton's got off the line in his Audi in 98 there well Kent round the outside, I wouldn't say round the outside, I say it's run wide. Bordley now is in the toe of that Honda, and look at Shepard trying to get away. Brilliant start from Sumpton. Go on, son. Both of the Astras at the back have had moments. Daryl Wilson and uh, Jeff Oldham move up the inside for Carl Bordley. He's into second place. The championship leader on the charge. Fourth on the grid. He will be second at the end of the opening lap of the race then. But the rear of the car sliding around as he heads through Luffield turn. Lots of different lives being taken mid-grid there. Chris Smiley trying to nip up the inside of Alex Lee. I think he succeeded in doing that. And Bruce Winfield is going for third place. He's found an overlap against Scott Sumpton's Honda. And as they head past the pits at the end of lap one, Shepard lead Bordley second and Winfield back to third. Wow, well, just seen Chris Smiley as well as Kent and Constable all in a battle ball. Let's look at this, the 27, Scott Sumpton. Look how fast he is through, uh, through uh, Cop's corner. Absolutely lit, trying to get back on the back of Bruce Winfield. Oliver Cotton's got his tyres up to temperature. That shows how warm it is. There's no one had a big, big slide down at Brooklyn's. I thought, got to be careful of those trap limits. 
they will look but not as hard as they will through cops and this corner you're coming down to now Brooklands and Luffield indeed so so Carl Bordley then chasing after the race leader he was quicker in the second sector than the race leader Adam Shepard this time around that uh, looks as though that is uh, Andy Wilmot trying to nip up the inside of Jack Constable further back and then one of the Coopers getting very sideways uh, just behind I think that was Wilmot actually went in on the tight line and ran out of right rear grip slightly at the apex out of Luffield they come again then two laps about to be completed and drivers just slowly starting to settle themselves into this race but there is very very little separation at the front fastest lap set by Bruce Winfield then so Winfield despite that poor launch does seem to have good early pace yeah he got the job done pretty early doors back on Scott Sumpton in that Honda but uh, I've got to say who's that jinking out Brickley. Gentlemen, Brickley yeah look at that Joe Marshall cuts across the front and says thanks very much we'll uh, we'll keep you blocked for a bit but Brickley's looking very fast gets the overlap this could be interesting. Let's see the difference now in speed because Brickley is in a fast Gen 2 car. I'll tell you what, you can keep that uh, that statement about the Audi's being fast and straight line. Brickley's rapid. Is he going to be able to commit around the outside of Brooklyn's? I think he will. Does Joe Marshall leave him space is the real question. Yes, he does. Nice racing there from Joe Marshall. Uh, left plenty of racing room for Brickley, who does now move through into sixth position. So Jensen Brickley, another driver who needs some good points out of this weekend to keep his championship hopes alive. And he makes up a little bit of progress. Started seventh. He will be sixth at the end of lap number three. Fastest lap this time for Scott Sumpton. Fastest this lap of the race for the man in fourth position and again Paul the lap time so tight no one breaking away it's half a second Shepard back to Wardley half a second Wardley back to Winfield and half a second Winfield back to Sumpton wow there is they're all in a big big toe here aren't they big trainer cars hatchback saloons a lot going on so yeah we're gonna have a great race Hutchison late on the brakes has to lift and he's got Wilson there sniffing around trying to get uh, the running wide a lot I mean, there's no advantage to be gained doing that. I mean, you can take loads of speed in, but you make the course wider. Shepard has got this really under control, and there's a lot going on behind, isn't there? Is that Callum Newsham yeah. down the inside? Of the inside of Alex Lee, who's plummeted down the order, really. 11th place. Now, Alex was telling me on the grid, I think I can tell you this now, it's no secret, now the race has started. He's on old tyres in this race. He's saving his new tyres for race two, banking on the fact he was going to benefit from the top 10 grid reversal. But right now, he's out of the top 10 and oh. dropping down the order further as Brad Hutchison drops two wheels into the gravel trap exiting Luffield turn mm. across the line we go then we have had identical fastest lap set by the way in this race by Scott Sumpton and Bradley Ken 58.586 uh, oh, is the uh, fastest lap that we've had so far and two drivers sharing it something setting it first though so he would get the nod on that one down through Beckett's we go and well the top three in the championship ball are in the top three positions in the race it's got the makings of a really really good one this yeah and that's what happens when the cream rises to the top Brad Hutchison I was pointing at his car he's got his windows open that's how warm it is but I was pointing to his car because it looks so soft as it went through turn one as he comes down now in that Audi with the yellow wing mirrors on the inside trying to get that move done but uh, yeah a lot going on they're running quite wide early on into Luffield and that front left tyre of some of these cars is really not going to uh, play into their hands at the end and uh, they will look at track limits running on that green is counted as track limits as they exit Luffield you see that Astra just coming into play there so a lot going on at the start of this race and it's uh, there's definitely a lot more to come as the tyres deteriorate Indeed. So, uh, those two fastest laps that I mentioned, by the way, they are both Silverstone lap records. So, Scott Sumpton, a lap record holder in TCR UK at the moment, as we see Rick Kerry there heading through Cops Corner. Out onto the Wellington straight we go then. Adam Shepard just managing the gap, perhaps now, realising he's not going to break away. Just trying to look after those tyres as Bradley Kent here pulls up alongside Joe Marshall. And the Audi does seem to be struggling, doesn't it, down that back straight? Now, that could be engine. It could maybe be the wing settings as well, do you think? It could be, but you'd be stupid if you uh, tried to give away your advantage. I know there was a few wing changes for Carl Bordley in qualifying the car. A little bit loose, the headwind making turn one a bit loose, Ooh. and that's Cotton, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and that might now open the door for Jensen Brickley. Cotton wide into the gravel at Luffield, loses momentum down the pit straight, and he'll have a little bit of dirt now on those outside tyres. What does that do to his confidence turning into Cotton? Well, he's jinking to the inside to cover there from Jensen Brickley, who knows that this is a golden opportunity to break into the top five. Carries good speed out of Cotton's corner. Cotton 
leaving the gap on the right hand side of the road. I don't think he does. <laughs> Joe Marshall and Bradley Kemp, by the way, are still side by side as they head down towards Beckett, where they first got the overlap a lap ago. Joe Marshall just about getting the better of the Hyundai, which could straight back and gets back alongside down the back straight. Very interesting this, because there are brand new front tyres on the front of that Audi for Joe Marshall. I can tell by the uh, the markings of the Goodyear tyre. Um, but I've got to say, on Brad Kent's car, that orange and black Hyundai, that looks like it's got older front tyres on it. Interesting. Well, perhaps that's the Alex Lee approach as well, you know, banking on a good grid position for race two. At the moment, Brad Kent would start third on the grid for race two. Might be seeing an opportunity to get his first win of the season. Mm. Again, Brad not really driver thinking about points. So, in a way, he doesn't mind sacrificing race one if there's a chance of a trophy later on. Yeah, just interesting. When you see any of the cars run through turn one, unless they've had side-to-side -side contact, the, it's very prominent, the good uh, the, the Goodyear symbol on the side of the car. It's in yellow. If, it, if it's more black, it means that it's an older tyre uh, because it's run on the car so long. But uh, you can see the, the, the cars that have got the newer tyre. Look at this Audi here, Joe Marshall's car. Looks like he's got brand new tyres on it all round uh, compared to... Uh, he's dropping back like a stone. Chris Smiley's going to be on to Joe Marshall in a minute. Marshall struggling then, isn't he? He's got Jack Constable in that group as well as the leading trio, as close as ever they were, turned their way through Brooklyn's corner. One second only, covering the top three in the race and the top three in the championship. What have you spotted? Ah, uh, now this is it. It's game on now because that lead car of Adam oh. Shepard... Winfield. Bruce Winfield! And that's a puncture or broken suspension on the left rear corner. I do not believe it. Bruce Winfield into the pit lane with a problem from third place. And Paul, that came out of the blue. Out of the blue, yeah, well spotted. He just pulled to the right, didn't he? So he goes past our comms box, can't really see. I think it's suspension. Got to be mechanical, you're right. What I was pointing at before all that drama happened was our leader, Adam Shepard, is struggling with his right front tyre, can't get it slowed down, can't get the entry to Luffield. He's having a nightmare. Kent versus That's Marshall. Marshall still. That's a fantastic battle, left isn't rear. it? Yeah, left rear suspension. It's not a tyre, is it? It's something in the suspension that's failed. Now, this is an odd place to have that kind of thing happen. We saw it in some of the support races yesterday. You're not really striking curbs particularly hard here at Silverstone. So what might maybe, of course, I'll get to that in a second because Oliver Cotton's on the inside has got something for a podium place for. Brilliant. He won't get that done, though, because something love the inside. But Brickley is going to be getting the, the place off Cotton. That's inexperience from Cotton, but he had to have a go. Is Brickley going to push him into the gravel? Yeah, and he just about holds on to it. Look like a snake slithering through. Kent now down the inside of Marshall. That's going to be side by side into Cops in fifth gear. 105 mile an hour apex. We're coming to it now. Sumpton through. Brickley's going to try and take the place. Ah, Marshall thinks better of it. But he's ran wide. Kent in front. This is it. Now it's game on. First time these two cars have been single file for three laps, I think. This has been a brilliant battle between Bradley Kent and Joe Marshall. It's now for a position inside the top five. And Kent drifts a bit wide of the apex there at Beckett. So Joe Marshall might be back alongside him. Where oh. is Bradley Kent going? He's almost on the international circuit. And the position back to Joe Marshall, who gladly reclaims fifth place. So, Shepard leads, Bordley second, third place for Scott Sumter, but here comes Brickley, late on the brakes, dives to the inside, and Jensen Brickley from seventh on the grid is onto the podium. Wow, that's an amazing move, and coming through the field brilliantly, Sumter thought better of it, Brickley at the minute, driver of the race, absolutely brilliant, he got great traction as well. I'd love to know the setup on his car and what he's changed, it's been absolutely astounding. It was a left rear tow link for Bruce Winfield. Look at the suspension damage, the left rear collapsed. And you say there isn't big curbs around here, Andrew, but Andy, um, <laughs> actually at uh, Luffield, it is actually quite a big curb. And oh. um, yeah, I'm sorry, on the turning for uh, the apex of Brooklyn. Oh, oh, great move, go on, oh no! Oh, into the side of Brickley, something back through into third, but that was a robust overtake that I'd have to say. And Brickley will be spitting feathers. Through goes Constable, through goes Bradley Kent as well. And he's lost momentum down the spec straight. And here comes his old friend Oliver Cotton with revenge on his mind. Yeah, he ain't gonna be happy with what Brickley did to him, but to be fair, that is a great move. Marshall now out of nowhere. Sumpton's had enough now, he's had enough. He's actually keeping his nose in. That was a great little bit of move. Look at Kent, Kent round the outside. Brickley and Cotton coming through shot now. Oh, contact, Marshall with contact. Sumpton is having 
None of it. Grow up, guys. Love it. Come on. Fantastic racing here at Silverstone. We have not had a moment to breathe since the uh, red lights went off, and that was 11 minutes ago. Side by side, down to Cops Corner. Marshall on the right, Sumpton on the left, and Scott Sumpton will not give away this chance for a first podium. Brilliant. He bends off the Rob Boston Racing Alley, but look <laughs> at the queue that's forming behind him, Paul. What's that coming over the hill? It is in the <laughs> Sumpton. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Sumpton had had enough. There was a bit of contact. But I can't really say without seeing it. Again, he runs wide. Marshall now has come from no, it's like a yo-yo. Absolutely stunning stuff. It ain't over yet. He's got to get it covered. And now Joe Marshall looks like he's got his speed in the straight line back. Something's going to lose out here. Ken oh. down inside. Be careful, boys. Oh, something. He's getting fully involved. This is great for his race craft. Good for him. Cotton round the outside. Look at Jack Constable. He's going to move up as well. <laughs> Where do they go? This is brilliant. Who said all the, uh, the tin top racing was finished? There was no action. Oh, no, there is. Look at Constable Cotton really getting his elbows out now, isn't he? Side by side they go, the two Gen 2 Audis, one Rob Boston racing car, one run by Paul Sheard, and it's the Rob Boston racing car on the inside, but I think we'll go through something is sideways, very, very, very <laughs> sideways, and very, very wide over the runoff area, and Jack Constable might now gain two places in one. Is he up the inside of the Honda? I don't think he is. Wow, this is exceptional. So, something will feel hard done by. He has got the fastest car on track, remember. Runs wide again, and that's Constable that's going to pick up the pieces. Constable's got the, uh, well, look at that now, his teammate, Joe Marshall, he's trying to break the toe from Kent. Kent's having a great race. <laughs> Absolutely. Bradley Kent started this race in 10th place. And we were only saying about five minutes ago, his target was a race two win. And all of a sudden, he could be on the podium in race one. This has been a remarkable race. And we still have 12 and a quarter minutes to go. Constable there, defending from Scott Sumpton. Shame to see Sumpton and uh, Cotton sort of getting muscled out a little bit. Maybe that experience the others have got of racing at the front of these grids is just starting to tell. But we'll wait and see whether they can come back in the closing stages. Side by side further back, meanwhile, that's Alex Lee, who still isn't into the top 10. So his whole game plan for the day really isn't coming together. Yeah, it can, but it can switch in an instant. If you've got older tyres on and they all of a sudden switch on because they've had a heat cycle through them while the other tyres are maybe pressured wrong and newer tyres can, can balloon compared to tyres that have been on a car already and had one heat cycle through them. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but you never know. Kent, though, has come alive. Great racing here at Silverstone. Wouldn't it be nice to see Bradley Kent back on the podium? It's yes. been a little while since we last saw the youngster oh. who was uh, many people's tip for the championship on the podium. That, I fear, is uh, Andy Wilmot, who I was about to point out, was in 10th place. That would have been the race two pole position. He, though, has got some sort of mechanical issue, I think. And that will now, I reckon, put Alex Lee into 10th spot. So a little mm. bit of good fortune there for Alex Lee, but half rate for Wim uh, Wilmot. Yeah, interesting that. Sometimes you cannot get off the grass if you've been pushed onto it or ran wide yourself. So. I'm not too sure whether he was just trying to limp back on or he did have a mechanical. It did look a bit slow for a, for a limp back on, but you can pull the front uh, splitters off these if you go too fast. This is hotting up, in it? It is indeed. Correction, Alex Lee is still not in 10th place because Callum Newsham got past him on that previous lap. So it's now Newsham on course for the race two pole and Chris Smiley will be starting on the front row with him. Oh, no! And that's Shepard. That is Adam Shepard slowing at Beckett's corner. Heartbreak once again for the race leader. And that could well be his race done. The no. tyres look fine. The suspension looks fine. That's got to be something electrical or in the engine. It's picked up again, though. Oh, no, it's not. Shades of Castle Coombe. Oh, disaster. What has gone on? Is it another left rear on them Hyundais? The people I speak to say they're not the best things across the curb. Oh, that could be a hub. It could be anything. Let's not speculate. He's going to go straight to the pits. An electrical or we don't know. Anyway, we'll find out. Hopefully, we've got uh, cameras down in the pit lane. But that puts Bradley Kent up into third place. And it means that Carl Bordley leads the race. His two nearest championship rivals are not going to score from this race. This is a huge, huge race, this, for Carl Bordley's championship. His nearest championship rival, realistically, in this race now, is Jensen Brickley, who runs in fourth place. He's a little bit behind these two. There he is, looking back around the white and yellow uh, Cooper. But Jensen Brickley, coming into this weekend, was getting on for 60 points behind Carl Bordley. So Carl won't really mind if uh, he uh, scores some decent points. There is Adam Shepard, Area Motorsport, looking at... Uh, well, what are they looking at? Left front, Paul? Yeah, that's a left front. There's a hub failure or a link or something has, has gone amiss. The bonnet would have been straight up if it was a problem with the electrics or an engine problem, so not great. Bradley Kent, if he has got 
used tyres on that car, which it, it looks to me like he has. You can usually tell it's bright yellow with Goodyear on the car. Watch Marshall's car as it comes through the first corner. It looks like it's brand new stickers on the on the tyres. Look, you can see the bright yellow, but compared to uh, Bradders' car, it doesn't look, uh, and that's, we're in the engine bay now, but also. Oh no, the, uh, that's the auxiliary belt, so the fan belt's broke off the car. Now is that gravel he's picked up, the fan belt, the alternator belt has cut the electronics. There was a lot of gravel on the track on the exit of Luffield, I noticed. Meanwhile, side by side for second place now oh. um, for Bradley Kent and Joe Marshall. Marshall squeezing, but Kent is there, gets a bit of a side draft down the back straight. Right. Wing mirror to wing mirror, proper touring car racing this, and Joe Marshall on the inside, I think, will hang on. Uh, Joe Marshall hunts Marshall's now. wide! Oh, he's wide, he's wide through Brooklyn's, leaves the door open, but that's the inside line uh, for Luffield Corner. How many times have we seen these two side by side in this race, and still it goes on? Oh, absolutely stunning stuff. This is the... This is the race of the race. Bradley Kent, I tell you, if he has got used tires on, Brickley's now catching them. Yeah. They're battling too hard. Brickley ain't going to mess around. There's a few scores to be settled with Brickley and everybody else on the track. He likes to get involved, and I love that about Jensen. I think it's fantastic to see these young kids having it large and making sure that they leave the mark on the championship. Oh, oh you're going to leave your mark on the championship if you uh, get turned around down at Maggot. Brickley's going to be in shock. Knew it. Right with them, right with them. That loss of momentum is key, isn't it? All about momentum here at Silverstone. Yet again, Bradley Kent How? gets them in. The front end of that Veloster How? suddenly has come alive, hasn't it? And that's something they've struggled with all yeah. season long. It's like a four-wheel drive car. It looks like he's got brand, 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 brand yeah. new qualifying tyres on. And Marshall struggling again. This could be it. Oh, oh. over the kerb and almost into the side. Then almost oh, no, no, into no. the back of the Audi. He's nibbling. He's nibbling. He's tapping Morse code on the rear bumper. Nuzzles is right, on the inside. And Jensen Brickley's there with them Done too. It. Side by side they go. Over that gravel that's been strewn across the road. Exiting Luffield. Watch for Brickley though. He's got a double slipstream now against these two cars ahead of him as they head down towards Cops Corner. Inside line for Kent. Outside line for Joe Marshall in this battle for second that refuses to die. Kent goes back. Oh. Brickley's on the inside. He's into the side, I reckon, of the Audi. And Brickley could be second before you know it. Yeah, couldn't quite see, but they've both lost momentum. Brickley now has took that third place. Done wow. it. Jobs are good and great. Opportunism. Oh. Talking of opportunism, I've won in your door, my old mate. There's yep. the other Audi. <laughs> oh, and it's going to be teammates. This is some of the best stuff I've seen all year. Brilliant here at the National. I think a little bit of red mist descending between Joe Marshall and Bradley Kent. They've kept it clean so far. Let's hope they carry on in that vein. So Brickley goes second, Marshall third. Now Jack Constable joins in the fun as well. The packed crowd in that BRDC grandstand are being treated to one of the greatest ever TCR UK races. And it's only our first race of the day. This is magnificent stuff. Brickley though has gone. He has pulled away from the rest of this pack now. Second place looks as though it will be Jensen Brickley's. Uh, but what is going to happen in the lower podium places, I wonder then. Down towards Cops they go. Jack Constable clears Bradley Kent, and that puts Constable now into fourth position. Uh, Jack Constable started 12th on the grid for what is this race? This is absolutely crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Lovely to see though, and it's been great to watch because there's not been a there's not been a move that's been absolutely horrific in my opinion. Few questionable ones, little taps here and there, but it's not been anything that I didn't see back in 2009 and 2010 when I was driving <laughs> in the side of people and getting away with it. <laughs> you were never guilty of that, for sure. <laughs> uh, right, big news for Alex Lee. Good news first, he's into 10th place. Bad news, he's got a five second track limit penalty. He's not the only one, but he is the highest placed runner in the order right now with that penalty to be applied. That means Brad Hutchison now inherits 10th place. Five and a quarter minutes to go. Have a breathe for about 20 minutes into the pit lane comes Darren Lewis, and it looks like his race is run as well but what is going on between Bradley Kent and Jack Constable that fourth place battle ain't over yet I don't think there goes Wardley the leader a Cooper 1-2 now we start with all of these Kindays at the front of the grid and now the best place of the I-30 ends is way down in ninth place Callum Newsham and there's a Marshall with some uh, with, with a bit of a <laughs> oh. side so there could be a gutter in who's that That's oh Kent. no Kent, Kent. That's in a the gravel it's a left front failure Oh, well, he's had a little bit of contact, hasn't he, on that left front corner, and I wonder if something's just given way. Oh, that is Bradley Kent's look all over, isn't it? Through the gravel of cops, he's going to try and lift the car back, and when he gets back onto the tarmac, Paul, we'll have a better Concha. look. 
to punch a look at the front left. Yeah, yeah you're right. Wow. So, front left. We spoke about the front left getting a pound in. There's four and a half minutes to go. Will we see another one? That was contact. There was contact. You're right. And I think maybe bodywork rubbing on the tyre as well because that front bodywork has been knocked a little bit loose. So, uh, right, that puts that battle on ice for the time being. Four and a quarter minutes to go. Bordley the leader by five and a half seconds. Don't forget about him. Jensen Brickley with a brilliant drive up into second position. Joe Marshall is third with Jack Constable in fourth position. So Rob Boston Racing, this has all really fallen into their lap, hasn't it? They weren't necessarily uh, looking like the fastest of the Audis after qualifying, and yet here they are running third and fourth. Sumpton back into the top five and still holds that lap record that he set uh, earlier on in the race with Oliver Cotton sixth, Chris Smiley here seventh with Callum Newsham right behind him. So Callum Newsham and Chris Smiley both with at least a little bit of something to smile about out of this race. Yeah, I mean, all we need now is for Carl Bordley to be throughout the race for track limits. <laughs> <laughs> and and I will not be the one interviewing <laughs> after the race if that happens, Paul. That is for sure. That has been a long-running story for Bordley this year, and I'm sure he's making it extra careful that he stays away from those white lines. He's been under no pressure, really, ever since uh, two good days either side of him uh, managed to retire from the race. He has had a pretty uncontested lead, which is exactly what he wanted to see. Uh, now, next question. Can Joe Marshall improve upon third position on the previous lap he was a tenth slower than Jensen Brickley so on current uh, evidence you'd say no as Gary Townsend Audi is wheeled mm. back into the garage that's not good is it nightmare for him but uh, the Audis have been exceptional in this race I've got to say Cotton there with the green flashes He's looking pretty uh, daunting there, and uh, you're, you've, you've seen something. Carl Bordley's last lap was a second slower than his previous best, and it was eight tenths slower than Jensen Brickley. Man managing. Fine. Managing, maybe, but is he managing because he knows he can, or managing because he's feeling a problem, I wonder? There is Bordley. He's putting a lap on Jeff Olden's Opal. I've got to say, Brickley looks a lot closer now than five seconds away. I would like to think that he was managing. He is running wide. There is Bradley Kent. He ran very wide at Cobb's Corner with that uh, left front puncture. His race is done, but let's what? keep an eye on the lap times. Then sector times have been all right on this lap. I wonder if Bordley made a mistake on the last lap then, Paul. Well, he did look a bit wide into Luffield. I would say, knowing Carl, I would think he was managing. I mean, he is good enough to manage a, a two-second gap if he needs to. He's only got two, three laps to go. I would say he's coming. He will have seen cars at the side of the road, I would Maybe. think. Yeah, and he, not just not, not cars that are you know at the back of the grid, cars that are fast and experienced drivers. He will think now it's time to stop rattling the curves. I wouldn't think it's a problem. Four tenths slower than Jensen Brickley last time. We only have a minute and 40 seconds to go, so we're probably going to have two more laps at the end of this one, and it's still half the length of the Wellington Strait separating the two Coopers out in front. Jeff Holden again doing a good job of staying out of the way in his Opal Astra. And then come the Audis, and then here comes what is now the best raid battle in the race, really. Smiley versus Newsham, and Callum Newsham tries to peek to the inside down into uh, Brooklyn. That wasn't quite going to work. He's also got Alex Lee and Brad Hutchison right on his tail. This is a great battle. Makes me very sad seeing Chris Smiley there. It does. It really does. Yeah. He doesn't deserve that, but he's a hard worker. He knows that, you know, you, he knows how much hard work needs to go into to certain projects, and I think this one is going to be his hardest challenge yet, but when they get there with restart racing, it will be all worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely, they are putting in the hard work now, uh, hopefully, uh, for some success in the future. Now, another five-second track limit penalty. I told you we were talking about this for Scott Sumpton. Scott Ooh. Sumpton, a five-second penalty. That's going to drop him behind Oliver Cotton, and I think behind this gaggle of cars as well. So, quite benefiting in the long run, actually, because it could put him somewhere in the mix for the uh, race two pole position. It's going to be about 10th or 11th, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's got to get a shift on, yeah. because it, hopefully he knows, but he he needs to he needs to keep going as fast as he can but he might get caught by Cottom anyway and that'll slow him up so he actually might end up 11th let's see yeah because they are drifting back towards this group actually aren't they really uh are Sumpton and Cottom we're about to start the final lap of the race so I don't think they're going to quite catch them uh, but it might be enough for Sumpton to drop out of the top 10 on corrected time under three seconds now the lead margin Carl Bordley uh, back to Jensen Brickley as Carl I tend to agree is just managing this situation now to the flag uh, Joe Marshall still sat in third place if we're going to see any changes on the final lap it will be uh, from further down the top 10 I suspect Joe Marshall drives past the stricken Hyundai Veloster of 
uh, grabbing Kent as they head out to Beckett and down the Wellington Strait. But it has been all about this man, Carl Bordley. His fourth race victory of the season, this could be, and it will be his fourth race victory from the last five races. The middle of his season has been spectacularly good. Things have fallen into his lap from a championship perspective in this race, admittedly, but he looked good for a podium finish anyway, and he brings the Hart GT Cupra out of the final turn to see a very familiar sight. The chequered flag is waved for Carl Bordley, and the championship leader takes another big stride towards the championship, you'd have to say. Jensen Brickley gathers some good points in second. That will benefit his championship position, but he's not outscoring the points leader yet. Joe Marshall third, Jack Constable fourth, and now where will Scott Sumpton end up on corrected times it's ninth i think so matthew wilson is going to pick up the race two pole position with scott something on the front row with him provisionally paul yes provisionally there'll be a little uh, there, there won't be a massive queue outside the race director's office but i've got to say uh, some of the moves for me were well it was two uh, one of what is it saying six of one half dozen something like that <laughs> yeah anyway it wasn't anything um, malicious and uh, you know sometimes you've got to let the door just be uh, just prized open a little bit to save both of you, but didn't have a replay, so I'm going to say, let's see what happens. Bordley Championship elect. Yeah. It's looking good, yeah. isn't it? It's looking good. But then we were saying this about Chris Smiley at times last year, and then Donington happened, and he got taken out at the first corner, and it could all switch very, very quickly. The, the thing that Carl Bordley has in his favour is he's finished every race this year, so even if he were to have some non-finishes, his drop score situation still looks favourable. As does that race result. Carl Bordley up for the fight this year and his fourth victory of the season nets him an even bigger championship margin at the front. Jensen Brickley second. Joe Marshall gets on the podium and Joe Marshall from, where does I say, started 12th on the grid to put to a third position was a remarkable effort indeed. Jack Constable fourth. Oliver Cottom fifth. So a top five, a career best finish for Oliver. Maybe not the podium that he, in his heart of hearts, was hoping for, but still a solid result. Chris Smiley comes home in sixth. Callum Newsham seventh with Brad Hutchinson. Scott Sumpton after a five second track limit penalty and Matthew Wilson completing the top 10. Alex Lee, because of his five second track limit penalty, will not benefit from the reverse grid, it would seem. Whilst Luke Sargent, we didn't really mention him in that race, but he kept the area motorsport uh, Hyundai Elantra out of trouble to finish in 12th place ahead of Darren Wilson and Rick Kerry. 15th position then was Jeff Olden, 16th for Andy Wilmot after his drama, whatever it was, he was two laps down, but he was running at the flag. Uh, there were, however, a fair few who were. Bradley Kent left from puncture, Gary Townsend mechanical dramas, likewise Darren Lewis, the belt snapping on Adam Shepard's car from the race leader. This really is the big story from that race. Bordley winning his two nearest championship rivals, scoring nothing. Adam Shepard and Bruce Winfield, that is a race that they will rue, I think, for the rest of the season. Yeah, definitely. A lot to talk about. I can't wait to the interviews with Anthony uh, Jordan because, yeah, very interesting. There they are. They've got to go for a little scrutineering bit of Park Ferme. See what happens. But congratulations again to Carl Bordley. Cream rises to the top. Good effort. Just a bit of uh, tyre pressure checking from Mickey Butler from Goodyear there. So, you know, just making sure this will be a. Uh, this he will he will have seen all those cars disappear. One in his mirror. Yeah. Bruce Winfield you would have seen that. <laughs> Nick Hart. <laughs> They've done a good job with that car. It's a great partnership, this, isn't it? Bordley, yeah. really happy, I think, with this team. And uh, Harty is a Harty is a racer, and that's what I love about him. Yeah. I've, I've coached some people for Clio's in his team, and he's a racer. And he, his cars are. You only have to look at Carl's car, how yeah. how immaculate it is, and that that's the big difference. So, yeah, good stuff, isn't it? And literally, I cannot see how Carl will throw this away. I really yeah. can't. Well, I think you might be needed down there, Paul, to go and conduct the podium interviews. So we'll let you uh, head back outside and uh, have a chat with our top three drivers. And uh, if you find Anthony Jordan on route, then uh, by all means, have a chat with him too. But uh, it is Carl Bordley, who one of you will be chatting to uh, as the race winner. And uh, he will be extremely pleased with that. Like I said, his fourth victory, he won the second race at Alton Park. He won the first and the third race at Knock Hill. And now this is a fourth race victory in five races. And of course, he will tell you that he had that race victory at Croft earlier on in the season, taken away from him too. Although what seemed like a very big deal at the time, uh, suddenly not seeming quite such a drama so uh, yeah uh, interesting stuff for Carl he's going to be feeling happy let's find out how happy he feels Anthony Jordan down there first to have a chat with our race winner
let Paul do this, but Carl's literally just walked off from us. Uh, Paul, mate, uh, we're live. Do mate, yeah, all right, cool, no worries. Uh, I'll go down to Baudley, who has just run off. He's uh, congratulating Joe Marshall down here. Uh, let's see if we can chat to him. Uh, Carl, sorry, I know you're having a chat there, mate. Congratulations on that one. Another uh, race victory. Uh, round 10's in the bag. Let's bring it in. Nice 1500 smackers there going your way, mate. Uh, that was a challenging race at the start of that one, but uh, certainly it seemed to go your way. Yeah, um, everything went to plan, really, didn't it? Um, got a great start off the line. I think, I don't know whether Bruce bogged down a bit or got some wheel spin, but moved to the outside, managed to cut in front of him for, for turn one, so he's up to third, and then I thought, well, I got to go for it on uh, on Scott uh, down into Brooklands, which yeah, he sort of fair play to him. He you know he braked where he wanted to break, and he gave me enough room down the inside. I just barreled it down the inside, and then it was a case of trying to get after Adam. And I thought to myself, I'll just I'll let him have a few laps, keep it sort of two, three car lengths, just see if we can stay there. And to be fair to him, he had really really good pace. Um, I was also mindful of the ballast that we're carrying and stuff like that. I didn't want to wear the car out before the end. And then all of a sudden he just went straight on at turn one. I thought, well, happy days, you know. It's, you know, I don't want to wish, you know, bad luck on anybody. Um, but yeah, it is what it is at the end of the day. And then it was just plain sailing from there and just backed it off towards the end and just, yeah, stroked it home. A good amount of intelligence there gathered for race two later on today. And uh, obviously the re with the reverse grid, um, is it the same again or is that going to be a bit more of a challenge, you reckon? Um, I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going to stand here and say <laughs> same again, and I at the end of the day. Um, no, well, there's a couple of little bits I want to work on with the car again now. Like I keep saying to you, we just keep chipping and chipping and chipping at little bits. So a couple of tiny little changes for race two. We start P10. Um, I don't know. You might see me again in one of these top three positions in race two. That's that's what I'm looking to do. That's what we're aiming to do. Uh, we'll see how we get to. Hey, that championship certainly looks like it's going your way, mate. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Cheers. Excellent. Carl Bordley there. Let's go to uh, second place, Jensen uh, Brickley. Uh, Sorry, Joe, I seem to be messing up all your conversations with drivers. Uh, Jensen, that was a nail-biting race for yourself. You had that uh, twitchy moment there with uh, Scott. And, you know, talk us through that race, mate, because uh, that looked like a handful. Yeah, it was definitely a handful. We, we had a pretty poor start, but I came back first lap. Um, yeah, so we was running seventh, and I was getting probably a place a lap. And then, yeah, we was definitely moving forward. And then it got to a bit of no man's land. I was trying to catch Oliver Cotton and then something. Then they held each other up. I caught. Um, yeah, then I was away in third and Scott obviously did a bit of a silly move in my eyes but he drove down the side of me and took me wide which then dropped me back the places that I'd just made up so then I had to work twice as hard again to get back by some more but yeah, I'm happy with second but it's unfortunate that he took me out a bit at the start because I think we could have been contending with Carl at the front. Yeah, definitely so. The car was looking absolutely rapid out there, mate. And uh, honestly, for race two coming up later on today, uh, that's a nice chunk that you've uh, learned from that race. Do you feel that could go uh, roughly the same way? Yeah, definitely. We're starting ninth, so it's a little bit back from where we were, but nothing that we don't know. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Excellent, mate. Honestly, solid drive. Well done. Uh, we'll let you rest up and enjoy the P2. Thank you. Excellent stuff there for Jensen Brickley. Honestly, uh, really deserves that one. He had a stellar race all the way throughout that as... Uh, <laughs> Joe Marshall thinking he's getting a 1500 quid check, mate. Uh, I don't think that's the prize for uh, P3 on that one, but mate, what a drive for you on that. Oh, it was hectic, wasn't it? That Jesus. Um, I just, I just thought to myself, this race, just go. Don't think about much. Just go nice and steady. Just let everyone else will fall off, and it, that happens pretty much. I had a good, great battle with Brad. I don't, I'm not sure what happened to him, but yeah, it was. A proper good race that was, I enjoyed that one. Yeah, it really was, and uh, obviously now you've got the reverse grid coming up later on today, another challenge that you've got ahead of you, and uh, plenty of positions to grab, but how was the Audi feeling out there? Did you feel like you had the pace to keep up with the Coopers? I don't know, because we, we struggled quite a lot then, I don't know what was, we didn't change the car from qualifying, so I don't know what was quite up with the car, so we'll look at some footage, go, go through some data and have a look, but yeah, there's a lot more to come from the car, yeah. Do you reckon then? I reckon, yeah. yeah. Do you reckon then radical changes with the car before race two, or just minor no, changes? No, I won't say radical changes. Just little bits here and there, because that's what. Um, yeah, I just struggled with certain areas, so we'll work on that. Yeah, excellent stuff, mate. But honestly, that is a, a cracking race. Certainly, what we wanted to see. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you're a bit knackered now, and uh, can't wait for race two. Yeah, not long now. So I want to get my head down, look at some data, and then get stuck in for race two. 
Yeah, excellent, mate. Congratulations. Well done there to uh, Joe Marshall, Jensen Brickley and uh, Carl Bordley again, really pushing uh, the boundaries of this one. Uh, Paul O'Neill just over here. Just want to see if I can quick, uh, grab a quick word with him. Paul, uh, just quickly, mate, honestly, that was an epic well, race, wasn't it? Wow, it was amazing. Yeah, I'm just here for the social media interviews. But um, have you seen this on the side of Brickley's car? Did he tell you about that? Get no. Oil? No, he didn't. Box oil. He's only he's only just made that. Yeah. So, but one of the best races I've uh, I've seen. TCR UK had arrived this year, but now it's it's proper. Great grandstands. Brilliant. Loved it, mate. It's good. It's mate, good. Honestly, this is wicked. I'll let you crack on with some uh, interviews. Uh, that was a taster of what is left to come. Round 11 is coming up later on today. Do not go anywhere. Plenty more racing between now and then. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back in a moment with the rest of the racing. Uh, well, no time for breaks, Anthony, because we are heading straight into our next racing action here today. It's the Airtech Motorsport Fiesta ST240 Championship, their third and final race here at Silverstone. And they will kick off our afternoon's support race action uh, with uh, two races so far. One by one, one by Alistair Keller, the other by Albert Webster. And uh, we were hearing it was a turbo pipe failure on Kellett's car that took him out of that earlier race. And that's really tightened up the championship table now because Webster uh, had been getting on for 40 points adrift of uh, Kellett but once the drop scores are adjusted now he claims about 17 of those points back so very very close indeed in the championship the grid for the third race though as always is the case uh, with the Fiestas features a partially reversed grid so it looks as though it is the top eight that have been swapped around to form the grid for this one so Connor Blackburn on pole with Caitlin May alongside and then Morgan Kidd on the third of the uh, second row of the grid third on the grid overall she's been very rapid this weekend Joseph Knight will start from four row three for Matt Love and uh, Gary Miller from home in the start, I should say, in sixth place on the grid. John Cooper and Albert Webster then, the top two from the earlier race. Today, we'll start on row four, row five for Simon Horriman and Marco Ritchie with Zach Lucas and Christopher Blackburn together on the sixth row of the grid. Row seven for Archie Johnson and Adam Clark. Eighth row for Sean Reynolds and Matt Chambers. And it's Alistair Kellett at the back of the grid that we really need to keep an eye on. The championship leader, he is still the championship leader, but by that reduced margin, and with a bit of overtaking to be done. Uh, delighted to be joined once again by Richard John Deal now for our support race action. And well, we've had two fantastic uh, Fiesta ST240 races so far today. And this one, a very different dynamic. You've got Webster having having to make some progress up because of the re reversed grid. And that maybe gives Alistair Keller just a, a, a little bit of hope that he might not lose too many more points in this one. Yep, I was chatting to him during the lunch break and as ever, what a lovely guy he is, Re always extremely, well, he says pleased to see me, he looks like he, <laughs> he is, no, but always really polite and, and a joy to chat to, but very laid back. And he said, you know, we've been in this situation before, DNFs are things that happen, you just put it behind you and crack on with it. and that's. That's the experience, isn't it, speaking, rather than the youngsters would, would drop their head and, yeah. and get all in a half and everything. Not saying Albert would, but a lot of young drivers would. But Alistair, yeah, he's, he's, not, he's not bothered. He, he would just get on with it, do the job. And here he was saying, well, you know, the, 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 talk, the idea is how, how close can we get to Albert in this race? Yeah. And well, that's the point, isn't it? Because Albert's starting eighth, so... Actually, only nine places further back is Alice Kellett, whereas if Webster had been starting for pole position, uh, it would have been 17 places further back. So, you know, sometimes these the timing of these things can work out quite well for you. And if Kellett was going to have a non-finish, better to be in that race perhaps than any other. So uh, one car heading for the pit lane there, that's Adam Clark, unfortunately. He was involved in a nice tussle in uh, yesterday's first race of the weekend, but uh, his third race, unfortunately, perhaps could be over before it starts. An interesting front row of the grid, though, here is isn't it? We've got Colin Blackburn and Caitlin May together, and then Morgan Kidd. What can Morgan Kidd do from third on the grid? Because she's had front-running pace in uh, in both of the races so far. So uh, she, in that bright pink number 53 car, is going to be one to watch in the early stages, I am sure. So grid formed. The green flag will very shortly be waved from the back of that grid. Can't wait to see who's going to get into the first corner first then Connor Blackburn Caitlin May on the outside of uh, row one the pole sitter sits away they go the red lights go out 
And who's going to get into Cop's corner first? You can already see Kellett making some ground there in the back on a Blackburn. I think we'll get the advantage into turn one. And here comes Gary Miller from sixth on the grid. The Whoa. red number 42 car sweeping round the outside of Caitlin May. And it looks as though he might be into second place. Matt Luff is coming through with him in the blue car behind. But yeah, Gary Miller, sixth to second already. Yeah, Gary Miller could be difficult to beat from there. Alistair was made up for his countrymen getting that podium in a second podium of the season in race Ooh, number one. But that's, oh, that's Morgan Kidd that's and Albert Webster. Webster. Albert Webster out wide and just like that, things change again. He's behind Alistair Kellett, which wow, believes. Wow, Albert wow. Webster on the receiving end of a, a little bit of rubbing there and uh, Morgan Kidd involved too after a bad start. And that was not in the script. No, my script had Joseph Knight going into. That was going to be my prediction. Oh. Joseph Knight, and he's, he's not had the start that he wanted. He's still there or thereabouts, challenging for a podium. He's in the yellow car on the outside line of Caitlin May. Matt Luff in behind as well. It's nice to be uh, have a visit from Matt's manager, Rick Shortle, earlier on, in case uh. you wondered who it was that came in, due to our anecdote from yesterday. Uh, that's John Cooper it's through the Cooper. gravel. So slips behind Zach Lucas and maybe Alistair Kellett as well. Where's Kellett got himself to? He's seventh. Ten places gained on the opening lap uh, for <laughs> Alistair Kellett. What a recovery drive this already is. Through Cops corner go Caitlin May and Joseph Knight. Matt Luff there trying to get the run. And Kellett going wherever he can to try and find a gap. Yeah, the bit is firmly between his teeth, isn't it? And a, a win is possible here. He's on the outside Ooh. of Joseph Knight as they go through Maggots. Will he, will he slot back in here? Matt Luff goes up the inside side in the all blue car uh, and Kelly has made an absolutely demon opening couple of laps and he needs to championship well he doesn't need to but it's what he would want to do and fantastic for us to see great reverse grid racing great to see Connor Blackburn who yeah. struggled in qualifying yes had, had loads of DNFs earlier on in the season and this is what reverse grid racing affords you the chance to work through get yourself into that reverse grid zone and have a crack at the front absolutely holding on nicely isn't he although Gary Miller just started now to apply the pressure for the race lead and that was four wide into Beckett's that time by the way your eyes weren't deceiving you and somehow they all came out the other side as well someone in the gravel further back Marco Ricci that might have been uh, but some side-by-side -side action further up the Zach Lucas versus Joseph Knight, that is, in the battle for fourth position. Kellett's sixth now. Matt Love down to seventh. He really came out of that uh, a little bit worse for wear. And then it's Albert Webster. So Webster's only two places behind Kellett then. And he will be desperate to try and join in this battle. There he is, the <laughs> red and white AMD car, uh, right back in it. Yeah, even better than one guy coming from the back. He's two <laughs> having the battle together. We're not quite there with it yet, but it won't take long. Luff, look at that on the brakes there as they go into Beckett. Webster, good measured recovery so far. Zach Lucas bouncing around on the outside of Alistair Kellett. We'll have to run down the Wellington straight. Let's see what Webster can do. But we go back to the lead with Gary Miller chasing Connor Blackburn, who's doing a grand job out front. He is indeed. Matt Luff trying to join in the foot. Webster comes charging around the outside. This is how he got the lead away from Alistair Kellett in the previous race. And on this occasion, he gets past Matt Luff and almost gets an overlap against Zach Lucas. He might now get up the inside of Lucas at Luffield because Alistair Kellett had the inside line. Lucas was forced to the outside. And if Albert Webster can complete this manoeuvre, he'll be right on the rear bumper of his big championship rival. Needs to try and outscore Kellett again in this race. Really almost kick Kellett when he's down. Kellett having a bit of an off weekend after that knob finish and Albert Webster with rejuvenated championship hopes really needs to make the most of it. He's on the inside line of Lucas. He's going to go past him through Cobb's corner and now sets on after his championship rival. Connor Blackburn then leads by half a second. Gary Miller second. Caitlin May in third place. Haven't really mentioned Caitlin but having a solid run albeit now under an awful lot of pressure. Here we go down the inside. Joseph oh. Knight makes the move. He's going to run wide and through goes Albert Webster. Uh, no, that's oh, May. Caitlin, Caitlin May back. Sorry, yeah. Albert's still chasing. Yeah, that was... Oh, oh no, no! no that's that's a a Off down the back straight. Contact with Joseph Knight. And that is the championship leader wow. in trouble again. Luckily, he doesn't make contact with anything uh, too solid. But... Uh, there's been a few incidents of that nearly happening this weekend. People squeezing coming out of Beckett's, and I don't think that uh, Joseph Knight now or Alistair Kellett realised that they were still slightly overlapping. That's, that's killed one of the main things of the race for us, isn't it? That's yeah. a, such a shame. And Joseph Knight will not be happy with himself. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't think uh, Alistair Kellett's going to be best pleased either, but uh, he is at least still in the race, and we do still have uh, over three quarters of the race to go. So, you know, actually, he could still get up there and score some reasonable points. That's, side very, by side. that's very optimistic of you, isn't it? <laughs> a few people have accused me recently of being the exact opposite of that. I'm, I'm trying to work on myself. Uh, Albert Webster on the inside of Joseph Knight then for fourth, yeah, fourth place this is. And uh, they've got, well, everyone else joining in behind. Zach Lucas, Matt Luff. We've got John Cooper, Morgan Kidd uh, and Archie Johnson are part of this scrap. Webster's got the inside line. Joseph Knight so late on the race, but like a lap ago, he can't stop the car, doesn't make the apex. And Webster does now go into fourth.
Yeah, he does, Albert Webster, on a little bit of a charge through here. This, again, is... is uh, well, I said that we've lost Kellett from the equation, and that is a pity, but we've still got the joy of watching Albert trying to work his way through. Connor Blackburn settling down well. Gary Miller in that second place, position. They're out of shot. Caitlin May hanging on well. She could have got Ooh. phased by all that as well. Uh, that was a little bit of a touch, I think, between Zach Lucas and John Cooper. Sorry to jump across No, no, there, don't worry, but, mate. Uh, bit of a headbutt given there by John as they... Uh, Met in the same bit of racetrack there under braking, but no real harm done. And if anything, John Cooper lost a position to Matt Luff, so certainly didn't uh, gain an advantage from that. Great sight they make, though, as they come out of uh, Luffield, absolutely nose to tail. At the head of the field, though, Connor Blackburn, Richard, still leading and now by nearly three quarters of a second. Yeah, he's doing a grand job out front, and he's sometimes just getting that opportunity, isn't it, to get a start from the front of the field and see what you can do, see how the, the nerves, well, we've got a bit of splitter trouble. Uh, oh, on Blackburn's car. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. There um, was, uh, I think Alistair Kellett had that problem he yesterday, did, yeah, didn't he? Did. He? But he won. He still won, yes. Oh, there we go. So maybe it's a good omen for uh, Connor Blackburn. It's really flapping, isn't it? You can see that uh, out of Beckett. It's well spotted. Meanwhile, Alan Webster into third. He's found a way past Caitlin May there through Cox Corner. So Webster onto the podium now, uh, having started down in eighth position. So the race two winner on course for another good points day. And the one good thing that Webster can take out of that Alistair Kellett spin is it was nothing to do with him. So he any points he can get here, there's no cloud over his head whatsoever. And it looks like he is going to take a big chunk back out of the points lead. Leader. Through Luffield corner they all go. We had Zach Lucas and uh, Joseph Knight battling away there, but they stay in the same order for now. So Blackburn, Miller, Webster and May is across the line again. Kell it down in 15th place. So it's going to be a, a huge, huge task for him. Here he comes now into shop. He's not going to make progress from there, is he? The car does not look happy now after that. No, not really. What are his lap times like then? This time around it's a 106.4. It is a personal best lap. And it is half a second quicker than the race leader. It's three tenths slower, though, than okay. that man there, John Cooper, who's just done the fastest lap of the race as he goes past Zach Lucas. John Cooper, veteran of the parish, um, still puts in some decent results nope. running in the Masters. Change for the lead. Now Gary Miller takes over from Connor Blackburn. What's that little mistake we have maybe missed? But Connor doesn't look like he's given up the ghost here. He's going to try and go through. That uh, splitter flapping more than the goalkeeper at my local Woodon League football club, to be perfectly honest, <laughs> at the moment. And uh, he's uh, still there at the moment, is Miller. But under pressure, this is good stuff from Blackburn, trying to come back. Absolutely. Round Luffield they go then down towards Woodcote Corner and uh, on a Blackburn trying to get the lead back. But all this is doing is bringing Albert Webster closer and closer to them. Webster was two seconds off the race lead at the beginning of the lap at the end of that seventh lap he is only 0.7 of a second away from the race lead and Albert Webster now for a race victory is looking increasingly likely it all kind of depends I think on how much of a fight Connor Blackburn puts up against him here because uh, Gary Miller we know is quick if he's given a chance to escape he will take it and that might well be aided if the uh, second place man comes over all defensive oh ho, ho, straight past how did, he how did he stop it that where, was where was defensive there <laughs> you can't defend against that can you, you want to move no you can't Absolutely superb. Alistair Kellett gets the fastest lap now, so he's starting his charge and will try and get back through the field. We've got Blackburn still in third place. A podium will be good for Connor Blackburn, but Webster here is oh. going to dive down the inside, comes out of the slipstream, down the inside. Can he get it done? Gary Miller hangs on on the outside, but he knows that he is under big, big attack here. And for Webster, remember, first win was Alton. Second win was here. The, ca the career chipping away continues. He's going for his first double. He's got the inside line. Is he going to get it? I think he will. That was brilliant racing, though. Again, great racing room, racing respect shown by both drivers. A black and white warning flag for somebody there. We'll get to that in a moment because we are side by side for the race lead by 62 thousandths of a second. Albert Webster led that lap and he leads now, clearly going through Cops Corner, having gone from eight on the grid to the front in less than 10 minutes. Brilliant effort that from Albert. But is Gary Miller going to come back at him here? Gary looks like he came off cops a little bit more quickly surely he can't outbreak Albert Webster he's going to try you know he oh. does go straight up the inside oh. instantly proves me wrong that was another brilliant move yeah I tell you what Gary Miller he's, he's got real confidence from that drive yeah. that he did earlier on no reason why he shouldn't he's been on the podium before what a race we are having reverse grid passing and <laughs> repassing racing by definition absolutely Webster now tries his favorite move around the outside of Brooklyn's and I think this might work again is Gary Miller going to be able to surge back ahead yes just about pens him off once more this is terrific stuff isn't it Gary Miller Albert Webster and Connor Blackburn still on, Connor. there if these two start really getting into each other Blackburn could really benefit yeah 
Yeah, come on, Connor, get up with him, have a good race for the. This is what he wants, isn't it? To be up racing for the lead. This is exactly why we have this format. Works for touring cars, works for the feeder series as well. Offline, though, tucking down the inside. Albert Webster looks back for the lead, back round to the outside sweep here at Cops Corner. And Gary Miller, the Irishman, doing a superb job out front. Yeah, Gary doesn't want to over defend, though. That will start losing him exit speed and maybe allow uh, Albert to get alongside him. It doesn't happen into Beckett's, though. And Gary Miller will position the car down the middle of the road blocks off either the inside or the outside line for Webster but he's wide of the apex he's drifted over the exit curve and Albert now definitely gets an opportunity back alongside him he goes absolutely nothing to choose in straight line speed between the two cars initially it seems and Webster on that outside line is going to have to be very brave again down into Brooklands so a quick look, Joseph Knight looks like he's come through up into fourth place now ahead of Caitlin May. So a change from the previous lap. If we just momentarily take our eyes off this lead back. Oh, oh, oh. oh. kiss, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a helping hand given there by Albert Webster. And again, he wasn't pushed through, was it? He was, no. he was off the throttle. He realised it was too close. He realised contact was made and off the throttle. Good stuff, Albert. Easily done, really, because that is the way that you go through Luffield. You roll off the throttle, you roll into the apex, and you're not really breaking particularly through that corner. Just lifting off the throttle very easily to carry a bit too much speed but again no harm no foul and Carrie Miller hangs on to the position then uh, Gary looking for his first win of the season and uh, well is he now under threat again from Webster Webster looking to the inside line uh, he's not quite alongside enough though so Miller will stay in front now Gary made a bit of a mistake here a lap ago makes another one this time drifts even wider and this time Webster might fully yeah, clear he's got it. yes he does here comes Miller though has a look he's going to be the wrong side of things but we've seen him pass once nothing to say he won't go back in and the splitter clearly not doing any damage at all to Connor Blackburn <laughs> Joseph Knight is in fourth Caitlin May still in fifth having a good run Matt Luff in sixth uh, yes indeed Alistair Kellett by the way is 13th but does at least have that bonus point for the fastest lap so that will uh, make a little bit of a difference but he's really rooting right now for Gary Miller and Connor Blackburn isn't he hoping that they can prevent <laughs> a second win of the day uh, for Albert Webster who does now look like he's starting to look a bit more comfortable out in front. We cut back to a battle going on further back. Morgan Kidd here behind Zach Lucas and both of them uh, chasing Archie Johnson. This is for uh, ninth place. Yeah, they are good stuff going on all the way down the, the field. Someone was commenting to me in the lunch break that numbers are one or two down on, on usual, maybe the last couple of seats. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Great racing, and, and the, the more racing like this people will see, the people will come and race with it, particularly being part of this paddock. And the paddock talk lunchtime is they love being here yes. with TCR. And the paddock talk I've heard is that we'll see a lot more of them next year, yeah. hopefully, alongside TCR as well, which is exactly what we want to see. It's a natural feeder series, really, isn't it, to TCR. These are yeah. very similar uh, in the way that they are designed, the way that they drive, the way that they race uh, to TCR cars. And I'm sure that that's only going to help the championship grow in the future. Top three single file, that's Matt Luff, trying a bit of a late lunge up the inside of Caitlin May, who didn't know whether she could turn into the corner or not then, and uh, in the end decided not to, so Luffy slips through and reclaims fifth place. Had a very consistent weekend so far as Matt Luffy's finished fourth on the road in both the first two races. The first of those became a third place finish after a penalty for John Cooper, and uh, he's into the top five again. Now, there is Alistair Kellett. Six and a half minutes to go here, Richard. He's caught the back of the pack again. He's actually passed a couple of cars already, so a top ten, I'd say, is a bare minimum that he could get out of this. He could even get a few more places if it really starts kicking off in front of him so all is not lost no pick a mix now isn't it mix it and pick your way through if you can and just see how many points he can get you never know whether he'll need those at the end this championship of course you can't drop scores at the last round of brands Correct. that's right isn't that so a brsc Thank goodness for that trait i actually <laughs> like that it's a bit of a pain if your brands one would have been your drop score but i do kind of like the it's a, it's a good way of doing it for me caitlin running a little bit wide there yeah i, I really don't like drivers winning a championship in a race that they didn't finish because that became a drop score and they score back points from three months oh, earlier and that, you know, you, know you, you want to win it on the road in the last race don't you that's the best way to do it and uh, yeah that's a BRSTC initiative that I really really enjoy right Matt Luff really enjoyed this battle I reckon with John Cooper it's for a position inside the top five and these two have been very evenly matched all weekend long Cooper trying to find the overlap there through Luffield but Matt Luff on the wide line it looks like he's leaving the door open through the middle of the corner but then he straightens up the steering he gets on the throttle a bit harder a bit sooner and carries a bit more momentum past the pits through Woodcote Corner. Cooper's going to look to the inside now though down towards Cops and is this move going to work? I think it might do. Luffy, yeah, I think had to concede there. Luffy? Luffy, Are we yeah, getting Luffy? <laughs> <laughs> I do know Matt quite well. We became quite good friends when he was racing in uh, Civic Cup and uh, 
He's had worse nicknames, I reckon, over the years. I think he'll settle for that one. Probably right. <laughs> what I'd say is there's a lot of cars out there that, that have plain livery. So if you're watching this for the first time, maybe you've been watching it for a while, you've got a business that you want to promote, then you know, get, get your livery on any one of those cars that's got... They would welcome you with open arms yeah. to get in, and it's great to be involved. Never mind the exposure for your company. That is a great thing, of course, but just get involved and help a driver any one of those cars that's got space on. It's a great weekend out. If you're you know, a small company, for example, there's only a couple of you, maybe it's a family business, it's a great day out to come and support your driver, get a taste of British motor racing at its very best. And one of the things that I think used to put sponsors off from getting involved in club motorsport was that there wasn't any exposure. You know, no one was bothering watching uh, club motorsport. It's all stream now, isn't it? So. It's all, exactly. So many meetings live stream more and more every year and the profile of these championships really starting to grow which is exactly what we all wanted to see uh, right what Alistair Kellett wants to see is his name rising up our leaderboard oh. and he's going about it the right <laughs> way there elbowing his way past <laughs> Simon Horobin for 11 out the way Horobin coming through <laughs> <laughs> Yes. yes, that was uh, forceful, wasn't it? It was. Has to be, though, doesn't it, really? He can't really afford to rest on his laurels here. He's got four minutes left. What do we think? There's another two or three places at least to be gained here, I think, because everyone's so close together. Yeah, it runs a little bit wide there. So Morgan Kidd, the next target. Connor Blackburn still leading the club class, which I'd completely forgotten about. So well done, Connor. And a good, strong third here so yeah. far. I know it's probably the curse, but <laughs> he's done really well. He is, or well, Simon Horrigan trying to come back at Kellett in the background whilst Caitlin May defends from Zach oh, Lucas oh, up oh. over the kerb. Zach Lucas hangs tough around the outside, gets the inside for Luffield Corner and might bring with him uh, Archie Johnson, maybe. Caitlin May just starting to slip down the order a little bit and uh, he might just lose another position coming out of Luffield term as Alistair Kellett now moves up behind Morgan Kidd to try and move into the top ten. Alistair Kellett, Richard, started last in this race. He had a spin down the back straight and fell to the back of the field. He is only nine and a half seconds off the race lead i don't know how that's possible he's a peddler he really is driven well in this race could arguably be his best race of the season even though he's not going to feature at the very front of the field to, to stay that close uh, time wise to the leaders after all of his trials and tribulations is impressive yeah it is it's that's the stuff champions are made of isn't it really d doing that and it's just really how the rest of the, the run into the end of the year goes for him but he's got a a not resurgent, but a surgeon. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. It is now. Um, Albert Webster, who, you know, first double, and that's what you do, isn't it? And then he'll be looking at taking three consecutive wins, yeah. and that's how careers are built. And, and I'll make no apology for saying, again, he did not get any junior wins. He didn't win in junior car racing. So to come into to seniors, he might have felt demoralised or not worthy of taking the wins, but what I love about him as well, he's such a great character when you interview him on the podium. He's just a lad. No, he really is. He really is a nice, uh, nice young man is uh, Albert Webster and a quick one as well one second clear now of Gary Miller at the front of the field whilst Alison Kellett's recovery drive continues ninth place now and the fastest lap he's scoring more and more points with every position that he gains a couple of points per position actually at this stage and he could in the remaining minute and three quarters find a way back ahead of uh, Archie Johnson and if he really gets a move on maybe have a go at Zach Lucas as well well he is getting a move on he's past Johnson already that's eighth place and Zach Lucas is only about a second ahead of him yeah not far at all so cracking progress Caitlin May uses the open door to go through and pass Archie Johnson as well is that the Prime Minister's son the baby, wasn't that called Archie? I may have got that. Uh, it may well be. Yeah, I, don't, I don't keep up with these things. Aston well, Paul O'Neill, I think he's an expert <laughs> on uh, Tory politics. Uh, down into uh, <laughs> Brooklyn's they go. And uh, Caitlin May, oh, has he managed to, she managed to get the place back from Archie? I don't think she has. Left him plenty of space on the exit. Uh, but Archie Johnson is well in her wheel tracks. So Caitlin May hanging on to what is now ninth position as Alistair Kellett sets off after the cars ahead. Zachary Lucas and even Matt Luff not that far clear. Uh, but we're through now onto what should be the final lap of the race. It should be, shouldn't it? And Conor Blackburn here, that's going to be a good interview, isn't it, with Conor yes. Blackburn <laughs> to uh, club win. Again, we get to hopefully interview the, the uh, club class winner. But Albert Webster, is this is very much career building, setting a little benchmark for the others. This youngster on his way again, had to work hard for it. Lost the lead once, came back and got it. Gary Miller's had a good run. Do the best for him, second position as well. Yeah. So 
lots of little milestones that Scott Woodworth will no doubt pick up on the BRSEC social media. Um, Connor Blackburn in third, Joseph Knight. I thought, I actually thought Joseph was going to make the podium in this one. Yeah. What do I know? Well, he's not a million miles off, and there were a number of drivers, I think, who could have filled out those podium places, but as yeah. always is yeah. the case with reverse grids, it's a bit unpredictable. And this race, no different at all, but it is going to be a second win of the day, the first double for Albert Webster, who's coming on song at the right time of the year. Alistair Kellett, I think, is going to get past Zach Lucas, but it's advantage Webster in the championship race as far as momentum is concerned. He wins here at Silverstone for the second time today. Gary Miller with a season best finish of second and Connor Blackburn, the club class winner on the overall podium. And he is delighted with that. Punches the air as he crosses the line. Joseph Knight fourth, John Cooper fifth, Luff sixth. And Lucas actually pipped Alistair Kellett Got him uh, back. to seventh place by 26 thousandths of a second. Yeah, Zach Lucas, what about that? Do you know what? I look back and reflect on many Fiesta races here at Silverstone. I've rarely seen a bad one, no. I think, here. No, they're perfect for this yeah. track, aren't they, yeah. really? As we've discussed a few times, it's a great design of car. And these new ST240s, they really are a great addition, I think, to the legacy of Ford Fiesta Racing. It's a great-looking car. Yeah. The racing they produce is really, really good. And as we've said, the way the similarities between these and touring cars from higher uh, up the motor racing ladder, a uh, really, really useful place for drivers to come and hone their craft. Albert Webster doing just that, a third victory of the season, and he will now be knocking on the door of the championship lead. Gary Miller second with Connor Blackburn in third, Joseph Knight fourth, ahead of John Cooper, Matt Love, Zach Lucas, Alistair Kellett eighth after starting from the back of the grid and getting tagged into that spin down the Wellington Strait, uh, whilst Caitlin Bay and Archie Johnson were ninth and tenth respectively, and second and third in the uh, club class. Simon Horovin was 11th ahead of Marco Ricci, Morgan Kidd and Christopher Blackburn next in line. 15th place for Sean Reynolds and Matt Chambers a lap down, uh, but was at least still running at the flag. Adam Clark as we saw retired to the pit lane, unfortunately, before the race even started. So cars head down into the pit lane. They will head towards the podium area and uh, Anthony Jordan will be ready and waiting to have a chat with a very happy podium. I think all of them happy with that. Webster from a championship perspective, Miller because it's his best finish of the season, and Connor Blackburn, need we say more, club winner and, excuse me, an outright podium finish. And he pulls the golf-ish liveried Fiesta, another uh, series with that uh, famous blue and orange paint scheme on the grid. Joseph Knight wants an interview as well. Uh, yes, Joseph does, <laughs> and Caitlin May. Everyone's coming for a chat. Anthony Jordan, the popular fellow in the uh, BRSDC paddock these days. The Welsh drivers didn't like him, but... The, no. the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Fiestas feel a bit sorry for him. Well, they, they felt that he was a bit left out uh, after that uh, Welsh sports loom race earlier on. So, hooks all round, a very happy pit lane, which is just what we like to see. And um, once the drivers have de-helmeted, we will... Uh, be able to dive in, I think, and have a little chat with them. That was a uh, brilliant race. And as I said, as far as the championship storyline is concerned, it does wonders, really, uh, for tightening up the, uh, the championship battle at the front. It's going to be a fascinating final couple of rounds at uh, Croft and Silverstone. But in the meantime, let's head down into the uh, pit lane and hear from our podium finishers and Anthony Jordan. Well, we're making a bit of a habit uh, of this today, aren't we? Another win, and uh, certainly seems to be going your way, and a nice way to end the day. Now, finally, a nice way to end the day. <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah, can't believe it. Um, yeah, reverse grid put me as far back as it possibly could with eighth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I got put off turn two. That's what it is, you know, got going. Dropped, like, second to last, I think it was, and I just had to get my way through. And then, you know, it just all happened in front of me, and I just managed to get through it all. Um, Miller at the end, really good battle, really, really fast driver, really, really good battle, loved it, brilliant race. Great way to end the weekend on this one, nice chunk of silverware, congratulations. Brilliant, thank you so much. Excellent there, great stuff from the AirTech 240s there for that one, Albert Webster. Uh, let's chat to our man in the number 42 right here, Miss Gary. Gary, again, another good race, certainly had to fight for it though, you had a nice little challenge, nice little yeah, battle no, all the way it, throughout. All the hard work was done at the start to be fair, I got a great start off the line and second going down into the first corner, so that, that was a lot of the hard work done and just, I just didn't get past corner quick enough, he just held me up a bit and... Uh, I've seen all the chaos unfold behind, and then out of that chaos, I thought it was going to be Alistair coming in. Webster was coming at me, and so I, just, I just ran out of tyres at the end. But look, 
a third, a second and a third, this began to can't argue, so I'm happy. So, yeah. and there's not a mark on the car, so. Uh, after after knock hill, that's a big bonus. So, and actually, to thank my panel beater as well, because he had two hard nights work on that to get me here. So, listen, thanks to everyone for being here. And I even expect you to Alice as well. Alice gave me great help this weekend as well. So, look, let's see what we can do next week in our next time out in Croft. Exactly. Let's yeah. find out, mate. Yeah. Congratulations. Well done on that one, uh, P2. Let's go to uh, third place, wherever he is hiding. Uh, where is he hiding? Uh, where is he? Oh, right here. Right, there we go, mate. Right, Connor, back of the grid, through the grid, yep. mate, what a drive. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. The reverse grid uh, played just in my favour, and I managed to stay behind these two to the end, so it worked out well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Silverstone seems to be a favourite one for you then. Certainly know how to uh, pedal your way around, and uh, a nice way to end the day on the top three. Yeah, it's a bit better than when we came last time and ended up upside down, so yes. well happy, yeah. yeah, yeah. Never nice to end up upside down, is it? But this time around, yeah, P3, solid result for you. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure you can uh, go home and be happy with that one tonight. Yeah, buzzing. Yeah. Buzzing. yeah. Mate, congratulations. Got a black button there. I want to just turn our attention here. We've got uh, Ryan over here, uh, main sponsor from Airtech. Mate, uh, great to have you here for uh, Silverstone. And, I mean, the races that we've had over this weekend, uh, it's certainly been a treat for you and the yeah, spectators at home. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic racing. Um, we've been involved in the championship now for two years, um, and it seems to be getting stronger and stronger every year. Really competitive racing, and it's a great series to be involved with. Yeah, solid grids that you've had, and uh, the weekend here at Silverstone, these races have been second to none. They're action-packed, they're, they're so fun to watch, and, you know, I reckon a lot more people should really try and get involved in this. 100%, yeah. Um, Fiesta STs are a great car anyway. Um, without being put on a the track, they're a fantastic car. And with a race setup, there's nothing else that's really, really better than it for, for racing. Yeah. Um, we've done it ourselves. We, we competed in Time Attack a few years ago. Um, and, and yeah, supporting it with a BRSCC was a no brainer for us, really. Yeah. No, it is absolutely fantastic. Great to have you here as well, thank and uh, nice way to end the day on that one as well. Lovely job. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank, thank you very much, Ryan, from uh, Airtech there. Great to see uh, that he's here. Uh, we are going to turn our attention now. It's time to get away from Tin Tops. It's time to go to Open Wheels. It is Formula Ford. It is coming up next. Stay with us. Thanks, Anthony. Stellar work, as always, down in the pit lane. I tell you what, it's getting very warm out there right now. I've just uh, popped out for a moment myself, and that's sun is uh, really starting to warm up the Silverstone circuit, which uh, is good news, really, given the pretty terrible weather that we've had to endure uh, over the rest of the summer. And, uh, well, more enjoyment to come now because it is time for our second race of the weekend for the Avon Tire Super Classic Pre-99 Formula 4 Championship. They put on a good show earlier on today, and I'm sure we'll do so again here in race two. Jacob Tofts came out on top in race one, and therefore starts from pole position in the second race but he had an early challenge in that race from um, Alex Ames in the number 21 car and uh, Alex then sort of faded away and in, in the end actually lost second place to Andrew Ames in the closing stages but uh, the pair of Ames, Morgan Dempsey, Lewis Fox all pretty even on pace so we should see some proper Formula Ford slipstreaming action in this second and final 15 minute race of the day. So the car's about to leave the grid and uh, head around the formation lap on the 1.6 mile Silverstone National Circuit, such an iconic venue for Formula Ford racing. And, uh, well, we haven't really had a dull race yet today. Let's hope that the Formula Fords can keep that trend going. Green flag lap then gets underway and Jacob Tofts will lead them around and eventually in front of the famous BRDC building on his way to pole position, having won that race earlier on today. Andrew Ames uh, came home in second place, so he'll start on the front row with him. Row two for Alex Ames and Morgan Dempsey, with Lewis Fox and Paul Mason on row number three. Fourth row for Guy Skin and Simon Hadfield. Then it's Richard Frey and Andrew Schofield, Gareth Buckingham and Stuart Kestenbaum on row number six, whilst the seventh row is shared by David Porter and Neil Hunt, Jonathan Barnes and Paul Crosby together on row eight, ahead of Ian Fernahoe and Trevor Morgan, row nine. And top 20, completed by Tim Fitzgerald and Phil Atwood with Oliver Roberts and Scott Rawlinson at the back of the field. So Scott Rawlinson, the championship leader, actually, in Super Classic D for the pre-1972 cars, but uh, didn't have such a good race in the first one, so looking to try and get his day back on track again in race number two. So the field then led by Jacob Tofts, and uh, he's making a very leisurely uh, way down the uh, Wellington Strait, not, uh, not stressing himself too much, not really weaving around too vigorously either to get heat in the tyres. Now he uh, starts to do exactly that and uh, brings the 
cars through Brooklyn's corner. We should have 22 of them hopefully taking the start. I suppose inevitably we might have lost one or two uh, after the first race, but Richard, it was a very enjoyable first race. Jacob Tofts in the end had it pretty easy, but not in the early stages. And that fight for second, third, fourth, fifth places was very, very entertaining. It was good, and they were regular championship runners. Yep. Jacob, uh, be, being the guest, as you mentioned, was uh, away. It's always, oh, we have got all the cars, I think, because uh, just a little look at that the, the uh, Merlin, is it, that's coming through at the back, Scott Rawlinson. Yeah, the Merlin Mark 11 from 1969 would have been, uh, I think, had he kept it on, he's been taking the Class D honours for. And excuse me for looking at the really old cars, being the older person <laughs> in the comms box, but Ian Fernio took the second, I think, class win of the season for him. So uh, really good. Number of guest drivers, doesn't matter. It's always great to get the numbers up, isn't it? And yeah. it, it gives the regular drivers a, a chance to see how they cope with other, other guys in the pack. Uh, no, absolutely. Good to see. It's a well-supported championship, this, the Super Classic Formula Fords uh, for pre-1999 Formula Ford 1600 cars. And... Uh, yeah, the class battles are pretty intriguing, actually, because it's your class position that counts, really. In a way, your overall finishing position isn't all that relevant, but uh, if you can be finishing at the front in your class, then that is going to put you in a good position championship-wise. Morgan Dempsey leads in Class A at the moment. Andrew Schofield, Class B. Scott Guthrie, Class C. And as we said, Scott Rawlinson, the Class D championship leader, not scoring anything in that race earlier on today. So, uh, although all of those points leaders have decent advantages in the standings, uh, they'll all be desperate to try and score as well as they can in this second race, just to solidify their uh, championship position. So Jacob Tofts, the black number 10 car on our right. As we look at it, the left, the white and red of Andrew Ames, the green flag waves and 15 minutes put on the clock then for our Avon Tire Super Classic pre-1999 Formula Ford Championship race. Our second of the day, lights go on. Lights go out now after a relatively short hold. And it's a very good start made by Jacob Tofts from the pole position. And looks like he's going to lead pretty uncontested uh, down into the first corner. Alex Ames making a good start as well, moving through into second place. And as he did on the first start, actually, the second phase of Jacob Tofts' start, not all that impressive. So Alex is going to have a go at him as they head towards Beckett's for the first time. Alex Ames on the inside line, gets his nose ahead. He's on the preferred line and he's into the race lead. Fantastic. The uh, camel man giving the pole man the hump. <laughs> uh, off the uh, into Beckett's for the first. Sorry, Granddad Jokes. Uh, sorry, off that one. But yeah, good start. And uh, I remember my first Formula Ford race here at Silverstone Commentary was a Silverstone Racing School one where all the cars were white and Zeus chassis, which was rather difficult. As Tofts has a little look at the inside, he knows he's got plenty of time, he knows he's got 15 minutes to get his own back and get that guest car into the lead. But at the moment, Alex Ames, that was a super start from him. We've got one of the Duckham's deliveries cars. Morgan Dempsey in third place now, head of the Cannon livery. So was it Jonathan Palmer that had the Cannon livery back in the day? Possibly not in Formula 4, did in sports cars, in the uh, BMW yes. 956, which you'll yes. probably know more of. But yeah, good to see those, those decent brand names there. No, absolutely. And I hope they're charging the relative companies <laughs> for the exposure. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. Three work cop scorer goes uh, Paul Mason. 44, sixth place in the earlier race, running sixth again uh, at the moment. Uh, just behind the Van Diemen with no transponder, number 61. Uh. That should be Gaius Ginn, uh, who is uh, in that lead group as well. He's got right behind him, Simon Hadfield in the 101. But yeah, Gaius Ginn is actually in sixth position then at the moment, ahead of Mason. At the front of the field then, Alex Ains the leader. Jacob Tofts doing his best to go with him, but sort of a role reversal here. Then Jacob Tofts had control of that first race pretty much from the drop of the green flag. But this time around, uh, Alex Ames has moved to the front. And we need to see whether Ames can do what Tofts did in race one and just sort of steadily build the lead as the race goes on. Well, it doesn't look like it at the moment. He's wide out of Luffield corner and Jacob Tofts sees a chance to move back ahead. Yeah, he's looking for that momentum. He can't quite get that down, can he? And the 21 car will just hold on for the moment as they go across the line. But that's a little warning shot, isn't it, for the race leader not to drift wide, not to leave the door open. He got away with that one as they go around Cops Corner again, heading down towards Maggots. Jacob Toffs, the guest driver here, is coming offline. He's going to have a look here. How much momentum has he got? No, he's too far back. Camera angle, flattering to deceive with Morgan Dempsey here in third. Morgan has won the most outright race wins this year in the championship. And that is... 
Go on, let's see the number. Uh, it is. Who's not come through? It's uh, Phil Atwood, I think, isn't it? Number 77. Yeah. Uh, who, by process oh, it's the cross leg, of course it was, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he has pulled into the pit lane. Race over. Not race over at the front, though. Race just starting, maybe, for Jacob Tofts, who slipped through on the inside at uh, Brooklyn's corner. Lovely move, typical Brooklyn's move that, but then immediately has a snap of oversteer as he turns through Luffield, and that means that Alex Ames is going to be right back on his tail. Tucks back into that slipstream, and uh, it is nip and tuck racing at the front of the field with car number 10 back to the front. That was so clean a move, it looked like submission to me by the the uh, erstwhile leader, but he's coming back. It was almost as oh. if it was part of the play, he's got him back, wonderful stuff. Yeah power of the slipstream down that uh, pit straight that is uh, pretty impressive and uh, well we're going to see the power of the slipstream again now i think out of cops corner jacob toffs gets the better exit pulls to the right hand side and is he going to be out able to outbreak alex ames into beckett's corner i think he will pushes him a little bit wide of the apex there and this is just slowly bringing morgan dempsey back into play dempsey's had a very under the radar weekend really started near the front of the grid had a bad first lap in race one uh, and fell as far as seventh, I think, at one point before recovering to fourth. But now he is right back in the hunt for a race victory. They're wheel to wheel in front of him. We could see Alex Ames go back to the front. Tofts, I think, is going to fend him off. Uh, whilst Oliver Roberts' race is done, unfortunately. The Soli Motorsports car uh, pulled off up at the top end of the circuit. Who has got the... Li oh, dear me. I don't blame him either. Yeah, that's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, mechanical failure uh, can be the most frustrating way to uh, exit a race. And... Uh, Oh, poor old Oliver's had a bit of a day to forget. Yeah, not good at all. The passing and repassing is exactly why I think the MS, MSUK should be looking at this for, you know, not junior formally necessarily, but opening up to younger drivers because it's where you learn the racecraft and it's entertaining as much as anything else. The, the cars have room to do it. If you go into the slicks and wings formulae, yes, they overtake, but nowhere near as much. No, exactly. And it is that racecraft, isn't it? We often see drivers get to the higher levels of motorsport and they don't have that spatial awareness. They don't have that sort of natural racer's ability, that instinct as to know when to go for move, how to defend, how to play other cars off against each other. And that's all stuff that you learn through this kind of wheel-to-wheel -wheel action. Jacob Toft's back in front of Alex Ames now. And I should start keeping track of lead changes in this race, shouldn't I? Because we're certainly <laughs> starting to rack them up, lap by lap, quarter by corner almost. And it is car number 10 that gets itself back to the front, but now more people joining in the fun. Andrew Ames and Lewis Fox. So these were the five pace setters in race one, while well, four of them were chasing Jacob Tofts, who eventually got away from them. But this time, all five, I think, in contention for the win. It looks like they've all dialed themselves in after race one. I, yeah. I wonder what the, what the change is, but certainly Tofts doesn't seem to have a big advantage at the moment. And Ames taking the battle to him. Dempsey just can't quite get oh. in the mix at the moment, or can he? Uh, hand out of the cockpit there. That was either Tofts or Ames. I think it was a, a, a Tofts, excuse me, the race leader. I'm not sure what that was about. Oh, there might be yellow flags down at Beckett's. I Were they recovering their car? Yeah, 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 that'll be what it was. Yeah. So uh, panicked for a second, thought he was in <laughs> trouble. But uh, that's, again, heads up driving. Because when you're all tucked up so close in the slipstream, you'll you can very easily miss those yellow flags being waved on the Marshall Post because it's yeah. a long way away from the track, isn't it? Absolutely right. Andrew Ames trying to close down on Morgan Dempsey. Uh, is Dempsey going to close in on these two? They're battling hard. They're not slowing each other up. Dempsey just doesn't seem to have that little bit of grunt to challenge for the class, the class lead here. Yeah, he seems to gain when they go side by side, but then as soon as they're single file for a couple of corners, he drops back away again. So I'm not sure he's got the outright pace to challenge, but there he is in third position. Morgan Dempsey has been in third place pretty much all race long, having got past uh, Andrew Ames in the early stages. Andrew, remember, in fourth place, started on the front row, so he'll be a bit disappointed uh, to have dropped down into fourth by this stage. There he goes in the cannon liveried car. It's actually becoming a bit detached from the leaders slightly now as they head once again into that yellow flag zone at Beckett's. Yeah, he is. Uh, let's see whether he can close. This is this might free up Morgan Dempsey to maybe make a little bit more of a charge. He's not looking in his mirrors so much. Lewis Fox, who had a super running race number one, back in fifth place. Gaius Ginn back in sixth. You'll see a flash of white towards the back. There is Gaius pretty much on his own at the moment as they come down the straight. Toff's under pressure again, and they very nearly touch wheels there. Alex Ames on the outside run has to give best to Toffs as they go into Brooklands, so they stay as they were, but it's not for the want of trying and a little bit of uh, wheel tapping going on between the pair of them. We've got Lewis Fox starting to get up onto the gearbox of the Andrew Ames 106 Cannon car as well. Those two still away from the top three, so it's Tofts, Alex Ames, Morgan Dempsey across the line, then the little bit of a gap back towards the duo of Andrew Ames and Lewis Fox, Guy Skin on his own in six. 
Toft's corner, they go again. Toft's, Ames and Dempsey, nose to tail as they head towards Beckett, where the yellow flags are still out, it would seem. And that's frustrating for Alex because he was teeing up a move that time around. He's just set the fastest lap of the race, a 103.214, exactly one thousandth of a second quicker than Alex Toft's previous fastest lap that he'd set a couple of laps prior. Wellington straight though, more than close enough to get a slipstream here is uh, Alex. He ducks to the outside, sort of sells the dummy, then looks to the inside again, then desperately close to tangling wheels, and somehow Top tangs on. <laughs> that looked promising there for a moment. It looked <laughs> like he was going to go and grab that inside run, but then he was mindful of, almost mindful of Morgan Dempsey and went across as we were looking at him to the left-hand side and couldn't quite get through. Question for you, I don't know the answer to this. I, I was going to try and find out, didn't have time in lunch break. Jacob Toffs related to Neil Toffs that uh, used to... Pass. Be a top man, possibly. Done. Well, someone yeah. will tell us. Someone will tell us. Uh, we just lost to the pit lane, I fear. Lewis Fox, did, uh, someone pulled into the pit lane. It might not have been Lewis, might have been a back marker, but uh, just behind the lead group, someone uh, bailing for the pit lane. But we do still seem to have our leading group. What's happened, I think, is that Lewis Fox has just lost a bit of uh, speed, yeah. lost a bit of time. Here comes Dempsey, though, up alongside Alex Ames, the outside line into Beckett. I think that we've now lost the yellow flags down there. So once again, Beckett is an overtaking opportunity. They've lost Jacob Toffs, haven't they, for the moment? Yes, absolutely. And this was the danger, wasn't it? If these two start fighting over second place, then that could be the thing that allows the leader to break away. Once you break the toe, that's it then, isn't it? It's very hard for the others to catch back up. Yeah, a little bit of traffic approaching. Here comes Morgan Dempsey again. Has a look up the inside, but you've got to be around the outside of it to tee up the next few corners going through into the Woodcut corner here out of Luffield. And we'll see, are the back markers going to fall well for Jacob Toffs or not? Are we going to see Ames and Dempsey start to close in? No problem with the first car that they happen across, so that's all good. Ooh, there might be for the second place pack though. They're going to catch him going into the corner. Look at that, definitely delayed Ames and Dempsey. Uh, that was the 48 car of Tim Fitzgerald. Just not doing anything wrong, but just couldn't evaporate into thin air, could he? He had to turn into the corner. <laughs> and uh, that really did delay the second and third place car. So now Jacob Toffs, well, it was a three quarter of a second lead at the start of the lap. It's likely over a second now as they lead Beckett's. Last bit of surreal commentary there. <laughs> uh, I love that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right, so Morgan Dempsey starts to put the pressure. This looks decisive, doesn't it? As he goes down the straight, he's, going, he's teeing up that inside run. So Dempsey now, this is for the class lead. This is for championship points. And he's got it. He's gone through. Very neat move. And it's going to be down now to Alex Ames to try and get back in. But he's got Andrew Ooh. Ames there as well. Runs wide. He's got a problem, possibly. Uh, well, yeah, very strange mm, mark, certainly. Mm. I don't know whether that was intentional or not, really. But... Uh, Seems to pick up the speed again, so I wonder whether he got a bit of pickup on the tyres, maybe, from running wide at Brooklyn. Maybe that led to that bit of understeer. Uh, anyway, through goes Andrew Ames. Briefly, I fear, though, Alex has got the run uh, down the pit straight and sweeps past him before they even get to Cops Corner. That has just given Morgan Dempsey a little bit of breathing room. Gives us an opportunity now uh, to check back in on some of the cars further down the order, some of the older cars on the grid, and uh, a couple of them making some good progress, including, I think, in this group, unless I'm wrong. Yeah, there, Scott Rawlinson Wanted. from the back of the grid, 13th now. Yeah, Scott's having a, a, a good run through. Wonderful to see that uh, Merlin doing the business. I asked him if he was going to come to the festival too far, apparently, um, yeah. which is a shame, and I think also not keen with mixing it with much more modern cars. Obviously, the championship device for the BRSCC here keeps keeps things relative, but the, the much more modern machinery, probably not a happy thing for, but could do the historic festival. Having a look here on the inside <laughs> of Stuart Kestenbaum in the uh, 1981 car, and Stuart tucked well down. That's a really good move, isn't it, from Scott Rawlinson, but Kestenbaum, as ever, not a man to be beaten easily. Absolutely, and then the third car uh, getting in the battle as well is the 114, I think, isn't it, of uh, Neil Hunt, and he... No, it's not, sorry, it's the... Uh, yeah, it is Neil Hunt. It is Neil Hunt, sorry, yeah, yes, Neil Hunt. Yeah, I want 50, in fact, was the one I was looking at. The green car, David Porter, who sweeps past a lot of them. So David Porter gaining three places on that lap, I believe, uh, from 13th up to 10th position. I wonder if David had a problem earlier on, because that's a 92 car, so it's that yeah. much more modern. But um, good passing nonetheless, as Stuart Kestenbaum continues on his way. Took his third-class win of the season in race number one. 
I'll tell you what, Scott Pullinson might not like the idea of mixing it with more modern machinery and risking getting his uh, very well prepared Merlin damage, but he wasn't afraid to stick it into a very small gap down at Beckett's <laughs> a lap ago, was he? And he's tempted, I think, to do the same thing here against Porter, but uh, David just managing to keep him at uh, arm's length. Merlin, one of the oldest cars on the grid, getting stuck in here uh, to what is at the moment the most entertaining battle on track. Yeah, good stuff, isn't it? And that, that car is restored by Scott himself. Um, so great pleasure, isn't there, to, to track a car down, to source the parts and rebuild it, and then come out and, and race it to many class wins. Out past the pits comes the group of cars just at the back end of the top 10. This is uh, Gaius Ginn, fifth, Paul Mason there, the 44 and sixth, Simon Hadfield, seventh, and Andrew Schofield and uh, Gareth Buckingham behind it's in their eighth and ninth places, respectively. So Paul Mason trying his best here to keep Simon Hadfield at bay in the 101. Hadfield, veteran of classic Formula Ford racing these days, comes out of Beckett's corner. Try and make his move maybe down the Wellington straight. We are going to begin the penultimate lap this time around. And Jacob Tofts enjoys a 1.4 second lead over Morgan Dempsey. But remember, Dempsey and Ames fighting for class honours in Class A. And with Tofts a guest driver, in a way, they're also fighting for the overall race win. Ames, they're just dropping away slightly, I think, now from Morgan Dempsey. Andrew Ames in fourth position there, the 106. Guys, getting some way back in fifth place. So unlikely, I think, with two laps to go, uh, that we're going to have too many changes amongst the overall front runners. And uh, Jacob Tofts, though, had a bit more of a fight on his hands this time, didn't he? Yes, he did. It's been fascinating to watch this um, unfold, hasn't it, over the 15 minutes and all a little bit more settled now as we get down into the closing stages. But there is Dempsey who will be happy with his win. He'll take the championship points away with him. Can't remember where the next round is for um, these guys. Andy will... Oh, no, sorry, Andy, I didn't mean to put you under bed. Andy's going to grab the laptop and see where the next round is. Possibly back to Alton Park, which is the, you know, the, the nominal base. If you listen to what Andy was saying in the race one commentary about, you know, this is effectively come out of the Northwestern Championship. Did you find out? Uh, Croft. Croft, oh, Croft then Alton Park, yeah. Actually, that works out well because we've got the Fiestas at Croft as well. It does indeed. Time, so, and then yeah. they join Funk Up, I think, for their final rounds at, uh, at Alton Park on the 28th of October, cool. I believe. So, uh, yeah, nice little calendar that they've got together. And, uh, yeah, the Fiestas, like you said, heading up to the northeast in the next few weeks as well. So, Jacob Tofts starts the final lap. Nearly 1.4 seconds is still the lead margin uh, over Morgan Dempsey in second position. Dempsey on that previous lap was only a tenth slower than Alex Ames. So Ames, I don't think he's going to be able to get within striking range to try and uh, claim a class win. Guys, Ginn looks as though he's on course for a victory in uh, his class as well. As a that will be. But uh, down the back straight comes Jacob Tofts. He's creeping down on this lap, had a purple sector from Alex Ames as well, so they're giving it their best shot, are Dempsey and Ames, but they're not quite going to get there in time, are they? Jacob Tofts rounds Brooklands, heads Bullerfield corner for the final time of asking, and a second race victory from two here at Silverstone. Looks like it's going the way of the 1989 Van Diemen driver out of... Uh, Luffield through Woodcote corner, right foot flat to the floor, and he sees the chequered flag for the second time today. Race victory for Jacob Tofts. He claims the victory in Class B as well. Class A goes the way of uh, Morgan Dempsey in second place from Alex Ames in third. Uh, Andrew Ames then is next. Again, a guest entrant. So, uh, guys, Ginn, our next class winner, uh, due to come home. Here he comes, fifth position he should be. He'll drop initially down the timing tower because of his transponder either not working or not being fitted. Uh, uh, Gaius is a guest as well, I think, isn't he? I think he is, yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, it will be uh, Mason then who comes through next in sixth. Hadfield seventh, Schofield in eighth. He's the winner of Class B. And the other class winner, Class C, is Stuart Kestenbaum, isn't it? Oh, in fact, and Scott Rawlinson just ahead of him, 11th and 12th, those two winners in Class D and C, respectively. So some more good racing there, Richard. And yeah. uh, Jacob Tofts will be very pleased with his day's work. Yeah, given us and the marshals love seeing those as well, yes. as, as do we, the, the classic. Again, always food for thought. It's almost, To me, it's like people see a good Formula Ford race, whether it's the current spec or the 1600s, yeah. and then immediately forget about it. <laughs> yes. It's like the, well, the monsters on Doctor Who that make you forget. Do you watch you're not a Doctor? I, oh, huge Doctor Who fan, yeah. yeah which, which are those ones? 
uh, the silence. The silence, that's what it is. You watch Formula 4 and then it's, <laughs> we must have more of this and then it's forgotten, which is a shame, but we really should. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's always been this sort of hidden gem of, well, motorsport, not always. It used to be one of the biggest categories of racing in the country, but lately just, yeah, a little bit underappreciated, perhaps, which is a shame. But we appreciated it. It was a really enjoyable race, won by Jacob Toff, so he claimed victory in his class as well. Morgan Dempsey and Alex Ames were next. Dempsey also a class winner, uh, with Andrew Ames in fourth. And Guy Skin, a class winner in fifth. Paul Mason, Simon Hadfield, Andrew Schofield, Richard Frey and David Porter complete the top ten ahead of Scott Rawlinson and Stuart Kestenbaum, Class D and C winners respectively, whilst Neil Hunt and Jonathan Barnes were 13th and 14th. 15th place then uh, went the way of Doug Crosby, uh, sorry, Paul Crosby, excuse me, uh, with Ian Fernahoe in 16th, Trevor Morgan 17th, Tim Fitzgerald 18th, Lewis Fox 19th and Oliver Roberts in 20th with Phil Atwood, the last of the, uh, well in fact it wasn't classified as a finisher in the end because he, Roberts and Fox were retired with mechanical dramas. So, more celebrations down in the pit lane in the podium area. Second victory of the day for Jacob Tofts, but as I said, had a bit more of a fight on his hands there. The fight lasted a bit longer. It included a few more drivers that time around. And Tofts with Morgan Dempsey and Alex Ames joining him on the podium. Uh, but uh, Tofts and Dempsey, both class winners in that one. And they are ready once again to have a chat with Anthony Jordan. Thank you very much, Andy. Yes, indeed, uh, Jacob Tops. Once again, we speak uh, another victory and uh, another nice Sunday drive in the beautiful sunshine here at Silverstone. This one was a bit harder. I had a bit of a race at the start with uh, Alex. There we go. I got it right this time. Um, and then once I got past him, I was hoping um, I wouldn't get caught up. Uh, but I think he was catching me towards the end, so it could have been close, but it was a slightly longer race. But yeah, happy to take another win. Yeah. It is always nice to take uh, two wins, isn't it, over the course of the weekend? Certainly showing that you've got some true pace out there. And, uh, yeah, like you were saying, it was a bit of a fight. But, uh, yeah, nothing worse, is it, than uh, while you're racing and thinking, I've got this under control, and then you just keep checking. Oh, no, they're getting a bit closer. And, uh, yeah, but you seem to handle yourself very well. Yeah, I certainly didn't expect winning. I won my first race yesterday at Alton, uh, and then we came here. I didn't expect to win two more today. So I just have to thank Sully Motorsport for inviting me to drive this car this weekend and Duckham's and Verb Display who uh, get the car ready for United. Yeah. No, certainly a solid drive. Nice chunk of silverware as well. Enjoy the rest of your yeah. day and uh, yeah, well, very well done there too, Jacob Tops. Let's talk to, uh, well, Alex, well, <laughs> nice of you to actually join us this time around. You didn't join us uh, last time around, you drove past us, but uh, <laughs> mate, uh, again, third place, uh, nice, uh, nice little race there. Yeah, it was, it was a good, made a good start again. Um, had a bit of an issue in, in race one that the engines had a misfire probably on lap three, so that's why I dropped back. And, uh, and it's funny enough, it's done the same thing this time. So when I was up battling with Jacob, it was really good fun. And uh, yeah, we were having a good dice then. And then suddenly it started to come misfire again, or, or it's just running really rough again. So I don't quite know what it is, but I have to do some more testing and, and fix it for next time. Well, hopefully so you find the issue. But uh, yeah, no, again, brilliant to see the, the car out there. I'm, I'm a big fan of the livery. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, nice choice. Yeah, it, this was uh, this car ran in this livery in 1990. Uh, it ran in Spa um, by a Belgium guy who actually, uh, funny enough, he crashed his 89 at Zandvoort and uh, needed a car for mm. then. And so it only ran this car in this livery once. Um, and then the, the famous Neil Cunningham drove it after then in 91 onwards. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it's it's only had two owners from new type of thing. So um, it's a lovely car to drive. I just need to do a bit more testing and get a bit better in there. Yeah, exactly, gently driven, not uh, not rev too high. No, exactly that. Exactly. Thank Perfect. You. Excellent stuff there for uh, Alex. Uh, let's jump in uh, to our second place finisher in that one, Mr. Dempsey. Uh, well, that was an exciting race, a challenge and uh, a nice little battle all the way throughout. It's so fantastic to see these old Formula Fords uh, battling away like that. Yeah, it's it's great fun. I really enjoy driving them. Do you know what I mean? I would have driven this car back in 2004. I was second at the festival in it, so it was nice to be reacquainted, albeit on the older tyres. So it's good racing, and I'm racing against guys similar to myself. It's not we're not going to Formula One, so it tends it's very hard, but it's it tends to be clean. Do you know what I mean? So I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Would you recommend this championship to uh, many others who are out there thinking I really like Formula racing, but I need something that's a little bit feisty? It, it, it's a high level, it's a high, it's a high standard, do you know what I mean? So yeah, anything in a Formula Ford, if, if you can perform in a Formula Ford, you'll perform in anything. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, uh, so I, yeah, I'd highly recommend it, yeah. yeah. Solid race though for you again, and uh, yeah, nice P2 and some nice silverware, well done. Thank you. Thank Excellent you. stuff there from Dempsey. Excellent stuff from the Formula Fords. Plenty more racing to go for the day. Stay with us, because we go back to Tin Tops. It's time for those feisty Fiesta Juniors. 
Nice one, Anthony. Really good. Sorry to cut across you. There was poor old Andy <laughs> getting, almost getting caught out, <laughs> reaching for the mic. And yeah, great interview. Lovely to hear. And, and um, Neil Cunningham's car. That that's. Uh, I didn't realise that Neil no. Cunningham was a complete gent. Sad loss when when he passed away. But what what a pilot Neil was, and a great guy as well. Did a lot of stunts on some of the earlier James Bond movies. Did he really? When he was in, obviously, yeah. when he was in good health. He was a, a great racing driver and a, a good stunt driver as well. Good driver, period, really. Mm. But uh, agree with Morgan Dempsey, if you can drive a Formula Ford car well, you can drive anything well. And it, it is, it's almost, is, is there a market for someone to build some replica old cars and, and, and start a little replica championship? Because I don't think the juniors would get signed off at the moment. I don't think no. the MSUK don't want 15 year old because they've got their own 15 year old championship, haven't they, in F4. But uh, I, I think there's a market for, for that. No, for, for I that tend old to agree design. with you, to yeah. be honest. It's so, like, like we keep saying, great proving ground, isn't it, for. Uh, Racing drivers, and uh, they are always entertaining. And for not us silly, viewers. not silly money. Not silly money at all. No, no, because there's only so much you can do to them. Really, exactly. you know, you, the, that's the great thing about the uh, regulations uh, being used there. You know, you can't spend a lot of money. Really, what you can, but you won't necessarily get uh, a huge improvement in performance, which is exactly how it should be. Really. So, uh, uh, yeah, interesting uh, f food for thought. Definitely, we had lots of food for thought after our first Fiesta Junior race today. We did. Um, and the mechanics, some of them, had a lot of work to be done to get cars out on the grid. We've already got one pointing <laughs> the wrong way, and we've only just released them from the assembly area. So It uh, wouldn't be Juniors, would it, without a spin on the outlap? I'm not sure who that is. It's one of the Mark 7 cars that was mid-grid. Anyway, they've carried on, thankfully, without, I think, hitting anything. Uh, but, yeah, lively first Junior race uh, of, the, uh, of the day earlier on. And we're hoping for more liveliness, but perhaps a little bit less of the carnage that we had in the uh, early stages in particular. Um, we did have a win for Luke Hilton. Luke Hilton claiming victory uh, from Finn Leslie on his debut in the championship. Finn Leslie's second place finish. An absolutely incredible result. And uh, Jacob Hodgkiss coming home in uh, third position. But the grid for the second race based upon the second fastest lap times in qualifying. So a slight jumbled up order. Still though, Hilton and Leslie on the front row together. There were a handful who didn't make it uh, beyond the first attempt to start the race. I had that red flag here, of course, uh, after a few early incidents where Swain, Hadley Simpson, Henry Howarth, Alvin Garford, George Foxler, Billy Blockley all failing to take the restart, while Jensen Bell, Michael Wheeler and Sam Nessa significantly uh, didn't finish the race either. And Sam Nessa, second in the championship, coming into the weekend and uh, lost uh, a chunk of points in that first one to Benville Ryan, the championship leader, who a lot of the attention in that first race, Richard, was given to Luke Hilton dominating and Finn Leslie getting the podium on his debut. But what a performance from Benville Ryan to come from 23rd on the grid, dodge all of the chaos and confusion at the start and very nearly end up on the podium. Yeah, we've got to watch several drivers off the back in this one. And, and can I just point out Jensen Mason, who yeah. had his best ever qualifying before the penalty, would have been front row mm -hmm. before his penalty. He only had one fly lap in qualifying um, because he went to three wheels of course and of course. Uh, so so he had a really good qualifying best ever qualifying he was on the front row but had a penalty carried forward from from Knock Hill he is going to be quick he's got in quick form this weekend had uh, was involved in the skirmishes in the early stages of race one but he's got the pace um, you know, to be up with Ben, ben Mulroy Ryan making his way through the field and similarly Ryan Mickleff as well. So yeah, we, absolutely. we need to look at those three. And he's in the Weir Tools car, so the black and green livery. Easy to spot then in theory. Got to keep an eye to Sam Nessa as well. He's starting only 15th in this one. So you've got Nessa 15th, Mickleff uh, 7th. Mick left 17th, uh, 21st Pemble Ryan, and uh, then 23rd for Jensen Mason. Uh, all of them keen to come through from the back of the pack. Green flag lap then gets underway, and Luke Hilton is the one who leads them around uh, here at uh, Silverstone. Pole position for the second time today. He's been quite comfortably the pace setter so far this weekend, and will be feeling confident, I'm sure, uh, that his chance of a second win is upon him. And then Leslie starts alongside him once again as he did in the early race. Flamer Rickler, third on the grid. Best, best qualifying effort for Flame so far this season. Uh, with Daniel uh, Lewis in the number 19 car starting alongside her. Jake Hodgkiss and Benjamin Doughty on row number three. Row four for Jasmine Shaw and Rashan Tyler Chigarimbo. He was a front runner in the early race before fading then rather down into seventh position. Uh, fifth row for Wesley Swain and Marcel Lechitsky with uh, George Foxlow and Lucas Hayden on row six. 
27 throw then for Jens Bell and Alfie Garvin. And then we start to get into some of the heavy hitters who are deep, deep in the field. Sam Nessa, championship runner, and a 15th on the grid alongside Billy Blockley. Ryan Mickleff, winner earlier on this season, uh, is starting 17th alongside Hadley Simpson. Henry Howarth and Tommy Harfield on the road to 10 complete the top 20. Ahead of Bedford Ryan and Michael Wheeler. So, um, Bedford Ryan, if I'm seeing a bit of an amendment here, I think as a couple of drivers have pulled out, but generally more Ryan there on the 10th row, 11th row for Wheeler and Howarth. Uh, that is uh, going to be an interesting that's Tommy Howard, sorry, Henry Howard, towards the back of the field. Uh, with then Jensen Mason, Ronnie Smith, and James Pope to complete what should have been a 25 car grid. Hopefully, we do still have 25 of them set to take the start. I think Billy Brockley has um, left the meeting actually. Ah, uh, okay. I think, just checking that out. So, um, Apologies if I got that wrong. I know Max told me one. I think Max Coach told me was one of them. Right, OK. I was going to say possibly Billy, but uh, wish him well, if that is the case. And I uh, hope to see him back soon as we look at that. I, I, I was nervous of the heavy hitter. <laughs> Ref, he said, oh, we allowed to? So, Did mean I know what way. you mean. Did I know what you mean. Way. Do you want to attempt a bit of fate there, Andy? <laughs> Uh, I, I'm going to I'm going to continue on my train of optimism and say that they've all yeah. had a good talking to in the lunch break, <laughs> and then we're going to have a good clean race. Them, how is calling them hitters. <laughs> there is there is actually, and maybe your optimism is rubbing off on the paddock because everyone is is a as I said before really pleased to be on the TCR package. But there's a real buzz about this, yeah. and looking as I do and saying at this time of the year, how come we're getting so many new drivers coming? It doesn't happen. Numbers drop off. They don't. Yeah. They don't get bigger. So something magical happening in, in Fiesta Junior Land. No, exactly, exactly. It's a good thing about junior racing, I suppose, because you have to be of a certain age to race in it, and many drivers will turn that age midway through the season, so they then get their chance back end of the year and also planning ahead maybe to a full campaign yeah. in 2024. But it is, you're right, still a rarity. They generally come in towards the end so they can retain rookie status. Though. Yes, correct. So Correct, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, well, hopefully most of these drivers stick around for uh, 2024. It could be a cracking championship next year. And as the Mark 7s continue to get phased in, uh, then uh, that's going to make things all the more exciting. Well, it is Luke Hilton and Finn Leslie then who make up the front row of the grid. A couple of gaps, I think, further back. But most of the front runners are present and correct. And can anyone stop Luke Hilton? That's really the question now. Luke Hilton, uh, by far the fastest driver on the uh, track in the early race. Again, he's positioned himself in a slightly jaunty angle there from pole position as he aims to make sure that he gets the lead, holds the lead down into Cops Corner for the first time. The red lights go on. Hold your breath, everyone. Fiesta Junior action back underway here at Silverstone. And as those red lights go out, it's going to be a rush towards Cops Corner for Luke Hilton. Has he managed to hang on to the advantage? Yes, he has. Luke Hilton leads them through. Finn Leslie versus Daniel Lewis is the battle for uh, second position because uh, Flavor Rickler has dropped one spot down to fourth. And she's busy battling away now with Jacob Hodgkiss, a front runner from the earlier race for that fourth place. Dan Lewis gets the better of Finn Leslie, then slips into second. Leslie third and Rickler fourth. And then side by side for fifth. That's Rashan uh, Chigarimbo on the inside and uh, very wayward Jacob Hodgkiss trying the high wide and handsome line. He was going in very deep. He's managed to recover through that, which is good. So he, he will survive to fight another corner. Three wide as they come down the welly straight. And all good, though, out front with Luke Hilton, who will really be relishing the fact that his main championship rival is that far back. And he'll just need to, to get away as they go side by side for second position. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> good catch there by Lewis. Yeah, good car control from Daniel Lewis. And he might still manage to convert that into second place. Although Finn Leslie's coming back at him through uh, Luffield Corner on the inside line, the preferred inside line. And yes, he does clear Daniel Lewis on the exit. That brings Auricola and Chigarimbo and Hodgkiss back into the battle as well. As further back, Lucas Hayden there battling away with Jasmine Shaw. I think it was Jasmine who I saw spinning on the uh, way out of the assembly area. I think it was that sort of white and pinky orange car. So through Cops Corner they go. Another twitch there from Lewis. The rear of Daniel Lewis's car doesn't look all that settled, does it? No, it doesn't. He's fighting hard. He wants to get that second position back. But Luke Hilton out front at the moment. Daniel Lewis yeah. in third into pit lane for the 42 car. And uh, problems then for Henry Howarth, not a happy first meeting for him. No, that is a shame. Henry Howarth stay then. Looks like it's done now. Here comes Benville Ryan charging around the outside through uh, Beckett's corner. That was Marcel Lajinski <laughs> that he was going around the outside of. And someone else then dived on the inside yeah. of him. National circuit today, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> you go where they're not, don't you, really, in situations like this. And there was a gap on the outside. It wasn't quite within track limits, uh, but he kept his foot pinned anyway as he continues to try and make some good forward progress. Jasmine Shaw there with a lovely 
Daugherty move. Uh, sorry, Ben Daugherty, that is, sorry, up the inside of uh, Rashan Chigarimbo. And uh, that will put him up an extra place. Sixth spot now then belonging to him as they round Luffield again. But really good, respectful racing, isn't there, so far? Kiss of death, touch wood, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it is chatting to a couple of people and... and a lot of the teams that had damage after race number one were saying it it probably was a little bit of inexperience that, that caused it um the the various and there were a lot of non-finishes weren't there in race yeah. number one but amazing how the teams have got so many cars back out and looking prim as well i've got to say that was a good attempted move there jensen bell on the inside uh, of lucas hayden there and uh, that's going to delay them both on the exit could bring uh, the chasing pack back onto their tail whilst further up the order flame Rickler having a really really good race here fourth position uh, for her and uh, chasing after daniel lewis as they head out of beckett again lots of them running wide some of them <laughs> not through their own choice i must stress uh, that will include marcel lachitsky who was well and truly shown the edge of the road there by alfie garford sam nessa hoping for better luck in this one as well he's a little way back but he's got to try and work his way through again a championship front row was chatting to his mum and dad about his options for next year keep you in suspense on what they're thinking about <laughs> doing but loads of options open Ooh. that's not a good sign that's jensen bell was that just a lock up or something more sinister He's trying his best to get back on the road, loses a whole heap of places. One, two, three, four, five, six of them all go through, and he only lost about a second in all of that. Uh, but six cars managed to file their way past him. And so Jensen Bell, who had been making some good forward progress on the previous lap, now starts to slip backwards. He does Sam Nesser at the moment, side by side with another newcomer, Alfie Garford, who was a little bit shocked after his incident race number. He said, I had to go to the medical centre. <laughs> <laughs> you do in circuit racing, lad. <laughs> Yes, rightly so. At least he's been looked after, that's the key thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly so. Wesley Swain there running a bit wide. Oh, that looked a bit interesting. Lots of jockeying for positions. Someone, I think, was slow out of cops, and that scatters the pack as they uh, drop down into Beckett's. All of the Mark 6s have found each other, haven't they? There isn't a Mark they 7 have. in sight here. No, that's right. Uh, down towards the back oh! of the field, and again, Jensen it's Bell locks Bell. up. Must have some sort of issue with the brakes, must be on the steering. The car just not really stopping nicely into some of the slow corners. No, not good for him. James Pope struggling around at the back there in 47, not having a particularly happy weekend either. Finn Leslie with fastest lap, did we pick that up? No, not spotted. One and a half seconds off the lead, he was only fractionally quicker than Luke Hill to put. He's quicker than Luke Hill, not many people can say that this weekend. So On his debut weekend, exactly. fastest lap. Wow. <laughs> Incredible, it? isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so out of uh, Luffield they go. One and a half seconds of the lead margin. We've had a purple sector for Flamer Rickler this time as well, actually. So let's see what the lap times are. Flamer Rickler sets the fastest lap from go fourth on, position. Flame. Good stuff. Twelve point one. Incredible stuff. Absolutely brilliant. And you know, Mum's going to be chuffed about. They used to contact her mum in Legends cars. Way, 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 oh, wow. way, way. I didn't like them. She said. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Love an honest interview with her. <laughs> yeah. Well, some formulas aren't for some drivers, but Flame fast. That is really good, isn't it? Yeah. So that switch from Finn Ooh. to Flame, who is under pressure here. Uh, no, she's got. Oh, she's the got past Daniel, Daniel Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Incredible third place now for Flame Arikula, fastest driver on the track. And look, Luke Hilton is not escaping this time around. Finn Leslie's going after him. <laughs> He's flashing his lights, Finn. <laughs> He's up for the fight, isn't he? In this one. It's, yeah, right. goodness me. This this is again like the the um, senior race that we saw earlier on. He's going to have a lot to take away. Here comes Lewis down the inside. Nice neat move. Back up into third place. Yeah, not Here comes even, Jacob Hodgkiss, though. Yeah, Hodgkiss around the outside. Not even a hint of working together there from Lewis. No, and no. was there. <laughs> and uh, that has just delayed them a little bit. But Lewis back into third. And now this also brings uh, Ben Doughty into the battle there. The white and pink car, the pink parrot car. Uh, as there, I'm afraid, is another retirement. And that's oh, going to be uh, Simpson, isn't it? Hadley Simpson, number 37. Yep. I think he's pulled off down at Beckett's. Yeah, he had a retirement from race number one. I, I had a very, very brief chat, one of the few brief chats I had in the paddock. They were so busy repairing the car. Didn't really have time to have a chat. I apologise if there's anyone that I should have spoken to today, but didn't. You can't get around the whole paddock. No, exactly, because there's so many drivers <laughs> in it now, <laughs> which is a nice problem to have, really. Third place battle then, and we said all of the Mark 6s have got themselves together. Now here we have a group of four <laughs> Mark 7s running nose to tail, uh, chasing another one, of course, in Finn Leslie in, si in uh, second place. But don't be fooled into thinking that the Mark 7 has a performance advantage. Remember, Luke Hilton in the older spec car continuing to lead the way, albeit by an increasingly reduced margin. He was another tenth slower than Finn Leslie on the previous lap, and the closer Leslie gets, the more of a slipstream he starts to pick up, and in theory, the faster he can go. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, and Finn's building his experience of these cars, isn't he? So it's Hilton from Leslie Lewis in third place, Flame Marika still in fourth, a little bit further back, Sam Nessa making progress. 
How about some of the other drivers come through? Jensen Mason's got up into 17th, making his way through. So still, uh, still plenty of time to play. Still another seven minutes, so more places can be made up here. With Ben Moran up into the top 10, he's up into eighth now, chasing Jasmine Shaw. Yep, out of Woodcote they go again then. And uh, Ben Ryan only seventh at the moment. So Ben Ryan made some good early progress. He has just passed Jasmine on that previous lap, but uh, six and a half seconds off the race lead. He's 2.2 seconds actually off the next group of cars. So we'll see now in some clean air what his uh, pace is relative to them, but at least he's scoring some points. And uh, this could have been a disastrous day given he, where he was starting the pair of races. He's actually managing to get something out of it, which is nice to see. Here's Wesley Swain, the Pro Alloys racing car. Latest coloured car on the grid, and then a good battle here. Sam Nessa not making the sort of progress that Will Ryan is, and he's stuck for the time being behind the number 96 of Ronnie Smith. Progress is always difficult, isn't it? Because there are so many decent drivers right the way through the field. Some of them are going to be midfielders, maybe a lot of the time, as they learn their craft to look at coming back for next year. But you know, Ben Mull Ryan has made that sterling progress. The others are, are, are going to have to absolutely work for it. Hodgkiss now trying to chase down Auricula. Daniel Lewis looking a little bit more settled in third place at the moment, and. Hilton to Leslie, just 0.7 seconds now. Because it's another fastest lap, this time for Finn Leslie on the previous lap, and now he's only three tenths back. He's caught Luke Hilton, so Finn Leslie in his second ever Fiesta G, second ever car race of any kind, is on the tail of Luke Hilton, who has been the dominant force in Fiesta Junior racing this weekend. I honestly thought that no one could keep up with him, but Finn Leslie has reduced what was, at one point, getting on for a two and a half second deficit to be right on the boot lid of the race leader. And here you get a great shot that was as they came along towards us front on about how much bigger the Mark 7s are. It's really interesting to see the difference between the two cars. Shape-wise, you can see that when we go side on. Finn Leslie doesn't want to see the side of it. He wants to see the car in his mirror. And it's a, a little bit, well, not too defensive. Initially it was, then over. And this is, you can see Hilton here is very definitely under a bit of pressure. Yeah, weaving around a lot there down the straight. Got to be careful doing that. But Finn Leslie not able to take advantage of that. Again, nothing to choose between the two cars uh, in a straight line there. Hilton cocking the right rear wheel as he turns through Luffield. Finn Leslie takes a wide line. Where's Hilton gone? He took a very wide exit line there, uh, but manages to come out of the corner still in front. And now this is the real test for Finn. It's one thing to go out there and catch the leader, put in some really good hot laps almost, but to find a way past someone with so much more experience, relatively speaking, than you in this category of racing, that is going to be tricky. Well, he's got plenty of experience of starting off the front in karting and winning in karting, and it, as long as he's got his mindset, um, even even in beginner's mode into car racing, he can do the business here, and he really is in a place where he can put a nibble on, just looks towards the inside as they go through maggots again. Round now into Beckett's. Hilton will be keen not to run too wide. He does drift wide, though, and here comes the challenger. He's got his nose in front now on the overlap, but Hilton's got the inside run as they come along the straight and should grab the inside line into Brooklyn unless the red car can get around the outside. That's going to be last of the late breakers, isn't it? How brave is Finn Leslie feeling on the outside line? He should be able to carry more speed into the turn, but Hilton's got the tight line and crowds him over he to the did. outside. Look, but that leaves a gap on the inside. Finn Leslie commits. There's a bit of paint traded. He's on the outside line now through Lafield corner again. Onto three wheels for an understeering Luke Hilton. He's got him. And Leslie's gone through. I think Hilton's got a puncture. I think Hilton's left front tyre has been knocked off the rim in that tiny bit of contact. And Luke Hilton could be out of the race. He bails for the pit lane. And Finn <sighs> Leslie to the lead. Well, not that potentially championship down the Swanee with the DNF, isn't it? That is not what Luke Hilton wanted. And also in a race with a guest driver, that, that's going to rankle. It is a bit, isn't it? Luke Hilton, yeah, because he'd had two non-scores, one of which he's not allowed to drop anyway, so yeah. really didn't need a um, another non-finish. So they might change the tyre and get him back out there. He could score some points, but... Uh, should have been a race win, really, shouldn't it? What a shame, though, that that happened. It was the tiniest little bit of contact just coming out of uh, Brook uh, Brooklyn. Sorry, we see that all the time, don't we? Yeah. And uh, it's not like Finn Leslie shoved him off the track. No, no, just, no. It was a, know. it was a clash, and you know, yeah. um, my colleague Paul Paul and will say, you know, you've got to if you don't come out of the race with a few scratches on the car or otherwise, then you're, you're not racing, are you? And Clark will probably have something to say. We worry about that, but for us, we're looking at a brand new driver, first yeah. racing weekend and he's on for a win. Flame Auricula possibly in line for a podium. That promotes yes. her back up into third place. But Jacob Hodgkiss all over the back of her car as well. Yeah, that gap's gone down on this lap, I think, hasn't it? As uh, they come towards the completion of lap number 10, we've got just under three minutes still to go. Someone else there limping towards us. Who's 
It's uh, half, isn't it? Yeah, it's half a goal for this, isn't it? Yeah, so he's off the pace. And, uh, nothing obviously wrong with the car, but quite clearly not up to the speed that he should be. So the 2010 car uh, picks up the pace through uh, Brooklyn's quite nicely and uh, maybe is now starting to uh, find a bit more speed again. Right, out of Cops Corner then comes the second, third, fourth, fifth place battle. Uh, well, forget a first ever podium. Flame Ricola wants more. She wants second place. Yeah, who can blame her? She's uh, in the in the awkward position oh. here. Oh, Hodgkiss just gets checked up in time. He was about to have a little bit of a lunge. Flunk, uh, flame runs a little bit wide. So too did Hodgkiss on the chase. And we'll see now whether oh, Flame's coming back actually and having a look at Daniel Lewis, actually teeing this up rather well. Yeah, she's peeking to the inside, half to defend and half to try and attack, sort of hedging her bets a little bit into the breaking zone at Brooklands. And, uh, well, Hodges is just going to try and fully commit to the outside line. This might work. Gives him the inside for Luffield. Is there an overlap? Yes, He's there is. It. And Jacob Hodges goes through. Can uh, Ben Dalty follow him through? He's certainly going to try to. Leave as Flame Auricola aside. And that's a bit of a shame, really, for Flame. Just one false move. She thought she was doing the right thing, really, by defending the inside line, but got boxed in behind Dan Lewis. And that allowed Hodgkiss to go by, so Hodgkiss now back into a podium position, and Flame Auricola left to try and fend off Ben Doughty for fourth. Still a great race for her, she's only been yeah. in the top ten once so far, I say only, so her first year of racing, met her on the Janetta scholarship last year, and decided to, to come, a lot of drivers will, will try their hand at that, and then say, do you know what, we won't do Janetta's, we're going to do Fiesta, <laughs> and they do, um, but it, it's part and parcel of it, and it's amazing how many people meet up, but she's still on for a terrific result, but now under massive pressure from Ben Mulryan, who, again, has, has put a super drive together in this race. And he's going to have another lap after this one as well. So he's sixth now, going for fifth against Flame Arickler, a top five finish from 21st on the grid. I think he'd probably take that to uh, go along with his strong result from the back in the earlier race. He's trying now to go around the outside of Arickler, uh, as Jacob Hodgkiss did to her down here a lap ago at Brooklyn, late on the brakes. And, yeah, she uh, will slip through. Who was that? 24? Michael Wheeler. Yeah, Michael Wheeler. I'm sure he went across that bit of grass in qualifying He likes yesterday. it, he likes it. <laughs> yes, I might do rally cross, maybe. Got a good view of uh, the final couple of corners from there, I suppose, and uh, at least he's staying out of the way of the race leaders after whatever drama he's had. Uh, Wesley Swain, by the way, who just went through in the Pro Alloys car, he's picked up a five-second track limits penalty. So ninth on the road, but he's going to drop down a little bit as a result of that one. There's Sam Nessa, meanwhile, leading this next group of cars. And Nessa's race just hasn't really come together, has it? I don't know whether this is a legacy of the damage he suffered earlier in the weekend, but uh, only 13th place for Sam Nessa. And with Hilton out of the race, yet again, the benefit in the championship is to Mul Ryan. It is. You know, I think Mul Ryan would be one of these events that we look back on where he didn't get you know, first, second, third, but the points are going to be really valuable yeah. for the championship at the end of the year. There's Jensen Mason at the back of this quartet that we were talking about earlier, another rookie driver, again, met at the uh, Janetta Scholarship last year, and it was he said, you know, no-brainer for him and his family to come here, met his dad and his granddad this weekend as well. A really nice battle with them, and he's looking at the outside line, not really any pressure for him going off the back, disappointment going off the back after qualifying well but enjoying his racing here, learning his racecraft, as is this young man. What more can you say about Finn Leslie? What a drive this was. He dropped back by a couple of seconds from the race leader in the early stages, plugged away, gained the time back, challenged Luke Hilton for the lead and managed to get through with that move down at Brooklyn's corner. And in only his second ever car race, Finn Leslie is a winner on the weekend when we had our biggest ever grid of Fiesta Junior drivers. It's a new driver on the top step of the podium. Daniel Lewis comes home a very happy second and Jacob Hodgkiss will complete the podium runners after that late move against Flame Auricola. Bemble Ryan for good points for the championship leader. He'll be pretty satisfied with that. Ben Doughty in fifth. Flame Auricola a bit disappointed maybe with sixth, but it's still a career best finish yep. uh, with George Foxlow seventh, Jasmine Shaw breaking behind the left ninth, and Rashan Chigarimbo uh, completing the top ten after another really entertaining race and thankfully slightly fewer walking wounded at the end. George Foxlow's best finish to the season as well in seventh. Well done, yeah. George. Good to see. Difficult to keep up with all the drivers. For me, if I was interviewing, I'd, I'd, I would say, let's see what Finn Leslie's made of media-wise. How do you feel about taking out or in the move that caused the retirement of? There's a bit of pressure for him. It'll be interesting to see. He handled Anthony's questions really well. He did, And his first interview was superb. <laughs> but that's it. Oh, Anthony's there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good <Goodbye. laughs> 
he might thank me for that, will he, on the interview? <laughs> uh, but that's all about learning for him, and he'll probably just shrug like he did to me yeah. earlier on in the chance sport. You know, it, it was it was a move he had to go for, and it was it was. Un I say the damage was was unfortunate, wasn't it, yeah. for, for Luke Hilton? I, I certainly wouldn't apportion any blame to him. There was space for both cars there. They just met in the middle, and sometimes it doesn't have to be a big bit of contact to do some damage. It's that tiny little tap that can just knock the tire off the rim, and absolutely no malice in that whatsoever. That's clear to see. But I do look forward to seeing his answer to that question. Three seconds, his winning margin. Then 2010 Racing will be very pleased uh, with the uh, young star they've got on their hands. Daniel Lewis leads a brace of uh, race car consultants entries then. Second, third and fourth for that team. Lewis second, Hodgkiss third and Bemble Ryan. The championship leader in fourth. Then a couple more 2010 entrants. Ben Daugherty and Flay Maricola ahead of George Foxlow. Then Jasmine Shaw, Ryan McLeff and Rashan Chigarimbo to complete the top ten. Marcel Lajitsky in 11th. Wesley Sway 12th. Sam Dessa a disappointed 13th. Ahead of Lucas Hayden in 14th. Those two involved in a brilliant scrap there outside of the top 10. 15th place then was Jensen Mason, Roddy Smith 16th ahead of Tommy Harfield, James Pope and Alfie Garford. Luke Hilton actually got back out there on the lead lap, would you believe? So they changed that tyre very quickly and I think he will get a few points for finishing in 19th, especially with a couple of guest entries ahead of him. Uh, Michael Wheeler was 21st ahead of Hadley Simpson, Jensen Bell and Henry Howard, none of whom were running at the chequered flag. Well, usually entertaining stuff, much more like it that from the Fiesta Juniors top quality racing and uh, well, hopefully some very happy drivers ready to have a chat uh, with Anthony Jordan down there in the podium area. So uh, I think uh, we can head down there now and let Anthony ask the tough questions of our newest race winner on the grid. Thank you very much, Andy. Yes, indeed. A uh, fabulous little Juna Fiesta race there. Finn Leslie, your second ever race in cars. You come away with a P2 in race one and then you go and win race two. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it's obviously been amazing to come and show what we can really do uh, in cars. I mean, I mean, I can only really thank the team and everyone around me for supporting me the whole way through. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about that race as well, because uh, you caught up to, uh, to Luke. You got right up to him. You went for the overtake. And unfortunately, a little bit of coming together. And you can actually see on the car, there's a little bit of rub in there. How does it feel? You know, unfortunately, his uh, flat tire, how does it feel to be a part of that? I weren't really, he was really off the track at that point. I mean, I don't really know what he was doing, trying to hold around the outside, to be honest. But, um, yeah, that's his own decision, and there's nothing I can really do about it. Yeah, it was a tough old race, but certainly you showed that you had the pace out there. And, uh, mate, honestly, your first ever weekend in car racing and doing a P2 and a P1, uh, certainly a bright future ahead of you. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it, it, this shows what we're, what we're going to really do next year, and especially in the rounds to come. I mean, I think we're definitely a threat to everyone. Yeah. Mate, honestly, congratulations. Well done, Finn Leslie. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. Let's chat to our second place finisher in that one. Uh, the number 19 who certainly had a good old race, Daniel Lewis. Uh, where is Daniel? Uh, he is dropped off. Daniel? Daniel, right. Let's have a quick chat. Uh, mate, that was a uh, good old race. You certainly had to fight for it, chopping and changing all the way throughout. Yeah. And uh, I've got to say, it was uh, relatively uh, calm, that yeah, Junior Fiesta yeah, race. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't much contact, but... Uh, <laughs> It was good. Um, lots of moves. Looked very exciting. Um, there was one moment where I see the lights around the track, and I thought it was a safety car, so I backed off. But then made another move, got back in to the original position it was in, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. And I mean, uh, it's been a tough old season, and uh, you've enjoyed it, and you've enjoyed today. Yeah, I've loved it. It's, it's always fun. Everyone in Palace nice. We just we all get along, and it's just amazing racing. It's so close, so tight. It's, so equal as well. It's really, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, a fabulous result, and you come away with a P2. So uh, yeah, 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 you can be happy with that one. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, it's brilliant. excellent. Cheers, Daniel. Thank you very much. Let's chat to our third place finisher, the number 94, Jacob Hoshkiss, who is, where is Jacob? Uh, Jacob, you're not Jacob. Where's Jacob? Where's Jacob? Jacob, Jacob, you're over there. Jacob, right? Okay. When someone stands next to your car, I think it's you. Uh, mate, honestly, that uh, pretty decent race, certainly a challenge all the way throughout. What are the uh, main talking points you can take um, from that? Main talking points is um, fix my um, handbrake because on the start, I couldn't use my handbrake because the, the button had gone inside. So I was sat, I couldn't bring it to the boat point at all. So I had a really bad start, but managed to get past through flame and finish on the podium. You can't say anything bad about it. I mean, 
It's great. Good old race. You still look like you, you've had an exhausting one out there. Lots of work to go ahead of it. I can imagine it is hot in them cars, but uh, at least you've got a relatively cool day on this one. But, uh, mate, honestly, what do you think to the race that we've seen there? I mean, you've got Finn Leslie, who's his first weekend here, and he's gone P2, P1. Um, you know, that must be, you know, it must be a tough thing to think about. It's a tough thing to think about, but I think we had a really bad qualifying as a team. RCC had a rough qualifying. I think we got set up wrong, set up tire pressures wrong, but, you know, we move, and I'm not particularly, not, it was a great weekend by Finn, but it's not like I'm worried about Finn. No, 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 no. Exactly. Thank you. Mate, cracking job, though, finishing in P3 there. Well... That's it for the Fiesta Juniors. We now turn our attention from a quite a busy race to one of the most excitingly calm races that we will see. It's time to head over to the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. So back to you in the culture box. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, great, uh, great answers from our Fiesta <laughs> Junior podium finishers there. And I do like to see a bit of personality in uh, some of the youngsters and we're definitely on show on that occasion after what was an exciting race in the Fiesta Junior Championship. Uh, two, three more races, sorry, to come your way. Uh, coming up uh, within the next 40 minutes or so will be our uh, 11th round of the TCR UK Championship. That will be followed by an SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy race that's well worth sticking around for. That should be a real highlight of the day. A big grid, a really varied grid of cars. Uh, but before that, uh, sort of sports and saloon type race, we have got the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. They had a race earlier on today that was uh, won pretty comfortably by Nigel Mustill in the Volvo, Volvo S60. Uh, but there was an entertaining scrap between Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas behind and uh, they uh, will be one of the main features I reckon in this second race as well they will start second and third respectively ahead of Scott Parkin in the Audi and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing who comes out on top in our second 15 minute race of the day uh, has anyone got an answer for Mustill though I'm, I'm not convinced they have really Richard he uh, seems to be in a league of his own as far as his outright pace is concerned he does I was doing a bit of googling about the kit Oh, really? really? He's got, yeah, because you were saying about uh, Dutch Supercar Championship. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's uh, seven litre Chevrolet power. Wow. <laughs> so, <you laughs> Is know. that all? <laughs> I just feel sorry for Verity Banks out there in the, in the little Fiesta, <laughs> you know, on road tyres. Uh, um, and it made its debut over here in uh, 2022. So April 2022 debuted it at, um, at Thruxton. It's the. It's actually uh, under his Wessex Commercials livery, which is based in Salisbury. Uh, it was acquired from the Spa Francorchamps Museum. Oh right. Um, as a car which had won the 2011 Spa 12 Hours with Vincent Rademacher and uh, Nico Verdonk. Wow. So that that actual car was. Yeah. The, oh wow. Yeah. So interesting to and unusual to actually be able to find a little bit of car history on it. But yeah, Nigel fancied that. I've seen him race all sorts. I can't remember. The sorts of cars that I've seen, but he always goes for something yeah. totally out there. A bit out there, Nigel, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as does, does Keith Butcher, to be absolutely fair. Normally, and I was trying to rack my brain to, to remember, he normally races touring cars. He, he had uh, some Audi touring cars, which he's raced in the past, but now with Hurricane. Yeah. And didn't he just look like he was enjoying it <laughs> when he, <laughs> when he would, came in? Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's a great looking car, that Hurricane. Ah, now. What don't Nigel, you see in that picture? It's not there. It's a good job I spoke about it <laughs> before, before it was. Wow. I looked on the grid and there it was, gone. <laughs> oh, very good. And can you keep that up for 15 minutes? Absolutely not. Not even 15 <laughs> seconds, Andy, to be very honest. I <laughs> did enjoy that, though, Richard. Uh, there are lots of shames. So Nigel must still probably the most... Uh, interesting car on the grid in some ways not going to be taking the start of race number two that is a bit of a shame and it means that uh, well, what it does mean is that the Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas fight that was for second place is now for the race win which uh, is not bad news really those two two of the more evenly matched drivers on the grid and they are going to be starting from the front row together and fighting for an overall uh, race victory so the Lamborghini and the Ariel Atom start from row one and uh, well, I wonder what's up with that Nigel Mustill. It's uh, not that long a drive back to uh, Wales from Silverstone. I'm sure he's not trying to beat the rush hour traffic. There must have been something that was uh, concerning him slightly on that car in race one. I think you're right. Had a quick check out about uh, Verity as well. I think he's done quite a bit of racing at Castle Coombe. 
and after race one, she'd put a little report in her Facebook page very quickly indeed. So if you're into following drivers, the baby was in for the first time today. Give a follow to Verity, she keeps you bang up to date with her racing activities. Oh, excellent, yeah, excellent. Really. I like a driver that does that for themselves. They don't have yeah. someone managing no, exactly. their, uh, you know. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good to see. So, uh, Keith Butcher will start for pole position then in our second Welsh Racing Drivers Association Welsh Sports and Salute Car Championship because Nigel does still uh, doesn't want to come out and play in his spectacular Volvo. So Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas the cup the front row, row two, then will be Scott Parkin and the championship leader, Wayne Spiller, with Gareth John and Mark Williams together on row number three. Gareth John uh, will uh, be looking for another class win. Then you've got Craig Attard and Mike Cook with Verity Banks at the back of the, well, unfortunately now just nine car field for the Welsh Sports and Saloon Car Championship. But a fantastic opportunity for these drivers to... Uh, come and race at Silverstone, albeit only on the national circuit, but uh, it's still an opportunity to race at the home of British Motor Racing, something that uh, many of these drivers possibly never thought they'd have the opportunity to do, with this being a Welsh-based championship and a Pembrey-based championship at that. And, uh, this is quite far removed, isn't it, from uh, the old-school, narrow, tight, twisty Pembrey circuit, which... Uh, as I said earlier on today, I really must try and pay a visit to at uh, some point in the future. I'm sure they'd love to get, get you down there doing some work. Oh, no, so, I fancy yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's uh, it's a lovely part of the world as well, down in South Wales. I do enjoy spending time down there. Plus, we should have a word with the people that do the fixtures and, and do a double next year. That would be good. Cymru Convoy. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. I enjoy that. I've missed yeah. my truck race as well. A long time since I covered It's good fun, race. isn't it? Yeah, it really is, really is. Apart from the delays when they rebuild the tyre barriers and <laughs> take the trucks out of the spectator areas. And <laughs> so yes, that's... Uh, that's <laughs> but it's a spectacle. And they're a, they're a superb bunch as well. They, they really are, are. They are really, really good fun uh, events, those. Uh, right then, here we go. Uh, Keith Butcher and Christian Douglas on the front row of the grid. Lamborghini Huracan versus highly modified Aerial Atom. And uh, two by two rolling start it will be on the way uh, to the start line and uh, Keith Butcher stealing a bit of a march on the competition already actually not wanting to share the front row with uh, Christian Douglas who's got that inside line of course down to Cops Corner there is a chance that Christian uh, could try and challenge for the race lead if he anticipates the start which uh, gets underway now and who is going to have the advantage Lamborghini or Ariel Atom it's pretty close actually Douglas has got him Christian Douglas gets past Keith Butcher and then here comes Scott Parkin he absolutely Rearing round the outside, and the Audi TT goes toe to toe with the Lamborghini for second as they head down towards Beckett's. Up and at them at the start, isn't it? Amazing <laughs> start good. then from the uh, Audi as well, back in third position, giving us a little bit of a race to sort out. There's the little Janetta coming under a bit of pressure from the Mazda and Verity, pretty much as you did in race number one, living with them until they get to the, the main straight. That's a good start from that class one car, I've got to say. She's, uh, done, yeah. she's done well there. No, she has actually, staying with the pack as best she can. Top two uh, dropped out through Brooklyn. Here comes the Janetta now looking up the inside line as they head for uh, Brooklyn's corner. That's Gareth John in the Janetta G40 trying to get past the Renault Clio, I think, wasn't he there? And Mark Williams. And uh, Mark Williams stays ahead. In fact, the Janetta running a bit wide now through Luffield. And uh, that means that the gap just widens ever so slightly. There's a good battle as well behind the second of the Mazdas. Uh, that will be Craig Attard trying to get back ahead of the fast-starting Mike Cook in his BMW. This is an opportunity, isn't it, for the for the uh, Lamborghini to, to grab a first-class win of the year. He want it to be an overall win, though. Yes. Uh, this actually sets us up quite nicely, doesn't it, seeing, seeing the Atom getting away? Yeah, well, I think I said in the early race, that was really Butcher's best... Uh, that was... Uh, Christian Douglas' best chance of winning the race outright, getting past the Lamborghini, because we know the Lambo will have better straight line performance, and it's very difficult for the Ariel Atom to get past, but we should still hopefully have an entertaining fight between the two of them. This looks quite good fun as well. Gareth John coming back now at Mark Williams in the Renault Clio, and uh, bringing with him the points leader, Wayne Spiller, in his Mazda, so the three of them are bunching together quite nicely as they head down the Wellington Strait, and Gareth John this time will commit to the move against Mark Williams, and the slightly lighter Janetta able to gain the place. It's like Alan Hyde would say, it's like a little Toka support race <laughs> match race, isn't it? <laughs> Janetta versus Cleo. I can't do Alan Hyde, I can do a bit of a Welsh accent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can't do Al. Not, not your best work there, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, in the ballpark, in the ballpark. Uh, I do miss the Renault Clio Cup. That was, that was always one of my favourites on the uh, on the token package, but uh, good to have the Clio here. And, of course, the BRSCC also uh, running the Cook Sports uh, Renault Clio Cup within its uh, evolution of course, yeah. this year. Yeah. And uh, that's been going quite nicely as the season's gone on. 
So uh, Mark Williams, maybe we'll see him appear in that at some point, but right now uh, running fifth place overall in this race and looking to try and come back at Gareth John, but he's also got Wayne Spiller behind. And that Mazda looks as though it's got the legs on the straight, tries to get to the inside at Beckett's corner, but the Clio just about late enough on the brakes to hang on. See what Spiller can do, championship leader, but still wants to, this is what it's about, getting in amongst the other cars and having a race and just, you know, proving what you can do with your car, get, get, getting stuck in. And yeah, he'll be do, doing that at the remaining round, which is October the 8th, oh. Pembrey that weekend. Mike Cook, sadly. Uh, yeah, Mike Where's Cook he gone? A bit, a bit lost there, I think. At, uh, I think he'd been onto the runoff area at Beckett's and uh, tried to join the 750 Motor Club meeting that was going on over <laughs> on the international circuit. But uh, uh, maybe they had an F1000 race going on or something and they, uh, they wouldn't let him in. So he's back onto the track again and uh, falls now, unfortunately, away from uh, Craig Atton, with whom he was having that entertaining scrap uh, up until that point out of Woodcote go these three, fourth, fifth and sixth in the race. Gareth John in a class of his own, but of course Mark Williams and Wayne Spiller fighting for class positions. So from, so from Spiller's perspective, championship leader needing to score some good points here. Meanwhile, is the fight for the race lead. So Christian Douglas has now been reeled in by Keith Butcher, who seemed to take a few laps just to warm up in the earlier race, didn't he? He's warmed up now and he's taking the fight to the aerial atom. Well, I'm guessing he's been tight and not bought the rubber because we in the interviews he was saying about he didn't want to spend the money on new tyres. Everyone was telling him he should, <laughs> but he hasn't. From our point of view, if it makes the race closer, yep. that's fine with us. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, well, this should be a fascinating head-to-head -head now. The Lamborghini better down the straights, the Atom better through the corners. Look at how much more speed Douglas can take uh, through cops there. Uh, but then Keith Butcher should be right back on him again by the time they hit the brakes into Beckett's. So I spent the entirety of the first race saying that it was very hard to pass a car that's better than you in a straight line. Of course, it's pretty difficult to pass a car that can brake a lot later than you as well. So uh, I think this is going to be a difficult job for Keith Butcher regardless. I still reckon he'll do it, though. As you say, yeah. he's getting warmed up, isn't he? Lights on. Well, that's worth an extra half day. a second of lap. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> Try the outside run. Keith's not going to be that brave. I wouldn't be that brave with the Lamborghini. Uh, no, absolutely, although uh, they do perform well under brakes these days, GT3 cars. It is a GT3 spec Huracan, I believe, not one of the Super Trofeo cars, so uh, ABS and uh, lots of different levels of ABS that you can select as well. And, uh, well, it was very circumspect through that final sector, drops away again now from Christian Douglas, and Christian ends up uh, doing a 59.989, uh, about nine tenths quicker than uh, Keith Butcher behind him. To lap Mike Cook in the BMW, although Mike, of course, has had uh, that delay with his off down here at Beckett's a few laps ago. Didn't take long for Butcher to uh, to reel Douglas back in, did it? No, it didn't. And Douglas, who does the odd round, I think, in the invitation, that car doesn't necessarily fit into the structure, five class structure that we've got, but it's everybody welcoming of, of whatever cars are able to race at Pembrey, and his job done into the lead. So Butcher takes the lead on the outside run, but immediately the Atom is going to fight back and gets... Ah, this is great. This is what we wanted to see. This is proper motor racing, isn't it? A bit of a David and Goliath style battle. Two cars that excel in very different areas around the Silverstone National Circuit. You would think that it's all about horsepower, but you've then got to be able to stop the car again at the end of the straight, and that's where Douglas has got the edge actually comes through this time with uh, only a slightly smaller lead than he had a lap ago. Only a couple of tenths quicker was Keith Butcher, but he was ahead. The records won't show it, but he was ahead at one point down the uh, Wellington straight. But that's where he has to make the move, I think, isn't he? Can close in through the first sector, get off Beckett's well. If he could be a car length or so closer to Douglas than he was last time, he might be able to clear him and then defend into uh, Brooklyn's corner. Could well do that, couldn't he? Let's see whether he gets a, a decent run. He's not particularly close at the moment. Onto the straight again, there are Latin doing the business. Craig Attard is the next car that they will lap, and Keith Butcher, well, he's still trying, isn't he? Couldn't quite do it that time. He's gonna have to build some momentum up and just sort of time it as best he can. Yeah, that's it. It's all about timing, as you say, isn't it? He's, he's got the advantage at that part of the circuit, but he needs to be a bit closer uh, when they get onto the Wellington straight. Otherwise, he's not going to be close enough when they get down to Brooklyn. Won't be far enough ahead, I should say, when they get down to Brooklyn to successfully defend the plays. He actually loses a tenth on that lap uh, to Christian. Swoops up the inside of Craig Attard's Mazda. Marks eight. And, uh, really starts to gap Keith Butcher now. Keith does drag past him again as they head uh, for Beckett's. Hits the brakes. Nose of the Lamborghini dips 
inch-perfect racing line, in fairness there, right up over the curve on the uh, inside apex. Well, let's see whether he can get alongside again this time. I'm not sure he's going to here. We've got more traffic, Verity Banks on the outside run, maybe scuppering things there. He's going to have a little nibble on the inside. He's not going to do that. Uh, he's a bit ahead, doesn't he, in the braking zone, yeah, because yeah. you know that the Atom's going to break a bit later. Car looks like a lot of fun to drive there, doesn't it? Some aerial atoms look a bit leery and a bit sort of soft and spongy and not really yielding an awful lot of mechanical grip, but that car with all of the aerodynamic bits that have been tagged onto it. Uh, on rails, isn't it, really? I don't think I've seen it snap sideways once in this race. Now another challenge befalls Christian Douglas, a bit of traffic ahead of him. And since Christian's making all of his lap time up through the corners, the last thing he wants is to come across a back marker on an apex because yeah. that loses him his bit of big uh, edge over Butcher. It's Verity, the, the lone class one runner, will pick up some championship points. Missed the, the, missed the, the uh, I was going to say the opening round, but the first visit to Pembrey, Verity Banks didn't make it. She did go and watch, but wasn't racing. Yes. And uh, will, I think, be class one champion. We have seen the odd class one car out as they now nip down on the inside of Wayne Spiller, championship leader. Wayne on his way here to another class win. Scott Parkin is in the class, but it will be a points win. Scott being a guest driver. Surprised we haven't seen maybe a few more from the club sport trophy, but it's maybe a little bit too close to that, yeah. that race for everybody to, to do both. Yeah, perhaps. Scott Parkin, a busy boy this weekend, but uh, he's well used to it. As I said, he's done some endurance racing in the past, used to a lot of seat time in quite a short space of time. With seven seconds now the advantage for Douglas and he's now starting to get far enough ahead that Butcher isn't catching him anymore down the Wellington Strait so uh, Christian might now start to breathe a bit of a sigh of relief Butcher getting delayed by Gareth John as well the traffic isn't really falling in his favour is it? It's got past the Clio and past the Genetta the Genetta still winning the battle of the uh, erstwhile Toka support series uh, that's the way actually yep you still see the G40s in some of your work, don't you? In the yes, uh, the, G, uh, G well, the GT Championship, as it's called. Now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, many left? Uh, not as many as there once were. No, I think we've had about seven or eight at one point this year. That was the top end. But, uh, 55s are sort of there to take over. Yeah, very much so. Very much on 56s these days. These days. Um, but yeah, no, it's still good racing. I mean, it always was a great car for racing, wasn't it? And um, they they're depleted but they still produce some good action but uh, yeah very much moving into the more powerful Ginettas now as that sort of entry level GTA championship as well now coming in for again the G56 shaped cars it's the TT Cup Series car Scott Park he might not really have anyone to race with that the heavy's pushing hard isn't he he's really running out of uh, Beckett's that time I don't think the TTs are back at Silverstone this year Double check that though, because I'm wondering why he's made the decision to uh, uh, come and uh, race this weekend. If it isn't to try and get a bit of uh, testing in for later on in the season, soaking up a bit of T TCR atmosphere. Maybe it's that. Maybe yeah. he's got aspirations of uh, uh, of coming and racing with us. Yeah, no, they're not visiting Silverstone this year. They've got only two rounds left actually, Croft and Snetterton for the TT Cup Series this year great looking car isn't it and uh, they're older than you think this shape of Audi TT but uh, yeah, yeah. they they look really modern don't they and the the kit that Sean Woods SW Motorsport team have put together the the aero kit that you buy and bolt onto your road car convert to a race car uh, is not that expensive at all really great value for money no wonder it's really starting to catch on yes, John in the Jeanette, I'd be interested to know which car that was. Ah, yes. Uh, and who's it? But, um, no details forthcoming, sadly, from the Welsh club. Well, it is weird, isn't it? They don't, they don't go up to Anglesey. It would, uh, we, we tried to get a... Uh, the, the legends used to race at both, and we, we wanted to reignite the Tom Price trophy. And, and over the... You know, it's being the, the premier event that ran at Pembrey and Anglesey, which would have been nice, you know, to have a yeah. sort of premier Welsh trophy. Yeah. Um, but the, the trophy didn't get returned from the last winner. So oh. <laughs> that, that guy, I suppose we could commission a new one, but it, it, it would be nice to commemorate Tom Price no, um, it would. And, uh, in some way or continue to, because it hasn't been done for several years. But um, yeah. that, that ideally would be something like this, you know, for the, for the Welsh Drivers Club to, 
to promote uh, and reinstate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Maybe, maybe some time in the future. It's a lovely venue, Anglesey. Uh, place very close to my heart. I'm hoping actually to make my way over there at the end of the year for the Race of Remembrance for the first time. I've never actually done that yeah. um, event before. But I need to do that as well. Yeah, it's like, run by the BRSCC again now. As, as entirely all entirely voluntary, isn't it? As it well. is. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. It was not too far for me to go, so I do fancy a little trip over. Um, I am slightly scared that I'll get roped into doing the, uh, <laughs> the run and the swim in fancy dress. <coughs> I've been uh, hearing a few of the costumes that the BRSCC staff members are going to be <laughs> wearing this year. Uh, yeah. not, not sure I'm quite ready to uh, jump in at the deep end, quite literally, uh, with that. But uh, other than that, an event I'd love to be a part of. Back here at Silverstone, Christian Douglas bags a fast. Is that he's, he's ahead of Keith Butcher now, 4.2 seconds. So Butcher's early efforts really coming to naught at the moment. Great stuff from Verity Banks, who moves over, allows Wayne Spiller, the championship leader, through. Wayne has only lost out one so far to Craig Attard in the championship this year so he will become this year's champion a few cars not made the trip it's difficult really when you've got a regional championship a to try and fit in all the all of the events required by the drivers on home tarmac and then you canvass the drivers and say where, where do you want to go elsewhere and it, to my mind there's nothing worse than listening to a driver because they say oh yeah you know we'll, we'll go to Donington or we'll go to and then they don't yes <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Very good point, very good point. You'd like to think Silverstone would have, have attracted a couple more. It is a great place to come and race, but um, what we've got, we've enjoyed having. And uh, well, whilst it lasted, it was a good battle between Christian Douglas and Keith Butcher for the win in this one, but less than a lap to go now in this second Welsh Sports Saloon Championship race. And it looks as though it's going to be one uh, win for the Volvo, one will win for the Aerial Atom. And, uh, well, Keith Butcher can't buy a race victory today. He will get a class win, I suppose. Well, he could do if he bought the new tyres. <laughs> that's that's a very good thing. <laughs> Actually, thinking back to Nigel Musto, I was wondering whether that's why he, he didn't talk to Anthony, why he didn't stop. Uh, Maybe he had an issue with the car and had to get it back to the... So Anthony shouldn't take that too personally. No, 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 definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we both just laughed at something the director said. But the viewers at home <laughs> can't hear, and that might not be a bad thing. Right, out of the file comes, corner comes there, Christian Douglas. And he is heading for the checkered flag then. A victory in race number two here at Silverstone. The Aerial Atom, one of the most spectacular cars on the grid. And Christian Douglas claims the win. Where is Keith Butcher? There is Keith Butcher uh, in the Lamborghini. Dropped back a little bit towards the end there. 6.1 seconds, the eventual winning margin. But a nice little battle while it lasted there. Uh, and ultimately, really, it was just that traffic, wasn't it? Those couple of laps in traffic that uh, dropped Keith Butcher uh, just about out of, the out of uh, striking range. Yeah, they did. Nice little race then to send our friends back to Wales with a safe journey and we hope to see them again very, very soon. And we'll keep an eye on who wins the outright championship in the final round in October. So they've got a month to, to regroup. I'm sure there'll be lots of people there for the, for the finale. It's going to be interesting as well to hear from Scott Parker and what his thoughts yeah. are on, yeah. in terms of doing these two races and the 45 minute yes. club sport race a little bit later on. So yeah, very, very busy. And how much effort is it to, to get the, I guess that says how good the cars are. Yeah in terms of, yeah, you just refuel it, out you go. 45 yeah. minutes or a sprint race, whatever. Well, it's a definitely a test of uh, well, endurance, not the right word, but uh, to test the reliability, I guess, of a car, to stake it out there for a lengthy period of time. Audi TT Cup races are 20 minutes in length, so it's like doing two and a bit of those uh, without really stopping. So it's a, it is a good test of... Uh, mechanical reliability and until, you don't it, until it fails on the next round he says i wish i hadn't done that yeah, well this <laughs> is true this <laughs> make a very good point but, so we don't see that many mechanical issues really with the Audis. they're well-built cars and uh, german engineering at its very finest it is the aerial atom though that was victorious in our second uh, Welsh racing drivers association Welsh sports and salute car championship race keep butcher in second place Scott Parkin in third, all of the class winners. So was Gareth John, actually, in fourth place. Wade Spiller, fifth, Mark Williams, sixth. Craig Attard, seventh, Mike Cook and Verity Banks also claiming victories within their respective classes. So that's our result for the 11th race of the day. Don't forget, after we've heard from our podium finishes in that race, we'll be beginning build-up for round 11 of the TCR UK Championship. You won't want to miss that. Uh, there is Keith Butcher getting out, immediately going over to give a handshake to Christian Douglas, who got one over on him in that one and uh, denied Keith that overall race victory. But he did at least manage to claim the class win once again. And 
he'll be having a chat with uh, Anthony Jordan in a while. So too will Scott Parkin. Uh, and first of all, our race winner, Christian Douglas, who does now catch up with Anthony. Thank you very much, Andy. Yes, uh, Christian's actually managed to, he's been ever so polite to actually get out of the car this time, which is uh, very handy. Um, right, well, a bit better this time around. Uh, not a P1, P2, uh, well, not P2 last time, P1 this time around. Uh, nice little work there. Yeah, if I can carry the corner speed, I can keep that little bit ahead, but it's when I'm losing in the corners and I can't keep the speed. I can see him coming down the straight. Then we get into Brooklands and I'm able to break later, obviously. But yeah, it's really good fun. It's great racing with the Lambo. Uh, yeah, great day. Yeah, just enjoying it. Uh, the weather held out for us, so uh, nice little drive. I mean, these uh, these cars, the aerial atoms are absolutely fantastic. I have had the pleasure of driving one of these at a, a closed venue, and uh, I, I have to say I span it because uh, it didn't have a, it didn't have the rear wing. So the uh, that's helps. my the yeah, aero helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Helps. mine had no aero, uh, but yeah, no. These uh, these do look absolutely fantastic to drive, and uh, the acceleration they must be brutal, aren't they? It's the quickest accelerating car I've driven. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I raced t uh, TVRs as well. And whereas they're all grunty and big V8s, it's only a little two litre, but it's definitely got some kick off the line. I can imagine so. They do look fantastic and uh, well done, though, on a, a race win there. Thank you very much. Excellent stuff there from uh, Christian Douglas there. Let's turn our attention now to Keith Butcher, who uh, this time around, let's ask him that fateful question. Uh, Keith, you spoke to us earlier on about uh, you, know, you don't, not going to go for some fresh boots. Did you go for fresh boots or not? No, I didn't know. No, Nigel, I saw Nigel Mustard going home. We had them out ready to put them on. And so we said no. So, yeah. So I couldn't keep winning through the corners yeah. here, really. Yeah. And like I said before, because it's the same common tracks, but um, over the back there, where I'm quicker, where I catch him, yeah. I couldn't pass him. So, you know, it was one of those things. There we are. Yeah. yeah. But still, I've still got a new set of tyres left. <laughs> yeah. You've got a set of tyres for another uh, sunny day. Uh, have you enjoyed the day, though? That's yeah, it's very good. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it's very good. Well, congratulations. P1 and a P, oh, P2 and a P3 today. Yeah. Two P2s. Twos, yeah. Twos. Two twos all the way. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Excellent. Well done, Keith. Thank you very much. Uh, let's uh, chat now to the driver finishing in third place. And I love this. Ariel Atom, Lamborghini Hurricane, Audi TT. Hey, who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? The little TT that could. Three uh, addresses cars. <laughs> uh, well, that was certainly a nice little race yourself, wasn't it? Yeah, in a bit of space on my own, really, but I just was trying to see that as like just doing qualifying laps every lap, mm. chasing the timer rather than somebody else. Uh, it's a bit of a shame a few more of the guys from like the Club Sport Trophy and some of the other uh, series that's here this weekend didn't jump in. Uh, we could have had a good battle. Um, yeah, I'm straight into the Club Sport Trophy after the TCRs, so yes, uh, yeah. yeah, hopefully it survived, it seems like it's alright, so uh, yeah, some good testing. Uh, tried some different tyres there as well, so in uh, the previous race I were on Yokohama AO52s, and then now I've tried some of the new ADO 9s, they seem pretty close, so uh, yeah, need to make the decision now which tyres I go on for the uh, next race. Basically a glorified practice session for yourself ahead of the 45 minutes. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I set out the weekend to be. So it's not uh, it's not been too disappointing. Yeah. At least I had some good clear air, not complaining about people getting in the way or anything. So, yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Well, congratulations. P3 out on that one. Uh, cheers, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Excellent stuff there. Well, there you go. Ariel Atom, Lamborghini Hurricane and a Audi TT. Who'd have thunk it? Well, uh, we're going to take a short ad break, but do not go anywhere because round 11 of the TCR UK Championship is coming up very, very soon. Stay with us.
by side. Who's going to be the bigger man? Oh, big off! The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woya.co.uk today. It's round 11, it's the TCR UK series at Silverstone National Circuit. Anthony Jordan sat with me, I'm Paul O'Neill. Good to see you all. Um, one of the best races I've ever seen, I think, in TCR UK yeah. um, earlier on today. Fantastic. Looks like we should have another good one. Uh, we should, and a bit of rain in the air as well. Apparently, right now, I'm being told it's raining at the wing. Uh, really? So, uh, yeah, that should oh. make it interesting. Um, this is going to be an exciting one, mate. Claxon's already blowing. We're getting three minute boards going out. We've not yep. got much time, so we're going to get a wiggle on on this one. Uh, Matthew Wilson starting this one on pole position. Very lucky with that reverse grid. I think penalty went out to Alex Lee, so he missed out on that one. Do you want to chat to Scott, mate? Yeah, quickly. Let's just have a quick word, Scott. Mate, you were an absolute superstar in that last race. Felt so sorry for you. Got your elbows out. I thought you did a cracking race. Got to do the same again. Yeah, no, really looking forward to it. Really enjoyed that first race as well. Uh, good to get some race experience up with the front boys. So, yeah, let's go again. Top man, I'll let them drop you because you're getting your tyres uh, all changed. So, good luck, fella. Have a good one. Um, AJ? Yeah, cheers, mate. I think the microphone can hear me over here. We've got Brad here, Brad. Uh, well, mate, honestly, that race one was hectic. Uh, you're in the Gen 1 Audi. We know that it's not got the top speed on the straight, but uh, you know how to defend in these cars, mate. Uh, what do you expect? Yeah, I expect a bit of carnage since the reverse quiz, but uh, hopefully I won't be involved. We'll see. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Back to the Brad show, isn't it? <laughs> exactly, mate. Mate, have a safe drive. We'll see you back at the end of this one. Brad started on P3 on this one, Paul. Mate, this is going to be uh, one hectic one. We've got like one minute until they get going. But yeah. this is certainly going to be an interesting one. This is uh, Chris Smiley. What a start he's going to get from this one. His, well, I think, is this best starting spot this season? Well, uh, he's going he's, he's gonna to have a, a better race than he has had of late. But I just think he's going to have... He's got three Audis behind him, mate, yeah. that are literally the quickest cars of the field. So all the mechanics are getting told to go off. Let's keep going because yeah, yeah, we're yeah. going to get a bit of a roasting. Good luck to Jack Constable. We're going to get a bit of a roasting. So we need to be getting gone from here because they're going to be on their um, they're going to be on their lap in a second. But uh, Jensen Brickley, I think you've got to watch out for him. I think he's going to be absolutely banging. There's going to be a lot going on in this race. Alex Lee, just to the right-hand side of you, he's one to watch out for. For me, the rest of the uh, of the guys, I've got Carl Bordley just over there to be looking out for because Carl has got some proper points in the bag. He'll yeah. just want to finish this race, I think. Yeah, exactly that. He's got a bit of work ahead of him, though, because right now that's a lot of traffic. He knows he can get through the traffic, but it's going to be tough here around Silverstone. We're going to have to get off at the back of the grid because the whistle's blowing. We've
we've got about 30 seconds until they drive off. Mate, this race two, I've got no idea on this one. You head off to the uh, commentary box. I'm going to stay here and try not to get run over by anything. But TCR UK race two is coming up very, very soon. Thank you very much, Anthony. Yeah, green flag lap about to begin then here at Silverstone for the reverse grid race. Usually the most exciting of the two races, but uh, we'll have to go some to top race one. That was action from the very start to the very end. And, uh, it's quite nice to some people whispering about the threat of rain. I think we should be okay, hopefully, as we get ready to go for the second time here at Silverstone and the 11th time of asking this season. So cars released onto the green flag lap. Adam Shepard, Bruce Winfield coming from the back of the field. Let's take a look at how they line up there. Matthew Wilson, as often seems to be the case, gets drawn at the front of the race two grid with Scott Sumter, maybe a race win on the cards for the youngster in the Honda. Brad Hutchison and Callum Newsham together on row number two. Audi ahead of Hyundai. And then the third row for Chris Spiley, the reigning champion, who would love something to smile about as we get towards the business end of the season. Oliver Cotton starts sixth this time around, just ahead of Jack Constable and Joe Marshall in their pair on Ron Boston Racing Audis. Then the top two from race number one, Jensen Brickley, who moves up to third place in the points after that result. And he's got the championship leader, Carl Bordley, alongside for 45 points up now on the rest of the field. Alex Lee and Luke Sargent together on row six. Lee uh, lost that front row starting position because of a time penalty for track limits in race number one. And then row number at seven, we find the first of the Astros, Darren Wilson, alongside the older Shane Cooper of Rick Kerry. Then on row number eight, Jeff Holden and Andy Wilmot, the last of the finishers from the earlier race, because sadly, Bradley Kent, uh, after running really strong in that one, had a uh, left puncture and ended up off the gravel at Cox Corner. Gary Townsend retired to the pit lane until we'll start 18th. Darren Lewis, likewise, will start this one from 19th on the grid. And then Adam Shepard and Bruce Whitfield, the two area votes for Kim Day's Shepard, led from pole in race one before the belt snapped and he was out and Bruce Winfield had that suspension failure that puts him to the back of the grid. Now Winfield can relax a little bit because at least his drop scores have saved him. He's still second in the points but he's had two non-finishes now. That's his two drop scores used. So another one and realistically that's his championship hopes gone. But Carl Bordley, Paul O'Neill, 45 points up on Bruce Winfield, second in the championship now. And I think his mindset has to completely change now, doesn't it? He? he doesn't need to win races. He'd love to, but realistically, finish top five in all the races in the rest of the season and jobs are good. At. Yeah, I, I asked the question, to be fair to him. I said, listen, mate, I said, is that championship done? And he was adamant that it was not. And I see why it's mathematically still possible for everybody else, isn't it, to, uh, to win this championship. But the one thing I will say is that... <laughs> He's a clever switched on man, so he knows he's got to just finish, like you say, in the top five. The other thing I'll say is, all this needs is someone to turn into him at Maggots, and then he's on the back foot. But everybody else will know that, and you'll start seeing the respect shown to Carl Bordley, because I don't think he, I can think of anyone that's an enemy of Carl's. No, no, very good point, very good point. But you do cast your mind back to, to Donington last year. Chris Smiley starting to build a championship lead. Race two, turn one, contact, non-finish. It can change in a flash. The weather could have a say in this as well. 25 minutes is quite a long time. And with that stiff breeze that's blowing across Silverstone, uh, it uh, is potentially going to bring that weather to us a little bit more quickly. Lots of unanswered questions and lots of high hopes from those at the front of the field. Matt Wilson, Scott Sumter, Brad Hutchison, Callum Newsham, top four on the grid all looking for their first ever win in the championship with some heavy hitters coming from the back of the field to keep an eye on as well. The stage is set for a fascinating 11th round of the TCR UK Championship in 2023. The revs start to rise. The red lights eventually will go on, which happens now. And when they go out, we are racing here at Silverstone. Matthew Wilson with a decent start from pole position, but Scott Sumpton, I think, is better from the inside of row number one. Bordley slots up the inside already ahead of Jensen Brickley before they get to cop, but it is Sumpton to the lead. And here comes Chris Smiley charging around the outside, wanting to follow his restart racing teammate to the front. Sumpton with the advantage, side by side for second, almost three wide for second place. Brad Hutchison will get the better of that. Newsham sweeps into third, and Chris Smiley boxed in in fourth. Wow, look at that great start. Look at Baldy around the outside. And there oh. he goes. He's already lost oh, a few. Oh, no, that's Smiley and Hutchison, but I think Baldy was slowing. Smiley heads off to the left. Newsham has damage. Baldy was out wide. Where did Smiley go? Shepard's on the grass. There is Newsham oh. with big damage to the left front. Gordon.
corner. But what happened to Chris Smiley? I think he might be out of the race as well. Now, did Bordley have a problem? He was very slow through Beckett's corner. Was he just staying out of the way? No, he ran wide. He's still in the race. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with his car. Oh, but there's more Brinkley. contact with Brinkley getting hit. I'm a bit concerned about what's happened to Chris Smiley. I know there is a... Uh, there's a, there's a barrier where he was heading off and he went off like a projectile. Safety car called. Ooh, there oh, he is. Wow. So okay. he's made the barrier, I think, but not too heavily by the looks of it. Oh, he went off at some speed. There oh. you go. He has hit wow. it. He's hit it. Look at the Marshall's post. Look at where. Look at that. That's actually a Marshall's post that they stand on to give right. out safety car warnings. I hope everybody down there is okay. Left rear on that Honda has had a big yeah. hit. I hope they weren't out um, there waving flags on that, uh, on that bit of scaffolding. Darren Lewis in the pits. What an, uh, an, an awful start to the start of this race. Yeah, that was, uh, that was difficult. Just I hope everyone is okay down there. Wow. Okay, and breathe, everyone. A dramatic start to the race. We're under safety car conditions, and Scott Sutton uh, with the race lead there. Matthew Wilson second, Alex Lee third, uh, with Oliver Cotter and Joe Marshall completing the top five. Jensen Brickley can count himself lucky. He was tagged sideways at Luffield, and he was right in the middle of all of this down at Beckett's as well. Uh, but the man who moved into third place in the championship after race one still in the fight. He is seventh ahead of Constable Kent and Bordley. That just about sums up Chris Smiley's season. Doesn't it? Gets, gets in the mix, was in the top three, and then all of a sudden he's exit stage. Like I was so concerned about how fast that car went off. That is, you you are pulling, you're at you're the end of the revs in fourth gear as you, yeah. as you come out of there. So that is well over 80, 90 miles an hour. So for him to, to, to not look like it's massively damaged, um, and the barrier not to be uh, bent even more is, is quite uh, pretty well. It's pretty impressive, but yeah, as I say, I was just a bit concerned about the marshals down there. So we'll, we'll try and uh, if we find anything out. We'll keep you informed, but I don't want to speculate on that. But everybody did seem to be up and about. There was no massive panic. I agree with you. Someone got tagged sideways, which sort of triggered all of that. I think it was Hutchison. There was contact between Hutchison and Newsham, and then I think Hutchison gets tagged into Smiley, and that's what sort of uh, triggered all of that. Newsham picking up damage too, but we see that kind of thing happen at Beckett's quite a lot in front-wheel drive touring cars, don't we? A car gets mm. sideways, and as they save it, they sort of overcorrect and go back into the pack, and uh, it, it can very, very easily happen, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's it. I'm just looking at replays from the live stream that you can't see and that was Callum Newsham with Chris Smiley down his inside but then Hutchison got involved and Jack Constable and it did look like it was all a concertina there was absolutely no malice in that no. situation that we've seen in the end Smiley gets up the inside of Newsham which then sort of eases Newsham into Hutchison I think and yeah. then ironically it's Smiley who gets the worst of it really exactly. Hutchison very lucky uh, to still be in the race because that was quite a big hit with Smiley's car mm. uh, but the bond it blew out he seems absolutely fine yeah this is going to be two lifts so this could be quite a while the Callum Newsham car that you can see top right of your shot just half on the grass half on the tarmac that's going to be a flatbed lift um, they can do live snatch here, but that is well and truly out of the, the equation now because is that barrier damage that bad that they're going to have to stop this? You'd hope not, although in a way, I'd rather a red flag than 15 minutes behind the safety car because then at least we get a full race restart, but we'll wait and see what the decision is by race control. We're still running behind the safety car for the time being. Uh, Bordley then ninth place after all of that. So Carl Bordley uh, with uh, the... Uh, Work to be done then from ninth position and uh, losing a chunk of points as it stands to the likes of Jensen Brickley. We're not that far uh, up the order either as Jensen after his various trials and tribulations. Um, you've got Jack Constable in eighth of the championship front runners. What of the two Hyundais from the back? Well, Winfield 14th, Shepard 16th place at the moment. And uh, that is. Uh, decent progress for Winfield, actually. Winfield started behind Shepard and uh, has got himself a few places ahead of him. Yeah, I was just looking back as well at uh, the live stream replay just on your laptop there, Maze. Well, it looked like, unfortunately for Hutchison, he has been the wrong place at the <laughs> wrong time in both instances because yeah. he was responsible for Brickley and it wasn't even his fault either because he had Constable, I think it was, uh, on the inside of him. So all those accidents we've seen or slides we've seen it's a red flag i thought it would be sensible i think really sensible because that that barrier did take a big hit 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just three into one in both scenarios. And there's just, even as a wide track Silverstone, you never know who's got what on their side and how much room they've got. <laughs> so you just don't know how much the person next to you is going to turn the steering wheel. And we do find, don't we, if, if we were at Alton Park, that wouldn't have happened because drivers wouldn't go for that gap because yeah. they know it's narrow. They know the consequences of running off the track. There's something about the, the relative safety of racing at a wide open facility such as Silverstone that can bring out that sort of gung-ho attitude, can't it? Drivers just go for a gap knowing that, in theory, the consequences shouldn't be quite as bad. But as we just saw there, they still can be. Yeah, exactly that. And it's, it is. It's, this is the probably the widest track we visit, I yeah, would yeah. think, uh, with the longest runoff. But, you know, that shows how fast Chris Smiley was travelling. Yeah. To go, uh, to go off at that speed, I mean, that must have been pretty scary because I, I always thought that was a concrete wall that um, that connected uh, other circuits up. So it's, it's not fantastic. But uh, apparently we have a little replay of what happened. So let's, uh, let's wait for that to, uh, to roll. And here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Newsham is going to get... Oh, we're hoping to see what was happening there. Newsham... Uh, we'll, we'll get that replay back up for you in a second. But what happens is that Newsham gets into Hutchison. That backs everything up. Smiley sees a gap on the inside. And I don't think that Hutchison on the outside realised that uh, Newsham had a car to the inside of him. Here we go again. See what you think, Paul. Yeah, so like you say, it was Hutchison, Callum, Newsham and uh, Smiley in the middle of your picture. So there's Newsham in the Norscott car. Smiley behind him. Wilson round the outside in the 31. The two Audis now come into play, but Hutchison gets tagged by yeah. Newsham, runs wide. Smiley thinks, I'll have a bit of that. I think by that time, Hutchison's come back across or into the side of yeah. Newsham. Oh. And, then, and then Hutchison in the blue Audi fires into the FL5 of, um, of Chris Smiley. And Chris Smiley goes off at unabated speed. Then you can see the contact... Oh that he's had um, oh, Callum Newsham. squeezed uh, through there. <laughs> well, that was only what you were saying at the, uh, at the beginning of the race. It just takes something like that to destroy your championship. The car can be fixed, but still, it's yeah. better to have uh, a problem at the end of race day uh, yes. than it is at the beginning of the day. You just lose treble points because you usually you know, panicking to get the car out. But yeah, real shame. There's the area. Um, boys and girls who run the car, Rob... Barker there on his phone, Rob Baker even, sorry. Rob Boston on the right of him from Rob Boston Racing and uh, a sorry Callum Newsham uh, Hyundai there. So, yeah, sad to see. And that, and that, that I think will be worse damage than we actually yes. think that car because yeah. it's had a big, big hit. And a sudden stop. It didn't bounce much further down the track, did it? It just sort of stopped when it hit the barrier. So, uh, yeah, that's a big shame. Two drivers who did not deserve that and yeah. who really needed a good result and both had a real chance to get one as well with their good grid positions. And uh, sadly, they end up with two bent race cars and uh, a big repair bill to get the cars back out on track for Donington next time. And I'm sure we will have them both back with us uh, for our penultimate round of the championship. So, red flag flies. Um, don't be alarmed at the chequered flag that is showing if you're watching on the live timing. Uh, that's just a, a quirk of the TSL timing system. It's not the end of the race. We will get a restart. Uh, we're just waiting for news of how long that restart will be. We've got plenty of time. If we wanted to re-rack them and do a full 25-minute race, we could do that. I, re I reckon we'll probably be looking at 20 minutes or so. Uh, but uh, we will, I'm sure, get the race back underway and hopefully not too much longer. Yeah, so that rear right on uh, on that Honda looking sorry for itself. I'd be very surprised if it was only a, a toe link on the right rear of that car, but it's knocked that um, it's knocked that scaffolding over where the, the marshals stand to wave the safety car and the flags. You can see there, um, and I'm hoping that nobody was. They, they wouldn't have been there. I would have thought for the start of the race because they don't need to really wave. Uh, they only re wave the green flag when it's the, the restart or something's happened in front of them and it's actually a green flag situation to wave. So hopefully no one was there. It looks like the three um, gentlemen down there are, are okay. So so let's um, let's do the wrong thing and assume that it's that it's all okay. Um, oh, okay. So that is for the barrier. They're going to yeah. pull that back up, aren't they? Not the barrier, the actual. Yeah, they, uh, it's had a big hit, that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. and it's moved, but I think they're going to try and move that scaffolding back up because oh, right. we cannot race without no. without that being stood up so the marshals can stand on it. But if lightning strikes twice, I would be moving marshals' posts. Yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's difficult, isn't there? Because the barrier is so far away from the edge of the road. You want the post to be as close to that barrier as possible so that it's as close to the track as it can be. But... Uh, 
A reminder, if ever we needed one, that uh, the marshals do put themselves in the line of fire for the good of the sport that they love. And uh, we cannot thank them enough for the work that they do. And uh, we're hoping that they'll now be able to assist the uh, track maintenance crews with getting this barrier back in uh, prime condition as soon as possible. In the meantime, whilst we're waiting, uh, let's head down into the pit lane then and catch up with Anthony Jordan. Cheers, boys. Yeah, a uh, very dramatic race there. Chris Smiley obviously bearing the brunt of that one, making heavy contact with the wall. So obviously that's the reason for the red flag marshals keeping an eye on that barrier. Uh, obviously, right next to us, we've got a sea of mechanics ready to go back onto the grid. And the reason for the delay is that there is actually a new grid that's being formed at the moment, I've just been told. So we don't actually know who is actually going to be starting where. Uh, with the red flag actually coming out on lap one, it, it does generally mean that there is a total restart of the race. Um, but right now, the guy's just sorting out that one uh we have got some people down here josh files just here josh I've, I've caught you out you made a comment earlier on uh have you got someone on speed dial um but uh <laughs> not the way we'd want to start the second race of the day though oh no it's not nice to see cars getting crashed um especially hard into the barriers like that so i hope chris is okay to get out which is always good um obviously our guys have made progress so we're happy about that um, but yeah, just it's always a bit tricky when you've only had a few laps of racing and like some of them are under safety car, what the grid will be. Yeah. Um, so in our opinion, at least they've completed three laps. It should just be starting where they are. Yeah. Um, but obviously, you never know what they're going to decide. No, exactly that. And hopefully for the, uh, the area team, you do get a better run in race two because, yeah, race one, we, we'll, we'll brush that one under the carpet, I think. I mean, yeah, our cars are fast and the guys are doing a great job. Um, but obviously, two leading cars having different issues isn't isn't great so um, obviously they're starting at the back they've already moved forwards they're only going to keep moving forwards which is good um, but yeah we just need to see what the grid looks like now yes, exactly <laughs> thank you very much uh, there uh, we've got a driver running towards us now that looks to me like Jack Constable running towards us. Uh, not sure what's happened to him I'm not sure he was uh, tangled up in anything out on track I want to see if I can quickly grab a word with him I refuse to run on camera um, but I uh, just want to see what Jack's saying. Um, oh, and, and he saw me coming and he ran off. That's understandable. Um, yeah, but uh, I can imagine he's absolutely sweating in there. Cars are making their way back onto the grid, so I think we're going to be given a green light to go back out on this one. But certainly not the best way to start uh, the second race of the grid. Reverse grids, they sometimes they can do that. You know, if you have those issues, uh, you know, faster cars coming through the back of the grid uh, certainly is an interesting one. Am I able to sneak on there? I mean, I'm not going to get run over, I promise. Uh, I think so. No, I think no. Right, OK, fine. I can't get on the grid. Just to, <laughs> shut up, you. Uh, mate, honestly, well, uh, boys, we get back up to you. I'll see if I can get on here in a uh, bit moment's time. <laughs> there is a TV show in here somewhere. Isn't it? Just <laughs> stick Anthony Jordan into an unfamiliar situation with a microphone and, uh, uh, and let have that's a just an, That's just an interview, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. Poor old Anthony. Uh, mind you, uh, he got you well and good last time and not oh. killed, so I think uh, he, he's allowed to be the butt of the joke a little bit this weekend. He had me a treat, didn't he? <laughs> he had me a treat. At least, um... oh, hang on a minute. That's not pole, is it? Uh, no, because Alex Lee is there, uh, and Alex Lee should have, on the original grid, was five rows behind Matthew Wilson. So they've gone, because we'd completed three laps, admittedly not all of them at racing speed, but we completed three laps, it's not the original grid, it's based upon the running order at the time of the red flag, I think, whereas if it's two laps or less, I believe we go back to the original grid. I honestly thought we'd not even completed a lap. Yeah, no, we were behind the safety car for a while. We oh, were. it's because the safety car has right. been out. That's why I don't race anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd like to think you know the difference between a safety car and a red flag. The drivers certainly need to. Mm. And, uh, yeah, you stick to your, your testing and development and driver coaching, Paul. I think <laughs> that's uh, for the best. Ooh, now, this is an issue there. Problem. Jack Constable's car not fired back up yet. It might be because he's not in the car yet, although he should have made it back by this point. Oh, um, there you go. They can't start it. No. That's why he ran up the pit uh, lane, because they couldn't fire it up. But... Can he now? Well, he can probably start at the back of the grid. Ah, here we go. They're letting they're letting all the teams go back onto the grid. That 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 to me looks. If they're doing that, that would say to me that this is going to be a completely new race. Uh, we still don't have a restart time on the uh, timing screen. The cars are under park firm air condition. 
That's but this, that, that would tell me now that that is a complete restart to a race. And the new grid that Phil Kinch has very kindly just sent over to me says 25 minutes on the top of it. So new race. Uh, we might be having, yes, but not from original grid positions, which is a little bit interesting. So the one person this really benefits because he had a demon first lap there, avoided all of the trouble, was young Alex Lee, 11th mm. on the original grid, third this time around. So Alex Lee with a genuine opportunity here. He's starting behind Scott Sumpton and Matthew Wilson. And, uh, well, uh, you're more likely to see a unicorn in the wild, I think, than you before you see Alex <laughs> Lee turn down the opportunity to fight for a win here. This is a genuine <laughs> chance for him uh, to kind of turn his season around a bit. He obviously got that win last time at Knock Hill. Didn't actually win it on the road, though, did he? After the contact that he had with Brickley and the penalty for uh, Bordley and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, this could be a real opportunity for him. Mm -hmm. uh, could we be. We shall see. Uh, right, anyway, uh, we will ponder that uh, whilst Anthony Jordan brings us something, hopefully, from the grid. Uh, something I hope I can bring you. Yeah, like we were saying, you were just looking there br briefly at the uh, the rim here on Alex Lee's car. It's just been chewed a little on the edge. It seems to be okay, but certainly not something you want to see. Uh, Alex Lee, obviously, with a, a, a lightning start on that one, he's jumped up several positions from the start on that one. Not sure if I could quickly jump a quick word with him. Alex, mate, you uh, nailed the start of that one. You managed to uh, get away with um, avoiding anything in front of you. Uh, you're now P3 with a uh, cracking look at turn one. How do you feel? Yeah, no, uh, feeling good. Um, yeah, just get a good start and then try to do the same again. So, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Yeah, see what you can do, mate. All right, I'll let you concentrate. I'll let you crack on. Uh, I've just had it uh, next to me. There'll be no tyre rotation lap, so these drivers will not be able to heat up all of their tyres. So that's going to make it a new challenge then uh, at the start of this race. They will be given the two green flag laps to get themselves sorted out. But crucially, no tyre rotation lap. That is going to make it a little bit more interesting. Guys, back to you. Yeah, that's not ideal, is it? They do like to have that tyre rotation lap, and it's that cold rear tyre, isn't it? There's always the concern in uh, cars like these, and uh, not having that chance to rotate them and evenly warm them up is going to be an extra extra challenge. That would that would tell me that they're not going to be long restarting this race, no. but Lewis Kent has just texted me, brother of Bradley Kent, and said to me that it's it, there's severe barrier damage down at the exit of Maggots and Beckett, which that last shot that we were on would tell me that, well, you don't need to be told that it's severe barrier damage if a Honda goes at it that's mm. weighing 1150 kilos at 80 mile an hour. It just depends how long it takes, because I think that's a, a very, if that's true, that's a very strange decision to not let them have um, tyre rotation. I mean, personally, this circuit is one of the quicker circuits to heat up all four tyres and not have a massive delta between the front axle and the rear axle and what I mean by that is the rear axle, the rear axle being a lot colder than the front because of the front wheel drive so I'm intrigued to see how long this takes because the cars will perform weirdly as Rick Kerry's car gets pushed off the grid uh, or perhaps into a correct grid slot. Maybe yes. he's not where he's supposed to be. You're right, be. that's what it is. Uh, yeah, they're moving, is that Darren Lewis? No, it's a Gen 2 Audi, that isn't it? They're moving ahead. So Rick Carey being pushed to the back because that's he's the supposed to be alongside Jeff Oldham. That's the cleanest overtake I've seen all day. <laughs> uh, yes, it's been a, a robust day of racing <laughs> here at Silverstone. Very entertaining to watch them. Uh, and uh, we are very much enjoying the action here uh, from Silverstone. And uh, yeah, the Barrier repair work done, which is excellent news as well. Still no news on the timing screen as to how uh, long this uh, repair is going to be. What have you spotted, Paul? Uh, no, we were... Um, thank you. I just got some Pringles off Paul Kinch, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. TCR UK. Um, do you want one? Oh, go on, mate. I saw Pringle. vinegar. How can I say no? That's what she said. Um, so there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Please and do. Andrew McEwen. One is that that's, that's four times you've full named me now. Mm. I really do feel like I'm in trouble. You're definitely in trouble. <laughs> um, so, yeah, two things. Firstly, we've just been told it is lightly spitting on the grid. Right. Which isn't too bad because this place is it's pretty warm. You can see there's a heat haze. So that rain will evaporate. But if they start putting their windscreen wipers on, that will be a challenge with no tyre rotation, so cold tyres. The other thing is as well, I'm sure I heard in my ears, and I hope I've got this right, there was a, a precautionary measure to take a marshal to the medical centre right. from that marshal's post. So okay. he walked, apparently, to the uh, to the ambulance, so we wish him the best, we wish her the best. 
Um, and yeah, we, uh, we hope that you're all okay. Absolutely so. So our uh, 71st TCR UK Championship race off to a dramatic start. Forgot to mention in all of the excitement of race one, that was our 70th race uh, that we were enjoying earlier on. And uh, Carl Bordley added his list, uh, his name to the list of drivers to have won a 10th anniversary race, if you like. Ash Sutton won the 10th back at Alton Park in 2018. Lewis Kent won the 20th, 30th, 40th, 50th and 60th races. Uh, and uh, Carl Bordley now, he passes that mantle on to. Uh, Lewis was hoping to get on the grid this weekend, actually, to continue that winning streak. Uh, wasn't quite able to find the budget to do so. But he didn't go winless this weekend, crucially, Paul, because he did beat Anthony Jordan in uh, a card game last night, I believe. Don't know what the stakes were, uh, but uh, Lewis came out on top, I believe. So he's, he's continued his winning streak in some ways. Strip poker. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to know, actually, what sort of card games uh, Anthony Jordan gets up to over Saturday evening. But uh, It was definitely strip poker. No, I think it might have been. I think it might have been. He does seem the type, doesn't he? Where was so, our invite? Uh, uh, that's what I thought this morning. That's, uh, yes, I, uh, I did have that very same question. Right, Phil Kinch is waving at us again. Race duration is 15 minutes. Thank you very much. 15 minutes Ooh. is the race duration. So, yes, they are going to uh, shorten it slightly. Understandable, because we have now been sat here for a little while. Had the barrier repair not had to be done, we probably would have gone back to a full 25 minutes. But it's going to be 15 minutes then when we do get going. So, uh, tyre management, not such an issue now as far as tyre wear is concerned. But mm. uh, a really short, sharp dash and an even greater sense of urgency for those with ground to gain. Yeah, definitely. They'll, they'll want to get on with this now. Um, and... Yeah, it, it, there's nothing worse than being sat on the grid and not knowing what's going to go on. And the Josh Files there will be telling Luke Sargent, you know, as much as he knows. And I'm just trying to listen in. Oh, Josh just stopped talking now, but he was actually... Uh, he was, Make it known what you want to do. Just sounded like he was trying to tell him about the start procedure. Um, Luke's in a very good car, well suited to this circuit. And, yeah. You know, if he keeps his nose clean, he could uh, he could pick quite a few spaces off in that car for sure. Yeah, well, he's going to be taking the restart in 12th position. So a top 10 finish could be his for the taking. Last saw him racing with us at Alton Park a couple of rounds ago. And he's got Bradley Kent right ahead. Brad Kent made some decent progress as well then from 17th, and he will restart in 10th position. So there were quite a few freebies to be gained weren't there i suppose as other people were fired off the road in front of them but uh, you've still got to stay out of that drama and uh, bradley kent able to do exactly that in the hyundai veloster that did win the uh, 50th and 60th races in the championship back in uh, 2022 in the hands of his older brother lewis kent there was carl baldy's car was that a bit of tape on the side of it that i saw it looked as though it was uh, uh, a little bit patched up maybe after uh, a bit of contact as uh, ash Callagher. It does his best to look important out there on the grid. Yeah, he was probably putting a phone bid in for some some obscure piece of memorabilia for some rubbish <laughs> football club that he uh, supports in Leeds. Oh, I see, I see. That's. Uh, do you know what, Ash, uh, apart from the fact that he doesn't mind being teased by us, which immediately means he, he fits right in with us all, great job he's done this year as uh, championship manager. I've got to say, I asked Stuart Lyons that exact question this morning and I said, you know, name me, my, name me your top three uh, things that have made yeah. a difference to this championship. And the first thing he mentioned was his team mm. and Dash Gallagher mm. and how he's come along and made made it look how it should be, branded very well. That's not branded very well. That's Jensen Brickett's car. And that would have been the damage from maybe Brad Hutchison when he maybe have got pushed mm. into the side of him from having... Um, I think it was either Jack Constable. Yeah, at Luffield. Yeah, at Luffield, yeah. yeah. So, sorry if I got all of that wrong, but Jensen was definitely the one on the outside that got fired. Yeah. Uh, but Brad has just, uh, to be fair, no fault of his own, Brad has just been sat there <laughs> trying to get around the corner with a car on each side. And sometimes you're dictated to, aren't you, by, um, by other by other drivers. No. I was going to say there's no damage on the front. There's a little bit of damage on the front, but considering the two decent hits that it's he got, had. It's got its tongue out. That looks like me on a Friday night. <laughs> Went up into the pub. Of course. Of course. Moving on. Uh, yeah, the front of that car, clearly in decent shape, actually, despite uh, the, uh, the particular contact he had with Chris Smiley and the damage it did to Smiley's car, because I think that the left rear corner of Smiley's car was broken by the contact with Hutchison. I think it's only the right side that's hit the barrier uh, and been damaged as well. There was damage to both right rear mm. corners of the Honda, and uh, given the size of the contact that he had with Hutchison there, I'm amazed the Audi uh, isn't looking a bit worse for wear, but it seems okay. There's a bit of... Uh there's a bit of movement. There's engines fired up. There's marshals saying what's going on. 
this should be okay. I'm still concerned about the... Um, I'm not concerned about the tyre rotation, but uh, if they get two green flag laps, which I think I haven't made up, yeah. that should be enough in my book. I've driven enough of these TCR cars that I know that even after one lap, you could have a proper go. It's just the high-speed corners. When you get to the edge of the, the left or the rear uh, right tyre, they start to really not like it. So, so we'll see what goes on. The teams leave the grid, and I have to remember, get off the grid before a particular time, or that's noted down by Marshall, yep. and then the driver will get a penalty. So hopefully everybody's got off the grid, and this should be a, uh, a cracking race. What do you find more dangerous, racing or my commentary? <laughs> I was going to say standing next to you before you'd even finished the question, so uh, I think we both know the answer to that. Uh, no one <laughs> feels quite safe when, uh, when you walk into the word room ball, but we like it. He keeps on our toes. We wouldn't have you any other way. Um, so as the uh, light begins to fade a bit here, we're getting into proper afternoon uh, now, late afternoon, quarter to five on an August afternoon here at Silverstone, and I think we're about ready to go racing again here at uh, Silverstone. Alex Lee for a race win. What do we think? He's got to be up for the fight. He's got to be. Uh, he's got to be. There's no... The way we've seen him do the first few laps. I mean, it's... I would. you know what I would love? I'd love to see Scott Sumpton um, yes. win this race. I really would because I think he's a lovely kid. I think he's done everything right today and he's been up and then down and then up and then back mm -hmm. down. So I would love to see him do well. But looking at it... I've got to say, Alex Lee ain't going to mess around, and no. he is going to be the one out of all the ones up front that's going to just drive as fast as he can. But Oliver Cottom's got a chance from P4. Yeah, true. I feel like we didn't see the best of Oliver in that first race because he got roughed up a bit. So did Sumpton, in fairness, early on, and then kind of lost touch with the leading group. If they can get away with the leaders this time, those two, I mean, Sumpton is on pole position, having grabbed the lead from Matthew Wilson on the initial start. Cottom gained uh, two positions from sixth to fourth. If they can keep that going, then you never know. A podium certainly is, is got to be on the cards for them. Alex Lee, though, will smell blood. All yeah. he's got is those two cars in front of him. And remember, saved his new tyres for this race as well. He told me that on the grid before race one. So he, uh, I'm sure the teams and other drivers perhaps have done the same thing. But new tyres definitely on the number uh, 76, Hyundai. Should explain that as well a bit, Paul. You probably know more about this than me. But they're limited, aren't they, on the number of tyres they can use over a weekend. They can't just throw a new set at the car every time it heads out on track. Yeah, exactly. You have an allocation of tyres and you have to... It's like you put them in a pool and you make sure that you evenly use them throughout the whole weekend with your two free practices uh, and also your qualifying and then your two races if it is a two-race weekend. So, yeah, you're just trying to spread the grip across the yeah. whole weekend. But some people throw their new tyres at it at the first race. Some people just stick, you know, fronts on for this race. So there is a bit of method in the madness. And, um, yeah, you'll find that the... The well-switched on teams will know how fast their car is on old tyres so yeah. they can just deal with the pain early on. Indeed so. Right there, deep breath, everyone. Let's try this again. A 15-minute restart for round uh, number 11 of the TCR UK Touring Car Championship. And it is Matthew Wilson, no, Scott Sumpton, excuse me, who starts at one pole position. Matthew Wilson alongside those two swapping places on the initial start of the race. And I think we can take a quick look at how they're going to line up then for the restart. So it's got something for restart racing uh, on pole for the restart with Matthew Hilson alongside him in the new shaped Cooper. Row number two then, we will find Alex Lee uh, on those fresh tyres and Oliver Cotton in his Paul Sheard racing Audi after a brilliant day already for the youngster. Can he cap it off with a podium finish? Joe Marshall and Brad Hutchison next to Hutchison, just hoping everyone stays away from him uh, on the opening lap of the restarted race. Uh, likewise, really, Jensen Brickley and then Jack Constable. Hopefully, they can get that car started and uh, he can get going from the outside of row number four. Then the championship leader, Carl Wardley, right in the danger zone, right in the middle of the grid. He did well to avoid the drama on the initial start. Has to do the same again now from Knight alongside Bradley Kent. And then we'll have Darren Wilson's Vauxhall Astra and Luke Sargent's Kende Elantra. And they will be sharing the sixth row of the restart grid. Row seven for Andy Wilmot. Bruce Winfield then gaining some ground, and he's got his wish of starting the restarted race from where he made his way up to. The same true of Adam Shepard. He's 16 alongside Gary Townsend on row number eight. Row nine for Rick Kerry and Jeff Oldham, uh, the Civic Cup graduate. Uh, and then Darren Lewis, hope, should be in position at the very back of the grid. So, around the field they will go. Isaac Smith is sat at home 
wishing he was racing these cars around Silverstone. You probably remember him in the uh, the Golf last year, giving uh, people. Oh, that right rear. Is that Brickley? Was, was that it, was that bodywork? No, or? I think it was the right rear just locked up. He's a left foot breaker, I think. I think yeah. he was just he just had a bit of. Uh, a, I think it was just a. A right rear lockup, sorry. Yeah, that was yeah. weird. I thought he'd blown something then. <laughs> yes. um, but yeah, Isaac Smith saying uh, he wish he was here. So um, do we. So do we, actually, mate. Yeah. Um, it's good to catch the other day when I was at Donington Park. Oh, OK, clutch has gone on Jack Constable's car, we are being told. That's why you would see it being bump-started by the marshals. I don't think the marshals would have been able to do that in the race now because they would have been in a bit of trouble for that but they'll be able to do it as a team from the pit lane so clutch is gone and that is massively a big problem but, but it wouldn't have been if we didn't have the red flag because once the car's left the line you should be okay right but yeah. uh, obviously now we're having to do a restart he needs that clutch again uh, to get the car moving so pit start for jack constable fourth in the championship jack constable and if we take carl bordley out of the equation it's very very tight bordley on 284 points now once the drop scores are calculated compared to 239 for bruce winfield 221 for brickley 218 for constable 217 adam shepherd 199 joe marshall and 195 alex lee and then it's a gap back to the rest so second back to seventh in the championship covered by only what 46 points or so with 40 points available for a race win we've got five races including this one still to go so uh, that is very close indeed for second on back and jack constable uh, right in the middle of that group the big question really is what progress can bruce winfield make and adam shepherd as well particularly winfield 45 points behind Wardley in the championship race it's really been about those two all season trading the lead a couple of times uh, through the middle of the year Bordley now really starting to assert himself, but Carl's only going to be one, two, three, four, five, six places ahead of Winfield now on this restarted grid, and that has to be Winfield's target as a bare minimum has to start taking points out of Bordley. Yeah, the, you can't, he cannot finish behind him now. No. He's got to. It's win or bust. I'll be dead honest. I think that you know Bordley got a bit, a bit funny with me when I asked him. To, <laughs> didn't ask him the question. I told him he was going to win the championship, and he was <laughs> not happy. Um, and rightly so, because it isn't over yet. But no. as a journo, we need to make sure we put them questions across. As you can see, Jack Constable sat there waiting. Um, you might wonder what those little creases are in the... Uh, you might be wondering what that, um, that crack is in the wind, windscreen. That actually is a crack in the windscreen. There's water on the floor. That is to let the... Um, well, they'd have to push it a bit further back, because basically they're trying to cause more slip. Um, when the car bumps so when that goes down on the jacks i would think they were going to push that back because it ain't going to help putting that water there basically they want the wheels to slip as easy as they can to fire the engine up so we're not probably going to see that to be honest but then again as soon as the car as soon as these cars are lined up andy they will because the last thing he'd be down at the bottom of the pit lane yeah. by now yeah. but they're going to have to time it so as soon as the lights go on i think they will they will probably drop yeah. him and fire him. So interesting little uh, thing they've done there, but they, that's not going to work. It needs to be as the car is running over the water, mm. being pushed. Absolutely. Leaves a gap on the grid now in front of Bradley Kent as well. See whether he can use that to move up and challenge Carl Bordley uh, on the run to the first corner. Here we go then, 15 minutes on the clock, a restarted race, and Scott Sumpton for restart racing is on pole position then. Can he net his first ever win in the championship? Well, no, in a quarter of an hour's time. There is Jack Constable, wheels spinning, ready to go. Off he goes now, off the rest of the field go, as the race gets back underway. Who's got the best of the stars from the front of the grid? Is it Wilson? Is it Sumpton? It should be Scott Sumpton, yes, who turns into the first corner first. Second, Wilson, third, Alex Lee, and Oliver Cotton in fourth. There goes the Audi, the Rob Boston racing team get the car underway. But Constable from the back of the field is one to watch. Now, Alex Lee challenging Matthew Wilson here for second place. Wants to get through as soon as he can. Succeeds in doing so, I think, going into Beckett's corner. Big oh. slide, and that's Joe, that's Joe Marshall around now. Wow, that's cold. That's a cold left rear tyre, unless it is a failure of some sort. Can't He can't fire it up because it's run backwards. Uh. And the engine, now I can hear it. He's trying to get his up, and that's Alex Lee for the lead. Brilliant move, Sumpton. Oh, go on. Oh, the no. contact. No, sideways goes Sumpton. Lee as well. That was really unfortunate. Scott Sumpton muscled down the order. Adam Shepard there comes up alongside him. He's almost out of the top 10, I think, behind Bruce Winfield. Jack, uh, Joe Marshall gets going again. That's good news. No need for a safety car. But Alex Lee wanted to get the lead as soon as he could. I know you've only seen it once, Paul, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, all that was really was that cold 
right rear tyre into Brooklands. He would have got away with that four laps in, but no, it's not happened for him. Carl Bordley's fourth, Paul. Carl Bordley is in fourth place already, ahead of Jensen Brickley, ahead of Brad Hutchison, he's cleared as well. He has made brilliant progress up the field, and as they head down towards Beckett for the second time, let's hope that they've all got some temperature in those rear tyres. Things look good this time. Lee the leader, Wilson second, Cotton now perhaps, uh, the best chance of adding a new name to the winner's list, whilst further Brad, Brad Kent is up alongside Brad Hutchison as they head down towards Brooklands. Yeah, good. Look at that. There's a lot of wipers action going on, isn't there? Yeah. So, you know, and that's the leader that's got the wipers on, but nobody else I can see has got the wipers on, to be honest. But uh, there couldn't be any fluid coming out of anyone's car because he is in the lead. But uh, going back to Sumpton, I, I think he'll be aggrieved, but I've got to say that wouldn't have happened if he tried to go around the outside three or four laps later on because he'd have had the grip if someone had tagged him. So... Interesting. We'll see how that gets on. I'm just a bit gutted for him because he had the pace. Yeah, really gutted. Really, really gutted that for uh, Scott Sumpton. But what can Oliver Cotton do? He's wow. on the tail of Matthew Wilson. He's he in it. Here's Wilson quickly. He might feel confident about going after Alex Lee, whose windscreen wipers keep on coming on and then back off again. But a psychological rain, maybe, as they head towards Beckett's corner once again. Uh, Jeff Eldon's uh, Opal Astra in the pit lane going no further. But look, it's Constantine together at the front of the field. And Carl Ward, the points leader, about to find himself in a position he doesn't really want to be in. He's quicker than the cars ahead. He's got a very fired up group of drivers behind oh. him and he's going to get stuck in the middle. Now that's the second and third, fourth car I've seen with wipers on. So Hutchison now down the inside. Or is that Winfield trying to go round the outside? That's a great move. Winfield getting it done. We'll see what happens next. But um, yeah, windscreen wipers are on a bit. I'm looking at the comms box. I can't see anything. I can't see it being enough. It's too warm on the tarmac. And there's blue sky, I think, coming towards us as well. So we should just about get away with this. But it's certainly enough to make the race leader think about this. Here comes Cotton. Meanwhile, up the inside of Matthew Wilson for second place. And he does it at Cotton's on, corner. Boy. Oliver Cotton into well second. Done. And Alex Lee is not really getting away at the moment. So if Cotton can fend off this uh, retaliation attempt from Wilson, he might yet be able to go after the race leader. Onto the brakes, into Beckett's Cotton to second. Brilliant. Brilliant stuff that from Cotton. Really now starting to look like a proper tin top driver. Bordley does not need to be driving into the back of Matthew Wilson. Kent is looking up to his old tricks. He's down the inside of Brickley, but that's going to be the outside. But look on the right hand side of your screen. That's Sumpton trying to attack uh, Brad Hutchison. That'll be round the outside as well. It's getting a bit tight up front. Oh, Brickley almost into the back of Bordley, who had to fight a rear guard action there. He was slow off Beckett. He's slow into Luffield as well. Bordley struggling, and yeah, well spotted. Look who has arrived at the party. Adam Shepard, and in fairness, not far behind him, Bruce Winfield from the back of the original grid. And they can see a chance maybe to get into podium contention before the end. Four minutes in, 11 minutes still to go. Game on at the front, and Oliver Cottom is quicker than the race leader. Whoa, this is hotting up. This is hotting up. This will be so interesting. Look at that cloud over the top of Silverstone. This is getting really interesting. Oliver Cottom now second place with his headlights ablaze. Your time is now, lad. You've got to start pulling your finger out. Let's have this one. Why not? Let's give it a go. He's quicker than Alex Lee. He's quicker than Matthew Wilson. He is the fastest car, really, in that lead group right now. And he needs to take advantage of the moment. Down the back straight. He's closing, closing all the time on the Hyundai. Doesn't jink out of the slipstream. Brad Kent does further back. A oh! contact. Around goes the championship leader, Carl Morley, after contact with Jensen Brickley, who I think was distracted by a challenge from Brad Kent behind him. Bordley is OK. He's carrying on but another example of how quickly your look can turn wow well he's down to 11th or 12th place now and that's not where he wants to be look at that marauding pack behind him wilson is there as well look at the rear down Ugh. that's interesting will that come off on its own or will he get the mechanical flag he could be out of this race completely i hope not i hope it just gets gone but now Alex Lee's really struggling with his wipers. His wipers have stuck on. That'll be brilliant dynamically, aerodynamically. But Cottom has really got it. And Wilson's now starting to get back in the mix. This is an absolute barnstormer. Down the back straight, they will go then. And as they uh, head towards Brooklyn's corner, are we going to see another move? Maybe, maybe this time by Oliver Cottom. He's flashing the lights at Alex Lee, trying to brilliant. force a mistake out of the star of last year's championship, really, Alex Lee. He was a winner on his debut season in the championship can oliver cottom repeat the feat he is right behind him meanwhile the area motorsport hyundai is also running nose to tail as they try to continue their forward progress yeah this is absolutely great stuff really is and shepherd is now starting to come of age he's up to sixth place and this is going to be great for the lead bradley kent fastest lap yeah. 58 6 
Cottam is now attacking for the lead. I will be very surprised if he's not touching his bumper going down to Maggot and Beckett's. Look at the front two. Lee is going to have to get in and out of Maggot and Beckett's as quick as he can because that Audi that is behind that hatchback is aerodynamically a better car. Get in that toe. Oh, the exit was just not good enough. And that Hyundai's got some low down grunt. That just pulls it out and pulls another car length. The other Hyundai, the uh, Veloster into third place now. That's Bradley Kent, clear of Matthew Wilson. He's now going to be setting sail after these two. Whilst Bruce Winfield in the background attacks his teammate, Adam Shepard. That is for sixth position. Oh. Who came out on top? They're still side by side. And there might have oh, been a touch. No! There was a touch. Bruce Winfield and Adam Shepard, the teammates, have collided. And there's damage oh, no! to Shepard's car. Damage uh, to the left rear corner. Adam Shepard will be furious. Oh, this could Cause more oh, carnage for Bordley. Bordley's now involved with Hutchison round his outside. He needs to get out of all of this. This is a disaster. It's really turned on its head. We said it could do, or you did. I was unconvinced. And Adam Shepard, I mean, how much bad luck can one person have? Uh, but doubly disappointing that it's his teammate that he's tangled with. That is the big no-no of motorsport. And annoyingly for him, Winfield seems fine. He's carried on with not a scratch on his car. And he's got his championship rival right behind him. This is a big, big battle in this race. Bruce Winfield has to try and outscore Carl Bordley and then argue the toss with first of all the clock of the course and then with the area motorsport team after the race he's got a few questions to answer i think but right now his priority is beating Bordley. bradley kent can win this race absolutely he can win this race hutchison again in the mix he's got wilson in the astro round the outside but uh, hutchison getting away with that but look at this now winfield and the rear of uh, um Bordley's car does not look healthy. I mean, it's not going to help aerodynamically. That's a big hit. That is an interesting place to be hit. A really interesting, in fourth gear into Brooklands. A long way back on the That's, car, isn't it? It's a it? long way yeah. back on the car, mate. More windscreen wide for action. Bradley Kent's coming. This is it. This is it. It's a three-way for the lead. Bradley Kent, is he going to have a go at the inside? Thinks about it, thinks about it. Cotton wants to oh, shut the door, him. lose his rear grip. Cotton, a bit of a bobble on the way in. And that's all the opportunity that Bradley Kent was looking for. He's three into second place. And could Bradley Kent claim a victory? Now, here comes that group, that traction from the Audi, though. And Cotton comes right back at him. This is brilliant news for Alex Lee, who immediately started starts to build a bit of a buffer. Who will get second place, though? <laughs> Cotton on the inside. Kent to go right round the outside. If Cotton leaves in space, that might just work. He's off the track. Bradley Kent bounces back on. He's got the inside for Luffield corner, and he will brilliant. go through. Absolutely brilliant. I've got to take my hat off to both drivers. I hate seeing big contact. There was none of it. Yeah. Oliver Cotton was very, very nice there. He lives to fight another day. He lives to be on the podium, and the straight line speed of that is not over yet, but if you can get on the podium, it'd be brilliant. But look at Wilson as well. Yeah, Wilson is lit. Sticking with them, isn't he? Nicely. Jensen Brickley in play as well. So four of them together. But Alex Lee is suddenly one second up the road. On the previous lap, uh, he was a full half a second quicker than these two cars behind because of their battling. Bradley Kent looked like he was, he was out of shape. Uh, very late on the brakes, wasn't he? Oh, he's oh! Off! No! Bradley Kent off into the gravel trap. The car just didn't want to slow down into uh, Beckett. And the Velosta is in the barriers. Game over for Bradley Kent. Oh, that's an awkward one for the safety team to that could be a safety car because the, it's in the gravel and we can't get the driver out unless he jumps over uh, the other yeah. side good point ah uh, they're gonna they've got a big call now i hope they get it right because that could ch put this race on its head but now let's forget bradley is out this race cotton an absolute heroic performance for paul sheard racing Dave had a lot going on, and this is great to see that Audi flying here at Silverstone. Brad's out of the car. That's good news. So maybe they can cover that under yellow flags. He is absolutely fuming, but that looked almost like a failure or a stuck throttle or something, didn't it? The car just wouldn't slow down. Yeah, it it's straight out. You just caught it going out of shot, all out of shape. It looked like the rear's locked. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I don't know if the front axle wasn't working under brakes as efficiently, but it just didn't stop, did it? And talking about not stopping, this is a big charge for Carl Bordley, and this will be interesting to see how this scrap ends, because it looks like that rear diffuser... Oh, God, looks like you're not. DRS. <laughs> it does, he's got good straight line speed, in fairness, and uh, Bruce Winfield defending as if his life depends on it. Maybe his championship does. It's the fifth place in the race, but it's an opportunity here for Winfield to at least get some oh. points back right above the kerb, goes Bordley, getting stuck into a battle that he doesn't really need to be having. Oh, no! Touch through the field corner. This is getting spicy. Yeah, that shows you how annoyed Carl Bordley oh. is, and it's it's big hits now. It's it's a big hit on that uh, left rear of Bruce Winfield. That could have knocked the toe out, but 
more to the point the right front of Bordley. Bordley's had enough of being pushed around and you've got to pick your fights, mate. You're only sixth and that will do. You've just got to bring her own. Especially since, okay, he's battling with Winfield here, but Brickley is third. Brickley could still win this race or at least move at one place into second. Even if he's third, he's outscoring Carl Bordley. Bordley cannot afford to end up getting fired off into a gravel trap here. Uh, we've seen already Bruce Winfield not afraid to get his elbows out in this race. And Bordley's under no pressure from behind. He could quite happily sit there, bank the points, but he's not that kind of driver, is he? Exactly. Well, he only knows one way, and that is flat out, and that comes from short ovals, and that comes from other tin tops and junior formula. I tell you, Bruce Winfield's really struggling now. He is really struggling in that Hyundai, and it does look like Bordley is trying to get some kind of switch back and get underneath him. Just can't get close enough. Winfield's placing the car nicely, isn't he? He's holding out from hitting the throttle out of the corner, just rolling through a bit slower than Bordley, blocking that switch back route, and then making sure that he defends into the next braking zone, almost a bit of a squeeze across the timing line there just under three minutes of the race still to go and Bruce Winfield hanging on now at the front of the field on the previous lap Oliver Cotton was three tenths quicker than the race leader the gap is 1.3 seconds can he get there he might just run out of time Paul yeah oh, I tell you Lay is, is leaving smoke behind from either a, a locking right rear that's up in the air as it cocks its leg uh, round Maggot and Beckett. Cottom's catching him. Has oh. he got enough time? He's taken on this lap alone, Paul, about half a second out of Alex Lee in the first two sectors. It's a good lap, this, from Cottom. Yeah. Oh, and, oh big sideways from the race leader then. Yeah. He really is under pressure. That car's starting to run out of tyres. How many laps have we got left? Two, two and a quarter minutes to go. We're going to get at least two more laps out of this. They're lapping underneath the one minute mark, remember? We could get three more. And is, is there enough time for Cotton to get there? And if he does get there, can he find a way through? A 59.2 for the leader. Call that 59.3 and a 59 flat for Cotton. Three tenths gain. But look, Brickley hounding Cotton as well. He's spurring the youngster on and they are both gaining on the leader. Yeah, watch this now. Watch the race leader. You'll see a, a trail of smoke as we go into Maggot and Beckett's. It's not happened this lap, so he's got it a bit cleaner on the way in. It was it was locking fronts and rears, and, and that the only thing that's helping this car to stay in the lead for Alex Lay is the actual grunt and the low down power of that Hyundai. So his windscreen wipers are completely broken now. Look in the background, Winfield and Bordley have backed themselves up. Oh, uh, Bordley's lost a place. Hutchison's gone through, look. And is that Daryl Wilson alongside? What's what, happening for Bordley? What's going on here for Bordley? Bordley is in the slow. middle. He's in the middle of the track, and there's no reason for him to be. Has he got an overheating issue? Well, he's been took right behind Winfield, hasn't he, for a number of laps. That is a possibility, but all of a sudden, three places lost, a whole host of championship points going begging. Has Carl Bordy got a problem that's going to prevent him finishing the race? Ah, oh, that car hasn't got a straight panel on it. Everything's <laughs> flapping around. He looks like he's back in it. Lights are flashing, so that would tell me that he... something's happened yeah. at Maggots and Beckett's that he's not really oh, it's, impressed it's about. Pace. It's a bodywork rubbing. There might have been a bit of smoke there, but he's off the pace in a straight line, isn't he? Mm, that's interesting. I, I, it, there's a lot going on on that car at the minute. It's not aerodynamic, and this is an aerodynamic track. So, so yeah, there's definitely something going on for Bordley. Let's just hope he can bring it home because he's now down in ninth place. It's not the end of the world, but it's not. Uh, it's not ideal. Oh no! Oh no! Oliver Cottom! Oliver Cottom slows from second place, the penultimate lap of the race, and the fairy tale comes crashing down around him. What a shame for Oliver Cottom. His race may well be run as well. He's got what's going on? The car sideways and off the pace pool. Oh, it's something is not something is not right. What? Leaking fluid? The only thing he's straight in the piss, the only thing I can say is he's lost it. Don't know if it sounded like he was misfiring. When he turned then, it was like it's as if he couldn't get. Sounds like the anti-lag or something is on that car. There's a lot of cracking and banging, I think, and that, that would tell me that that it's actually... He couldn't get on the power to straighten the car up, so it's a power thing. Oh, that's such a horrendous thing. He does not deserve that. Paul Sheard Racing don't deserve that. What a shame for Oliver Cotter. Brilliant news for Jensen Brickley, uh, because he inherits second position, and Matt Wilson on the podium. Now, Matthew Wilson on the podium in the past. I seem to recall him having won the podium finish, maybe. We'll get the stats man to check that, but this would be a fantastic result for him. Heartbreak for Cotter, but Alex Lee looks as though he's going to claim his second victory of the season in a dramatic afternoon of racing here at Silverstone. The national circuit has delivered and then some, and it's going to deliver a race victory then for Alex Lee. It is his fifth career win, and it is a really important one in the championship. Alex Lee victorious at Silverstone. Second place, Jensen Brickley. Good points back there. And Matthew Wilson gets on to the podium. That is a real 
feel good story. I don't believe yeah. that Matthew Wilson has uh, ever had a podium before. He, I think he has, but he got it took off him at Castle right. Tomb. You're right, I think that's oh, absolutely it. So Oliver, Matt Wilson first podium, heart rate for Cotton. Oliver Cotton walking off distraught. Paul Sheard there with the red armband on. That will be absolutely just the most difficult thing to take. He drove like a true hero today. That was some proper stuff. But Alex Lee, brilliant from him. I mean, have we got to pick a driver of the day? We have. I was about to bring this up. <laughs> there are quite a few contenders. I'm sort of tempted by Cotton because that drive in race two was magnificent. He had the pace to win that race, no doubt about it. Didn't really put a foot wrong, and I've not seen him with getting involved in any argy-bargy, really, in either of the races where other drivers perhaps have. Uh, it has been a good day uh, for Jensen Brickley, although he was getting involved in some incidents earlier on, wasn't he? So I don't know what your thoughts are, Paul, but uh, a couple of contenders, maybe. Tell you what, I'll give you a moment to think about that whilst I run through the results. Alex Lee with his fifth career TCR UK victory and 40 lovely championship points going his way. Jensen Brickley likewise scores well in second place with Matthew Wilson getting a first career podium. We thought for a while it might be Scott Sumpton, then we thought maybe Oliver Cotton would do it but Matt Wilson gets his first podium in TCR UK competition Bruce Winfield fourth from the back of the grid classy drive that apart from the contact that he had with his teammate Adam Shepard Brad Hutchison finishes in fifth place ahead of Daryl Wilson who just keeps sneaking these good results in through the mid part of the season Andy Wilmot seventh on his return ahead of Carl Bordley eighth limping home in eighth position with some sort of a drama Scott Sumpton in ninth and Luke Sargent makes the top ten in the Elantra then it's Jack Constable Joe Marshall Gary Townsend and Rick Kerry with Oliver Cotton retiring to the pit lane near the end, Bradley Kent with some sort of issue up at Beckett's that sent him firing off the road. Adam Shepard had contact with his teammate that forced him to retire. Uh, excuse me, and Jeff Alden retired to the pit lane in the Opal Astra. Right then, we need again to have a lie down. We also need to try and uh, do some maths and work out what that all means uh, for the championship. And uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping in a moment we'll be able to head down uh, to Anthony Jordan to have a chat uh, with our podium finishes. Where to start with these interviews? So many storylines to cover. Uh, but what a brilliant drive under pressure that was from Alex Lee. Yeah, massively under pressure. And he probably looked in his mirrors and thought, oh, it must be uh, Joe Marshall or Jack Constable. But little did he know, until it got closer, it was actually the green-fronted Audi RS3 LMS TS, uh, TCR of Oliver Cottom, and that was an absolutely astounding drive today. And uh, Alex Lee has never worked harder, I don't think, for a, for a race win, so it's something we're used to seeing of him. Um, and he's he's got it uh, he's got it down to a T, this one. This is proper stuff. He, talking to the team, making sure everything's OK. He needs to get his helmet painted, um, as Anthony... Jordan now ready to rock and roll with uh, with the interviews and Josh Files coming in for a cuddle. You did well, mate. Well done. And it was an exceptional, exceptional uh, drive by Alex and uh, Jensen Brickley as well, doing a fantastic job. But Matthew Wilson, a special mention to you, Nick Beaumont, running you and JW Bird motorsport doing a great job no absolutely absolutely and not just in this championship in lots of other club level championships as well uh, in the uh, country they are a prominent force there's alex's dad uh, and uh, well in amongst all of the activity down there you can see him poised and ready to go uh, to chat to our podium finishers is anthony jordan anthony over to you thank you very much boys what a race that was tcr uk once again never fails to deliver alex mate yeah. Well done, well done. What a drive, mate. Mate, that was a good one. <laughs> 11th to first. Like, yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, over the moon. You got, a, uh, obviously, brilliant start on the first go. Obviously, red flag came out. You started the uh, next one from P3. You had the opportunity. You got the move done on Sumpton going into Brooklyn's. And, mate, you just kind of controlled the race from there. Yeah, that's it. Quality laps, like, on and on and on. Um, the pressure was on. Um, managed to come out on top, so I'm really happy. Yeah. Where's your check? Where's your big check? I don't know. You've you been giving it yet. Where's his check? Oh, no, we haven't got it. Right, mate. Well, still, nice chunk of change you got going towards you there. But, uh, mate, congratulations. Thank you, mate. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Alex Lee there, brilliant uh, job for him. Right, look at the damage to this, the front damage to uh, Jensen Brickler's wagon. That, that's, uh, that's taken a hit, mate. Jensen, hey, that was uh, a race. That was a race. Um, what can you take away from it? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with P9 to P2, but I'm not happy with what happened with Cole because I don't know what it looked like on TV, but I felt like it was something that wasn't intended because 
me and Brad were side by side and we were out breaking each other and Carl was slower and yeah. he stopped in front of me. I didn't expect it and I had nowhere to go because Brad was on my inside and obviously if there's anyone that I don't want to take out, it's my Cooper teammate and yeah. I don't know, I, I hope he's not too angry with me because I didn't mean it at all but it's one of them things I suppose, it's racing, we're close racing and little things like that happen but I don't think he got talked completely out so he can't be too mad about it but yeah, if I think, like, like I said on the uh, commentary a minute ago, if I thought anyone of my teammate, it would be Carl because we do share data and we've like helped make the car better with each other and helped each other out and yeah, so I'm not happy about that but the result's good. Well, in all honesty, mate, from the look from the, the broadcast, it looked like you were having a fight with Brad. And, yeah, it was just unfortunate for the incident, mate. So uh, don't feel too bad about it. But a P2, still a solid result. And uh, after the issues you had with all the gearbox oil coming out, luckily you got that fixed for that. Yeah, there's still some coming out, actually. But, yeah, again, we had a good race, calm, waited for people to fall off in front of me. Didn't make any rash moves apart from, obviously, what happened at the end of the back straight. But, yeah, we picked a couple off and made some good progress. Honestly, wicked job, mate. Well done, Jensen. Enjoy that one. P2 for uh, Jensen Brickley there. Matthew Wilson, though, coming away. Matthew, well done, mate. Podium. Nice work. No, cheers. Over the moon, yeah. Finally got that first podium and rectified after Castle Coombe last year. Yeah. So, and it was all in a plan to get that reverse grid pole. Yeah. <laughs> it was that in the, it was that the plan, was it? That was in the plan. That's what I wanted to go for. First race, make sure I at least got 10th or higher. Yeah. So it gave us the best shot for race two. Definitely so. Still a very exciting race on that one as well. The start, obviously, a tense moment when you go out first lap. There's a red flag. You've got to reset. You've got to reset the mind. And from you, it was OK. You just cracked on. Yeah, it was very tense. It was getting very hot. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it had more confidence in the car because the tyres were hotter. But obviously, there was a bit, a bit of a shower halfway through, which kind of mixed it up. So no, it was, it was good racing. A lot, very close, close racing. Certainly a very enjoyable one, and uh, I'm sure you can celebrate with the team uh, tonight. And, of course, uh, yeah, enjoy some nice uh, podium time. Uh, no, thank you very much. Cheers. Excellent, mate. Well done. Matthew Wilson there taking that one. Uh, Mr. Wilmot, who's uh, been brought over here. Mr. Wilmot, I'm guessing that means you've won some form of trophy. The old man's trophy. The old man's trophy? Yeah. You're not an old man, are you? Yeah, over 40. Oh, yeah. mate, I wouldn't have called that. I wouldn't have called that. Uh, mate, well, your first time back uh, in a while in the, uh, in the Cooper. How did it go? It was all right. Yeah. yeah, it was all right. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, it was tough, that race. It was really, really tough. Um, the, the, I know the setup seemed a little bit different to the last race, and I just could not, I just couldn't get as quick as I, couldn't go as quick as I wanted to. I'd done a couple of desperate lunges, and I managed to make them stick, but trying to get past Darrell and the Astro was just impossible. He was, it, it wasn't even so much he was defending, he was just driving well and fast. Yeah. Um, and every time I thought I could do a lunge, Hutchinson in front, he was... Block, uh, he was defending, so couldn't get through. But yeah, all in all, I'm happy. I didn't think I'd walk away with the old man's championship, a uh, trophy, should I say, because because uh, of Baldley, and he's rapid. But he fell back and managed to do, be uh, one position in front. So yeah, I'm happy. Weekend back and you come away with a nice bit of silverware, mate. Well done, mate. Yeah, it was worth all the money, yeah. It was, yeah, 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 of course it is. Yeah. Mate, well done. Cheers. Congratulations with that one. Andy Wilmot then taking the old man trophy, we'll call it that one. Goodyear Diamond Trophy, uh, I believe it is. Uh, well, uh, only one more race to go of the day. TCI UK here, round 10 and 11 wrapped up. And, uh, yeah, it's certainly been a good one. Don't go anywhere, though, because there is one more race to go. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with the last race of the day. Side by side, who's going to be the bigger man? Oh! 
big off. The voice and data solutions at speeds that are simply out of this world. Choose Maximum Networks. Do you wonder why your competitors' websites appear in Google searches ahead of you? Then make a call to the SEO experts Woya and understand how your business can be more visible online. As the official marketing partner of TCR UK, you can now work with a trusted search engine optimization partner to increase web traffic, inquiries, and sales. Speak to us for your free audit and quote by visiting woya.co.uk today. Welcome back everyone to Silverstone. I think we've all had a little bit of a chance to catch our breaths after a very dramatic um, second race of the weekend for the TCR UK Championship. But we've got one more very special race still to bring you. It is the SW Motorsports Club Sport Trophy. 45 minutes, mandatory pit stop in the middle. A lot of uh, cars being shared by two drivers, but some drivers are going it alone. And it is the David May Nissan 370Z that heads the field ahead of the uh, number 29, Matthew Bolton, driven uh, BMW M3 alongside, but a great variety of car uh, sharing this particular grid and uh, over 45 minutes with that pit stop strategy to be thrown in as well. Should be a really, really interesting race. We've got uh, actually an it's a missing car, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I was noticing that. That's uh, so we don't have the Bolton and Dunmore BMW by the looks of it. It's just you? as well because I didn't have the name of the second driver anyway. Well, no, we never did get <laughs> to the bottom of that. No, so uh, right, okay. So Luke Handley is the one you can see the Audi uh, popping up there. Looks like he's second on the grid, but he's actually fourth on the grid. Back end of the field starting to. Uh, pull into position for a two by two standing star, which when you've got a mix of front wheel drive and rear wheel drive cars, cars with a lot more power than others as well, mixed up and down the grid, uh, can sometimes lead to a fairly congested run through the first corner. Uh, so stand well back, everyone. Let's hope for the best. It is David May, former BMW Compact Cup star, who starts from pole position as we get ready to get our final race of this TCR UK weekend underway. Red lights go on. Out they go now. And the Nissan will try to lead them down to the first corner. Scott Park in there making a good start in his Audi that he's already had a couple of races in with the Welsh Sports Saloons. But it might be the other Audi that leads them through Cobb's corner. Luke Handley there getting on the inside of David May and challenging for first position, so taking full advantage of that empty space on the grid in front of him. And it may well be Luke Handley that has the advantage. He's up the inside line, onto the brakes, into Beckett's, but David May just about manages to hang on. Around the outside now comes Scott Parkin, and let's hope they all keep it together on cold tyres through Beckett's corner, while David May ran wide, and Handley might now reach and have another chance to get alongside him. I'm cheering on the Fiat Panda at the back, mate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two driver Fiat Panda, that's the one. Yeah. But yeah, sorry, yeah, well caught on the start, absolutely spot on. And these are brilliant races, aren't they? Yeah. I've usually been doing pit lane for these, and absolutely manic when you get into that pit window opening, and um, yeah, really, really good action. You can do it one driver or two driver, as, as you've oh. said. Oh, no. That is the 37 car, which is Jeremy Evans. Issue. Jeremy Evans and Phil Hart, yeah. We don't know who started, do we? Normally, it's Ooh. the first, first driver on the timing sheet. Uh, yes, that often is the case. But not always. Not always, no, exactly. <laughs> uh, someone's been through the gravel there. It might have been Owen Hillman in the on the Civic, possibly wide through the field. I think they uh, managed to rejoin. The Panda comes through. It's passed a few cars. And that's uh, Seat sliding around at the back of the field. I noticed came into the pit lane on the end of the green flag lap. And it dies for the pit lane again at the end of the full, first full racing lap. Right then, David May leads the way. Ferez Billamoria is up into second place in the VW Scirocco. And then you've got Luke Hanley, the red Audi in third. Scott Park in was fourth, but have been overtaken by the uh, triple seven leader people. That is the Mark Jones car. So again, it's showing us having a second driver that we weren't initially aware of. The Mini is in, number 155. It's uh, Matt Mills and Nicole Drought. And uh, their Change of driver on that one, by the way. Oh, is that? Yeah, it is, if I can find it on the... 28th on the grid, though. Georgia, Georgia Speed. 
instead ah. of Nicole Drought. Sorry, it's one of the updates that uh, I managed you. to find. Uh, yes, yeah, so you have the luxury of being allowed out of the <laughs> yeah, box at some point, which uh, sadly is not a luxury afforded uh, to me. But uh, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, any further updates, uh, much appreciated. Right then, David made to Perez Billamoria. One second then the gap. Handley in third, fourth for the Jones and Rogers golf. Then Scott Park in ahead of the Ryan Bensley and Josh Cook on the Civic. Don't know who's in that car for the opening stint either. Ryan Bensley. So it is Ryan Bensley, yeah. right, okay. So if he can sort of stay in the lead group, you imagine Josh Cook should be able to really get the maximum out of that car in his stint later on. And that could be a real contender, certainly for class honours and maybe for an outright podium. Yeah, absolutely right. The uh Nissan and the Sirocco, though, I think we're set for a little bit of a battle here. I thought Ferro's was a, a wee bit un, under par yesterday by his standards. He's always a, a, a serial winner in these. Last year took quite a few wins and uh, he's taken some this year as well. And well, he's going to give David May a good run for his money. Ferro's, believe it or not, raced Ascar. Do you remember back in the day? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. I don't heard that name somewhere before. Yeah. He popped up in the yeah. Top Sport Trophy. So, uh, very rapid driver, isn't he? Now, there is the Subaru BRZ which is not Subaru's take on a Toyota GT86. I was educated earlier on. All Subaru right. came first before the Toyota, uh, but uh, they are the same car, essentially, just with a different badge uh, on them. Very good-looking car, and uh, it is uh, running reasonably well, actually. The Subaru up in 10th uh, position at the moment. It's the number 36 car of uh, Elliot Dunmore. And uh, Elliot hanging on to the top 10, and he runs within Class B. Should point out, again, if you weren't with us qualifying earlier on, some different classes to compete in. So even if you are in a Fiat Panda uh, that has no realistic chance of winning the race outright, you still have a Class 2 race in. The Fiat Panda uh, is entered into uh, Class... The time screen will tell me. Uh, e. So that's in the same sort of class as the Mazda 2s and the uh, Mark 1 Mazda MX-5s as well. So some of the less powerful cars. Uh, but even if you're not right at the sharp end, you've got a class victory perhaps to try and fight for. So the different colours on the timing tower of the numbers denote classes. The white number background, that's class A. The pink is B. Uh, the yellow for Jonathan Hunter, that's class C. We've got the red further back there for the number 150 car. That's uh, class D. And then uh, the other class is class, well, the other class is class E, which as I just mentioned, uh, is a little bit further down the order. So we'll try and keep you posted on class positions uh, as the 45 minutes goes on. It's the 155 Mini having a bit of a chase, Jordan Hunter. The other changes that we can tell you is the uh, 150 Cooper S was down as Stevens and Stevens, but it's just Stevens on his own, Andrew Stevens. Oh, okay. And the triple seven VW Golf, which starts up towards the front, is Anthony Anthony Rogers and Mark Jones. Okay. I think that's as far as we got with changes. That's pretty much all of them, I think, from the from the bulletin. So we know who's here. What we didn't know was who was uh, who was starting most of them. So we'll we'll guess and we'll find out on the podium anyway. So, so down across the line come some of the stragglers in the uh, lower classes. There's the number 11, uh, Barry Cully, the Goblin Racing Car. And I'm not dreaming this, I don't think, Richard, but I remember Martin Cully in particular uh, racing in the original Seat Leon Championship on the Toka package back in oh, around about 2003 or four. I think the first yeah, start. Yeah, rings Some Clios as well, I think. Yeah, that uh, rings a bell. Around that time. Martin and Barry Cully in a pair of those Seat Leons, which would make sense. Now, this is a pretty tasty battle. Look, Scott Parkin uh, up alongside the Jones and Rogers Golf, and that is fourth place. Yeah, Parkin. Well, of course, he's had a little bit of testing, hasn't he, around here today already yes. in the Welsh Sports and Saloons. He was disappointed, as we heard in the interviews with Anthony, not to have more compatriots from this, maybe going in the, in the Welsh, but a lot of people just happy to get their 45-minute race. Golf's going to have a little go back, so we're going to see a, a change of position. But this typifies what this is all about, doesn't it? You know, plenty of people to race with and huge huge grids and this is almost the BRSEC's take on the equivalent of the Welsh Sports and Saloons yes. isn't it it's, it's multi-class and loads of cars lots of cars yes we had in the end 36 of them well 35 take the start the 37 car didn't actually uh, take the start of the race I believe uh, already Lapery going on though as those who are um, in the lower classes have been caught by those who are in the faster cars and this now will be the story of the race, really. Getting stuck in traffic, you can lose an awful lot of time. And we now start to see a big disparity, really, uh, in lap tyres based on where the cars are in clean air 
or whether they're having to try and negotiate some slower runners, but uh, it's a wide enough circuit here as long as they should be able to uh, handle getting past those back markers. It will uh, create an interesting dynamic to, uh, to some of the battles amongst the lead group. Well, 37 minutes to go, so they're just getting into that stage where they settle in. Refresh my memory, Andy, on, on when the pit stop wins. Is it 20 minutes? I think it's 15 to 30. I think it's the middle right, of 15 okay. minutes where the uh, pit stop window opens. We'll get a notification on the timing screen just to remind us. Now, but Webster's well. not watching. I'm going to tell him off. His truck's just driven over the bridge. Uh, yes, I did just spot <laughs> that. Yes, he's uh, probably got a party to go to, to be honest. It was a, a day yeah, worth yeah. celebrating for uh, Albert in the Gaster ST240 Championship. Can't wait to see what those updated championship standings are uh, after a really, really uh, good weekend for Webster. Uh, Subpar one for Alistair Kellett in the Fiesta ST240 Championship. We've had Fiesta Championship drivers do club sport trophy races uh, in the past. This weekend, we've got Civic Cup drivers entered. We get Mazda MX-5 and Compact Cup racers uh, coming and doing these uh, club sport races. And that's why it's always at the end of the day, so that if you are racing in other races on the uh, event, if you have problems with your car, it won't affect your championship race. It will only maybe stop you from getting out of the uh, club sport trophy race at the end of the day. To get a bit of extra track time. Of course, you have got the club sport specialists, cars like the uh, Nissan of David May that leads the way. But there is one of the Mark 1 MX5s. It's the uh, number 22 of Chris Fantana, who doesn't tend to race all that often, in fairness, in the Mark 1 Championship. But uh, good to have at least one variant of the Master MX5 here at Silverstone today. That's not what we wanted to see. No, that's Martin Cully. Heard we yep. were talking about him. He's come to correct us now. Probably, <laughs> he and, probably uh, has, yeah. <laughs> on the, the particular years that he was racing on the Toka Sport package. That's a shame, though. He's out of the car, and we are, needless to say, not in the pit window yet. So that's uh, not a scheduled stop. Fun fact about David May. Yep. Didn't do the driver briefing, £50 fine. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound like David no, at no. all. And same with Larry Cosmin in the... <laughs> In the number three Fiesta, the Jam Sport Fiesta, which Jamie Going was supposed to be racing originally in Super, that was a train uh, Remember Larry from the Fiesta Championship quite a few seasons ago? Do you remember him as well? Might be a bit before your time, possibly. Possibly, possibly. Yeah, I have it's quick. Since then, though, so, uh, yeah, no, that's um, David Bay. <laughs> always has been a character uh, whenever he's been in the BRSCC. He just adds it onto the entry fee, I suppose. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he's too worried about, uh, about the extra 50 quid, but. Um, not the point, really. Should be setting the example, particularly to the youngsters. You know, we talk a lot about setting the example to young junior racers, and it's not just your conduct on the track, is it? But there's a lot of responsibilities for drivers away from the racetrack. Turning up the driver's briefing is a big part of that. You learn a lot of important stuff there that, in theory, you should already know, but uh, uh, there might be a few things that have changed since your final instructions were sent out. And, uh, uh, yeah, a message to young drivers out there. Make sure you're not late because uh, uh, it's an important part of your race weekend. Imagine the likes of Jerry Marshall back in the day. Just <laughs> probably would have response wouldn't have been well. They wouldn't have been fine back then, but no. your, your Ian Fluxes and people like that would just be in the bar. Well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, things have changed a bit now. I was chatting to a couple of drivers actually yesterday about how uh, about the good old days when you used to sign on with an actual piece of paper in the morning. It's all digital now, isn't it? All done yeah, yeah. Uh, online, and um, yeah, you know, some drivers take a bit longer to get used to the, uh, the new way of things. Bit of uh, repair work being done to the DC5 Integra here. This is the number 60 car. It was running quite well uh, inside the top 15 or so. But Lee Reynolds brings that car in after suffering a little bit of contact out on circuit. Damaged onto the front bodywork. And hopefully he'll be back on his way pretty soon. Yeah, I hope so. David May getting into a little bit of Mazda traffic. So he'll just uh, deal with that fairly quickly. The gap to Firo's last time I looked was just under three seconds. It's now 2.145. So Firo's Brilliant Moria looking to try and hunt him down and just get the get that form back that he would want from this meeting and try and get his third class win of the year. Just having a quick look to see if we can see how many other class winners we've got back. David Drinkwater, we don't have. He's been a multiple class E winner. He's doing the Oh, you no excuse. Josh Cook's here. Yes. He was doing, don't drink, was doing the C1s yesterday. Um, Liam Crilly's not here, is he? Tom Stanway. Scott Parkin won the class B at Auburn Park and at Snetterton. So we've got a double winner there. And then we've got the, um, the we normally see the Dire Bliss Audi um, TTCR 
uh, as well. They've had a couple of wins as well, but they're not going to this weekend either. No, but that is the joy of Club Sport Trophy. You don't need to commit to every round. It's not a championship, it's just a series. And uh, even though there are more than enough cars on the grid now that it could become a championship if it wanted to be, uh, it's uh, the decision's been taken not to do that because it is supposed to be one of those very accessible series. You can do the odd race, you can, uh, you know, maybe just race at your, your favourite racetrack, try and do all of them with business commitments or family life gets in the way, you're able to, to miss a weekend and it not ruin your season. So uh, really like that sort of relaxed kind of easy going atmosphere that you have in the uh, Club Sport Trophy paddock. And out on track, here's some competition, that is for sure. Ashley Parsons there in the Parsons Motorsport Renault Clear, the uh, 197 variant of the clear, battling away with the Honda Civic. It's always fascinating as well to find cars that maybe run in their own one-make championships and never normally get a chance to go on uh, track together and see which cars sort of match up equally with others. You know, how does a Civic Cup car compare to a X Renault Clio Cup car, for example? And it, you always get some interesting pairings out there. Yeah, it's great to see. It's like the Welsh Saloons where we saw the Clio up against the Ginetta. <laughs> yes. Good so. Often have Ginettas actually uh, turning up in these races, although not today. There goes David May, and that gap really ebbing and flowing. It was three seconds, then it was two seconds. Oh, wow, it's a half four. Again. So, a bit uh, of traffic probably coming into play. It was Firo's just going through shot. And then Luke Handley next up. So, Luke not that far away either. No, Handley, what? Uh, half a second nearly, six tenths or so of uh, seven tenths of uh, Firo's bit of Moria. Uh, Trevor Hurra comes through the Good Care Racing on the Civic. Nice and peaceful, really, on his own for the time being. You don't get many moments of peace and quiet in a uh, <laughs> Club Sport Trophy race, but he's got a bit of empty track around him. We should probably update your class leaders, I suppose, as we are ticking towards the pit window now, nearly 15 minutes in. David May leads overall and leads in Class A from Feroz Billamoria. Luke Handley in third place leads Class B ahead of Scott Park in the two Audis separated uh, by only two seconds. Class C led uh, by the 115, that's Jonathan Hunter uh, in his uh, VW Scirocco. Class D is headed by the Stevens Mini Cooper, number 150, um, which there's a bit of confusion as to who's driving it because it's down as Julian Hammer uh, on the entry list, but Stevens on the timing screen. Class E by number 181, Paul Connell uh, in his VW Golf Mark II, ex-VW Golf, uh, Golf Mark II Championship contender, easy for me to say. Uh, and Class E then is headed... Uh, sorry, uh, he was classy, wasn't he, uh, in uh, the Golf. Now, that's quite close, actually. He's got Fantana in the Mark 1 MX-5 not far behind, and the Ford Puma of number 125, Matthew Footman, and then the number 44 car, which is the BMW Compact of Chris McGinley. All of them running quite close to tail, but next to each other in the running ones. So class E uh, is where it's at. It's really close class competition. Again, you don't have to be the fastest cars out there to be enjoying perhaps the best of the racing. The 150 Mini does say Jay Hamer, but the entries was changed to yes. Stevens and Stevens and then just to Andrew Stevens. Oh, it's Andrew Stevens. On the, yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. And this was one... Uh, what, what, 150, 150 yes. car that's in was in shot. Yes. And the name was, sorry? Andrew Stevens. Andrew Stevens, thank you. S T E P H E N S. Not that it matters. But <laughs> 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 no, no, no. But, Do you know how many um, times you have to spell Neil, you know, uh, in, in a week? Yes. Which is horrendous. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have looked trouble with the Q, which it turns out has quite a few variations and a few that I'm pretty sure people are making up. But uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Andrew Stevens uh, with the 150 car and uh, running in the obvious class. Bit of damage here on one of the Honda Civics coming towards us. Yeah, it's not supposed to be in the plot, is it? Yeah. Uh, 42. That can't be Bristol 42. Uh, it is nothing too much to worry about. 62. 62. There we go. Your eyesight's better than mine, Richard. 62 is Chris Stone in his Honda Civic. Uh, not hurting too much. That's just the side uh, trim hanging loose, but uh, that might attract the attention of the clerk of the course, might it? He might get uh, summoned in to get that removed or, or reattached. That was a good look at how much David. May has to work, wasn't he? He was looking to the outside, and then there was a gap and just went in between the two cars, inside one, outside another. And dealing with the traffic real well indeed. There's Luke Handley running in that third place. Now, we're going to see Scott Parkin come into shot here, just behind them. Scott is... there he is. 
It stops beginning now. And uh, that's the number 17 of Kate Morris, the Renault Clio 200. We're into the pit window now. Pit window open then. And it's only open for 15 minutes, so they've got to um, get in and out as quickly as they can. There is a minimum pit stop time, so we're not going to see the uh, uh, rough handling of the drivers that we did in the Fun Cup race yesterday afternoon. Uh, you are uh, under no obligation to rush this pit stop process. And of course, for those who aren't changing drivers, there's really not a lot to do other than chat to the driver, check the car's okay, and maybe adjust the tyre pressures, bring those down a little bit for the uh, second part of the race. Uh, so those of course, the driver changes have a little bit more to do. But, uh, that uh, solo entry in the Kate Morris car. Kate's a supercar instructor, by the way. Is she? Yeah. yeah. Club level racers uh, make a bit of money out of that, don't they? They'll open the track. Not a bad job, is it? No, not at all. Yeah. Went to Cheddar Gorge on a motorbike a few weeks ago. Oh, very nice. There we go. Very nice. There's the panda. Go on, boy. <laughs> <laughs> How's it getting on? Let's have a look. Uh, it's not on the first page of the time screen just yet. It is. Uh, there it is. 28th place. It is. Uh, Sixth in class, sixth in class E, but the compact ahead is also in its class. That's the 518 of uh, Colin Whitehouse. So that is a fight for overall and class position there. More activity in the pit lane. That's our Fiesta number three. Oh, no, no, not number three. Oh, yes, it's number three, which wasn't on the entry list. That's Larry Cosmin. That's the guy we were to another one who missed the driver briefing. Oh, of course. Yes. And... Um, perhaps was a late entry to the weekend anyway, not appearing on the yeah, yeah. entry list. Jam Sport running that car. And it makes me wonder if that is an ST240 Championship spec car. It looks like one, doesn't it? So uh, I reckon what class has that one been entered into in the end? Um, ah, that's an interesting bit of information I've just overheard from Scott Woodness, who has appeared out of ah. nowhere, as, as he intends to do. Um, <laughs> Always a pleasure when he does in the commentary box. That might be Ollie Turner's ex um, ST240 championship car, in which case it's got front running pedigree in that championship. Mm. So slightly tweaked livery, I think, but uh, yeah, may well be. And, uh, pit lane service complete on that car. No sign of the leader coming in just yet. Uh, David May 5.6 seconds up the road now uh, from Ferrose Billamoria, whilst Luke Handley is 1.7 seconds now ahead of Scott Parkin for the uh, Class B lead, so that's still pretty tight, and 1.7 <coughs> seconds, excuse me, is the kind of gap that you can gain or lose uh, through misjudging your uh, minimum pit stop time a little bit, so um, it's close enough that we could see a change as of when they decide to pit, and in fact uh, we do now get a pit stop for both the race leader, David May, right there on cue, and also second place for Esbilla Moria there in the Scirocco. Now, assuming the timing and, and being managed okay, it depends. A lot of these cars will just run with the driver and they'll, they'll sit with a stopwatch in the cockpit and try and work it out for themselves. So there are a few that do that, but generally the drivers have helpers who will time them in and out and get yes. them. So I'd imagine, Firo's take, well, as David May, will we'll take these quite seriously. So I think they'll be on the clock. They should, in theory, go out together. You would think so. Of course, it's not the stationary time that's measured, though. It's the time from time pit in, time entry out. lane to the pit exit line. Yeah, so you've got to allow for that. And that's another thing they'll have practised in qualifying, I'm sure, to figure out how long it's going to take them to trundle from one end of the pit lane to the other. And if they're sensible, they'll leave a second or so's wiggle room uh, outside of that so that they don't run the risk of um, leaving a little bit too early. Barry Cully's car. There, David May. And no work being done. The steam off the wow. brakes there. That's incredible, wow. isn't it? Yeah, it is. You stand next to a car like this in the pit stop and you can feel the heat radiating off it. It's, uh, it really is impressive. I'm just going to adjust those tyre pressures. Of course, the heat from the brakes affects tyre pressures as well. The hotter the brakes are getting, the hotter the tyres are getting, the hotter the tyres get, the higher the tyre pressure. And sometimes the less grip you have at a certain level of temperature and pressure, not too much, and you start to lose a little bit of traction. That was close for Luke Handley. Josh Cook going in as well, according to the timing tower. So. Yeah. Interesting to watch. That car was still reasonably well, I think. Josh was with us uh, radiating about the C1 race yesterday. Oh, really? down a break. Yeah, said it was mega. It was so. 
well, we said earlier on, didn't we, about the, the conversations being had that, you know, the Fun Cup race was superb, the C1. You're spoiled for choice if you're into that kind of racing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, Josh Cook said he absolutely loved it. Oh, really, good. really good, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, he's always enjoyed racing in it when he has competed. Has he done the 24 before, Josh? Yeah, he was, he was here a couple of years ago. Ah, uh, right, OK. Um, just, yeah, last, uh, last year, I think he was. Oh, was it last year? Yeah. You're right. You're right, I remember that, yes. I remember chatting to Josh now. Yeah, that's the sign of a good touring car driver when they come and yes. race other things and do well. It's I'm great exactly. that they do it anyway and put reputations online, but to come and do well, yeah. as Josh does, yeah, absolutely superb. Yeah, we need more of that, really. Top flight drivers coming and uh, having a go in other championships. We mentioned Jake, did it, didn't we? We were talking about Ariel Atoms earlier on, but there are not too many of the others that you... No, Tom Ingram did a Fun Cup race once uh, at Brands Hatch a number of years ago. Michael Kreese races lots of different things, but he never lasted him long, very long, does he? And Kreese, if you're listening, love you lots, mate. <laughs> uh, he just wants to sample a little bit of everything that's uh, on offer in the uh, uh, the very rich motorsport uh, culture that we have here in the United Kingdom. You have to be rich, don't you? To... Yeah, well, <laughs> yes, if you're going to sample that many of them, yeah, it does help. Greasy work, to be fair, the, the lad works really hard at he does. getting the, the, the backers together to get out. And he's such an infectious personality as well. Which helps, doesn't it, yeah, really, yeah. when it comes to attracting yeah. sponsors at that level as well. And again, I think drivers started to realise that again. We went through a phase, maybe, where some of the big personalities were sort of leaving the sport and then the, the newer drivers coming in maybe didn't quite have that, uh, that side of the game down. But they're really learning now. I think people like Tom Ingram, for example... Uh, realising that there's a way that you need to act almost on camera hey. uh, in order to <laughs> catch people's attention. There's the panda. And, uh, well, it was running, what did I say, sixth in its class before the pit stops. We'll see where it comes out at the end of the pit window. Uh, but uh, driver change ongoing. Now, can we see a name of that I was driver? looking for that, but I can't. It's got lots of little messages written it on has, the side of the it? car. Look, that's, yeah. that's a nice touch. Things you don't appreciate when it's going at uh, speed, and I use that term loosely, uh, out on circuit. But uh, out it goes again. Novice cross on the back of the car as well. Relatively inexperienced experienced driver lineup, maybe. Back to the fray goes Richard's favourite car. Still waiting for a handful of them to pit. And we've just had a new fastest lap, incidentally, set by uh, David May. So David May fresh out of the pit lane. So those adjustments, wasn't it, to the tyre pressure? That's it, yeah, absolutely. Fine-tuning things. And 104.7 is about three-tenths quicker than he went in qualifying on his way to pole position. The smoky Pacific making its way through Cox Corner. So Luke Handley hasn't stopped yet, nor has Scott Parkins. The two Class B Audis are leading the way at the moment, first and second, 2.1 seconds between them. We've just had the number two car in of Chris Sparks in his direct motorsport prepared on the Civic, which means that the 143 of Trevor Hurrell now, his Civic will move up into third position. Yes, of course, he dies for the pit lane. But I think, Richard, that Feroz Billamoria has got out of the pits ahead of David May because they've both completed looks, a couple of laps. It looks they? that and, uh, way on the timing screen. Feroz is ahead, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. So we'll see if we can try and find them out on track. And uh, it's about uh, one and a half seconds or so between them uh, only. I think, but I think they've just gone across the line. Try and pick them up if we can. He used to work with Feroz as well. We've worked for the same company. Oh, really? It's one of those things where you're going through the company directory looking for someone. I thought I know that name. You know, you know when, you don't, when you're in the wrong context yeah, and you yeah. don't get... And I thought, I know that name from somewhere. <laughs> uh, quite a glimpse there of Dan Blake in his Renault Clio. Dan, I know through sim racing, actually. Uh, commentated on some sim races I did and vice versa. And uh, we were in the same team for a long time, actually. Sim racing, very handy peddler on the sim. He's done some Astro MX-5 racing in the past. Oh, that Dan Blake? Uh, yes, ah. yeah, yeah, he's got sold the MX-5 now and moved on to uh, a Renault Clio, which he's racing in for the trophy. Oh, that's good, he's done well. Yeah, yeah we no. were trying to help him get a gigging, I think he's the same guy, Kate, is he never on Kent? Uh, yes, I think he does, Yeah, we were yes. trying to get him some links in Kent Media back in the day when he was oh, right. coming through. So, oh, yeah. glad he's doing well. Nice, nice guy. To, yeah. Nice guy, yeah. Blake, definitely a lot of time for him. I was fascinated. So. Of course, yeah, yeah. But in the end, you know, he taught me everything he knew. And, uh, and did have the pleasure of <laughs> commentating on me uh, in a race in which me and my three other teammates managed to crash out from first, second and third uh, in a race at Monster. So uh, you'll always have that. But, uh, <laughs> yes, very nice guy, Dan Blake, and, uh, and only brings it up every couple of conversations that we have. <laughs> and there we go. This is likely the battle for the race win it once is, all is yeah. said and done. So David May did come out uh, behind Rose. So, so much for the pit stops being the same length. 
Yeah, well, one would think that Philos Bramoria's team, if he has a team, have just uh, judged it that little bit better. He was only, he was only a couple of seconds in it, but now David Bay's going to have a go for the lead. Firoz is not going to battle it. Or is he? Oh. Yes, he is. All right, OK, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Uh, make a race. This is what we want. Uh, he was turning in whether David May was there or not then, wasn't he? But again, there's, there's two different lines into Brooklyn that's caused a few problems this weekend. Uh, the car on the inside thinks the car on the outside is letting them go, and actually they're just committing to their racing line. That's got Parkin in. Uh, he and Luke Handley choosing to pit at the same time. So again, the uh, Class B leaders should hopefully come out of the pit lane just as close, if not closer, than they already were. David May back up the inside of Feroz Melamoria here for the overall race lead, and this time gets the job done at Cops. Yep, so oh, a little bit twitchy there. That might allow Feroz back in as he lost momentum. David May, let's have a look. No, he hasn't. He's still got the lead, dealing with the traffic well too. Just nipping past the Cameron Bell car. So the Cameron Bell Mazda, they're both safety through. Let's see if Firoz has got anything to reattach himself to the lead car. The answer is he has, and he's reading the traffic, just trying to go past the 181 Paul Connell VW, and that very nearly saw the lead go back from David May, but he just had that extra little bit of grunt to get out of trouble there. Yeah, absolutely, and that could be the thing that uh, makes the difference here, really. Over a lap, I don't think there's a lot to choose between these two, but as we've seen a few times in the Welsh sports saloon races, that extra horsepower actually a few mile an hour down the street can make all the difference but uh, with the amount of traffic out there there's a good chance that David May might end up stumbling in the back markers again and uh, maybe reopening the door for uh, for Rose Bullamoria to come back through they are both about to pass the Audis of Luke Handley and Scott Parkin in the pit lane so that does now officially put uh, David May and for Rose Bullamoria into the lead and oh well David May into the lead for Rose Bullamoria here into second place uh, oh no it doesn't Luke Handley comes out ahead of David May, so uh, Luke Handley is wow. ahead. Where is Scott Parkin then? That begs the question, because Parkin was ahead, uh, no, Handley was ahead of Parkin, wasn't he, before pit stops. Where is there? there is Parkin is. behind? Yeah. So top four in the same shot then, Richard. Yeah, that means they've done their stops pretty well, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. All pretty equal. Uh, Change for the lead, back of shot. Unless that car's leading because that's Josh Cook in the um, ah. in the Ryan Bensley Civic. Now, they pitted early to, as Formula 1 fans would say, get the undercut against some of the others. They put uh, Josh Cook in the car early. Uh, but no, on the timing screen, no, he's, he's further back. So they've actually lost some time, haven't they? So this is genuinely the fight for the race lead. And finally, David May uh, does get himself back to the front. Firoz wants P2 now if he wants to maintain that chase. So Luke Handley holds on to it at the moment. Timing tower starts to look like a slice of Battenberg with a <laughs> peak of different colours on it. Well, it's been a long day, Rich, but that uh, alone was enough to make me hungry in that, uh, that <laughs> reference. Uh, someone bring cake, please, to the, uh, to the commentary box. I'm, I'm not above asking at this stage. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, overall race lead goes back to David Ney. Uh, oh, there is a sorry sight. That's a Mark III Mazda MX-5, which it was, uh, with some sort of mechanical issues down in pit lane there's only one of those on the entry list i think and i can't remember off the top of my head which one it was but anyway we're out of the race now time to tell me that it was uh, i think number 30 i think number 30 it's listed helpfully as a mazda on the entry list uh, but yeah that doesn't I, help does it <laughs> no i think it's alan mckenna and uh, tim crichton tim crichton's car that's uh, out of the race that's a shame is that the Crichton that runs the car facility down at Sandown Park? Or is that a different Crichton? Possibly. Always get the Crichtons muddled up. Possibly, and not, not that well versed on uh, the mm. karting community, admittedly. But, uh, yeah. I drove a kart last a few years ago and came away with uh, bruised ribs and a bruised kidney and haven't, uh, yeah, haven't bothered that's... Uh, showing much interest in them since. It can be quite physical, can't it? <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah. hit anything either, that's the thing. That's just the... the no, she's been thrown out side to side, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, far too skinny, you see. I was rattling around. That, that is the, uh, Seriously, that's what it is, because that happens to my son. I mean, he's 17 now, and, um, he, yeah, he, he's got, you know, he's, he's quite quite thin, and he comes away and he has to recover. He really yeah. doesn't have to recover for, yeah, for a couple yeah. of weeks. It's uh, physical. Is uh, karting now. Here comes uh, Fraser Bilamori in the background. Look at the inside of the red Audi of Luke Handley. Yes, nice He's work. Through. And he is going to get through. Sort of used the DC5 Integra as a pick there, didn't he? Although now <laughs> the Integra uh, sort of stands its ground again. And they almost trade a bit of paint, but Villamoria goes through. So that's a change for second in the race, not for class positions, uh, but for overall positions as David May slices and dices his way through the traffic. Some quite determined 
cornering lines going yes. on, isn't there, when other cars are involved? Ferro's done it a couple of times. David there, did there as well on the exit of Woodcut. Um, the, the lead means a lot to him. Fair play. Um, David May will make hundreds of overtakes in this race, and none of them easy, really. Even if they're against cars that are much slower than him, he's still got to really be concentrating. To, you, you've uh, got to read it, haven't you? Yeah, you've absolutely. got to know what's going on, yeah. Yeah, which he's doing well. He's picking and choosing his moments. Helps that he's got that extra power to drive past people to have the straights, but in true David May fashion, he's not doing all of his overtaking down the straights. Uh, there's quite a bit of spirited driving through the corners as well. He's losing a ton of time now uh, in this group of bad markers. Ferroz Villamoria must be getting a little bit closer. Yes, he is bringing Handley with him. Scott Parker, of course, moving in the background, hoping to try and steal a Class B win out of all of this with uh, just over 12 minutes still to go. Jonathan Hunter still in Class C is in sixth place. What colour did we decide he was in the end? Uh, which one was this? Class E. Uh, the... Uh, which car, sorry? No, I was just saying, what colour was it on the oh, timing on the time, tail? Oh, the timing, right, I beg your pardon. We haven't got that far down for a while. It is the pink, I think, the, the bright pink. Oh, we've got uh, two pinks there, right? Well, there's a sort of peachy pink. Right, OK. And, uh, and the, the proper pinky pink. Right. Uh, which I think is Class E. I'm slightly more than that, though, so... Uh, Are you? A, li a little bit, with certain shades of reddy colours. Um, anyway, I've got a very good friend of mine who's a racing driver who I won't name. He doesn't race much anymore, but he's hoping to get back into it. He's colour blind and can't tell green from yellow, which I always thought was uh, <laughs> a touch concerning. Um, you say he just sort of copied what everyone else was doing. When, uh, if everyone else slowed down, he did. Um, and if everyone else sped up, he assumed it was a green flag and uh, went with it. So... Um, that's quite amusing. Uh, yes, I always thought so. It, it, we play snooker together quite a lot, and I, it, I do take advantage of that a few times. That's um, <laughs> it's nasty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> do what I have to to win. It's uh, I'm not going to beat him any other way. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yes, um, the pink pink cars. I think the numbers uh, led by Paul Connors. So that is correct, isn't it? Paul Connors classy, isn't he? And the yellow and the uh, green doesn't get into too much trouble, does it? In snooker, really? Well, it does if you're not on the green yet. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a brown and red is always also a bit of an issue for him. Less of an issue in right. motor racing, but uh, scored a few points on the snooker table. Then. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there's a very good chance he's listening as well, and I'm going to get a very angry message uh, very shortly, <laughs> uh, which I absolutely deserve. I'll, I'll take the risk. So, a <laughs> sun starting to set here at Silverstone. Then, 29 laps completed in this Club Sport Trophy race. 3.4 seconds still all that separate David May from Froze Villamoria at the front of the pack. The real battle is for second place because, look, Villamoria has got Luke Handley tucked right up behind him as they come past the lapped VW Golf and head towards Be uh, Brooklyn's corner. Dan Blake in the Renault Clio, the next back mark, and he stays well out of the way, wanted no part of that. Takes a nice wide line through Brooklyn's and allows for Rose and Luke through. But this is a good, entertaining battle between the two of them, isn't it? Yeah, Luke Handley's not letting go, is he? No. The dog on the postman's leg for this one. He's really trying to close in again. How far back have we got Scott Parkin? Not that far back either. So Scott with maybe a little bit of work to do. There goes Scott through shot as well. Yeah, Luke Handley can pinch this, you know. Yeah, I think so. And he wants to get a move on here, but I think the reason he's so keen to uh, get past Villamoria is that if Faroz keeps holding him up, it will bring Scott Parkin back onto his tail. But, uh, just drop back away a little bit. I think in traffic, Handley's a little bit stronger, isn't he? But yeah. uh, once they get into the clean air, it's, uh, it's a bit of favour, maybe the Scirocco again with that extra little bit of horsepower. Able to tell us that better when he's not on his way through the back markers. To go a lap down. A car that's won twice this year in the World Export Civic Cup. Which we'll have uh, back on the TCR bill, uh, I think only actually at the final round. I think they're missing Donington Park as well uh, to race here on the national circuit, actually. So the Civic, maybe that's why Ryan Bensley and Owen Hillman and a couple of other Civic Cup uh, drivers are choosing to come and race in the Club Sport Trophy, get a bit of track time around the, uh, the national circuit uh, that they'll be racing on in September. The Civic Cup have had some non-TCR dates, and they had one. Yes, uh, uh, it Cadwell, was Cadwell it last, last week. And yeah. were you doing that one? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some fantastic race. That championship was so tight, heading into the closing stages. I felt sorry for Ryan Bensley actually. He's stuck it on pole position for the first time in his career. 
race one and race three, second fastest lap times, and uh, I forget what the problem was now, but he led a lap, I think, of race one, and then finished about 12th oh. with uh, some sort of mechanical issue. Wouldn't race three, I'd, though, I'd drive was, like that, uh, I was going to say, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he's, uh, he drove very well in race three, and uh, managed to claim, I think, his second win of the year. He's having a real Excellent. standout uh, season. He does get driver tuition from a certain scouse ex British touring car racer, so, but despite that, he's doing quite well uh, in uh, 2023. <laughs> and, uh, having the season of his life, good to see him enjoying himself here. Uh, Cup Sport Trophy as well. He's got a parking leading this group. He's had a, a, a good weekend, hasn't he? For oh, on a Devante tyres as well, didn't spot. Yes. Spot that before. Like one golf. Is that Dave Cox, from memory? That was the... It is. I remembered. Wow. Started That's ninth first. on the grid, running eighth. So, uh, yeah. Really good race for him and third in class. He's in class A as well, actually, in that golf. So after the pit window, then class leaders David May leads A, Handley B, class C is the 115 of Jonathan Hunter, class D is the Stevens, uh, Andrew Stevens, Mini Cooper, and class E, oh, the number 30 car is still in the pit lane or back in the pit lane. I'm not sure if it ever left actually. Uh, but the Class E brigade, led still by Paul Connell, actually. Reasonably healthy lead now in that class as well, some 13, 14 seconds or so. Closest of the class fights remains Class B, doesn't it? Although Scott Park is now nearly three seconds behind Nick Handley. So, unless Handley loses a bit of time in traffic, looks as though our, uh, our class lead is pretty sta stable now with the... Uh, Six and a half minutes to go, but still some good battles to be had. This is the number 60 Integra, having had that little bit of bodywork repaired in the pit lane. And I think the number with which he was battling there was not a fight for position. Uh, this car being 23rd, four laps down. I think it's, uh, I guess, slightly longer pit stop to, uh, to sort that uh, bonnet out. David May's got this one in the bag, really, isn't he? Well, not that you've said that. So. Oh, <laughs> no, he will do. I haven't, I haven't um, jeopardised any drivers for a few weeks. <laughs> uh, yes. I, I was at a meeting the other day where I was going around the paddock and the guys, all the guys I spoke to did well, which is very unusual. Oh, really? I didn't tell them that's normally <laughs> the way. But, you know. Yeah, you know you're uh, in trouble when drivers start actively avoiding you when you try to... I, I chased a... TCR driver from one end of the Alton Park paddock to the other trying to get an interview for social media earlier this season because they were terrified of talking to me before the uh, uh, before the race so convinced were they that the uh, commentator's curse was going to strike again actually the Devante tag comes into it because Dan Zelos he, he hates talking to me before um, I, I definitely kiss of death for <laughs> I think Will Orton's going to be bunging me a few quid to make sure I interview Dan <laughs> Zelos <laughs> before the finale <laughs> exactly Luke Handley's getting stuck in again, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's right with uh, Ferreira Spillamoria now. Those two were only half a second apart at the start of the lap. There's the leader, David May. Five minutes left on the clock. Turns his way out of Beckett's corner. There's the battle going on behind him that we really want to try and uh, get eyes on. Because that is the five for second place. Not for a class position, but for second place overall. You can just see them in the background. The white and green Scirocco, the red Audi. Second and third place. Look at the sea of traffic they've got to try and deal with. Mm. David Maid struggling to find a way past Owen Hillman as well, but uh, this could be the best opportunity, really, for Handley to try and get past the Scirocco in amongst the back markers. Could well be, couldn't it? He's doing well so far. Ferro still hangs on to it. Some great liveries in, in, in this as well. Not the plain red, but the, the, uh, the lead two cars. Very striking machines. Yeah, well put together, aren't they? They... years ago where he was a race winner I seem to remember might have only won one or two races but he was a regular front runner now here comes Bill Amoria handily flashing the lights there at the back markers he doesn't care that uh, Feroz is in a different class he wants to finish as high up the overall running order as he can and uh, brings his Audi TT Cup racing car and is that the same the same spec that we race at in the cup yeah. or is it this point? so that shows how good so those cars you know mm. battling it out for overall Overall pace. I mean, we say David May is a, is a way down the road, but Firo's we know is a, yeah. 
a regular winner. So it just goes to show how good those cars are. Absolutely, yeah. No, as I understand it, uh, apart from maybe a different tyre, but I don't okay. think so. Uh, yeah, because I don't think you're allowed to slick tyres in uh, club sport trophy, yeah. whereas you are uh, uh, at least a semi-slick on, uh, uh, on the TTs. But yeah, apart from that, um, exactly the same specification underneath, and uh, both he and Scott Park in the same. Uh, are running really well. It shows the value for money that you've got. I yeah. mean, they're within 10 seconds of that Nissan 370Z, which costs a few quid more than uh, the Audi TT, I would have thought. And yet, bang for your buck, they're, they're almost as competitive, really. Uh, Firoz has got a little bit of breathing space now. Maybe the little bit of traffic, bit of driving skills. Oh, well, hang, hang it's closed up again. <laughs> Speak too soon. The Audis are good on the brakes, though. The braking distance is quite short in those cars, so uh, the exit of the corner, the gap stretches again, but the way in there, definitely Luke Handley was closing. So he tries to relieve Thoreau's of uh, second place here. It's a good race length, isn't it, as well? And it's a nice way to wrap up the day because the, yeah. you know, those people that want to sit and enjoy it, as I would have done back in the day, uh, could do that. No rush to get out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just enjoy it. Finish the day. Another fastest lap for David May. Still it's not, still not hanging about. 1042. He's seven tenths underneath his pole position time now. Wow. So impressive. Late in the race, especially everything quite hot now and well worn, but uh, driving well. You know, it's a nice relaxed end to uh, what has at times been a slightly stressful day. <laughs> Very exciting day of racing, no doubt about it. But uh, nice, relaxed, chill end to. It's been a brilliant weekend here at Silverstone and uh, more live stream action coming your way within the next few weeks for the BRSCC. So if you've enjoyed what you saw here, uh, then do be sure to head to the BRSCC's uh, social media channels for all of the updates on further live coverage to come. Of course, we've got two more TCR events this season, Doddington Park in September and Brands Hatch in October, which will also be the Brands Hatch Formula Ford Festival fantastic event that will be can't wait to be there hoping for weather like this actually i think in the mid-october we'd settle for uh, these sort of conditions at brands hatch we've had it before at the festival but uh, not, not all that often <laughs> not when i'm there <laughs> <No>. <laughs> are you doing the festival i forget this year it's yeah yeah i'm, right, I'm yes. looking forward to it yeah very yeah, much good good be good fun that one a busy weekend definitely but a real highlight of the calendar this will be a highlight on david may's calendar this year another win incoming for the uh, nissan driver who came through that time with a minute and ten to go so i think he's going to squeeze one more lap in after this Unless he really backs it off which he could he's 11 seconds up the road but he'll uh, He'll want to get his uh, his money's worth here. He's paid for a 45-minute race, and he's going to race for every single one of those 45 minutes. And uh, if he can squeeze an extra lap in, he's going to be more than happy to do so. But uh, flawless race, this, really. Uh, well, I say flawless. The pit stop wasn't brilliant. It did drop down the order slightly, but he did well to recover and uh, get himself back out into the lead. Be our fourth different outright winner of the season. Yes. Will we see these later on? I can't remember whether these guys are with us on TCR again over the course of the season. Oh, I said Scott... Sorry, sent Andy scurrying off to the to Google it very quickly. I, I had the dates for the other series written down, so I, I, we'll I had them on my laptop, which sadly has given up the ghost uh, this late in the day. Um, yeah, hold, hold the line. <laughs> well, the clock's down, and David May's making his way, his way through to the checker. We probably won't get time to <laughs> sort that out. We'll know if we, if they're if they're there when we when we get there. But, we will. Um, nice drive. Yes, it is. David May, Alan uh, Beckett's corner then. Heads down the uh, Wellington Strait and uh, is now not that far away from uh, claiming the race victory. Uh, it's not his first Club Sport Trophy win, but yeah, his first overall win for this season. He turns his way now through Brooklands into Lafield Corner for the last time of asking them. And uh, a good day's work. This an entertaining race that uh, David May's put forward for us. And, uh, his way now out towards the end of the race and Luke Handley look has got past Rose Billamore wow, the final wow. lap of the race Luke Handley has managed to steal uh, second place in the race so brilliant stuff from him David May gets the victory though in our SW Motorsports uh, Club Sport Trophy race at the end of the day and uh, second place where really all of the action was in the closing stages there and it looked 
much as though it's going to be. Yep, Luke Handley. Oh, and Scott Parkins ahead of Bill Amoria as well. So has Bill Amoria got a problem? It looks that way, doesn't it? Must have done. Has he limped home at all? Yes, he comes home in fourth, but uh, lost about 12 seconds or so on that final lap. So drama for throws. That's a shame. Uh, the VW Scirocco slowing then dramatically towards the end. Uh, the good news is that we will see them back on the TCR calendar again. Uh, Donington Park next time out, actually, by September, oh, cool. September. So they'll have a 45-minute race there. They then finish their championship here on the international circuit in October, I think the week before the TCR finale. And they also then have a, a final round of the season in November at Anglesey as part of the Race of Remembrance um, event. So they'll have their own standalone 45-minute race there as well. So plenty more racing to come uh, from the Club Sport Trophy. But it's David May who has claimed an overall victory here at Silverstone. Luke Handley second and a class winner to boot. And uh, then Fraser Billamoria. Uh, sorry, uh, Jonathan Hunter, the next of the class winners, actually. Uh, a bit further down the order. A couple of tie penalties creeping in there. There was a 33.208 second penalty uh, for the number two car. And then a there were a few others actually getting similarly specific penalties. And that's because their pit stop times were underneath what they should have been so uh, that will uh, change the final running order slightly uh, also showing that uh, Josh Cook pitted towards the end and wasn't putting up the flag but David May was and he claims the win wins in class A as well Luke Handley second uh, and he claims the class B victory ahead of Scott Parkin for Rose Bellamoria fourth ahead of Owen Hillman whilst Jonathan Hunter in sixth position is your class C winner Elliot Dunmore David Cox Larry Cosmin and Chris Sparks were next ahead of Ashley Parsons Brendan Murphy and Chris Stone all running in class C Trevor Hurrell came home in 14th place 15th then for the Class D winner, that was uh, Andrew Stevens in his uh, Hammer Time Motorsport car uh, with Josh Beardsley. Next, Paul Connell won in Class E in the Mark II Golf, ahead of Cameron Bell, Chris Fantana and Lee Reynolds backing, uh, rounding out the top 20. Then, uh, Ryan Bensley and Josh Cook, they sadly pitted towards the end of the race and weren't running at the flag, but are officially classified 21st, ahead of Matthew Footman, Dan Blake, Chris McGinley, Kate Morris, Barry Cully and Colin Whitehouse. And we then start to get into some of those who had dramas in that race. Lomas and Walker car, Nick Dougal uh, also had problems, so did the Risbridger and Oates Mazda 2. Uh, the Mills and Speed car, uh, 31st place with Jones and Rogers. They were running well in the early stages, weren't they? The 777 car, uh, finishing well down the order. So racing done with here at Silverstone, but we do have a chance, I believe, to catch up with some of the drivers. I suspect it will be class winners that Anthony Jordan will have with him uh, momentarily down in the pit lane. I can see definitely the class E winner there, Paul Connell, pulling into place in his Mark II Golf and a few others ready and waiting as well. So I think that for the final time this weekend, in a moment or two, we'll be able to hand down a chance though before uh, that, uh, Richard, for me to say thank you. Always a pleasure to uh, have you join me in the commentary box. Look forward to doing the same at Donington. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for everyone from Alpha Live for doing a super job and lovely to work with you guys again. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Indeed so, indeed so. Uh, absolutely, it's been a pleasure this weekend. Some really quality racing across all of the categories and uh, we look forward to more of the same as I said at our next TCR event on uh, in early September at Donington Park. Right then, I believe that we are almost good to go uh, down into the uh, podium area and hear from Anthony Jordan who I think has got some uh, drivers ready and waiting. There are some drivers ready and waiting. There's David May receiving his winner's trophy. Jamie going there who runs the car joining in the celebrations as well. Luke Handley in the background. And uh, we can now head down uh, to Anthony Chorden then, who is there with our class winners. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, 45 minutes uh, flew by there, didn't it? Uh, blinking, you'd have missed it. Well, uh, David May uh, as it gets congratulated there. There we go. Uh, hey, David, well, I never thought I'd meet someone with the last name May and who was quick at driving. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, mate, congrats. what a race that was. Um, yeah, the car's been a nightmare for us, nearly 12 months. First time out, just didn't think we was going to finish. You know, we just thought, give it our best. We got out, thought, oh, hang on, we've done five laps. Yeah. Let's carry on. Uh, somebody with a Scirocco, God, it was all over me around the bends, and yeah. I thought, I've just got to put a gap, because around the bends, all the little front-wheel drive cars are all over me. Mm. And I just managed, traffic was good for me, managed to put a gap. I just keep it, but hard work. Paul O'Neill, sorry, David. I've got to deal with Paul O'Neill. No, 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 we won't take that. 
that way. Oh. Excellent. Sorry about that, yeah, David. No, no worries. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. Right, I am going to kill Paul O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen. Right, let's chat to the man who finished third, uh, first in, right, what class? Class, Remind me, C. Class C. Class C, yeah, there we go. There's so many classes in this one, five classes altogether. Uh, Jonathan, well, uh, let's uh, talk about that one. The Scirocco, looking lovely, still in one piece. No, no marks on it at all. That's a nice clean race. Yeah, we. it's the first time out in the, the orange Scirocco, so it's... Uh, uh, just getting used to the DSG gearbox, uh, left-hand drive, um, but we got it dialed in today, so it was it was good. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean Silverstone National, it's a lovely track. It's very fast. The weather's been great as well. And you know, to round out the day here, 45-minute race. It, did that fly by for you, or was that a challenge? Uh, it was a little bit hard work, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit warm in there, so yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. Do you get about 10 minutes in and go, how long's left? Oh, there's still half hour left. <laughs> well, when I saw the pit open board come out, it was like, yeah, just, just gauging it from there. So, mm -hmm. Mate, well, honestly, uh, congratulations. Uh, first in class and, uh, yeah, enjoy that one. Thank you very much. Excellent, Jonathan. Cheers. Thank you very much. Let's go over here to the number 51 on our screen, Luke Handley. Luke, well, uh, another nice little performance for you there, and uh, yeah, uh, talk us, 45 minutes of racing, does it fly by or does it drag? Uh, I normally do two hours in Club Enduro. Well, there you go, 45 minutes is easy it's then. It's easy, but then these are actually for the new BRSCC series, the TTCR, mm. um, which is like a new series for this year. And we just, me and Scott, who came second in B, he, we just bought them out to, you know, to, to give them a run in this, and they're great. Um, they do 45 minutes, you bolt some slightly different tyres on, and you have a great race. They're great fun. Yeah, they really are, aren't yeah. they? They look absolutely fantastic when they fly around. But uh, yeah, um, what was it like? Obviously, busy old grid out there, wasn't it? So uh, a bit touchy at the start, or did you feel like you had it all under control? Yeah, I got a good start to be fair. So I think I got up into um, got up into second. Well, I got up into first at one point, and this chap obviously blasted past me in class A. But the um, multi-class racing is all about getting through traffic, isn't it? Yeah. So um, and that was that was what it was good today. Actually, the national circuit is not that bad because there's quite a few places to pass, so it's not too bad. But yeah, I enjoyed myself. It's been a great day. TCR has been brilliant as well watching yeah. that. So yeah, excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you've enjoyed your day, and uh, yeah, go home with some nice silver weather. <laughs> exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Congratulations. Well done there to uh, Luke Handley. Let's turn our attention over to the mini of Stevens and Stevens, if I'm right in saying. Stevens. Just Stevens. Just, yeah, just, 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 just one Stevens. Just one yeah. Stevens. Where's the other Stevens? There isn't one. Yeah, it was meant to be uh, Hamer. Oh, I see. It's his car. I'm oh. just borrowing it for the weekends, and uh, yeah, he let me drive it for the full race. Yeah. First ever win. Yeah. So buzzing about that, and uh, yeah, it's my first season of racing as well. So it's only like fifth or sixth race. So yeah, the car was amazing. Just so easy to drive. So uh, yeah, buzzing. Yeah, yeah, the minis do look absolutely fabulous when they go round. I mean, they're personally they're they're my favourite car. I wouldn't yeah. have one on the public road, but to race in, oh, 100 percent yes. They look they look amazing fun. Yeah, I mean, you can just chuck it into a corner; it just sticks. So, like through the corner, you've got so much confidence. So, yeah, great car to be doing my first season racing in, and yeah, absolutely loving it. So, uh, yeah, buzzing. Excellent. Enjoy yeah. your evening. Enjoy Cheers. your uh, champagne and trophy and everything. I and a nice, it, safe yeah. drive home. So thirsty. <laughs> I mean, it is. So. Well done. Well done uh, there. And finally, we turn our attention all the way here uh, to the 181. Well, um, that, uh, I mean, what class are we? Class e. E? 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 e class. I mean, fabulous race. Where did we finish in the end of that one? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, Can I you were 17th. 17th. Overall. That's not that's bad. Not bad it? overall. First in class. Yeah. Did I get fastest lap? I don't, in did, my class. did you get fastest? Cl I don't know about class. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No. We'll have to find that out okay. in a bit. Yes. But uh, talk us through that race and that one because that was awesome. this. That yeah. was awesome. I mean, yeah. that car I've owned for 27 years and raced it for 27 yeah. years and uh, I won a championship in it. Um, but it was absolutely fantastic. I've had a right workout with the car. It was sideways most places. Mm. Um, compared to the RS500 I've just sold, mm. I prefer that. <laughs> Honestly. Really? Honestly. Really? Yeah. That is fantastic. It's such fun. Yeah. And I know it's not going to cost me a fortune if it goes bang. Yeah. No, exactly. That is the beauty of these sort of classic uh, cars to race in, isn't it? And, uh, you know, it, it does seem like these VWs, they're indestructible, aren't they? Yeah, they, there's no rust on it at all. Yeah. You know, it's 30 odd years old. Yeah. It's mad. They hold their value. They do. They do, yeah. It is going up in value, yeah. yeah. Especially after today. Yeah. Oh, I imagine <laughs> so, yeah. P1 in class. Mate, congratulations <laughs> on that one, Paul. But uh, yeah, solid result and uh, yeah, enjoy a nice, relaxing evening. Cheers. Thank you. Excellent. Cheers. Thank you very much, Paul, there. Uh, well, uh, brilliant stuff then for uh, the class, what class? 
five classes there, all taking a race win. They all seems to be very delighted. 45 minutes absolutely flying by, and that does bring us to the end of the day here at Silverson as well. It has been a beautiful day here with myself, Anthony Jordan, Andy McEwen, Paul O'Neill, Richard, bringing you all of the live commentary over the course of the day. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you at Donington Park for the next two rounds of the TCI UK series. So make sure you set your alarms. It is coming. Jim Leader is in the gravel truck. Ward Neal sends him off and it's a kick of dirt on the oh. outside.